the perfect secretary for the stoic billionaire. Author, Jelani. Hide the perfect secretary. Sir! Get out! Two words spoken in a soft manner, but the voice that speak with it carried out a heavy weight of rage, enough to make the listener running off scared in her pair of red heels. The secretary left Kikazu Ilza's office while crying, after being told off. For the nth time around, the latest secretary, Jenny Garth, has by far set a record-breaking 50 minutes of attending her first day of work only to be fired as soon as she upset the stoic boss. That's like the 20th secretary you had this month. Brother! Nero Lynn Isles, Kay's younger brother commented, sympathizing with the poor secretary that is at the same exact moment is already jobless. Kikazu were most known as the alphabet or one-letter man K by his employees, just looked at his brother and got back to the documents he's reading thoroughly. I don't want stupid people in my company, Nero. Especially for a secretary, whose job is to look after the boss. You saw how that woman spilled the coffee she made on the documents. I can't tolerate such clumsy behavior. Nero shrugged, snorting at his brother's usual sentiments. Oh! Well, your company's HR department should get double the salary for all the trouble they have to go through just with finding a suitable secretary for you. You're so much work, brother. Ha ha. Kay glared at Nero not because of his brother's taunting, rather it is because he cannot deny that that's exactly who he is. The young bachelor in his early 20s, Kay is known to be an aloof person and is completely only focused on his work. Kay doesn't entertain the idea of mistakes and half-hearted outcomes. He wants things done right and precise which will show great results that should impress everyone. One more thing he's known of is having a very high standard when it comes to choosing a secretary. The past secretaries that served the stoic billionaire all ended up leaving on their own accord after getting scolded once or in different scenarios. They couldn't keep up with Kay's intimidating aura aside from that. A complete workaholic. Nero understood that he's supposed to stop teasing his brother once he already pointed his gun at you hitting him with his own bullet, which is for Nero. It is his brother's legendary death glare. He got up from his seat to take his leave. I really do hope you could find a perfect secretary. Brother, but if only you could lower your standard where you might end up secretary-less. Nero left after saying that as he still have to go back to his university, leaving Kay in deep thought. Will he be able to find a perfect secretary? Someone who could withstand his perfectionist personality? Kikaza called the line of the HR department. Good morning, sir. Hire me a new secretary, someone who's just not effective at their work but could also be efficient. Uh, what about your secretary, Miss Jenny? I fired her. She spilled coffee on my documents. Well, okay, sir. We'll get to it. He was about to hang up the call when he immediately spoke again. One more thing. Please no more stupid and clumsy secretary. Then he finally ended the call after that request or more on. In order. Lowering his standard? What a joke. What Kay need is someone who would perfectly suit not just the job but his high standard as well, so nothing would get in the way of his work. Kikazu Liles is having a morning jog around his village's neighborhood. This is his daily routine before going to his company. He sat at one of the benches to catch his breath first. He woke up quite late today than his usual time habit of waking up so he doesn't have a spare time for breakfast. He just thought of this but an idea clicked on his head. He fished out his phone from his track suit's pocket and dialed a newly saved number on his contact list. Hello? Good morning, sir. An enthusiastic voice greeted him as soon as the person he called picked up. Get me breakfast at the restaurant near our company, hmm. Kay looked at the time in his phone. I'll be arriving for about 30 minutes. I also want to have a copy of my schedule for today. Prepare that. He ordered and hang up once he was done talking without waiting for the reply of his secretary. His secretary, on the other hand, looked at the screen of his phone. Unbelievable. He still have about an hour to spend for his sleep before having to prepare for his work time, but he was awoken by a phone call and was ordered to get breakfast by his boss. This tyrant, he cried out. It appears that the rumor of how strict and bossy the one-letter man aka their boss is appears to actually be a 100% hard truth. 
Hyde is the newly hired secretary and he's been working for him for no more than just a week but he could testify how annoying their CEO's personality is. Well he have no time to list down all his boss's bad habits and expose him. He need to get ready as per his boss's instruction. He will arrive at the office in 30 minutes and Hyde could only do nothing else but sigh as he made his way inside his bathroom to take a shower. Today is another battlefield for him. Under the supervision of the stoic boss, Kay walked to the office of the Department of Personnel Management where inside, his office is also located too. His company which is known as Times Corporation has more than 100 employees that were break down into different positions and offices. His company's building is standing tall at 15 floors and besides from his office inside the Department of Personnel Management. His own personal space at the same time a small penthouse is located at the top of the building. When Kikaza stepped inside the office to start his usual day at work, the giant aquarium that is placed near the entrance of the office caught his attention. A new fish has been added to the family, he exclaimed while watching the newcomer swim its way in that big aquarium. Kay's forehead creased the more he watched the new fish as its thin figure suddenly bloated. It kind of reminded him of something. Or maybe someone. Sir! Kay turned his gaze at his newly hired secretary who just came in. Where is my food? He asked because he wanted to know if the new secretary is of efficient work, if he came earlier than the boss did. Hyde smiled before answering. It's already prepped in the mini kitchen inside your office, sir. The notepad that your schedule was listed to is already in your desk, too. And Kay swear, that smile appearing in his secretary's face made a bright and sunshine aura surround him. Kay just nodded, glancing at the pufferfish in the water tank before walking away to enter his own office and to eat his breakfast prepared by the newly hired secretary. A small smile made its way to his lips as he remembers Hyde, his secretary who appears to be sensible and effective as an employee. He felt him followed through. His little secretary has a habit of puffing air into his mouth and going nom nom, making a chewing gesture but with an empty mouth. And Kay just thought that Pufferfish and his little secretary kind of resemble each other especially with his secretary's doe-like eyes. It's reminding Kay of Hyde. With that thought in mind, Kay gazed at Hyde who's obediently following behind him before averting his gaze in front of the direction he's walking to. Maybe this time Kay won't have to trouble himself of finding another secretary because Hyde seemed to perfectly suit his standard of how a secretary should be. And so the busy morning of reading and signing documents in the office started. Hyde has his own table inside the CEO's office. He sat there and gone through his own work. At exactly 9 o'clock in the morning, they had to attend an investor's meeting. Hyde has prepared everything they needed beforehand. He's also chosen a fancy restaurant to have the meeting over a late breakfast in which Mr. Grayson, the investor who owns S Trading Company, personally requested from them. This person is quite picky to his affiliates. It took me a month before I could convince him to have this meeting so make sure everything goes well, without any single mistake, Secretary Hyde. I hope we're clear. Kay warned firmly while putting on his seatbelt. His secretary will drive the car for him. Affirmative, sir. Hyde replied with a proud grin on his lips before taking off. He's planned every step, clear and concise, so what would go wrong? The alcohol that creates awkwardness. To congratulate our perfect secretary, here's a drink for him. Everyone, cheers. Hyde grimaced at the bitter taste of the alcohol. He's not a drinker and only had a taste of wine. This is the first time he's drinking beer. At their company dinner, they were able to close the deal and were now celebrating for it. At the steak restaurant their boss have personally chosen for them to spend at. You really helped big time to close the deal. We had been trying to reach out to S Trading Company since before, but they kept on rejecting us. Yet it only took you about a week and an hour of negotiating with them then. Voila. You got the contract signed. Hyde politely smiled, pouring his cup a drink. Too much compliment makes him shy. So to hide his reddened face, he drunk consecutive shots. However, doing that only stirred up their cheering for him. Also, his face became even redder. He's a lightweight and couldn't drink much. He's already drunk after his third shot. Oh, oh. Jano, an office mate who became a close friend of Hyde exclaimed when he saw his friend's head dropping down the table. He's down. Gene, another close office mate shook his head while checking up on Hyde who had his eyes closed. His whole face is flushed until the tip of his ears. He was about to tap him on his cheeks when Hyde suddenly opened his eyes. 
sprung up only to hit his head on the air purifier on top of their table. Hey, look out for him, Gene. He might fall because of his drunkenness. Jano warned as he made his way to them. Gene held him on his shoulder to make him sit back down, however. Hyde seemed to want to go somewhere. He resisted while mumbling something. Come. What? Gene couldn't hear him properly until Hyde pointed somewhere, even hitting Gene on his nose while doing so. Jano understood Hyde's gesture, so he kindly assisted him go to the comfort room. The stoic boss, who's alone at his own table, smirked at the scene he witnessed beforehand. He was entertained to know that the secretary, who seemed perfect and deemed suitable for his standard of how a secretary should be, also has his weakness. So the too good to be true, perfect and flawless secretary also has that clumsy side with him? K smirked through his beer glass. He find his secretary's weak and stupid state. Cute. What a little secretary. He immediately drunk his drink in one shot to shook that crazy thought that hide. His secretary is cute. Well, as long as he doesn't take that kind of attitude to work, Kay shrugged. <clears throat> Jano looked away when Hyde started throwing up in the bathroom sink. What a newbie! We haven't been halfway through, but he's already drunk like this. Jano commented and then came to open the faucet when he saw Hyde couldn't open it himself. You still haven't sober up? Jano asked while holding his friend's waist, supporting him who suddenly stopped on his track. Hmm. <clears throat> I could walk on my own. Hyde distanced himself away and almost stumbled down. Jano came to his rescue and held his arms, but Hyde was stubborn. He slapped his friend's hands and walked on ahead on his own. This perfect secretary on his work. Turns little and cute when he's drunk, haha. Jano commented while watching the guy make his way out on his own, still wobbly and sloppily on his feet. Hyde is dignified and with poise, but seeing him lost his composure surely tones down everyone's crazily high expectations of him. Sure they were happy a person who's up to the standard of their stoic boss has magically and finally shown up however they don't want their workaholic boss to get surrounded by a person akin to his personality. Someone cold only knows how to bury himself on his work because by then it would also torture them more as they had to put extra effort to level their boss's synergy on work. However, the new secretary is not just of efficient work but also possess an incredibly bright personality. That's why people in their company feels more comfortable and secured having him around. Jano followed behind after. Hyde was already out of his sight and might have been seated on his sit properly. Bye. Now. Or maybe he shouldn't have assumed that. He should have rather assisted him all the way because now. Jano caught Jean's sight mirroring the horror in everyone's eyes. Same with him as they stare at the drunk secretary who's not in his sane mind at the moment, comfortably sitting at their boss's laps. What should we do? An employee asked. Take him away. Jano stuttered. Although he suggested that, but none of them put his words into action. Everyone was stunned. Until. <gasps> Hyde clung his arms to the stoic boss's neck. Their boss, as expected, was just staring down at the new secretary. His face wore that bored expression. But why? Why won't their boss push him away? Then the unexpected happened. He... All the employees were mortified with what they witnessed at that very night. Kiss the stoic boss. Jano suddenly fainted. It'd be war in their workplace tomorrow. Everyone could feel it. Another secretary will have to step out of their stoic boss's office while crying. Again. After that night. Good morning, everyone. Hyde greeted enthusiastically while entering their office. However, the atmosphere turned awkward after that. The noisy surroundings suddenly quietened that the heavy breathing of everyone and the noise of the aircon was the only thing that could be heard. Hyde got confused with their reactions because usually they would greet him with the same enthusiasm and respond chaotically then proceeds to a conversation or gossiping. Before their office hours start, what might have happened? Or maybe because he was late this time? And their boss is fuming mad? They all know how strict the CEO is. And maybe he's up for a heavy meal which is their boss's complaints and may be He'll get the taste of the stoic boss's temper early in the morning? But, there's a reason Hyde was late and also, his boss knew of it. They'd gone to party last night because they were able to close a very important deal which actually was the hardest he had encountered so far as well. They all enjoyed last night, at least that's what he remembered. Upon recalling somehow the only thing he's now became aware of from the memories last night, he drowned himself with beer then everything after that became hazy in his memories although he knew last night was a blast that he really did enjoy it then after. He came home safe without knowing how, and slept soundly after that. Then when he woke up, his head was throbbing. It was his first time experiencing hangover. 
That's why he was late. He actually intended to take a day off, but remembered he had a lot of things to finish. Hyde didn't mind the awkward atmosphere. He shrugged it off and walked straight to Kay's office, knocking before entering as a common courtesy. He didn't find their boss sitting at his usual spot when he went in. Kay was not there and must have been to one of the meetings already. Well, what did Hyde expect? He's late. It seems that he's really going to be experiencing how the devil will lash out on him when they finally meet for the day. Let's start working now. Worry later about Kay's punishment. Hyde cheered himself. Whatever that will come then let it be. If he'll get fired then so be it. It was his fault for being late if ever he'll see the worst to it. He started focusing on his works. An hour passed when the door finally opened and entered the stoic man of their company which is particularly their lone boss. The stoic man glanced at Hyde. Their eyes met. Hyde smiled while the other guy turned away without smiling back at him. Hyde is used to it, because even if it's the most beautiful person who would smile at their boss, he'll only look at them then get back to his business. That's how cold he is which is the opposite of Hyde who is the definition of a warm person. He exudes bright energy that also lighten up other people's mood. That is why most people wonder how can Hyde withstand their boss who got an awfully bad personality and an equally bad temperament. Him who has the totally opposite personality is able to get along with their stoic boss somehow. Oblivious to Hyde, Kay was actually stealing glances at him since he sat down. Kay couldn't focus because of the other person's presence especially upon remembering the memory of last night's event. He felt awfully awkward and actually thought of firing his secretary for only a week but now that he sees him, Kay doesn't know where to start speaking and is losing his mind. Flashbacks of when the small guy's lips crashed into his own, when he was kissed kept playing on his mind giving him chills. This has never happened before, Kay whispered to himself, sighing and leaning back to his swivel chair while closing his eyes. He's feeling stressed. Suddenly he felt a warm hand touch his forehead and slightly massage it. A sudden spark made him jolt in his sit and stood up, causing his head to bump into something. It turns out that Hyde was leaning his head over to his face to see where he's massaging. Ouch! Hyde groaned from the pain, caressing his forehead that bumped with the other guy while Kay didn't know what to do, nervously leaning on his table, gathering support for his weakening knees. It's uncontrollably shaking. Don't ever touch me without my permission. Because of shock, Kay yelled at his secretary as he stormed out of his office. The small guy left behind was rather shocked than offended, because it seemed like his stoic boss lost his composure and it's the first time he witnessed this. What happened to him? Hyde thought. During lunchtime. Why does it feels like everyone in the office is acting weird, especially towards me? Before even finishing what Hyde wants to say, he suddenly got splashed on his face with flavored drinks that came out of Jano's mouth. One of his close office mate, Jano even coughed. Hey, I'm just asking. No need to shower me with your flavored water. Hyde wiped his face with a tissue, but even his polo shirt got damped. Sorry, but it's because your question was too shocking. What's so shocking about it? My question was nothing out of extraordinary but normal, he retorted, telling nothing but the truth. They were having lunch at their building's cafeteria when Hyde took notice of the unusual atmosphere, even with how Jano reacted. He's now getting suspicious. Because you got drunk last night. Can't you really remember what happened? Can't you recall anything at all? Jano, I'm just in front of you. No need to shout I'm not deaf. But, you know when you got drunk last night. Before Jano could finish his sentence Gene arrived, another close office mate of the two and sealed Jano's mouth using his palm then whispered something in his ear. You guys, I'm already getting suspicious with all of you. Hyde said, frustrated. Gene sat down and laughed awkwardly with Jano. Oh don't worry about it, it's just that last night all of us got drunk and most of us still got hangover that's why the atmosphere is kinda off ha ha. Gene reasoned out, still suspicious of how people are acting. Also with how their boss lost his composure a while ago. Wait, there's nothing new about that. K is always grumpy besides from being stoic. The only emotion he could make is his uncontrollable anger. Hyde shrugged everything off because like Jean said, maybe everyone's still experiencing hangover and tomorrow everything will might return back to normal. Hyde nodded to show he's agreeing. But Hyde, why is your polo shirt damped? Jean asked making Hyde look back at his current state. Ah. Jano splashed me with what he was drinking earlier, he answered. Put, boss might get mad at you for that. What he doesn't like the most is not maintaining a presentable and clean image. Hyde glanced again at himself and thought that Gene is right. Their boss might get mad if he sees his current state. 
He should probably go and change so he stood without finishing his plate. He doesn't really have any appetite cause of the hangover. He told the two that he will just change his polo shirt. While on his way, Hyde remembered he carried an extra shirt and headed straight to Kay's office, rummaging through his bag for it. When he saw the shirt, he the decided to change there. His boss is nowhere in sight yet. It seems he hasn't arrived and might be staying at the most famous and fancy restaurant having his lunch so he may be out longer than usual given the fact that it's still early before the start of their office work in the afternoon. He started unbuttoning his shirt, took it off as well as the white undershirt that also got damp. There were some stains that marked. Hyde will probably have to throw it later than bleach it. Throwing it out is the best solution than to bleach it for it's too much work. As he already wore the white polo but haven't buttoned it yet, he came to adjusting the sleeves in his right arm first to position it in his elbow because it's way too long and will only get in his way while riding when the door of the office suddenly opened and came the devil, the stoic boss with a crumpled face, and a bad aura surrounding him indicating he's in a foul mood. The gaze of the stoic man landed on the small guy changing in the office thinking he won't get caught but turned the different way around. And for the whole week that Hyde was with Kay, it was the first time he witnessed how the eyes of the most intimidating, terrifying and emotionless person in their office turned wide and mouth agape while looking at him. It seems that he'll be the next secretary to be added on the list of lasting only a week under the supervision of the stoic boss. You. Are. Fired. Don't you ever show your face in front of me again. Or I'll surely strangle you to death. But of course Kate didn't say that. Hyde thought of it as his boss's exact word for him. Should he be scared and beg on his knees now? Hyde is oblivious. During lunchtime, Kay is having lunch in one of the restaurants his family own. Mommy said you should go home tonight. Brother, she miss you and Ricky too. He miss you. You haven't been home for a while. Kay rolled his eyes because of what his younger brother said over the phone. He knows it's just part of their scheme to make him go home. He could hear their mother whispering what she wants to say in the background, ordering Nero to tell him those. He's living alone in a house he bought three months ago that is why he could understand that his mother is not yet used to the changes in their home. He was the first child after all and also his mother is so obsessed with him among the three of them. And it's not because he's the favorite child but because he's the most favorite one to tease and bug. Their mother loves to irritate him at his wit's end. Even Nero, his first younger brother loves teasing him too that's why now that Nero and his mother join forces. He knows too well they don't really miss him that much rather they just want him home to play their dumb pranks on him. And also, his house is only a 30 minutes drive away from their home. His mother always pays him a visit anyways. Mommy! Is that Kay? A cute voice appeared in the background and that lifted up Kay's mood a bit. Let me talk to Ricky, Nero. You always just want to talk and play with him. When it comes to me you don't want and even brush me off. Nero said. Kay could imagine Nero's pouty face but Kay just skidded away. Because he's cute while you're a troublemaker. I know you skipped your last class today to troll around with Aaron and other naughty kid. I swear I'll be the one bringing you to detention once this happens again. Nero just scowled and handed over the phone to their youngest brother, Ricky Lyles. Nero knew he can't put up a fight once Kay mentioned about his school affairs because everything his brother said was the truth. Kay then heard Nero's whining. Probably their mother started pinching Nero's ear once again. Typical action of their mother to his younger brother's naughty ways. Well. Their mother doesn't want anyone who skipped their class, that's why he know his troublemaker of a brother will have to endure their mother's lecturing that later on would turn to non-stop nagging. Kay sipped on his coffee and started reading some proposal while listening to Ricky's cute narration of how his class went today. Kay can't help but smile because of this. He may be known as a stoic and stern person but when it comes to his family, he's warm to them especially to their youngest who is really really cute and puts his feelings at ease. But then, brother. Hmm. <laughs> Kay stopped reading as his brows shot up, raising an action as he anticipates Ricky's next words. He somewhat could sense what Ricky is going to say will beat his foul mood to even worsen it. His youngest brother's enthusiastic tone dropped to a lonely one, poking his interest. Yonai stole one of my Pokemon balls and broke it when I was trying to get it back. He said I'm too old to bring toys at school. Brother, am I really too old to do that? His innocent and naive younger brother said in an awfully sad voice. Kay started to feel angry. Being nine years old is not too old for toys and please, no one should break the innocence of a child. Calming himself, Kay replied in between gritted teeth. You can do anything you want as long as you are not hurting anyone Ricky. And no you are not too old to bring toys at school because I know you only play with it on your free time so please, don't think that way and that young? I'll deal with him myself. Is that so, 
brother? Okay, now I'm not sad. I felt sad earlier because aside from my broken toy, Yong and his other friends told me I'm too old to play with toys and instead should go with them to the internet cafe, but I refused so he broke my toy. And that's it. That is the limit of Kay's patience. Okay, Ricky. Just ignore them once that happens again, but I am making sure it won't happen a second time around. Go and have some snacks with Nero and Mommy now. I gotta get back to my work. See you later. Tell Mom I'll go home for tonight. Love you, brother. Bye bye. Once the phone call ended, Kay messaged one of his friends who works at Ricky's elementary school and let him know what happened and what to do. He's suddenly fuming mad that's why he typed aggressively without considering how his words turn out. He don't know how it came out but as long as it is understandable then so be it. He can't call because this person wouldn't stop talking once he opens his mouth. That is why teaching is a perfectly suited job for him. He loves nagging too much to top it all. Kay's temper rises that's why he didn't finish eating. He lost his appetite and decided to leave and get back to his office to finish signing all the documents that needed his sign for approval. When he got inside his office though, he stood frozen on his spot and all his anger miraculously dispersed. Sorry boss, I thought you'd arrive later. I hope you won't mind here. His secretary greeted awkwardly. Hyde's smooth looking white skin is exposed to Kay's very eyes. The button of his polo was not yet done that is why Kay could clearly see his white, smooth, flat tummy and also his chest. Jeez, am I experiencing gay panic? Kay, whose jaw dropped at the sight, thought. It felt like the sexual tension suddenly built up inside the room. While Hyde is completely oblivious of how he's affecting the stoic boss who's sent to panicking at the moment because of Hyde's snow white skin, a memory of the kiss Kay remembered again, out of nowhere affected him more. Hyde slowly buttoned his polo from bottom button first to the second until the last one. And just how? How can a guy be so sexy while just slowly buttoning his clothes? And what in the world? Why does Kay feel so hot out of a sudden? Yep, Kay has just lost it. It seems that he's slowly deteriorating and malfunctioning because of his secretary. And for what reason? Of course, from seeing his secretary's exposed body and watching him change. Where in the world did he even get this secretary? And why is it affecting him? He fanned himself as he tried to look away, not inviting the hotness suddenly creeping into him. It's been two weeks, two whole damn weeks passed since Kay felt helplessly uncomfortable around Hyde, gladly though the tension he felt has finally lessened though it's slowly in process of disappearing. He thinks that he's finally in his normal state even if sometimes the drunken memory still flashes in his mind, he doesn't feel that awkward unlike before. Coffee, sir. Hyde offered coffee and placed it down Kay's table. The latter just nodded without looking back at him. The smaller guy got back to his own desk and continued working as well. Kay fought the urge but gave in to steal a glance at his secretary but suddenly bit his own lips when he saw him going nom nom while puffing an air to his cheeks. Kay think. He just blushed. No! He already feel normal around him after two weeks. It should be nothing. It's definitely nothing! Kay shook his head and got back to what he was doing then absentmindedly picked up the mug and sipped a taste well damn shit. He forgot it was hot and got his tongue burnt. The past two weeks felt like his stupid days and he doesn't like feeling that way but why? It keeps on happening only when he is around his bright secretary. Get sir. Hyde who saw what happened felt the pain in his own tongue and immediately came closer to Kay, then reached his boss's cheeks to pull him closer. The way Hyde placed his face close to Kay's without any hesitation suddenly made a flashback of that night came rushing down, appearing on Kay's mind. For countless times around, he remembered how soft his secretary's lips were, how tender it felt and how he felt that night. It was. Hyde tiptoed in blue air to Kay's open mouth, with the shortest distance he's ever had between him and the smaller guy. Just a flick and their lips are going to touch yet again. He didn't cow why though, but he felt excited. Utterly, because of that excitement he subconsciously pushed Hyde away causing him to almost fall down but Kay has fast reflexes so even before the secretary falls down, Kay had already encircled his arms around Hyde's small waist stopping him from falling. They were in that kind of position when the door opened and entered his dumbfounded brother, Nero with his friend, Aaron who was dragged to come with his friend in the middle of the break. Instead of taking his sweet time playing his favorite computer games, he had to come escort Nero to his brother's company. They were all shocked and because of that Kay let Hyde free of his hold causing him to fall flat on the ground. Though the impact is not that much compared to what would have happened if he fell from the height earlier, Kay still heard Hyde groan out from pain but then stood and gained his composure quickly. 
he excused himself to go back to his desk. K followed him with his gaze. While Nero secretly watched his brother's reaction because ever since that one night few weeks ago that his brother went home, he can sense something off with K, especially that he seems to be getting distracted whenever his little secretary is around or with just the thought of him alone. His brother starts to act like he's never seen him act before. It's the first time he's seen him act stupid. Nero wanted to brush the thought away but after what he had seen today, he won't let it pass so he immediately sat down on the chair in front of his brother's table, wiggled his brows and gave small glances towards his brother's secretary's way. What is up? With you and your little secretary, brother? And he swear when God suddenly thought of showering the world of his miracle this past weeks, his brother must have showered under. He just saw his cold and perfectionist brother. Did you just blush? Hallelujah! Spark. Shut up or I'll kick you down from the window of this floor to the ground. Nero gulped his own saliva because of the seriousness that came with Kay's voice along with his threatening glare. He had no choice but to gesture like he's zipping his mouth shut. Although, he did close his mouth. Nero couldn't help but tease his brother still, upon wriggling his eyebrows along with a grin on his lips, protruding on the idea that something must be up with his brother and his secretary. Kay who's still blushing caught his brother's teasing gaze. He picked up his high-tech pen and threw it straight at his face but since Nero was used to this kinds of things, he dodged it easily. Aaron who was standing silently by the side didn't expect it coming making him to be the one who was hit in the arms with the pen. Kay raised an eyebrow at his brother's friend then he nodded, a way for a man like him to apologize, then turned his attention back to his brother who came trespassing in his office without any notice. What do you need, troublemaker? Kay said finally forgetting about what just happened. His attention is now focused on the documents he have to review while having conversation with Nero. Nero scowled upon hearing the nickname his brother have for him. Next week is Ricky's 10th birthday and mom said I have to take you with me to the tailor shop to have our suits custom made. The university boy blurted out his intention. He's on an errand for his mother who's busy handling other things for the party. While reading a project proposal from Dwayne Sun Designs, Kay answered without taking his eyes away from the portfolio. She could have messaged me about it. Why bother sending you out? Their mother is as fussy as one can be. Kay knew how hands-on she is when it comes to parties especially if it's about the birthdays of the three children of Isle's family. His mother is definitely another definition of a perfectionist. Nero who made himself comfortable, sitting on the couch's reclining answered. That's what I also want to know but you know how mom is. Kay, aside from that, she wanted me to rely to you that right at this instant. We need to get there and time's running out. She only gave me about an hour or so to convince you. He explained, suddenly getting chills upon remembering Kaiser's words. He tried shooting puppy eyes at his brother but to no avail because the stoic boss wouldn't even bother throwing a glance on his way. Just go now. I have a bunch of work piled up on my counter. Can't you see? Kay stated the obvious for his brother to see and make a testament to their mother, who won't leave him alone without showing any proof if he failed to oblige with her order. Nero could already see where it will end up with, seeing how his brother won't even budge. Nero just thought of quite a brilliant idea. He scanned the people at the room and instantly, his gaze fell on Hyde who, just like his brother, buried on a pile of works as well. He pouted. While Hyde felt a cold air gushing around him, he slowly lifted his gaze to the brother's side making him locked eyes with the younger Isles. His face contorted in confusion but gave a small smile as he got back to his work. Nero who was about to stand up and walk towards his brother's secretary was stopped on his track when Kay called his name. He turned around to look at his brother. His eyes were warning him, seemingly knowing what he had on mind upon approaching the secretary. The two brothers stared each other. Both their gazes are challenging. The cold office because of the air conditioning turned colder as tension started to build up and it only died down when Kay took his eyes away from his brother and turned it towards Hyde's direction. Sighing as he speak, like he was getting dragged out of his own will, Kay told Hyde who immediately shot up his gaze to look at and listen to him. If there are urgent calls from anyone, ring me up. I will head out for a bit and come back once it's done, he said as he got up from his seat. Hyde who understood what he meant, immediately walked to Kay's side picking up the coat of Kay that was hung on the built-in cabinet inside the office, handing and assisting his boss with the coat to his body. Hyde closed their gap. The sudden proximity emitted a bolt of spark to run through Kay's whole system, making him to jolt away distancing himself from his secretary who threw him an odd look, questioning his reaction. Kay glared at him. How dare Hyde act innocent while he's suffering alone? Was that spark all for him to feel? Let's go Nero. 
Kay uttered firmly and headed out ahead of the university boys. Nero smiled apologetically at Hyde who returned the gesture in a respectful manner. Kay's brother then tapped his friend on his shoulder and went on their way, leaving Hyde alone in the spacious room. Between his calm composure and dignified state, the secretary who received a glare from his boss without any known reason for, a flustered reaction is hidden deep within his demure ways. Hyde felt an unfamiliar force surging in his body when his own skin came in contact with his boss. Without any idea what's going on, he didn't drag it further on, brushed it aside and got back to the pile of works he had on his desk. Mom, I have far more important things to handle at my company. I have no time for Thid. Any suit that would fit me will be fine. I don't need new ones tailored for me. Kay made it firm with his suggestion, but his mother who's fixated on skimming through the pages of the portfolio that contains the designs for the suits didn't even spare him a single glance. Nero, on the other hand, is enjoying himself trying on different men's clothing around the store, his friend following him behind like his tail. Kay's brows nodded in annoyance. My proportions are already jotted down. I'll be going. He informed his mother who immediately glanced at him, giving him a white eye upon hearing the word leaving. No, young man. Sit still over there. What else do you need me here for? Time is running and for Kay, it should be spent at his work. You see, although you're done on that part, there are some things I need your help with. I want you to go with me to the birthday planner's office. Be good. Kaisa motioned for her son to stay but Kay didn't heed his mother instead he stood up and prepared to be on his way. Meeting such as needing to have him go with her means something else. It's better to leave as early as possible to avoid it. By that, Kay means his mother setting him up for a blind date. On normal circumstances, they could get suits from the mall his father owns or make the tailor go on their home, paying a visit at their place. But now, it was already suspicious that he had to leave his desk and saunter his way to the shop. Then another one is accompanying his mother to the birthday planner's office which is in no way related to him. He needed to escape before getting tied down into a room without any door, means he will have no choice but to get overpowered by Kaiza. Kay looked at Kaiza with a straight face. I don't want to argue with you, Mom. I'll be on my way. See you at home the next time. He said in a fast manner and gave his mother a kiss on her cheek before bolting away in a flash. His bold steps with the intention to get away and escape made a loud sound as it came in contact with the tile floor. Kay managed to get away, while Kaiza was astounded. You! You little piece of my own flesh! Kaiza was left, flustered and in disbelief. She swear Kay is her own son but his lack in interest when it comes to dating just won't make sense. Because when Kaiza was younger and around Kay's age, she dated and fooled around too much whereas Kay, someone who's more than successful and stable, young and at his prime won't even look at any woman's way. Could it be? Kaiza thought of quite a ridiculous idea and then shook it away after. No way. It can't be that her first son swings the other way, is he? Isles. Meet me out front. Bring with you my customized suit. I'm near the hotel. Man Leon Studios are rejecting our project proposal, sir. They are uptight regarding the matter which the director of the company Director Santos, who insists that Lance Isles's name should be involved in terms of the agreement. Kay! Mom's fuming mad! You're late! Kikazu Lee Isles massaged his temple as he closed his phone and tossed it around, not giving any slight care wherever it ended up crashing. He just read the message of his brother, Nero whom he ordered to bring the suit he's supposed to wear to his youngest brother's birthday party. Kay almost forgot about this prior engagement because of the sudden call from one of their latest project's investor, Mr. Liu who's skeptical about the location where the new mall was to be constructed. In addition to the burden from different problems occurring, the project proposal to bid for the particular land at Zone Town where the old festival road which night markets are held are facing a small conflict, in which it is owned by the hard-headed and stubborn director Santos who's refusing their proposition due to trivial pursuit involvement of other party. Kay hissed in annoyance. They sure are difficult to deal with, ha. Huh? And, Lance Isles they say? Director Santos seemed to be pushing his luck with me, does he think I'm a pushover? Hyde pulled the car right away to the parking area in front of the hotel his boss is headed to. He glanced at Kay's way using the rearview mirror of the car. His boss's handsome face and clenching jaw appeared in the reflection. Although Kay is annoyed, his handsomeness could never become less. But actually, his features seem to be much more accentuated. His thick eyebrows furrowed together makes him look intimidating. 
His high nose bridge suits his full lips that turns thinner when he's deep into thinking. He's much sexier especially when he's focused or like at the moment. Irritable. It seems that Director Santos ate his shame for lunch, sir. Rather, it's been the only choice of food in his menu. Please take pity on the director. Hyde wanted to crack a joke to lighten up Kay's mood, but his sentence came out to be quite an insult in his own ears. He had to gulp down a big chunk of his almost dried saliva because of panic. Kay, who's loosening his tie to remove his outer clothes and readily change into the prepped suit that Nero will be bringing, shot up a glance at his secretary who's actually looking at him through the rearview mirror. His gaze wavering and Kay couldn't help his upper lips to lift upward, giving a side smirk at Hyde's remark. Hyde may appear the same as him. Serious and uptight especially when it comes to work but seeing his secretary blush. On his own words while trying to soothe his mood suddenly eased away Kay's restlessness. He might not be showing the best emotion aside from irritation, anger or his signature poker face. But at that moment, his smirk is the evidence that Secretary Hyde was able to put a small yet genuine smile to his face. Seeing as Director Santos has no reservations especially with his bad intention on the front line, we might have to use alternative ways. He's trying to hold us by our necks because he knew we're the ones in need, even trying to pull some strings through us. Well, sorry to say, his luck could be wavering the next time we meet. Hyde looked away while clearing his throat. Kay just took off the last bit of fabric and changed into a set of new shirt. Hyde caught quite a glimpse of what those clothes are usually hugging inside. He couldn't help but shook away some unwanted and perverted thoughts off his mind. What do you plan on doing, sir? Alas, what can I help you with? Secretary Hyde tried to divert his attention upon watching different cars pass by outside. The night is young but the day was not enough for Hyde's weekend pleasure. Their meeting was uncalled for. Saturday is supposed to be an off day for every employee of Times Corporation yet for a secretary's job which is to assist the boss. He's as busy as the boss is, being the responsible secretary he is. Hyde spent his precious Saturday clearing up and handling matters of the company. He has no complaints though, well aside from not being able to spend the day for himself. Finished with changing into a different shirt, Kay picked up his phone that he found scattered on the floor of the car. Busier than him, the flicker of the screen showed how wanted he is at the party. Nero is rushing him. Sighing as he speak, with the reply to his secretary's question in his mind. Enjoy your weekend, Secretary Hyde. Leave the matter to me. Director Santos wants to play some games so I'll give him what he wants. Kay said with firm tone, his intimidating aura gushing with the air that surrounds him, his stoic expression showing quite a stern warning, screaming danger for whoever it is intended to. As he steps down the car, people in the vicinity automatically turn their heads to his direction although Kay is into his blue shirt and black slacks. His confidence and handsome features are undeniably catching attention even with the passers-by. Hyde also walked out from the car, locking the doors securely and followed around his boss's back who suddenly turned to look at him, taken aback from the gesture. Hyde almost let out a gasp of shock but was able to hold it in. You could go home. There's no need for you to see me inside. Most of the time, Kay only speaks matters of works. Business-related things are the only words that leaves his mouth yet for the first time. Hyde somehow, or maybe it was just his assuming mind, sensed care from his boss's stern words. Hyde was left, dumbstruck, and Kay walked inside to attend the party, worried that Nero might flip to him for arriving late and making him wait. This is why I want to become an idol instead of a businessman. Your time is not in your own hands. My God, Kay! The party's almost over and you're just arriving now! The overreaction of Nero only earned him a scowl from his brother who's walking side by side with him. His proud stance and overbearing aura of dominance sets the eyes of everybody at their direction, particularly at his brother, a CEO of his own company, a billionaire at a young age with his own capability and ability, handsome, gorgeous, and utterly the definition of perfection. Kikazuli Isles in terms of jewelry, he's the most exquisite and expensive one among the rest, like the main dish on a menu. Everyone was delighted upon his arrival, especially Kaiza Melanie, a jeweler who has more than a hundred stores around the country and quite a few outside. She's the only daughter of a rich tycoon as well, and of course, the mother of the three brothers. As soon as Kay and Nero stepped inside the party hall, murmurs resounded in the whole place. The full attention of the guests are turned to them, specifically to Kay whose gaze are bored and nonchalantly showing disinterest yet his charming and elegant movement diverted their attention to. Who's that? He's handsome. Kikazu Lee Isles, don't you know him? He's the first son of Kaiza, the enigmatic billionaire, who owns Times Corporation. I was told he's handsome, but I didn't know he's this gorgeous. 
Look at him stride his way, walking like a prince. He's so tall. I wonder if he's single. What could be his type? Oh, how I wish to hook up with him if I can't be his wife. Isn't he like a billionaire on his own? I heard he didn't get even a single help nor penny from his parents. There were rumors he's a workaholic and a nitpicky boss. My friend was an employee before at his company and they said he have an incredulously high standard when it comes to a secretary. What's so good about him? He's money starved. But still, no one can deny he's perfect. Kaiza was beyond proud seeing the admiration in the eyes of her guests tonight. Besides from admiration, the Indian jealousy makes Kaiza's shoulder unbearable of the weight she carries. K is the most sought after bachelor especially from the single ladies which makes Kaiza wonder why her amiable and affluent first son is dodging girls like a bullet. Kaiza had never seen Kay dating ever since he graduated from university. Now's the chance for Kaiza to make her move and do her son a favor, to find a suitable girl for him. There were more than a hundred girls invited tonight and luckily for Mrs. Rona Smith, a friend of Kaiza, Kaiza turned to her then to her daughter. The tiredness from work couldn't hide how dazzling Kay is. The young CEO is earnestly catching attention and Mrs. Rona Smith's daughter is no exception from the crowd. The mother and daughter walked hand in hand as they approached the man. This is my daughter, Dina. She's a plastic surgeon at the North and was always hailed the most excellent one in her field. Kaiza, if your son and my daughter will be together, they surely will make an incredible pair. Oh, I agree with you Mrs. Smith. Look at them only touching shoulders and seeing them stand next to each other. I already feel they're oozing chemistry. Perfect. Business smile. With the upper lips perturbed upwards, without any teeth showing around and the lower lips churned a little to make it look nice, Kay is showing his best smile. Not genuine, not fake but perfect to please other people and get on their good side. Kay's principle is to win over anyone that are inclined in business and could possibly become his affiliate, to build connection and grow his source of richness and that will be achieved if he will be able to hold out more. The party is still going on. Dina, the daughter that Mrs. Rona Smith brought with her. Mrs. Rona Smith is someone who owns a broker company that Kay could possibly induce the woman into investing a large sum into an ongoing project in his company. She is a big catch that he will definitely not miss. So even without the best intentions on the line, Kay smiled with affection at Dina, the said plastic surgeon. There's nothing for him to lose. Scratch that. He has everything to gain by just putting on his facade. The girl who seemed to be intimidated with him a little while earlier appeared to be smitten the moment he turned to her to smile. No sweat. It's easier than he expected. A few more fake smile and sugar-coated words, with praises intended for something else. Then it's finally settled down for a while as the young kids started to fill the place. It's a party for the young ones anyways, but somehow, it became a field with prying gaze and ulterior motives. After a while, Kay who was dead tired of the suffocating and stuffy vibe inside the party hall walked outside to breathe in fresh air. It's funny. They almost worship him like a god, but I bet my life on the line without Lance Isles' help. That prude boy will be nothing but a nameless garbage. He act almighty and high. What guts he have? In a crowd that voices various praises, insults are nothing new rather old, especially the comparisons people make. Lance Isles. How can that name not be spoken about when its name alone bear a weight of authority? Lance. Dad's on a business trip for a while. Miss him? Nero walked outside to check on his brother. Kay raised his head looking at Nero with his tired eyes. Not a least bit. How long is he gonna stay there? Probably around a week or so. He's gone for about four days now. That old geezer really. He's your dad, Kay. I know. Kay ruffled his brother's hair. The other guy packed Kay's hand away, irritated that his perfectly styled hair was messed up. He's also your dad, Nero. Our dad. Beats me. You never call him dad. Kay shrugged, remembering the deal he had with his father and the reason why he stopped calling him dad for not too long ago. Tell Ricky I'll see him tomorrow. As for now, I'm leaving. Hold mom down for me. Soothe her once she gets mad. Good luck. Hey! Before Nero could stop his brother, Kay has already gone away. Unguarded. The night is peaceful with the help of the city lights shining majestically throughout the road. Kikazu successfully escaped from the party, driving his car around the city without a certain place to go to. His mind's wandering around, lost in thoughts, 
his mind forming plans of how he's gonna get back at the stubborn director Santos. The new project was already delayed and cannot be stalled for far too long. They will be losing a huge amount and due to a setback once the negotiation fails. As he drove his car in a steady speed in the middle of the highway, a figure of a person suddenly cut in front, trying to cross the road, making him halt in place, his car making a screeching sound as it was too sudden for what he did. Damn it! He couldn't help but curse and glanced in front, his eyes finding the figure who's a culprit for startling him. But found none. Kay was rather flustered seeing no one standing there. He was sure someone did cut in his way. Petrified that maybe he was imagining things, Kay decided to get down from his car and check what really happened, as if to prove himself he was not seeing things. When he finally got off and saw a person was in the midst of trying to stand on his feet, he breathed a sigh of relief, thanking the heavens that it was a real person but immediately it dawned on him that he almost hit the careless man crossing the road. If his reflexes wasn't fast, Kay might have ended up running over someone. As if a bucket of cold water was accidentally poured on him, Kay snapped then angrily stomped his feet while he strode towards the man that finally stood up. When Kay got closer and closer, the man turned his face in Kay's way and with the help of the street lights that shone over the man's face, he is able to recognize the familiarity of the person. Secretary Hyde? Kay's utterance to the name was conscious, because he was not so sure if it really is his perfect secretary. In Kay's eyes, Hyde is the prim and proper secretary he's always been seeking for. Well, not for the moment. Hey. He greeted, stammering. Hyde is not his usual composed self, who bear dignity and pride. Right now, what the stoic boss sees is another side of his deemed perfect secretary. Just like that night. Secretary Hyde's eyes were droopy, like it was lost in space. He couldn't look ahead straight. His stance is also wobbly, staggering while he stand. K inched closer and reached for Hyde's waist to hold his secretary, trying to help him stand fine. As soon as he got close to him, the stoic boss could smell the booze emanating from Hyde. It was rather strong and it tickles his nose. When their skins touched, it was another series of sparks fly, the same as the one he felt last time in the office but right now, he could not back away or even resist. He fought the urge to push away Hyde who's innocently. You drank? He asked. K knew it was dumb to question the obvious, but what he was doubting about is how could a known lightweight, who has the lowest alcohol tolerance drunk to even reach this kind of drunken shape. Hyde was almost hit earlier. Had it not be K who was able to break in time, Hyde would have gotten himself in trouble. Looking at how Hyde can not even open his eyes normally, it was squinting while he's trying to look at the other man. K was left no choice but to bring Hyde to his car. Although he can't believe himself. Assisting in his own accord his drunk secretary. But his conscience will not let him sleep soundly if he leave Hyde alone in the cold road. Kay started walking. Uh. Hyde is making faint groan sounds until they were able to settle inside Kay's car. He casually tossed Hyde in the passenger seat, making the smaller guy almost stumbling aside. This nutcase. Kay panted for a while. He swiftly helped Hyde with a seatbelt while the secretary who's drunk and wandering about in the middle of the night has fallen deep into slumber in his comfortable seat. After successfully buckling up, Kay stared fiercely at Hyde then he lifted a finger flicking on the smaller guy's forehead. I'll charge you for this mess, Secretary Hyde. When he finally got things done, Kay stepped in his gas and drove his car. While driving, he couldn't help but steal glances at his secretary, worried that he might be uncomfortable or if along the bumps in the road, his head will be hit somewhere. Kikazu is heading to his house in Highlands Villa. He does not have a slight idea where is his secretary's place. For the record, he's too lazy to go different ways so he came to conclusion that he'll just have to take Hyde to his home. He's not a heartless man much as they make him seem to be. At the slightest, he cares. Especially, it's his secretary. Good evening, Mr. Isles. The security guard manning the post at the front gate greeted back at Kay who slid down his car window to acknowledge the officer. He gave another nod before closing the car window and going ahead. Highlands Villa is a neighborhood with the safest and tight security. It's a neighborhood full of young billionaires. Everyone are bachelors and are living away from the limelight. Most of the ones living at Highlands are high-profile noblemen, those who are wanting some peaceful living but luxurious and extravagant lifestyle still. The gates were automatically opened the moment Kay's car drove inside his own mansion. He parked at his open garage and went down. He were about to head inside his home but remembered the baggage he carried home. Wake up! Kay tapped gently on Hyde's cheeks. He is still asleep. Hey! Kay tapped harder, 
putting more pressure on his hands, but got no response from Hyde. Instead, he clung onto his arms. Hyde is warm. That's one thing Kane noticed, and his secretary's breath fanning over his skin on his arms is sending tingles to him. Accidentally, his eyes wandered falling on Hyde's lips. They were pink and inviting. Amidst the dark it seemed bright and shining in his eyes. Kay's head felt like there was a ringing. At the same time Hyde opened his eyes. Shivers run down Kay's spine, snapping him out of what could be considered for the stoic man. Extraordinary. Boss? Hyde, who sobered somehow, stared at the image of his own boss in front of him. Even in my dreams, you're appearing? Do you like torturing me so bad? Or so Kay thought. It appears that Hyde might be into some kind of illusion or a dream like he uttered. But, am I really appearing in your dreams? Kay's lips moved, subconsciously. He showed an amused grin while he watched his secretary's antics. Then what? Are you real? Hyde made an annoyed expression, his lips pouting then he lifted his fingers. The other man's eyes followed his secretary's fingers as he pointed it to him, slowly approaching his nose. Hyde ceased his moves. He left his pointing finger lingering on Kay's nose while the latter remained watching, finding what's happening a bit amusing. Suddenly, Hyde started making circular motion, subtly caressing the other's pointed nose. You're not for real! You're a clone! Secretary Hyde, who's still under the spell of alcohol, blurted, retracting his finger to his side, his face showing disappointment. My boss! Hates physical contact! And a shattering sentence left his mouth as the secretary passed out. Kay was fast enough to catch and hold him in his arms. However, he remained still, motionless. Hyde's words resonating in his ears, like a deafening noise. It's causing a disturbance into his mind, and a piercing pain in his heart. But, he's oblivious to the reason. Afterwards, he woke up from trance and carried Hyde in his arms to get inside his house. The lights flicked in an instant. He moved towards the guest room he didn't know would be put to use. He opened the door and laid the sleeping secretary in the bed, covering him with the quilt then Kay turned around ready to leave. Yet as he took one step ahead, he retracted, taking two steps back, turning then pulling the quilt off of Hyde's body. The stoic man feel conflicted, whether to change Hyde into a set of pajama or to leave him be. Frustrating. In the end, Kay chose to strip Hyde, starting from his blazer. Kay took it off then next is his polo shirt that had buttons. He slowly unbuttoned him, unconsciously. His hands were shaking but Kay didn't pay it any attention he focused on finishing to undo the shirt till the last button. When he's finally done, only then did his eyes wander through his secretary's body exposed to his very eyes. His throat suddenly felt dry. Kay's gaze went from Hyde's bare chest to his flat stomach. His skin is as white as snow and as smooth as that of a baby even without feeling it against his own. Kay's more than a hundred percent sure. Hyde's skin will feel softer in his palm. Next. His gaze shot upwards, falling in the most luscious part of Hyde's appearance. His sinful lips. A surge of flashback about the night where last time at their company dinner. His secretary got awfully drunk and did the unthinkable. Kissed him. Ever since that night, Kay cannot be honest but actually, he felt conscious towards Hyde to the point of pushing him away every time their body come in contact with each other. Even the slightest touch would remind him of that night. Kay thought he was over that. It was but a twist of fate after all. Yet at the very moment, while looking at Hyde who's defenseless, looking delicate and seductive, Kay's face moved unknowingly to him. His movements seemed to take an intent for something and as he grew closer and closer, he halted, his glare flaring as he stared at his secretary's lips. That same lips. It called him a clone and mumbled almost the truth, that he was avoiding physical contact not that he hated it but felt all strange about it, and now that same lips that touched his own before, Hyde's lips that kissed him while drunk before. Now, Kay had the urge to charge him for what he did before, to collect what Hyde stole from him. His first kiss. Hot then cold. For a man like Kikazu, dating is only a waste of time. His top priority is work and business alone. The last time he dated was when he was a sophomore in university. He courted the most popular beauty of Stanford University for more than five months, and when they finally became a couple they barely went past more than just holding hands. Their kinship was nothing more than that and then, before he knew it, they broke up. Kay turned off the lights in the guest room after changing Hyde into a set of pajama that was always well kept inside the cabinet intended for the guests to use. He then charged to his own room and jumped straight to his shower, taking a very cold one at that. 
I must be insane, Kay muttered to himself as the cold water fell into his skin, making him shiver as if he'll freeze to death nonetheless. It woke him up, snapping him out of his own trance. Earlier, what was that? What was he about to do? To his secretary? A guy? Surely, he's gone crazy. And every little crazy thing started because of that kiss, when his secretary was drunk. When he finished showering, he put on his robe and dried his hair with the blow dryer, trying to get the thought out of his head. Finally, he tucked himself to the bed, closing his tired eyes to get some good night's sleep. Several minutes later, his eyes shut open while his mind is busy formulating different excuses upon the issue of how he gets utterly attracted to his secretary's snow-white smooth skin and his rosy pink plump lips. Ah, uh, shit. In the end, Kay tossed and turned in his bed, the tiredness he was feeling dispersed as different unrelated thoughts besides his work has taken over until he fell asleep, hides the one and only certain main character of his dreams. M-O-R-N-I-N-G came. The busy honking of different cars passing by the road and the heavy steps of his neighbors are what Hyde usually wakes up to. However, that is not the case this late morning. Hyde woke up with a throbbing head. As soon as he opened his eyes, an unfamiliar ceiling came into his view. He looked around, trying to scrutinize the place but came into a conclusion that he's not in his own room. Where am I? Hyde could barely remember what happened or how he ended up in a stranger's bed. All that he could recall is that, last night, he drank some beer and... And? His memory stopped there. Is that all? Did I pass out after that? How come he cannot remember what happened next? Ah! My head hurts! He stood up but fell back down to the bed. The piercing pain in his throbbing head makes him unable to think straight, and because of thinking too hard trying to recollect what happened last night, it hurted more badly. Hyde laid back down, curling up in position, waiting for the pain to subside. Somehow, he's known how to deal with a hangover as he encountered one before. He remembered how he came home drunk after that dinner gathering they had then he woke up in days the day after. His head was ringing because of having a hangover. The same thing as what's happening now was what happened before. Now that he's awake, he'll only have to wait for the pain to lessen and be much more tolerable. While Hyde lie awake in bed, Kay, who have a cup of coffee in his hands, walked inside the guest room to check on his secretary. When he opened the door, he find him lying still but he noticed his left hand caressing his own forehead as if massaging it. You're awake? He blurted out, walking closer next to the bed and peeking over at Hyde's face, checking if he's really awake. Sir? That voice? It cannot be. Hyde recognized the voice in a split second he heard it much to his own surprise. It's not, right? He opened his eyes and came locking gaze with Kikazu, his stoic boss, who doesn't care about the world and only minds his own business, literally. Secretary Hyde jumped right out of the bed. He's startled to see his boss straight after the realization that he's in someone else's home. Turns out, he's in his boss's home. You, you're the one. Who brought me here, sir? Yeah, Kay answered, like it's a matter of fact, then walked over to the table right next to the bed and leaned on it, bringing his cup of coffee to his lips, taking a sip. He watched Hyde's adorable reactions with an amused grin under the cup of his coffee. I found a cat going astray in the middle of the road. It was pitiful, so I brought it home, he said and placed down his mug on the table. What does his boss mean by that? So, he's a pitiful cat K took pity on and brought home? For what? Somehow, knowing that it's his boss's own home that he crashed into for the night made his head hurt more. Everything's too much for Hyde to take in. The information he had today is hard to digest and even his head is not making it easier for him to comprehend the situation. His vision suddenly became hazy. He glanced at K but blinked his eyes when all he sees are blurred lines and then he lost control, staggering all of a sudden, tripping on his own feet. Careful. Kay's low, deep sound uttering that word was like a certain music in Hyde's ears, the kind of song he listens to and it just make him feel good. As Kay is watching Hyde by the side, he took notice how he moved unsteadily then he was right. Hyde is dizzy and almost fell. Gladly he was on time and caught him. He assisted Hyde to sit on the bed. Rest until you regain your energy, he told his surprisingly childlike secretary, needing all the care and attention. You're quite the high maintenance. Ha! Kay said not within earshot. Hyde had his eyes closed. There's not only ringing in his head head, but now, it's spinning as well. Even with his eyes close, he's as dizzy as if he just got off of a roller coaster ride. 
Uh, I'm never drinking till I drop again. Kay heard what Hyde said, and deep inside him, he's laughing in a boisterous way. He cleared his throat and then spoke. What made you drink anyway? I never knew you were the type who gets drunk then passed out cold in the street and in the first place. I thought you don't drink, but I was wrong, Secretary Hyde. Kay displayed an arrogant expression, showing the disappointment in his eyes. Hyde quickly came up with an excuse. He almost forgot, but Kikazu is known to have bad temper and dislikes. Imperfect people. Yet. Hyde looked at himself, scanning how he's been. Kay took him in and cared for him enough to even change him into a pajama. Then now, he's not yelling nor had he told him to leave right after he woke up. Hyde looked at Kay with pouty lips, appealing to him so as to let him off the hook for once, not lay him off of work. The other guy looked at Hyde's gesture. He was supposed to be waiting for an answer to his question not be swayed by such cute action. In the end, Kay chose not to dig any further. It's his secretary's private life anyways. I had your clothes in the dryer. It must be fine by now. You can take a shower over that room there, he said, pointing at the room by the side, not so far away from the bed. I'll get your clothes first. Kay said in a quick manner, almost chewing his own words before walking out in a flash. Hyde is left alone in the room, confused about his boss's reaction. I definitely need a cold shower, he said. Finally feeling as if he's rejuvenated, he headed to the shower room. Here, eat your breakfast. Kay showed him all the food in the table. There were scrambled eggs, bacon, bread even fruits like strawberry and then milk that are nicely prepared but all in one proportions. Hyde raised a curious eyebrow at Kay. He was about to ask if Kay had eaten but the latter spoke faster before he could. Also, here's a drink to cure your hangover. Drink it before you eat. He placed a small bottle of what seemed to be the hangover drink in front of him. Somehow, seeing a different side to their known stoic boss is a refreshing sight. Most people knew Kay as an expressionless wealthy, strict and workaholic billionaire boss. He's regarded as someone who doesn't care for other things other than his business. What other people don't know is that Kay has that soft and cute side to him as well. Maybe because it is buried deep down but the way he cares touches something in Hyatt's heart. Kay feels warm at the very moment. Kay got carried away because of some urge that reels him in with wanting to take care of Hyde. He couldn't help it especially after admitting to himself he's attracted to his secretary's charm. He gulped when he raised his head, they came eye to eye, snapping him of his reverie. Then, he proceeded to turn around it all played out in slow motion for Hyde, walking towards what seemed to be an office, but before he leave the room, Kay uttered something. Leave after that. One minute he's nice then the next, is something Hyde couldn't guess. Gala Night 1, The Man So, you slept in the boss's house, yesterday? Yeah. In the same bed? Guest room. But you slept with him. She. Inside the pantry room of the production department office, three employees are seated in a high stool chair in front of a round table. Secretary Hyde and production manager Jano is seated close next to each other, while marketing supervisor Gene is across them happily munching on his cream bun enjoying the full cream filling as he chew on the bread. Hyde put his pointing finger in his mouth, gesturing for Jano to not be too loud. He even looked around to check if there were other people in the pantry room, but gladly, there were no other besides from the three of them. Don't phrase it like that. It sounds weird, Hyde said, yelling in a whisper. Jano shrugged while Jean, who's eating cream bun and seated on the chair in front of them, were laughing at their conversation. But you still slept at his house. Jano kept going. Yeah, in the guest room. He took me in because he found me drunk and wasted in the middle of the road. Oh, I didn't know our boss has that soft side, damn. Because of what Jano said, Hyde recalled how their infamous stoic boss took care of him. Early in a Monday morning, Hyde dragged his two closest friends to the pantry room to gossip get off his chest. What happened last yesterday as that's what he only remembered, forgetting what happened the night before. When he woke up, Kay showed up and then when he almost fell, Kay was able to catch him holding him with his brusque arms. Now that Hyde looked back at the scenes yesterday in Kay's house, he couldn't help but blush, knowing a different side to his expressionless boss. Jano and Jean exchanged confused gazes. Hyde fell silent and suddenly his cheeks were painted pink. Ooh, something crazy and naughty might have happened between the two of you inside his guest room. I'm calling it! Jano started to tease the blushing secretary, emphasizing some of his words that implies other meaning. He's starting to doubt whether they only sleep in different rooms. Hyde dropped his sight to the ground to hide his flushed face, 
The mention of the word crazy and naughty has affected him to feel hot all of a sudden although there were no particular event to fill those words. Shut it. Hyde checked the time in his wristwatch. A meeting to be held in not more than 30 minutes from now were about to start. He arrised from his seat and nod his head to the way outside, indicating they have to leave. Both of you are essential for the meeting. Let's go. The three started walking, heading to the conference room while Jano still couldn't let go of their conversation. He keep on insinuating something else going on. Also, you can't assume him to be romantically involved with a guy. That's impossible for us. Hyde snapped his fingers in front of the chatterbox. Fed up with his running mouth, he uttered those words without properly weighing them. The other guy who couldn't read between the moods were pinched by Jean but brushed him off along with the pain. We're in modern days, Secretary Hyde. It's not like you're living in the indigenous era. Don't perceive things in an old-fashioned way. You know, anything that has a hole can be poked. Ouch! Before Jano can even step inside the conference room, Hyde had already closed the door, slamming it to his nosy face. After he was sure Jano was able to keep his mouth shut, Hyde proceeded to open the door for him. This is the statistics chart of our data. For four months, we could observe that there is a gradual and excessive growth of our stocks in the market. This bullish trend encouraged a number of potential investors to be highly interested in our company. So far, this could be described as a positive impact. This outcome brought us a good image. These results persuades outside investors and enables us to win a trustable rating in terms of satisfying our current stockholders. The analyzed report were presented in detail about the performance of the company in terms of how well it's doing in the stocks market. It was just five months ago that Times Corporation expanded and legally incorporated, successfully venturing on different areas as well however. If there is triumph then there's also those who are wishing for them to become a laughing mess. They cannot sit back and relax because even a king who holds the throne and own the crown has the highest numbers of enemies. A humble amount of growth is nothing to be proud of. Mr. Samson, the team leader of finance department who was responsible with the reporting went inside. With a confident stance and expecting a small compliment from their boss contrary to that, he flinched seeing the infamous stoic expression of their CEO. His eyes were rather fixated on the portfolio containing the hard copy of the reports. The room felt cold. Everyone could feel the heavy weight in the air on their own shoulders amidst that. Mr. Samson swallows a sticky saliva. Shamelessly moist sweat arises on the forehead. He's trying to suppress the fear and prevent his weak heart to collapse while waiting for their boss's reaction and comment. After a moment of silence, Kikazuli Isles closed the portfolio with a loud thud, raising his gaze to face the people inside. His stoic face hardened as he opened his mouth to speak. This result is not something to be complacent about. Growth is only at the first stage. We're starting on a rocky path. I want an outcome that is worth my time. Just as what everyone expected, this time around were the same response. Although they have made a progress, everything is not enough for Kay. He wants two times. No, maybe even more than that. The result were still lacking compared to the bigger picture in his mind. Get back to work! The wave of employee inside dispersed in no time. Secretary Hyde watched Kay's next move and waited to pull open the door for him however. The stoic boss remained sitting, motionless. You go first, Secretary Hyde. Kay spoke in almost a whisper. His voice were soft and seemed to not carry any conviction. It was weak and airy. Had the room is not soundproof or if it's not only the two of them inside, it would become impossible for him to hear what the latter said. Although the smaller guy were weirded out with the strange action and request, he didn't speak of it instead obeyed and went ahead. In reality, Kay remained inside, by himself to not be discovered. All the time while the meeting was going on, it felt like inside the whole room were only him and Secretary Hyde, as if there were only the two of them, he was all that he could notice making him unable to focus on the report. If there were no hard copy for him to read and catch up, he would have been caught gaping at his secretary in broad daylight. Stupid heart. Let me breathe normally, stop racing like a stomping horse's hoof. Kay managed to calm himself and returned to his office, finding Hyde completely immersed in his work but when the secretary heard the click of the closing door, he lifted his gaze and their eyes locked. The smaller guy swiftly looked away as if it was nothing while Kay's restless heart went rampage, too conscious of his secretary's attention. Finally, he was able to reach his seat and be seated comfortably only to be jumpy when he saw Hyde standing in front of his table. What is it? Barely holding it in. Kay, who's suppressing his giddy emotions, appeared to be more stern and grumpy than usual. Hyde were surprised seeing that. He hesitated to speak but were left no choice because it's his work. 
he raised a silver-plated card in his hands, making it visible in Kay's sight, yet it quickly dawned on him what the card were about. It's about the gala night taking place two days from now, on Wednesday night. Yeah, I heard of it. That was a token of appreciation from the founder of Angel's Home for the continuous support they get in every organization's charity foundation. I didn't know it would be held this early. Angel's Home is an orphanage that Times Corporation have been supporting without faltering since Kay were still at the starting point of building his career and name. That foundation holds a special place in his heart. And I found out that Mr. Gibson has another motive for this event. Hmm, what do you mean? He set out to find a suitable and amiable man to arrange a marriage with his sole heiress, young Miss Mika. I see. What does that got to do with him? Somehow, it fails him to have to witness Hyde adding useless information, or so he thought. You're the top candidate that Mr. Gibson is looking out for. Oh. Gala Night 2, Secretary Hyde's Backup Plan. The mellow and soft music were soundly playing at the nightclub. One more glass. The bartender swooped up another order coming from a man in his early twenties. His hair were messily styled, free on their own, and it completely suited the man's carefree aura. Jay Gomez swiped his pinky finger near his eyes to clear the strand of hair that fell there, his slender brown eyes squinting at the touch, the nose crinkling while his large thin lips upturned to make a smirking expression. You told me to keep quiet and let you speak, but you won't even open your own mouth to utter a single word. Why, my friend? I don't have all night to wait for you to open up. The middle school teacher tapped his fingers on the wooden bar countertop impatiently as he looked around in their surrounding. Kikazu, a billionaire CEO and a friend from college called him out in the middle of Monday night, disturbing him from checking the students' papers as term exams just ended. However, now that they are meeting face to face, the host sat frozen in his seat, playing with his drink and staring into space. Jay stood up with the attempt to leave. Dude, if you won't speak, I'm going. Then returning back to sit when Kay eventually opened his mouth to tell him what's been bothering on his mind. Mr. Gibson wants to lure me into a marriage setup. There's a gala night on Wednesday and I was told of his plan about finding a suitable man for her daughter. I heard I'm the top candidate. The middle school teacher listened, then bursted out laughing earning a piercing glare from Kay. He stopped laughing after and put on a serious face seeing how Kay is not taking it as a laughing matter. He cleared his throat as he speak. Don't you want that? I mean, if I heard it right their family are equally as wealthy as yours. Surely, it will delight Uncle Lance. That's no way to please my father, if ever. It will be my mom who'd love that idea. Jay knew how persistent Kaiza is when it comes to making his friend date but always fails in the end because of Kay's stubborn nature and unknown reasons for not involving himself to romance. Haha, <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Aunt Kaiza have been bugging you to get a girlfriend, right? Kay didn't answer instead he finally brought to his mouth the glass containing rum he was just playing about and drank the drink in one go, savoring its strong taste. He lifted his eyes back and forth in the dim lighted room to ponder. Do you have something against gay people? Taken aback would have been an understatement for Jay's reaction to what his longtime and closest friend had just blurted out. Instinctively, he put his crossed arms to his body, hugging himself as if protecting against Kay. If they were somewhere private, Kay would have thrown a punch straight at Jay's face already, but he kept his calm. Even if you're the last person on earth, I won't date you, he said firmly. Exactly at that moment, the bartender gave Jay another drink. He gripped on the glass tightly still shocked to the core. Good to know, but why were you suddenly asking about that? Are you? He trailed on his question as he lifted his glass and gulped his drink, trying to calm himself. I think. I like my secretary. Only for Jay to spit out what he had. Coughing after he choked on the drink then he realized that Kay's secretary was nothing out of extraordinary. Your secretary? Isn't it a gorgeous woman, with a sexy body and model-like proportions? Kay glared at Jay. The latter instantly remembered something and quickly made up an excuse. Well, that was two months ago when I last visited at your office and witnessed her gawking at me. I mean... I know I'm hot and she's hot, so we got down bad. Animalistic nature. Come on, dude. Every man's got to have that. We get horny if we see something that turns us on. Yeah, and that's why most men get labeled as trash because of that. You're so mean. The two fell silent for a moment before Jay asked what was running on his mind. 
So, you like your secretary? And your secretary? Is a guy I suppose? Jay's words were careful but weighing. He rested his chin on his palm while waiting for Kay's answer. He's the longest secretary I have for about one month and two weeks now. You know, nobody could withstand how workaholic I am, but him. He knows how to read my mood. He's professional. When it comes to dealing with people, be it for business or his subordinates, he knows his ways. What's more is that he's warm, a dedicated person. There's a lot to of good things to tell about him, but if there is one word to describe him, then it's probably. Kay purposely trailed off as he find within him the right word then his eyes flickered with admiration as he said. Perfection. In a long time that Jay have known Kay, ever since they were in university there's only three emotions that he obviously shows. First and foremost, anger. Kay doesn't hold his anger back and completely lash out when triggered. He's easily irritated about small mistakes. Second, stern. Everyone knows him as a stoic person. His eyes doesn't hold any emotions and his face were mostly painted without any color other than his signature poker face and lastly, Jay has seen him heard before but that's about it. However, now what Jay have witnessed passing by the stoic man's eyes while talking about his secretary were also new to Jay. He doesn't want to perceive things in his own way and even make judgments based on what he heard so far but what he can make up from the prologue of his friend's story is something the other man might not want to hear. There's a clear boundary between like and crush. One holds a romantic feeling on the line while the latter is limited solely to admiration. In your case, you're crossing the line. Kay remained silent yet his mind were in total chaos. I don't want you to be hasty, Kay. What are you implying? Why don't you bring a date for the gala night and find a girl to pretend to be your girlfriend? In two ways she can help. One is to drive away anything related to romance and two, to find things clear in terms of your real feelings. Wait. You said you will take care of it? Yeah, I know I said that and I promised, but I can't help it. I even contacted the rest of the guys, but we are all busy. Hyde discreetly walked out of the room, giving his boss a privacy because he seemed to be on an argument with the other person on the end of the phone call. Tuesday morning and they were on their usual tasks, but Kay appeared to be under the weather. The boss walked into work with his eyebrows knotted together. All the employees were terrified and got into their own works accordingly. After a while, Hyde decided to go back inside. When he got in, he quickly took notice the uneasiness in the stoic boss's face. He looks. Worried. He stepped towards where he is and knocked on his desk to get his attention. Anything I can do to help, sir? He asked with a warm smile. Kay contemplated whether to tell Hyde about it or not as he's a party involved with their plan. He and Jay decided to try it out and find a pretend girlfriend for him. Jay promised to take care of everything but tomorrow's the big day yet Jay couldn't find anyone to take part the most important role. Find some suitable women whom I can take as my companion tomorrow night. I want the selection. As soon as possible. Kay have no other choice. Hyde excused himself, fired up from receiving quite a diversion of work at the same time curious as to what type of girl will the legendary stoic boss will like. Unbeknownst to Hyde, Kay wanted to hide himself under his desk and Boris that he needed help just to find a girl. A date, rather. Secretary Hyde didn't pay it any mind yet the stoic boss was dying out of embarrassment. It didn't take a long hour for Hyde to show the tablet containing different profiles of various women each with their own unique and plausible accomplishments as well as pretty faces. What is this? The selection, sir. Please browse through every slide and pick whomever that attracts you. Unbothered, Hyde even smiled at his boss. Kay's grip on the tablet tightened, irritated that Hyde seemed to be happy showing him a variety of unknown girls. Mad at his secretary's reaction, Kay didn't think his decision through and just let his fingers slide on the tablet and stopping without looking at it. He proceeded to give it back to his secretary who's waiting for him with a wide grin on his face. Contact her and give her the details. Send a nice dress to her address and schedule a car and chauffeur to pick her up. We'll be meeting at the entrance tomorrow night. I'm leaving it to you. After speaking what's on his mind, Kay left the room with a pissed expression. Hyde doesn't seem to care that he'll be meeting a girl, or even if he dates someone. Wednesday, 6 p.m. I'm sorry, but something urgent came up. I won't be able to accompany your boss. I've already returned the deposit you transferred to my account as well as the dress. Hyde jumped out of bed, all flustered and panicked. 
immediately reaching for his phone and dialing an important number. Hello? There's a problem. What? The boss's date won't be able to attend? Gala Night 3, Henrika. Are you done? Jano Park asked from outside of the cubicle inside the men's comfort room. He's getting impatient waiting for Secretary Hyde to finish putting on all that he need to wear. Stop rushing him, Jano. You ask him like every minute, how do you think he can just carelessly wear everything that easily? Jean scolded Jano, without looking at him because his focus is at playing online games in his phone. Both of them are leaning on the wall as they look out for people who goes in and out of the room. The party already started. What about Sir Kay? He must be alone and lonely. The single ladies might be hoarding and bugging him, doing as they please, or maybe the elite parents are pushing him to meet their daughters. Jano started to whine. He even rolled his eyes heavenwards, worried about their boss who might be alone at the said party right now. Play this for me. Gene passed his phone to Jano who accepted it with a confused look in his face. The game were still displayed on the screen. You talk too much. Sir K is a grown-up. He can handle himself besides. Hyde seemed to be finished changing. Exactly when he said that, Hyde walked out from the cubicle, showing himself. It was an awe. Dressed in long beige backless cotton fit is secretly Hyde. He came out looking glamorous and sophisticated at the same time. If Jano and Jean didn't know Hyde, they probably won't think that he is a guy. Wearing a long wig that reached his waist, nobody would see him as he really is. What is in front of them is someone else. The dress is even hugging his curvy body. For a guy. Surely Hyde is looking more sexy. His body shape is a stunner more so is his appearance. Standing in a taller height with the help of the 4-inch gold beaded high heels, he can be compared to a model or even a beauty queen. His hazel brown eyes were giving off that softer vibes than usual. The naturally long eyelashes were brushed with mascara, thickening it. The high nose were accentuated because of his other features especially. His plump red lips were painted in nude lipstick to suit the color of his dress. He appears as if a born goddess. Who? Are you? Jean asked. His eyes seem like it's deceiving him. Henrika. Tonight. Call me by my name. I am Henrika Duchess. A music teacher and an ordinary person. Who will charm everyone at the party. A top spec variant RS Turbo CVT. Red Honda Civic were parked in the car park. Sitting inside is the whiny little boss and his passenger. Erg. I want to go home already. Nero leaned his head on the steering wheel, complaining. Suddenly, a platinum card went past him, hitting him on the face. He picked it up when it fell to the vehicle's floor. I was expecting for your black card, though. Cheeky troublemaker, you get that or none at all. It was just a comment. I'm taking this. Beggars can't be choosers. Just wait till I get one of my own. He said with an arrogant grin. Anyway? I thought you said the party will start at exactly 6 in this evening. Why are you still here? It's almost past the time. K tapped two times at his phone until it lit up and showed the message he received from his secretary stating that the girl who was supposed to be his date backed out last minute and now after a single message of don't worry from Hyde, he still hasn't gotten back at him. However, it was fine for the stoic boss because he didn't really want to go inside the party hall and mingle with other people who have different kind of intentions up their dirty sleeves. Why? Bored? K nonchalantly said. His voice is cold but playful. Nero glared at his brother who for sure is testing his patience. Nope. I can even wait all night. He said with a pouty lips. Tonight, he's a chauffeur for his stingy billionaire brother. In exchange for him to borrow the car he's driving tonight, he had to swallow every teasing words from K with a heavy heart. They have all the luxury and wealth so a car wouldn't hurt. Their father have his own garage that are full of different high-class and expensive cars even. Their mother own a bunch and especially Kay who moves some of his own to his mansion but to Nero's dismay. None of them even thought about giving him one or buying one for him. The only one reason they gave him was he's a reckless driver. In order to date and impress the girls, he have to come up driving one and just in time. His brother made the deal. I also need your big mouth to run its purpose. What do you mean? Just exactly what you have in mind. Seriously, Kay, you're such an arse, he argued but couldn't refute. Nero is a perfect tease that could get on anyone's nerves easily. 
He has his playful ways, but when it comes to his older brother, he's no match. But seriously? You took all the effort to dress up and be on your way here. You're not even in the party. TSK. Waste of time. K didn't pay any mind to what Nero said. He rested his chin on his palm as he glanced outside. The heavily tinted car on the outside could not show anything on the inside, but everything in his vision is clear inside the car. He could see how everyone dressed in their best dress were walking around. Just in time, his phone beeped waking him out of trance. He immediately checked it and saw a message from his secretary. K fixed his tie and looked at Nero through the rearview mirror. The latter got on his guard and even smiled at his brother. My companion is arriving. Once I went inside you could go home. I'll be riding the limousine after. Nero swallowed his own saliva. His emotions rushing to his head then gave K the death glare. Although he was in need, but knowing that he hired a chauffeur to drive one of his limo makes Nero mad. He felt used and insulted. Don't act like a kid. I was simply testing your driving, and by the way, don't spend until the limit. Once you did, you're grounded for a month. K kept a cold face, used a calm but certain voice. He opened the car door and went down, bearing his powerful aura and intimidating gaze. He checked his wristwatch and just as he lifted his gaze, the white limousine he was waiting for stopped right in front of him. A minute after it settled, the door opened, revealing first a pair of golden high heels as the whole body showed up and finally standing face to face with Kay is the substitute date for the night. The stoic boss remembered he seriously didn't look at the slides and only chose with his eyes closed, wasn't giving any care as to whomever will turn out to be his date but now that he's seeing the substitute, whoever the one before is now someone Kay you want to express gratitude for. K held his breath as he stared at her. His heart started to beat speedily. This girl. To his surprise, the beautiful stranger tiptoed to reach his ear and whispered, My name is Enrica. I'll tell you more, but let's get inside first. She backed away, but strangely, K could still feel her breath fanning over his neck. I'm sorry it took too long for me to prepare as it was given on a short notice. Enrica looked right into Kikaza's eyes with an apologetic smile on the face as she speak which made her look sincere and attractive. And Kikazu was fascinated, head over heels right away. While Hyde who's turned to someone else in the very night felt awfully awkward, living a lie. But to witness something new of their stoic boss has given him an unfamiliar feeling. He just wished to not get caught in this lie, especially that the stoic boss seemed to have fallen, believing in it. It was like the first time no, it is the first time. For a moment since before, seeing the soft eyes that were enchanting in Kay's eyes and yet somehow, Henrika's lips were reminding him of someone else. Kay brushed aside the thought and quickly offered his arms to Henrika which she gladly took, resting her own hands in his and as soon as they inched closer, Kay could feel the same spark he felt for Hyde before. The party ended abruptly as soon as they entered. Kay introduced Henrika as her girlfriend angering Mr. Gibson, putting him off the nice impression. All the other guests gave him a questioning and doubtful eyes but said none. However he knew. The next day he will be the headline in everyone's mouth. A gossip topic, he rather should say. What's more is that. He felt it. He's attracted to Henrika but the attraction seemed to be pulled and ingested as he took her as if she reminds him of someone else. Secretary Hyde. Can I make my heartbeat stop? In a bright Sunday morning, with the sound of birds chirping, and the beautiful scenery of nature and refreshing scent of air that would relax anyone. Today is Sunday and people should be enjoying their one day break from work but why is this man dressed in Hawaiian polo shirt partnered with blue khaki shorts and brown van shoes while leaning on a red Lamborghini sports car in the middle of the road getting worked up early in the day? Kikazu is patiently waiting for his little secretary who is busy vomiting. Hyde was pale and Kane noticed his uneasiness. Turns out that he's nauseous and is now vomiting. It's a long drive and secretary Hyde seemed to not be too fond of driving around for more than four hours already. He has reached his limit. The trail along the mountain was like a zigzag pattern and that's why Hyde would have been dizzy. Sir, can you please pass me the bottle of water in my bag? Hyde ordered Kay to which surprised the latter. Still Kikazu obliged. His secretary might die while he's with him and he doesn't want to take any responsibility for it. They have a long day ahead so might as well help him get better because they'll need to arrive at the place before 7 a.m. They're going to attend an engagement party for one of Kikazu's business partner at the same time friend. He may not be obliged to attend but it's his courtesy to show that he care for them as a part of his company and besides, the person getting engaged is one of his close friends from university. As to why did he bring Hyde to go with him? Well because, he's his little secretary, 
Of course he'll need him for assistance. Are you better now? Kikazu asked Hyde once he already drank the water he gave him. Air. Yeah, I guess so. Hyde responded in a small voice, which for Kikazu it seems that his little secretary is not yet fine. He still looks pale on top of that. It made the other guy sigh then walked over to help Hyde walk. Kikaza can't bear seeing how Hyde appears wobbly and weak. I am okay. The smaller guy denied his help, but Kay still did it anyway. He almost carried him just so they could already leave, but he didn't want to put Hyde in an awkward situation. Especially when Kikaza feel another series of sparks just by their skins touching each other and him. Being utterly kind at the moment is getting out of hand. He is not usually clingy. He tend to mind his own business and doesn't engage in others' problems. Last Wednesday night, Kay met the most beautiful girl ever to cross path with him. He know he was attracted to her, but everything attractive about her reminds him of Secretary Hyde. He's slowly grasping his situation, but still in the in-denial stage. Thank you, Hyde said. His voice were soft and airy probably because he is still weak and drained out of energy. Kay just took a glance at Hyde once they were finally seated inside his car. If you still feel nauseous or wants to vomit, there's a paper bag at the back. Just reach for it. I don't want my car getting dirty. Hmm. <laughs> Starting the car, a thought crossed Kay's mind. Kikazu wanted to ask something but heard Hyde grumbling so he looked at him and found his little secretary has fallen asleep. He watched him closely. Oddly enough, his secretary has white skin, the kind like a baby's smooth and natural skin that makes him look younger and glowing. He also has long eyelashes that perfectly fits his deep brown eyes while his lips. Kikazu found himself staring at Hyde for too long and suddenly felt something weird going on in his body. It's there again. Every time he's around his secretary, his heart starts beating abnormally. Kay's chest would tighten. He knows he doesn't have any sickly disease so he knows exactly what it is all about. All of a sudden, it became his turn to feel nauseous. He shook his head to brush off the thought and started to drive. Or maybe this time, it's just the effect of the long drive why out of the blue. He felt his heart beating in an abnormal way. It might or may not be. No way the reason is for the pale-looking guy sleeping next to him. Whoa! I thought I wouldn't see you here. What made you come? Kikazu almost threw his luggage bag at EJ for his big mouth. This person really doesn't know how to mind his own business. Kikazu glanced at the smaller person next to him. Hyde is still looking pale, but he seems to be a lot better now than earlier. He averted his gaze back to his friend who is still looking at him in disbelief. A small-time businessman venturing out into resorts and hotels. E.J. Sweska is an easy-going person who came in around college. Kikazu remembers they are not particularly close before but upon graduating, they grew closer. Well, it's your engagement day. You invited me. E.J. smiled at him sadly putting Kikazu in a trance. Man, you're always late with every flash news. I... EJ walked up to him and put an arm around his shoulder, dragging him somewhere with him. Kikaza looked back at Hyde while the smaller guy just nodded and gestured he would just be by the lounge to wait for him. Although it's against his will to leave his sick secretary, the stoic boss was taken away by his lonely friend. What do you mean? Well, Celine broke up with me the day after yesterday. She said she was not yet ready to put any kind of ring in her finger. Like, damn. She said yes and put on the million dollar ring I bought for her for one week then after that she broke off the engagement without returning the ring to me. Then yesterday I found out she sold it and successfully run away to another country. He paused and swallowed the lump in his throat. With another man. While EJ is in the pit of broken heart, Kikazu was not shocked and gave his friend a straight face as if something like that never bothered him. Told ya before, never bother yourself with a gold digger. Oh. I was so blindedly in love with the woman. Kay, I never expected she'd turn out that way. I guess I don't really have a knack at judging a person. Kay hissed and shrugged EJ's arms on his shoulder. Then I'll go home now. There's no reason to stay here anyway. He motioned to go back, but EJ was fast to hold him up. Nah, since you are here already, why not stay until tomorrow? Don't be so workaholic. Try to wind up sometimes. I have work tomorrow. I know, but you're the boss. You have the authority common. I don't want to abuse my authority, E.J., Kay said in a serious tone. Of course, though he is deemed to be a not-so-perfect perfectionist boss that has a bad temperament and is very strict, all his employees gossiping about him, Kay knows it very well and also, he know how to be responsible. E.J. threw his hands up in the air in defeat. 
you are responsible, I get it but still, take a day off man, you need a breather and be exposed to the sunlight, take today as your day. He still convinced him. K was about to respond but EJ cut him off. I take no for an answer, the other guys are gonna get here later, let's have some fun while waiting for them. Before his friend could even drag him out of wherever, K already backed away to get back and get his secretary. It's an unfamiliar place and he might stroll away then end up getting lost lost. He is Kay's responsibility under his care. Hey! Where are you going? EJ followed him as he knew he wouldn't be able to stop Kay at this moment. He seemed determined. Kay didn't say anything and continued to walk. EJ just shrugged while still following his workaholic friend. When they arrived at the lounge, Kay scanned the place for whom he went there for. However, when he found him, he was not alone. Oh! Hey! You're already here! Where are the other guys? EJ greeted the other guy that Kay's little secretary was talking to. He even got pulled by EJ to come closer to them. Hey, they are still on their way. Jay got held up in the road because of his flat tire so he had to wait for Dan's van to help him out. Well, damn. Kay seemed to be set up. Why the heck did he even go here by the way? I see and who is this you came with? Kay couldn't help but glare at his friend who asked that. Hyde was with him earlier and he didn't notice him? Only now that he's with. Kay looked up at the newcomer with a disgusted expression, displaying his hostility. Ah, uh, he's... Before Sage could introduce him, Kay snatched Hyde to his side then put an arm around his shoulder to secure him to his place. He's my Lee, secretary. Little secretary almost slipped out of his mouth. That'd be trouble. EJ and even Sage was quite shocked of how their friend reacted. He was never like that. Because Kay came off possessive with how he reacted. There must be something going on and EJ, the nosy person that he is, started to tease K, who's supposed to be minding his own business. Ooh, secretary? When did you even became that close to your secretary, though? K realized his distance from Hyde then he quickly backed away, but before he did, their eyes met first and Hyde was curious maybe? Or just plainly getting confused? Poor guy. I remember last time when your secretary tried to touch you, you flicked their hand away in a flash of light and fired them that instant. What's the difference now, Who? <laughs> and this person with a mouth of a rapper who doesn't know how to shut up needs to be shut now. Kay glared at him. Oops. I guess I should shut up now because somebody doesn't want to let his secret intentions out. I'm loving this game. Just shut up. I will ha ha ha. Anyway, Sage, how do you know? Kay's secretary? Finally, EJ has turned his attention to someone else. And that someone else is someone whom he is not interested about. Hide. Instead of listening to their conversation, Kay called his little secretary. When Hyde looked up at him, Kay was suddenly reminded of how this smaller guy had always been affecting him in unfamiliar ways, like how he suddenly felt mad when he saw him with Sage earlier, but figures, Sage is not a pleasant person for him that's why he must have been mad. Um? He hummed as an answer. Kay handed him a card. That's the pass for the room. Take my luggage with you and rest there for a while. I'll be calling for room service for your food. I know you still feel a bit unwell. Stay there for a while until you feel better, he told him. Hyde was a bit taken aback. He's seeing yet a different side to his stoic boss. Many people had always described him as a cold, poker-faced and strict boss, but right now, Kay felt like a person with warmth and sincerity. Hey. Hyde snapped out from his reverie when Kay called him out. He immediately reached the car then carried their luggages. He informed them that he will be in the room. His boss just nodded with creased forehead. That's another level of how you usually treat your past secretary. Kay, I wonder if this is you or that little secretary, but right now, you feel different. Kay did nothing to deny, but fiercely glared at him. Meanwhile, Hyde leaned on the door as soon as he went inside the room, dropped both his and Kay's luggage bag on the floor as he tried to catch his breath that his stoic boss seemed to take away from him. Who was that just now? Kay is showing more and more his warm side to Hyde, making Hyde who's experiencing it so suddenly and out of the blue be caught off guard that somehow take a part of his emotion. My God! He felt his heart beating erratically inside his chest. Can he make his heartbeat stop beating so fast right now? This is not healthy. He's not approving of it. But even before he could calm himself down, a realization suddenly hit him hard like a rock. Wait! Are we going to stay in one room? His already erratically beating heart started to beat faster. What is up with the K he is with now, off duty to his work, 
He seemed like a different person. Flying monster. Hyde walked out of the shower, water still dripping from his wet hair to the floor as he stepped towards the bed, lifting the smaller towel to his hair, drying it. His gaze went to the food served on the round table. A grumbling sound echoed to the four sides of the room. It came from his hungry stomach. He's famished. Probably because he vomited everything he ate. It was midnight when they started to leave from the city. The trip was on short notice on his part. Unbeknownst to him, the stoic boss actually planned on telling him about it without further notice so he would have no other choice but to agree. No refusal or such and to Kikazo's ultimate surprise. Hyde did came but with a heavy heart. It's already past his breakfast schedule that's why his stomach is protesting. Hyde quickly put on his clothes. A simple blue pump-up tees partnered with blackboard shorts, giving him a carefree and casual looks. Though Hyde only wore those to match the vibe of the place, he knows he's not there to have fun but assist his boss even if earlier. He didn't serve his purpose. Kikazu was even the one who took care of him and called for the room service. Hyde sat down in front of the table and gobbled down the food. He felt as if he didn't eat for days. The drive from the city to the Aloha Beach Resort located in the suburb was five hours long and the roads were steep if not. On the mountain and in a zigzag pattern, he felt like they were circling around and got dizzy to the point of puking. That is why it is understandable that he's this hungry. Ah, uh, I'm full. Once he's done eating to his heart's content, now he's left to stare in the wall, not having anything to do. He's rejuvenated and got his energy back. After a minute of digesting his food, Hyde decided to go out and breathe fresh air. Kikazu is maybe busy in the party and he doesn't want to intrude so suddenly if he go there by now. Hyde happily run through the seashore, taking off his black leather sandals, feeling the sand on his feet, the refreshing air and surrounding making him release all his stress and put a genuine, happy smile to his face. It's been so long. Five years is a long time. It's been a while since he got to see and visit a beach. The sound of high waves makes his heart flutter. There were not much tourists around. In fact, in the side where he's on, there are no other people in sight but just him. He felt as if he's free and own the world by staying alone in a calm and beautiful place. Hyde sat down on the sand, near where the water of the sea would reach his feet once the waves comes back to the shore. He loved the feeling when it touched his feet. Because of the relaxed vibe, the sun were not too high and hot. Maybe it's giving him a scent to enjoy, but Hyde felt like singing. Ever since he was young, he had a particular love for music, especially for singing. He even know about becoming a singer, but it stayed as a childhood dream. Hyde started to sing a mellow and soft song. He thinks it suits the atmosphere while he's standing by the sea and it would get along with his current state. Whenever he feels glee or however overwhelming the emotion is, he turn it into singing. It does make him feel better. When he finished chorus, he turned around as he heard a sound of clapping and there he found the guy who talked to him in the lounge when he was waiting for Kay. He introduced himself as Sage Casper Garcia. Oh wow! I didn't know you got such a golden voice. You sound really pleasant in the ear and I'm not lying when I say this but your voice possesses such a healing power. Hyde doesn't know if this guy is bluffing or not but the sudden compliment made him utterly blush. Don't exaggerate and please. Stop talking to me. We're not close. He's cranky which didn't take Sage by surprise. He's used to it. That hurts. I thought. We became close that night. The mention of that night made Hyde turn to Sage's direction and glared at him. That was an act of humanity. I simply helped you. Flying monster. A herm. Sage was embarrassed hearing from Hyde the words flying monster because he was reminded of how embarrassing he was the night he moved in in his new apartment. Well, um, that... That's why I wanted to repay your kindness, but, uh... Hyde laughed mockingly as he grasped a handful of sand, releasing them slowly from his palm. Just don't talk to me. That's the best thing to do to repay me. The other guy didn't speak so Hyde got curious if he was still there. He turned to see him walking towards where he's sitting and closely sat next to him. Hyde immediately moved away. You're really hurting me, Hyde. Jeez, you're annoying! Hyde groaned because of how irritable he is with the presence of the other man also upon hearing his singing that he keep to himself. Somehow, he is reminded how they met and how pathetic the other man is as well as his persistence. That is the most tiring yet satisfying lie I have ever lived in this life. Hyde is used to lying big. Some of it are mostly white lies to protect himself, but tonight, he didn't just lie. He pretended to be someone else, fooling other people. Henrika? Ha 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 ha! 
He couldn't help but laugh as he removed the dress off his body, recalling how he even came up with a sudden name. Hyde arrived at his apartment not earlier than midnight. It's almost 3 a.m. in the morning. The party ended at 11 of the night yet Kikazu, his dense boss who had no idea he dressed up as a girl and pretended to be his girlfriend made him stay with him for a while as if flirting with him, not noticing he's his secretary. Somehow, it crossed Hyde's mind. So that is our stoic boss's type? The kind of girl who is demure but knows how to be tough and independent? There were a lot of people trying to shame and ridicule Henrika at the party especially the host, Mr. Gibson who was fuming mad when he saw her coming in hand in hand with Kay. They were the focus. Ah, whatever. I want my sleep. After he's done taking off every fabric on his body, he proceeded to go to the bathroom to wash his face. Never mind a full body and shower. He's tired as it is. Walking out from the bathroom, Hyde changed to his pajama and were about to jump to his bed when a knock on his door summoned him to open it, wondering who could it be at this time of the day. It's almost the devil's hour and whatever that is on his door, he need to check. Opening it. A restless guy with disheveled hair, bared chest, and only his boxers on came into his view. He couldn't help but let out a cough and almost slammed the door at the stranger's face if not for the latter completely blocking him from doing it. Help! The stranger's eyes were moist, as if on the verge of crying. In Hyde's eyes, he appears like some kind of pervert and he doesn't want to be associated. What do you need? Yet the kind citizen he is, he couldn't help it. The guy looks worst. The stranger's eyes lit up with his question and sighed deeply to compose himself before talking. There is a, uh, flying monster in my room. As if to make him regret his decision, what the stranger blurted made Hyde's eyes to bulge out. Hold it, what flying monster? Are you high? My god go away or I'll call the police. On an attempt to close his door, the stranger's groggy face contorted as he fell down to the floor, kneeling. Please, I'm scared with the creation of the underworld. Rolling his eyes heavenwards, Hyde tried to compose himself, taking pity to the guy. What the hell is a flying monster or a creation of the underworld? I need a human language, not some alien one. As if he's pulled back to reality, the stranger stood back up and said, almost shouting, A roach! A what? A six-legged creation of the underworld, what we call a flying monster, a roach! Uh, then call pest control. I already did, but they were not coming. Not my problem. Please. What do you need me to do? Kill it. You're such a baby. Lead the way. As the kind citizen he is, Hyde ended up coming over to the stranger's house on his way to kill a roach. When they got inside his neighbor's apartment, which was next to his own, the guy tiptoed to his bedroom and quickly switched the lights on. In a discreet manner, he proceeded to scan the room. With his heart racing, when he saw the little devil on his sheets, he went about running, circling in his room and screaming loud, Hyde giving him a judgmental look. The guy who hasn't introduced himself yet cleared his throat in embarrassment. Should I bring you a slipper to kill it? He asked. Or maybe I should get you a cockroach spray. Hyde didn't answer instead he scanned his target and while the other guy were creeped out with the sight of the roach, Hyde set out and caught it with his bare hands, grabbing it on its antenna, walked to the window flung it open and threw the little bitch outside, making the other guy who's scared out of his wits feel his stomach churning in disgust. You! Did you just touch it? He gagged. Intoxicated. Hyde gazed at the stranger as if what he did was nothing extraordinary. While the other was too stunned to react, Hyde already made his way out, thinking that his mission there is done. He went back inside his own apartment, headed straight to the bathroom sink to wash his dirty hands thoroughly and dried it with a towel. He walked out, got in his bed, put on his quilt, closed his eyes and comfortably let himself sink deep into the world of dreams. He's very tired and the guardian of sleep is sucking him in. However, the loud and continuous banging in his door pulled him back to a harsh woke. Opening his eyes he irritatedly peeled his quilt off his body, throwing it back to the bed and stood up, stomping his feet as he made his way to open the door. His footsteps were heavy the same with his eyelids, almost falling off with his sleepy state. He leaned at his doorframe with crossed arms in his chest and a menacing glare with his tired eyes, looking at the culprit who's been continuously bugging him and a hindrance for him getting a good rest. What's worst is that four hours from now, he will have to wake up and get going to work. What is it this time? Hyde asked. There seemed to be not just one roach in my room. And? Hyde is grumpy. No, that's an understatement. He's getting mad. 
His precious sleep is slipping away. How is that my problem? Do you want me to catch every single roach in your room until the crack of dawn? He snickered. Call pest control because I'm not one. It's not that. The petrified stranger cooed as if scared with the grumpiness of the other man. Then what? Please. I am tired and sleepy. If you have nothing better to do than just leave. Hyde is not one to snap or someone who's impatient. He hold his anger better than anybody else yet at the time. His only threat of patience couldn't stand it anymore. Can I stay over? Fidgeting with his hands, the stranger said in almost a whisper, embarrassed of what is happening. Hyde looked at the stranger with a weighing eyes, fighting his reason with another reason why would he let the stranger he barely knew, met in a weird way and shamelessly asked to be let in his room stay till the morning. He scanned him from head to toe, the red boxers of the other guy imprinting quite an impression on him. And as he gazed at his face, he appeared as if a lost puppy in Hyde's eyes. It ticks his soft side for animals. Afterwards, Hyde opened up, moving aside to give way. Name, age, occupation, criminal record. At least, he had to know those kind of information to be peaceful while he let him stay. Sage Casper Garcia, 27, fashion designer and no criminal record. As if he couldn't believe what he heard, Hyde took one last glance at Casper's as he introduced himself. Red boxers but quickly averted his gaze and didn't comment anymore. Fashion designer? Not so sure about that. Follow me. He got on his feet and went to the room, making sure Casper is following him. He glanced to check and he was walking obediently, like a puppy wagging his tail. Hyde brought out an extra quilt, a pillow and a futon and handed it over to Casper who took it and sprawled out on the floor after helping the guy. He also crawled to his own bed and finally was able to dive into sleep without any disturbance. Did I make you uncomfortable for suddenly showing up? You bet. Sage's expression darkened. He faked a cough. Honestly, I want to make friends with you. You help me and I take you for a nice person. I don't know what triggered your cold attitude towards me, but trust me, I'm not here to make trouble or anything. What happened last time was just. I am scared of bugs. And I am seriously thankful for your help. At least let me treat you to lunch. Hyde nodded without any hesitation, feeling guilty of how he's been acting towards the guy. Wow. I am thankful for the honor. Sage did the courtesy of how a prince does his bow. It made Hyde laugh. I'm glad I could make you smile. Are you feeling better now? Hmm. Well, I saw you here standing alone then heard you singing quite a lonely song. I just assumed maybe you're feeling sad. Ah, uh, no. It's the ambience. I just got carried away. Oh, is that so? Yes. What about you? Shouldn't you be with your friends? Sage smiled at him. I will get back later. Just needed some fresh air. Oh, okay. Shall we head to lunch? It's almost past the time. The two decided to have lunch to the nearest seafood restaurant next to the villa. They were happily talking and laughing, but Hyde still can't put his restless feelings at ease and could not let his guard down to be completely comfortable with Sage, yet he wouldn't deny he enjoys his company, forgetting his duty. It was the skyfall and dark surrounding that he was reminded of his boss. Sage and Hyde were sitting back in the seashore, playing with the sands on their feet when Hyde decided to go back to his room. I think I'll get back in the room. It's getting colder too. Yeah, I also think so. Then I guess it's... Good night. Hyde smiled at him. Good night. He walked away after that to go into their room. He has never felt uncomfortable talking around with strangers, but that guy is quite edgy. When he arrived and opened the door to their room, darkness welcomed him. Where did you go? Or so he thought. A low and baritone voice asked him. He assumed it is K by its familiar intimidating tone, but the difference right now is that it sounded sexy in his ears. Also, only the two of them have access to the room. Hyde felt a chill run down his spine by hearing K's voice in the middle of a cold, dark room. Oh, is that you, boss? He wanted to make sure he's not hallucinating. And why on earth didn't his boss switch the lights on? Hyde searched for the switch, but failed to find it. He remembered he left his phone in the side table near the headrest of the bed when he woke up and before heading out. He needed its flashlight so he walked to search for the bed as what he remembers when the lights were on earlier. He had the habit to turn off lights in every room before going out. He doesn't want to leave it open as it still consumes power. In his apartment whenever he left it unintentionally his electric bill would fluctuate. Why is everything so expensive nowadays? And his frugal self cannot stand to pay much higher price for only the electricity alone. He had other things to spend on. 
while finding his way in the darkness of the room. A hand reached and pulled him causing him to stumble and fall down. He almost screamed for he thought his body would meet the hard floor however he felt he landed on a hard thing but not the floor. It's a body. Wait. He landed on top of K. Sir, I... He tried to get up but K's grip on him tightened when he tried to do so. What is up with this guy? He thought. Answer me first. Where did you go? He asked out of the blue. I came back to find you weren't here. Hyde inhaled K's scent as they were a few inches away. The room is surrounded by darkness so he is not sure how they were positioned exactly but what he can picture is that their body is as close as not. Even a thread would be able to pass through between them and he can feel Kay's breath at his forehead given the fact that he's shorter than the other guy. This is the first time he's ever been this close with another guy in distance and because of that Hyde smelled the scent of alcohol in Kay. He seemed to be drunk. Just outside near the seashore. He answered his question. Hmm, and you were with Sage? Kay said that caught Hyde off guard. He knew where he was and still asked. Yeah, he approached me and we talked. Um, could you please let me go first? He feel awkward with their distance and the way how Kay talked to him right now. He make it seem like he's a jealous and possessive lover. And Hyde thought the idea is ridiculous. Maybe the alcohol intoxicated him that made his boss act this foolishly. But instead of letting Hyde go, Kay pulled him tighter to him when he tried to break away and what a deja vu but a sudden memory flashed through Hyde's mind and drunk sitting on his boss's laps, clung his arms to his neck and pulled him in for a kiss as what Kay just did right now. When he pulled him closer, their lips collided with each other and Hyde was quick to move away but Kay stopped him by holding him in the back of his head and switched their positions. Kay turned around and let Hyde lay on the bed while he topped him and pinned him on the bed. His arms on top of his head Kay is holding tight. What in the world? Kay must be possessed. All of this are too sudden he can't keep up with what is happening. In a blink of an eye, Kay crashed his lips again on his and tried to invade his mouth. Hyde tried hard not to give in because if Kay wakes up tomorrow and if ever he remembers which he hope he won't, then both of them will be uncomfortable with this kind of situation he might have to resign, just so they won't get embarrassed when they see each other and remember what happened tonight. Kay broke away and Hyde catch his breath, but oh no. It was a wrong move because his boss took advantage of his open mouth to welcome his own tongue as he explore Hyde's mouth tasting every corner. The little secretary couldn't help but to just go with the flow of kissing and moan when Kay suck on his tongue. He swear when this is all over he's gonna punish Kay so badly but right now he's very vulnerable and weak for all his kisses and all he can do is to kiss him back. Kay is gonna pay for this. It's Hyde's first kiss after all and it is taken away from him by a drunk guy. His boss but he can't deny. He won't deny the taste of the alcohol in Kay's mouth is starting to intoxicate him and for real he's enjoying the way they kiss. It got him bad. Ironically, the sun is already up outside the villa Kay and Hyde are staying at but the two are still asleep in the warmth of each other's arms. Last night when Kay kissed Hyde, he fell asleep right after on top of his secretary and Hyde tried pushing him away but he couldn't do to his heavy weight and not to mention how weak Kay made him feel because of that one kiss. Because of that he also fell asleep, worrying of how his boss will react when they wake up in the morning. Now that the morning has come, the two sleeping peacefully is disturbed by a sudden knock on their door. Kay is sleeping with his hands wrapped around Hyde while the latter is resting his head on Kay's arms. Kay woke up first. He opened his eyes and first thing he saw is the cute person beside him, sleeping peacefully like an angel. It made him smile. He carefully detached himself from his little secretary and softly placed his head on one pillow. He made sure he didn't wake him and got down from the bed to answer the door. If when Kay woke up, he's greeted with an angel sleeping beside him then a devil came to ruin his day that didn't even have a proper start yet. He glared at the man outside. What are you doing here? And asked in an irritated tone. The man just looked at him and shared the same sentiment of how his day is getting ruined. Because instead of being welcomed by the sweet and bright person he intentionally went there for, a stoic and stone-hearted man showed up to ruin his expectation. I am looking for Hyde, Sage said as he peeked inside the room looking for Hyde, but Kay quickly blocked the doorway. He closed it and went outside to talk to the intruder. Why? Kay's voice were calm yet cold. What do you have to say that you came looking for him? Sage smirked upon seeing the irritation in Kay's sudden change of expression. What could the little guy have done that made Kay be this expressive when it comes to him? The Kikazu that Sage knew before is usually emotionless. He doesn't show what he feels or just simply put up his anger to cover his other emotions. But right now he sees something different from him especially when Kay is around his secretary. Why do you need to know? It's between him and me. There's a smug grin in Sage's face when he asks next. 
are you his boyfriend to care? That made the in-denial boss be stunned and was rendered speechless. Sage snorted. It's making him laugh how transparent Kay is to his feelings, but clueless of his own emotions. When Kay collected himself, he faked a cough. I'm his boss and I was the one who brought him here with me. So he's my responsibility. I think that is enough reason for me to say. I care, yeah? Whatever, man. Just let me speak to Hyde. I got an important thing to say to him. Don't bother. I can deliver the message to him. No. I want to personally talk to him. Sage argued, getting irritated with Kay's persistence. He's still asleep. Might be too tired cause of what we did last night and that is why you can't talk to him. He needs plenty of rest. Kay fired back emphasizing every single words he said while looking at Sage, a proud expression plastered on his handsome face. This time, it's Sage's turn to be taken aback. He didn't expect that from someone like Kay. Just exclaimed he did something with another person and what? He's acting possessive. Jeez, I'll come back when he's awake. You're such a headache. Sage said as he shook his head mockingly looking at Kay while he turned his back to go back to his room. Kay crossed his arms as a smirk slowly made its way to his lips. He has never felt this good before. However, that smirk disappeared when he thought about what he and Jay talked last night. It does seem to be true. He shook his head as he entered their room to get ready to leave. He can't be stuck and spend another night in one room with his little secretary anymore. It might drive him crazy. Crazier than it already made him be. When he got inside, Hyde is already awake. He's rubbing his eyes using both of his hands curled in a fist and Kay found it cute. He kind of stared at him for being so amused how cute his little secretary is. Secretary Hyde saw him. Then he avoided his eyes and awkwardly fidgeted on his phone. Right. Last night his little secretary was not drunk so definitely he remember what happened between them, specifically the kiss they shared. He sighed. Hide. Kay called him. His little secretary answered yes without looking at him. Get ready. We'll eat at the restaurant before going home. There is a lot of work left to do at the company. Ah, uh, yes. Hyde quickly gathered his things. Then I'll take a shower first. Kay nodded and watched him walk to the shower room. When he's out of his sight, he sighed again. The stoic boss doesn't know if what he's doing is right. Also. A part of him wants to blame it all on Hyde, like how it is his fault because of getting drunk in their party that night and for kissing Kay. That later on has affected Kay to be always disturbed and bewildered when he's with Hyde. His heart has never been put at ease because of that one kiss. And everything that happened last night was still vivid on his mind. How they shared another kiss that this time was initiated by him. His phone's ringing diverted his attention. He picked it up and Jay's name was the one registered. Yeah. Kay answered after pressing the green button. Good morning, too. Jay greeted sarcastically on the other line. It's early in the morning. Can't you greet me with enthusiasm? For Jay, Kay feels soulless early in the day and other than his bad temper. His friend doesn't even try to become a pleasant person even for once in the morning. Enthusiasm. Kay said nonchalantly and that made Jay sigh frustrated at how helpless Kay is. Can somebody tell him? How are they friends? You're so corny. So tell me what happened last night? Wait, is he there with you? Jay started digging, purposely implying about the subject of their topic last night, Kikazu's precious secretary. No, he's in the shower. Okay then, so now tell me. Don't stick your nose in my business. It's too early for your gossiping. Come on, Kay. Just a little detail. No. You're so stone-hearted. If you won't say anything important, I'll hang up. But I want to know if you did what I told you and how you felt afterwards. That made Kay think. What did he feel last night? Well, did you just kiss or did you feel aroused and took it to the next level? Do you think it's just lust or? Kay hanged up the call on his talkative friend. Come on, if he didn't do that, Jay will just keep on blabbering whatever and will keep on pestering him. He's got a long day ahead and when he listened to Jay talking so much without a break, exhaust him. Like, how can a person talk non-stop? The bathroom door opened and it revealed his bright secretary that somehow has become brighter even more in his eyes. He's shining. Hyde is drying his hair with a white towel. He's dressed in pink sweatshirt and white jeans. He's so cute and bright. Kay's morning has finally started because of his cute little secretary. 
Hyde suddenly looked at Kay's way and was startled and he looked away. That instant, Kay knew his secretary is feeling awkward. Kay just remained his straight face. Try his best not to mirror Hyde's reaction. I'll take a shower first then we go to the restaurant to eat. You can take your belongings to the car if you want to while waiting for me to finish. Hyde just nodded and it made Kay irritated and grind his teeth. Damn. He doesn't know how to handle situations like such. Ah, uh, I'll just take a shower. So he escaped. Hyde on the other hand was able to breathe freely. It's suffocating him how they were in the same room especially with the thought of what happened last night shamelessly crossing his mind. He also doesn't even have the slightest idea if Kay remember or not. Because if he does then they should talk it out or maybe. Hyde glanced at the closed door of the shower room where Kay is at right now. Maybe Kikazu is used to doing things like that. Just how a playboy would do. And Hyde think it's not impossible knowing that Kay is a demigod. With his tall frame that towers over him. It makes Hyde look up to Kay when they talk face to face. Kay also has lean body and a face so perfect as if a sculptured image with his inscrutable gunmetal brown eyes that exudes his personality like a lethal male. Perhaps emotionless but still attract attention to his straight edge nose and lips which evenly and is naturally plump on both top and bottom with a little scar on the side of his bottom lips. Tell me, who would not be attracted? And when did Hyde even saw even those small details on his boss lips? When did he even care? It's driving him crazy. How can a kiss cause turmoil in his heart? He's no kid so he shouldn't be feeling this way. A matter of fling is a no kind of thing for him and to get disturbed by such scenario is really making him uncomfortable. He was not raised to involve himself with things like kissing especially with a person who is not in any way have any romantic relationship with him. But oh how ironically an image of him, drunk and kissing his boss flashes through his mind again like when they kissed last night. It passed by his mind or maybe. He actually did that? Maybe it was reality and not just some projected one? Remembering the night at the party he couldn't recall anything else rather than the memory of him. Drinking too much alcohol then after that he woke up in his own room and couldn't remember anything else. There is a missing piece of his memory that night and might actually be what he just did remember last night. Did he really have the nerve to kiss his boss? Backfire. Kikazu Lee Isles despises incompetent people at work. However, in social life, the character that he hates the most are those klutz, stupid ones. And if there would be one of the few things he regrets then that would be. Listening to Jay's advice, the day they had to stay at Aloha Beach Resort where his friend supposed to be engagement took place, Kay mingled and hang out with his group, conversing with his closest friend, Jay about some things he had never encountered before. Come on, Kay, just tell me what's going on. I know you try to bottle up everything but right now, you'll need to let it go. Jay persuaded Kay upon telling him how their plan went. Amongst all of their friends, they are the ones who are closest to each other like best friends because their friendship started ever since high school. Jay knew Kay is a stoic person. Most of the time he is emotionless. When they were in high school Kay is known to be very calm and almost without any emotion. He doesn't show what he's feeling and also just goes with the flow of whatever is happening. But before they graduated from college a certain incident created his bad temperament. His anger became his defense mechanism. That is why Jay also wondered when he saw Kay with his secretary. He noticed something different because Kay who's not very emotional showed various emotions that day. Because of that. Jay tried to intervene by encouraging Kay of testing the waters. Kay sighed. It's nothing, Jay. If it's nothing you won't even come here and leave your office. I know how workaholic you are that you can live in your office and work 24-7. It's been a week since EJ is supposed to be engagement but his dumb girlfriend run away with another man. And until now, Kay still hasn't told him even a single detail of what happened between him and Hyde. Kay went to Jay's workplace but is keeping his mouth shut while the nosy ass can't help but wonder what happened this time. Jay is an elementary teacher teaching about philosophy. He graduated psychology as his course and got extra degree in philosophy then continued his master's degree in psychology program. Kay who's seated in the couch inside Jay's office while staring blankly outside at the soccer field ignored his friend's sentiment. He's deep into thinking. Hyde has been avoiding him ever since they got back from the resort. He does his best and stays professional at work but keeps his distance from him alone. The little secretary doesn't even look at him in the eye whenever they talk and finishes his work effectively then gets off work early. Because of this, Kay's mind is in chaos and his heart is in danger of what he does not know of. Jay noticed how lost his friend is and realized how swept away he is by his secretary. This is bad. He mouthed as he shake his head watching Kay stare blankly at nowhere. He knew Kay is an exceptional person who excel in everything he does. He is calm when things go the way he ought to be but when it comes to the kind of things such as love his friend is oddly stupid for it and becomes this lost. 
Hyde has been keeping his distance away from me. K blurted out breaking his silence. Jay, who had been waiting for a week just to hear his story, dropped his jaw because of what he heard from his friend. Uh, no, scratch that. It should be because of his unexpected revelation and to top it all. How he's showing emotion telling him about the secretary. You, what? Jay almost yelled but immediately toned down his voice when he realized he's at school. He can't be disturbing any classes. But seriously, is K not kidding? Or, is he for real? Hey, wasn't that what you wanted? K assertively glanced at him. Jay thought his friend would yell at him, but he did something unthinkable. He just sighed and dropped his gaze down the floor. K, what? Jay is still in disbelief. He can't believe K is acting like what he is not supposed to. He should act like he won the lottery and not like he lost even his last single penny. He should be celebrating than what he's seeing he's doing now, feeling like he's in agony. This should be his moment with pure smile and happiness rather than what he's witnessing. K is sad, lost, and... Man, you're whipped, definitely. K just looked at him, low in spirit and in distress. Their plan that night was to make his secretary keep his distance away from his friend. K confessed to him how Hyde accidentally kissed him while he was drunk and it made K feel very much uneasy and awkward at work. Jay suggested to him to fire his secretary because that is what K usually do when he encountered problem with his past secretaries but it seemed no good for his current secretary because he's now experiencing the opposite. K seemed to want to keep him. Jay's plan was for K to kiss Hyde and make him feel weary but now that he sees the outcome, the kiss became a reason for K to only realize what he truly feels for the other guy. Their plan backfired on K. Kikazu is back at his company but he doesn't want to get inside his office yet. He's not ready to see Hyde avoiding him again. They were in the same space but he was treated like the air. Invisible. So he stayed at the pantry area, made some coffee and just keep on stirring until the coffee gets cold. He's not planning on drinking it, just want the fragrance of coffee to linger in his nose. It calms him down. Sir? One of his employee, Jaina went inside the pantry. He must be confused as to why was their stoic boss there when he doesn't usually come to that way. Would you like some cookies? Jano offered him a box of brown cookies he got from the snacks cabinet as a sign of acknowledging his presence. K shook his head. You can have it. Well, uh, I'll get back to work. Jano must have felt uncomfortable around him. The employee awkwardly walked out of the room. K has never been close to any of his employee and they see him as an intimidating person with a bad temperament. Cold and snob. He can't change their viewpoint of him. He's been like that when he graduated from college. That is also why many people are not fond of him especially the board of directors. He may have established his own company but he know most of his investors are his father's affiliates. K wanted to stand and depend in his own capabilities that is why he decided to distance himself away from his family's wealth, influence and money and made his own name but along the process he knew his father doesn't want to abandon him and so even if he doesn't want any help coming from his family, he still couldn't stop them and feign ignorance on it. After some more time, he got up and decided to get back to work. Work and personal life is different and any from these shouldn't interfere with the other. When he went inside his office, he expected Hyde to be sitting at his desk, doing his work and noticing his presence but decides to ignore him however when he's finally inside. Only the furniture and loads of works welcomed him. The person he wanted to see was nowhere to be found. On the other hand, Hyde is at the mall near their company. He had lunch with Jean and dragged him to stroll around for a little longer. Jano had piled up works at the company so they didn't bother him. Aside from that, Hyde wanted to be alone with Jean because he knew he'll be honest with questions lingering on Hyde's mind that needed to be answered urgently. Jean was also there at that night. He may know what exactly happened. Hyde can't squeeze out information from Jano as well. He won't tell him anything but keep his teasing smirk while listening to him rumble. But who were the one who sent me home? Hyde asked. They are now at an ice cream parlor to talk. It's already past one o'clock in the afternoon and they should be back to the office for work but right now, he doesn't really want to get back there. He does not want to see his boss. He's embarrassed knowing everything he did. Jean is just going with the flow. He's the kind of person who is easy to get along with. Oh, about that. I don't really know. Jano and I left earlier than the rest of you because Jano was so drunk. It was a lie. Jean and Jano agreed beforehand to not let Hyde know of what happened at their dinner gathering when they closed the deal with S Trading Company. They made a bet and Jean's new car is on the line in exchange for keeping his mouth shut. Hyde sigh out of frustration. He's seriously curious and wants to complete all the missing memories of that night but why is everything so hazy and now his only hope to have all his questions answered vanish away. The other guy also doesn't know. Is that so? Then who sent me home? He said to Jean and asked himself, his forehead creasing. The last thing I saw before we headed home was you were with Kay. He was assisting you. Jean said with his eyebrows nodded, trying to remember or actually giving Hyde hints because as it seemed for him, Hyde may have remembered a fragment of his memory that night. Hyde quickly turned to him with widened eyes. Really? He asked in disbelief. 
K assisted him on his first week at work? Is it another thing to add on the list of his embarrassing moments that involves his stoic boss? Hyde is now sinking in deep humiliation and more reason to maybe avoid his boss until he forgets about it? How utterly dumb can K? When Kikazu said Jay's plan is the worst, that it seemed to backfire instead of getting successful. This is what he means. Hai got back to the company building, inside their department. His smile is wide and his eyes were bright as usual. Kikazu's stare were too evident not to notice. He's stirring another cup of coffee that already turned cold inside the pantry room when his secretary went in with a dazzling smile on his lips. Secretary Hyde and the stoic boss locked eyes. Both were disturbed in each if their own thoughts and just as their stares went longer, Hyde's smile turned into a poker face. It caused Kay to raise an eyebrow but that won't affect him easily yet the person he is little secretary came in with is who makes him very uneasy. Gene. He called to the company's marketing supervisor Gene and gestured that he should come closer to him. Gene's eyebrows creased but obeyed. Do you need something from me, sir? Before Jean could walk to Kay's direction though it didn't fail to pass his sight and see how Hyde held Jean's arms to stop him. It made a burning feeling inside Kay arise. They talked in hushed voices which is why he couldn't hear them but one thing is for sure right now for Kay. He's starting to get annoyed. When they were done talking, Jean came closer to him. Is it right to come in late and drag my secretary in your mess? Kay asked in a low and serious tone. Gene is taken aback by how dark the aura surrounding Kay is as he speak. Well, um. It intimidated the employee. Gene scratched the back of his neck. Um. He wanted to reason out, but Kay spoke immediately cutting him off. Get back to your work or you won't like it when I get mad. It alarmed Gene. I get it. I'm going back. I'm going back. He nervously said, scurrying away on his feet. I hope this never happens again. Kay warned. His voice were spiteful and her gaze were dark. Jean nodded. I promise, he said and turned to Hyde who was then, just listening to them in his seat. He's not looking at their direction but his ears were focused on listening. I'll get going. Yeah, thank you for your time. I'll see you later, Hyde said. Jean left after that. Kay still feel the burning sensation in his heart and he really can't take it anymore so he got up from his seat, walked to Hyde's desk and knock on his table twice to get his attention. He didn't fail because Hyde finally looked up at him and even before his little secretary could look away, Kay told him what has been running on his mind since moments ago. Let's talk after work, Kay said or more on, he ordered with authority. The stoic boss is tired with Hyde's continuous avoidance when he sees him. Hyde swallowed the lump on his throat and was about to decline but he saw determination in his boss's eyes and the seriousness his voice held. It's leaving him with no other choice. Okay, is all he replied then returned his attention back to his work but in all honesty, he can't focus. Totally the talk after work is all that's gonna run on his mind until the clock strikes 5 o'clock indicating their work time's over for the day. He have a hunch the talk is gonna be about the kisses they have shared. Yes, Hyde finally remembered what an embarrassing act he did while he was drunk at the party of that night. That is why he was with Jean to get clarification of what happened but the other was only able to share a few information. Kay also went back to his table but kept his attention frozen on his little secretary who's focused doing his work. He's decided and determined to do this. He might be moving too fast although he has just realized his feelings but he can't take it if he lose another chance. Again. It happened before but with a different person and this time. He won't easily let go especially it's Hyde. It's a little bit different because this time. It's stronger. Let's go. Hyde looked at the time at the wall clock in his boss's room and his forehead furrowed. There are still like seven minutes before five but his boss is already asking him to go. What is he excited for? Kay is quite confusing and it started since they went to the resort. I'll just arrange my things, he answered. I will wait for you outside, Kay said. Hyde nodded as a response. Once Hyde was done he didn't get out yet instead he tried to calm himself by doing a continuous inhale-exhale practice and when he's ready. He finally opened the door and he found Kay, leaning in the wall outside his office, one hand in his left pocket while the other is holding his phone. He slowly glanced at him and it made Hyde's heart pound. Ah. Is he that terrified because of his embarrassing moments? He wanted to hide himself away from his boss, if only the ground would crack open and swallow him in an instant. Kay didn't say anything, he gestured, turning his head by the way to the door that they should go already. Where are we going to talk? Can't we talk now? I'm here? Hyde questioned as he doesn't want to prolong their talk and suffer from embarrassment. K 
Kay looked at him as if questioning if he's serious about what he said. Let's go to the nearest coffee shop, not here in the office. He traveled his gaze around his employees obviously gossiping about them. Nah, not in that kind of environment will he ever talk about it. Hyde just nodded and followed along. They went to the ground parking lot and rode Kay's car. He has a lot of questions but kept silent and just want to end the day most especially their conversation that hasn't even started. The drive wasn't long. They arrived at their destination for about five minutes. They got out from the car and Hanbin's jaw almost dropped because of seeing the place they were in. He turned to Kay. I thought we'll just go to a coffee shop. Yeah. Kay responded not looking at him, rather just walking his way inside and Hyde is still just following along. But why are we here at a fancy restaurant? He asked, shocked. Kay stopped on his track then gazed down at him, their height difference being visible. I'll treat you to dinner. Is there any problem with that? Do you have any other plans? Hyde is shock on another level. Is it like being stuffed before getting killed? And does he have to get humiliated at such a grandiose place? Gad, he's getting paranoid. Well, none. Let's go inside. When they went inside, the serene ambience and sophistication of the place welcomed them. The interior designs are exceptional from the classic central chandeliers that shows how exclusive and hideously expensive the place is. Can Hyde even swallow the food he'll be treated to eat or will he choke on his own saliva from just seeing the price of each food on the menu? Actually, he's already sweating profusely even if the place is air-conditioned. He's worried for how their conversation will go. When they were finally seated, Kay was the one who ordered. Hyde was just silent trying to absorb everything that's going on. Wasn't it just a simple talk? He will just get scolded but why do they even have to talk in such an expensive place? It's making him wary and worried. Sir? Can't. Obviously. He's cut off from talking. K. Call me K whenever we're off work. I'm not your boss right now, just the same simple person like you. Hi does not know how to read K. He thought he's just a cold person that has a very bad temperament but now he's confused. They are just an employee and employer. They could be friends but K does not seem to befriend any of his employees. He's aloof with them. What is happening? Er yeah. So um. Hyde doesn't know how to start their conversation. Same goes with Kay. How is he gonna say it? He said to himself while waiting for his secretary outside his office a while ago that he would have to be firm and dominant. He should man up and just say it straight out. But he's lost for words. He's nervous. Let's wait for the food. Eat first and then. Talk, Kay said instead. Hyde is internally screaming. Like. He wanted to end it so badly but Kay is prolonging his agony. Not long after, their food arrived. Can we talk while eating? I, I need to catch the last bus to get home. He tried to reason out. Don't worry, I could give you a ride home. Eat first. Why is he so adamant and persistent? Hyde is running out of energy trying to escape Kay so he ended up eating. They ate in total silence though he could feel Kay's gaze on him. He tried ignoring it. When they were done, Hyde quickly spoke. I'm sorry! because he can't take it anymore. Kay was shocked and confused at the same time. He wanted to ask as to why was his little secretary apologizing but Hyde continued to speak, of a topic he had no clue about. Sir, I'm very sorry for uh, kissing you that night. I was just really drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. When Kay heard that, he realized instantly that Hyde finally remembered what happened the night at the dinner gathering. Maybe he also remembered it was Kikazu that sent him home. Hyde, Kay called out. Hyde paused and looked at his boss waiting for however he will get scolded. Calm down, that is not why we are here for. Rather, Kay said in a calm manner. It baffled Hyde, wondering then what is the reason why his boss wanted to talk to him. Isn't it about the kisses? I thought, if it's not that, what do you need me here for? If it's not about his embarrassing acts, what else? I like you. Huh? Wait. That came out of the blue. Hyde is trying to digest what he heard. Did he hear that right? Did his boss just said? Hyde's eyes widened as he take in what Kay said. He's perplexed by that. He looked at him still with widened eyes, doubting the person in front of him. Kay got shy so he lowered his gaze and bit his lower lips then spoke again. I think. I really like you since. Well. He faked a cough before continuing. We shared few kisses. He said, almost whispering. And that is when Hyde's jaw dropped. Literally. How did it turn from this to that?
Nine Signs of Falling in Love. In an unguarded moment, his heart fluttered. Secretary Hyde's face were beet red. He threw an exaggerated look of disbelief at the man sitting across from him, then randomly pointed at the plate of food they were having. What is this, sir? The stoic boss glanced at it and said, Steak! Hyde nodded calmly then pointed in another direction and asked, What about this? A flower sitting prettily on a vase. Secretary Hyde nodded once more and pointed at himself. And this? My secretary. That I like. Before going on pointing wherever again, Hyde was caught off guard because the words that left Kikaz's mouth were smooth, like it was natural for him. His eyes were even gleaming as the dimmed lighting of the room shone on him, illuminating his handsome face. It caused Hyde's heartbeat to race, but he collected himself immediately. What about this? Again, Hyde pointed at himself with a hardened expression on his face. Sigh. A person. What kind of person? Kay looked at him with a wry smile and replied, A man. All the answers are correct. It seems to me that you are in a right state of mind, he said curtly. Then please repeat what you told me a while ago. Kikazu looked at Hyde's face and said, You're not taking me seriously. There was a hint of disappointment in his voice and his curio's eyes boiled down to sadness. The gleam was no more when he gazed at him. Hyde watched Kay's expression change and bit his own lips. He remained silent. I won't repeat myself thrice. You heard it. That's enough. Kikazu's eyes darted from his secretary to a couple that was placed in his line of sight. Feeling stuffed, K turned his gaze back at Hyde, loosening his top button in the process. I like you. For the third time tonight, the word I like you was heard. After he said his feelings to his little secretary, his secretary just stared at him, completely speechless, and then all he blurted out was A. You're kidding me. Then you would have laughed. But, sir, why? How? Just because we kissed? Kay is offended by what he heard. The few kisses they have shared might have been one of the reasons why he started feeling the way he feels for him, but of course it is not the sole reason. Kay is not that shallow, but it's the way that Hyde sees him and project his confession that made him dejected. Is he that shallow of a person in his eyes? No, not just because of that. Then what is the reason? Why would you even fall for me? Kay's forehead creased. Are you doubting yourself or are you doubting my ability to choose whom to love? His secretary is rendered speeches again, still thinking that their conversation doesn't make any sense. Hyde, do you even need a reason to love? Do you always need a reason for everything? Can't it be that I fell for you and it's just that? No reason, no conditions, no what ifs or buts. Sir. It's Kay whenever it's just the two of us. I'm not your boss right now. Kay runs a hand across his soft, dark hair, whilst licking his dry lips. He saw how Hyde inhaled and then exhaled maybe trying to calm himself before looking at him in the eyes. Yes, Kay. So you are not my boss right now. I won't hold myself back. And yes, I need a reason of how come you fell for me. And you just said you liked me a while ago now I converted to love? Everything came so sudden and quick that I don't know how to respond to this. On top of it all, you said you liked me since we've kissed. Is that all? Is that where you started to fall? It had a major effect on Hyde, Kikaza's out-of-the-blue confession that he never imagined he will receive. Kay swallowed the lump on his throat because he doesn't know what to say. He thought it was easy to confess like those in the movies when the main Lee confesses. The other would say yes, I like you too and they lived happily ever after. That's all that Kay sees and knows. He really is inexperienced with this kind of thing. Sigh. What is your problem? Again? Jay asked Kay who's entering his office. His friend didn't give him a heads up of why he's there right now, but Jay knows something is up again and with that he mean Kay's love life. His little secretary to be precise. Kay sat at the couch and there goes his lost behavior again, staring blankly at nowhere. Well, last night, I... Kay looks devastated as he struggled to find his words and continue what he's talking about. Yeah? Last night you, what happened? Jay asked, concerned, and he put down the test paper he is currently checking to focus on his friend. Walking towards to the single couch next to Kay, he sat down. I confessed to him last night. Well, yes, of course you confessed. Wait, you mean you confessed? His friend nodded to confirm what he heard was an utter truth. 
Jay became speechless that he started at him for a moment. Never mind the class he might have disturbed because. What he just heard is a shocking news. I thought we are just at the part of finding out your feelings and now you are telling me you already confessed. Yes, he remembers just when Kay was still confused of how he feels for his secretary, how he questions himself what is Hyde's role to his life. And then right now. Isn't it that yesterday you told me I am whipped? Definitely. Jay recalled their conversation yesterday and yes he said that but even so. Kay had the answer to his own questions and now it appears to be that he thus far knows the answer. But, well, that was fast, he said, stupefied by the fact that right now, Kay acts different rather rash for Hyde. He remembers before that Kay would dwell on finding out his real feelings for that certain someone he almost got serious with and Jay is glad they didn't end up together. It is astonishing. So how did it go? Does he feel the same way? Kay's expression saddened. Jay is again, appalled. That's the problem, he said as he recollect what exactly happened after he said he like him. The memory of yesterday keeps lingering in his mind that it kept him awake last night. So he rejected you, huh? Jay stated once Kay was done telling him how his confession story goes. Yeah, but I still want him. No way I'm giving up when my feelings only got stronger when he rejected me. Jay shook his head, skeptical about his friend's sentiment. Are you that? In love with him? This is the first time he had seen him like this. What in the world happened? Yes, his friend answered in a firm tone. Now that I see it, the problem was actually you didn't think of his feelings for you. Do I need to take that to account? Of course, Kay. Confessing does not always mean you get your desired answer. It is just your feelings that became known in heights. As we both are aware of, he does not feel the same way about you. Jay carefully said as he doesn't want to hurt his friend. What do I have to do then? You really want to get him to like you? There is no other option but to get him to like me because there is no way I am throwing away or burying my feelings for him. The only courses of action to take is to get him to feel the same way I do. Huh. Jay nodded but is doubtful still. He knows falling in love would come out of the blue. It would strike you in the most unexpected moment. Come on Jay, help me. No, what do you think of me? A problem solver for your every situation that calls for me to find a solution for? You studied psychology and now teaching philosophy. You know so much about life or is something I lack about. All I know is how to generate profit. Talking about that, I'll help you if you promise to help me back. Geez, I think you'll finally get me into investing on your clinic this time. Will you? That'd be great if I could open my own clinic by next month if you would really help me with the expenses. Kay shook his head in disbelief. You are such a headache. You are more than a headache. I thought you played around enough to know how to tame a person you like. Fooling around and falling in love is different in every sense. Kay had flings before, sure. He had few romances, but none of it was serious. Only now that he felt it, that more than just a fleeting feeling is what Hyde make him feel. And this is far different than other flings. It is incomparable to that. It is more than just the emotions, and he knows he got it bad this time. Okay, but first of all, if I were to help you, I want to make sure this time you are not really fooling around because Kay. You are old enough to know how you truly feel and the person you are in love with is none other than your secretary. Both of you work in the same workplace. It is hard to avoid conflicts in any relationship and I don't want your personal life to affect your work. I know what hardships you encountered before achieving everything you have especially your company. I know that and I am not just playing around. Both of us know this has never happened before. Yes, that is why. I would like to assess your true emotions. By how? Let's see if you feel the nine signs that you're falling in love, according to psychology. K trust J. It is his field of expertise and also, he is aiming to open his own clinic that is why he needs this practice but he can't help to feel skeptical somehow. J pulled out something in his drawer. It was a book with the title nine signs that you're falling in love. He skimmed through the pages before speaking. I will cite the signs and you tell me what you think of Hyde with every signs. You would only say whatever that comes first in your mind. Are we clear? Kay nodded as he set his mind to Jay's questions. First of all, you can't stop staring at them. Without thinking twice. Why wouldn't you want to look into the eyes of someone who you experience as the most beautiful and attractive person in your world? He says. Jay is caught off guard by Kay's answer. He did not expect that for the first question. You abandon your usual activities. 
K remembered how he left his work yesterday just to seek his friend so he would know how he truly feels for Hive, knowing how workaholic he is. I even left work early yesterday just to talk with him. I crave for his presence whenever he's not around. You don't mind when they do something unattractive. When Hyde vomited and looked as pale as a vampire, he is still the cutest person in my eyes. I remember the day just his cute appearance made my heart skip a beat. Jay is again dumbfounded. He didn't expect that. Time flies when you're together. Eight hours of his working hours with me need to get extended until when I get home. I need him there, tied up next to me. Jay's eyes widened as he scolded Kay. That is not what it means. But that is how I feel. Jay shook his head in disbelief as he continued. They can do no wrong. He have always been perfect in my eyes, with all past secretaries I had. Hyde is the only perfect one who suited his job for me. The last four signs I will tell you but you have to assess yourself. Do it while you're with him. Jay said as he wrote down the four signs remaining in a sheet of paper for Kay and handed it to him after. Kay checked and read them. Sign number seven is the one I always feel whenever I'm around him. There is no denying for that. Jay almost face-palmed hearing him spoke about it. Kay is. Jeez. Pervert. Kay looked at Jay with a playful smirk on Hus' face. Only for Hyde. Then he stood up and said his goodbyes. He'll need to start planning his moves. Why do you seem happy now, though? We're still assessing your feelings. Jay, you know what? You're of a big help. What? Thanks for this assessment. Now I finally know what to do to get him to like me back. And after that, Kay stormed out of his office before Jay could even lecture him. Hyde sighed. The night has fallen. It was peacefully quiet and serene, but one heart is disturbed and one person cannot find himself to rest. 498. 499. 500. Ah! Hyde is counting sheep as he rolled around in his bed then suddenly falls down the floor. Ah! I'm so clumsy! He tried to get up but felt the pain from falling and thought that This is why. You should be careful of yourself especially from falling because most of the times. It hurts. The conversation that he had with Kay is all that's been running on his mind. He can't seem to get it off especially Kay's confession. It is exactly what's keeping him up for the night. He tried to sit and lean on his bed then looked at the time at the clock placed on his side table. It's already 12.01 of midnight. This is the first time in a while that he is up thinking of unnecessary thoughts. Unnecessary? Is he really just going to brush off the idea that his boss actually confessed? Said he liked him while looking at him with misty eyes and that shy smile? That is hard to ignore. He has been confessed to before. It's nothing new. Before realizing his sexuality he had a girlfriend that lasted for about a month and then they broke up because he found out he didn't really like her. They are still in good terms even now. They became friends after all. But when questioned about his relationship with men, Hyde didn't really like anyone enough to be on a relationship with them. However, Kay is a different case. He is Hyde's boss. There may be no rule in their company forbidding office romance but he is aware how it'll affect their reputation with the other employees. The world is cruel and every action has equivalent consequences. Hyde knows to himself he is not ready for any of that or should he say, he's cowering away. One more thing that is holding him back is that, his family, he is not in good terms with his father. He left home not long ago and still hasn't returned for about three years now. Sure he gets news from trusted friends but he has not set foot in his home for that whole three years that had passed. He find it hard to return though he already forgave his father but he himself is yet to give his apology with the conflict both of them argued about. And thinking about his father, he knows he'll be an obstacle they have to pass if he were to date Kay. Wait, is he now considering upon dating Kay? No, it can't happen. They can't happen. He snatched a pillow on his bed and then, hey -ya. he screamed through it, easing his heightened emotions. Sleep is trying to play with him. If he can't rest for tonight then so be it. Hyde got up and decided to get out on his balcony for some fresh air. When he got out, he huffed and inhaled the refreshing air as the wind blew and shivers went down his spine. The air was cold and he gave a little cough when the air started smelling funny. Hyde looked at his left side, finding his neighbor's cigarette smoke flying into thin air. Hyde's continuous cough made the neighbor notice him. His eyes bored into him nonchalantly while Hyde waved his hands into the air, trying to chase away the smoke. Go inside and sleep if you don't want coughing in the smell. Rude. Hyde was taken aback by what he heard from his familiar neighbor, Sage Casper. There's something Hyde cannot understand. It seems that Sage is well off. He's a designer and he's in Kay's circle. So why doesn't this smoker find a better place? Where they were staying is a rundown building, only waiting for a time to be demolished. If Sage can afford a better one, why does he stay there? 
I can't sleep. Hyde blurted, gazing at Sage to check his reaction and saw him turning to him with eyebrows raised. Then he waved his hand gesturing him to go on and he would listen. Someone confessed to me today. Sage stared at Hyde with a blank look on his face. That's a good thing. He commented. Unless you don't like them. He said with mock incredulity as his hand went to ruffle his hair. Hyde paused with thoughts running on his mind and what came out of his mouth were different from his thoughts. It's a guy. Hyde said as he eyed the other guy's reaction to which was hidden away by facing down the floor. He sighed as he began tapping on the metal reclining of the balcony, creating a rhythmical sound. Then he said, He's straight. You know love doesn't have any boundaries. Sage were about to begin his monologue about gay love, but what came out of the secretary's mouth shocked him. And I'm gay. Sage's face lifted in a hurry. His eyebrows furrowed together and his cigarette were almost slipping out of his mouth because of his gaped expression. The silence covered the atmosphere after that. In the midst of it, Sage, whose gaze drooped on his cigarette, looked at the secretary who were just staring outside and mindlessly tapping on the metal reclining. With a nonchalant tone, he asked, Want a puff? Collecting the cigarette from his mouth to his pointing and middle finger, waving it at the lost and confused Hyde. Sage only brought the cigarette to be a joke, but when Hyde nodded with curious eyes, then it became a reality. Sage traipsed over to Hyde. There was a reclining of the balcony in between them then draped an arm around his shoulder. His cigarette was put right into Hyde's closed mouth. Open up. With hesitation if his decision is right, Hyde nervously bit into the tip of the cigarette. His lips lingered there as Sage watched him with a mocking grin in his face. His eyes were gleaming. But Hyde pulled away without puffing, only wetting the tip. While Sage bursted out in laughter, his hands were tapping his stomach in action. Ha 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 ha. You're very funny. Secretary Hyde. I, I can't. Hyde watched the brute with unamused glare, but after all the laughing and jokes from Sage, his expression changed to become serious and what he uttered next only made Hyde stay wide awake until morning, different thoughts still heavy on his mind. Who are you? Jano shrieked when he saw Hyde walking like a zombie. He's lagged and there are dark circles lingering under his eyes. He looks so awful. What happened to you, Mr. Secretary? Jean exclaimed as soon as he saw Hyde, looking so exhausted. Hyde just waved them off. He didn't even spare them a glance and went straight to Kay's office. His office mates looked at him in bewilderment and followed him with their gaze. What happened to the perfect secretary? Jano asked Jean. Jean shrugged but is also curious. For more than a month that they have been with Hyde, this is the first time they saw him in an awful state, not in his normal self and that lagging behavior. He looked like he did not get a good night's sleep. Maybe the CEO lashed out on him. You know how Sir Kay is. I think even the most perfectly suited secretary is going to get fed up with him the soonest. You see, it seems like Hyde is also on the verge of quitting. He explained his theory to Jano while both of them shook their head thinking how long can Hyde still withstand their perfectionist boss. Poor Hyde. Jano said sympathizing with the secretary that may lose his title on his own will. If I were him, I'd resign at this very moment. Jean said disapprovingly. What a pity. Amongst all secretary that their boss had. Hyde is the most efficient and his personality is really the best. They also became close with him and can't stand to see him suffer in the hands of the CEO. They went to their work after some gossiping. While Hyde ducked his head on his desk trying to get some sleep, Kay is not there yet so maybe he would spare even a short amount of rest for himself. But failed. No way he would be able to sleep with something bugging his mind. Lunch came and they didn't see even the shadow of their boss. Everything today is the first time they are currently facing. How come the workaholic boss is absent without any further notice? Is there some kind of an event called Experience First Times today? If you are fed up and can't tolerate him anymore, we are with you upon your decision to resign. Hyde, that is totally the best choice for you. Jano said while watching Hyde stare blankly at his food. They are eating but Jano and Jean are almost finished whereas Hyde has not even ate a mouthful. It looks like he doesn't have any appetite to eat. Jano and Jean exchanged glances and shook their head at the same time. Are you sure resigning is the best option? Hyde asked, sighing continuously. Jano and Jean nodded quickly. We don't want you to suffer anymore especially if you can't really take it but just thinking about you leaving is already saddening me. Jano smiled wearily. It's for you to decide, but what exactly happened that you're being like this today? Has he yelled at you when you guys left early yesterday? Hyde looked at Jean for his question. He pursed his lips before answering. I wish it is only that but... He shook his head. Jano's eyebrows furrowed. Had he done so much worse? Hyde nodded sadly. Much, much worse that it kept me awake for the whole night. He said something that haunted me even in my dreams, and that is why I couldn't sleep. He dramatically exclaimed, making his two office mate misunderstand. While Hyde was thinking about the confession, product manager Jano and marketing supervisor Jean were already hating on their stoic boss, Kikazu. Jano and Jean's heart got drenched in sadness and their expression softened. Oh, how cruel can their boss be? 
they thought with their hearts tightening. If it's like that, can you still persevere? I hope you could. I remember you once told me this is the best job and workplace that suited your conditions. It would be hard for you to just leave it be, right? Hyde nodded. Yes, so resigning is out of the question. He sighed and brushed his hands to his face out of frustration. Why is Kay so hard to handle? The two friends was taken aback, shocked that Hyde called their boss only by his name. It's another first time to hear Secretary Hyde addressing their boss with his nickname and without a title. Hyde is a respectful person but maybe this time he really need to let it out. Hyde can't help but to sigh and sigh again. Why did his boss had to confess so out of the blue? He did not expect that. K is like a puzzle and Hyde has a hard time reading him. Guys, what will be your reaction if... He struggled to find the right words to ask his two friends whose all ears are ready to listen. The weight Hyde felt eased down now that he somehow talked to other people but he can't just simply blurt out their boss confessed to him. He'd seem like a weirdo trying to get attention. No way they will believe that. If, what? Jano asked, curious. Hyde swallowed the lump in his throat first. If an unexpected person suddenly confesses he likes you in the most unexpected way, what would you do? Be happy, date them and create the most wonderful relationship ever. Jano said dreamily, without any hesitation. Gene is not amused with his friend's answer so he elbowed him softly in his side. That is the most ridiculous thing I had ever heard. He said, bashing Jano and returned to Hyde. Give us a wider context if you want some serious answer. Your question is quite unclear, but from that question, um, my answer will be of course it would be classified in two reactions. If I liked the person, I would be glad and joyful they confessed. I would then grab the chance to take our relationship to the next level, but if I don't like them, then, I would feel awkward. Yes, I would appreciate the feelings, but as you said it is the most unexpected person. Then that is more reason to feel uncomfortable, especially if you are always with them. I don't know how will I act when we are together. Jean answered truthfully. Hyde is trying to absorb the answer caressing his cheeks. At the end of the day, the decision will still end up in hands. It is up for you. Wait, did they demand for an answer at that instant they confessed or gave you time to think about it? Jano now answered with sense. And it made Hyde guessing, remembering how Kay confessed yesterday. He was abrupt. Hyde was dumbfounded. Kay should have taken it slowly so that he wouldn't be shocked. Hyde thinks if Kay only hinted without confessing so suddenly. He might have considered him, but the way it came out of the blue and how Kay acted like he wanted them to get in a relationship in an instant is what bothers Hyde. He shook his head to answer Jabum's question. And Kay said his reason for starting to notice him was because of the kiss. How can Hyde be sure Kay's intention is pure without any malice of playing around? His boss is of no ordinary person. He is a son of a multi-billionaire. He himself has established his own name and what about Hyde? They are not kids anymore and Hyde is only interested with a serious relationship not with a fling or a pastime love. How do you feel about the person? It is important to know your own feelings, of how you feel towards them. Jean's follow-up question made Hyde's mind be in chaos and his heart to beat faster. Now that it is brought up, how does Hyde feel about Kay? Does he, like him too, you feel unusually optimistic? Sign number 6, you feel unusually optimistic. Times Corporation employees are now on a terrified state. They don't know if they are dreaming or if it was a nightmare because what's currently happening honestly cannot be classified as reality. Kikazuli Isles is smiling today. Their boss who's mostly poker-faced, with a solemn expression, buried on his pile of works, only knows how to get angry and nitpick on the incompetence of others. Their stoic boss, today, he stepped inside the company with a smile plastered on his lips, beaming as he greet his employees and what's the most shocking was to hear him giving them encouragement. What happened? The world must be ending. Because that is what's happening right now. Their boss is walking around every department just to greet everyone a good morning personally and although his smile is quite awkward because it seemed forced, it's his enthusiasm that gets them. He looks determined for an unknown reason. Hey, Gene the morning sun is giving me a bright vibe. Isn't today a great day? Gene is greeted by their weird CEO. He even put an arm around his shoulder and Gene felt goosebumps. He smiled and nodded awkwardly. Kay didn't go to the office yesterday and all of them thought something bad might have happened. Only to see their CEO acting very strange today. And now they can confirm that something bad really happened as to why he was acting like that. Like some estranged spirit has possessed him. Sir, did something good happen? Jano mustered up his courage to ask although that is what he asked but in the back of his mind he is actually worrying if something not good happened. Who in the world would ever think their CEO is going to greet them a good morning? Not in a million chance, but they got it today. Kay is about to answer his employee's question when the main door of their office opened and from there the answer to Jano's question showed himself. 
With just a mere sight of Hyde it is already uplifting Kay's mood. Kay watched as Hyde entered the office, dazzling and has gotten more attractive in his eyes. Hyde is dressed in a black suit. Underneath that he's wearing a pink shirt that defines his bright aura although when Kay looked at his face, he does not appear to be in the most good condition. There are dark circles under his eyes and despite the fact that Kay does not want to assume but his mind says otherwise he thinks it's because of their conversation that made his bright secretary be like that. The brightness is still there partnered with a grim expression. Secretary Hyde looks like he's in distress. It made Kay worried. Secretary Hyde is drained out. He could only take a nap every minute or so because he keeps on waking up with the memory of him kissing Kay. The humiliating event where he kissed his boss while he was drunk keeps on popping on his mind. In the first place, it appears to be his fault why Kay took notice of him. It's the alcohol's effect. He tried blaming the alcohol he drunk that night. He'll never ever drink again, he swear to himself. Because of that one certain mistake, he's now paying the price for it and he can't take it anymore. Kay didn't show himself yesterday. After confessing to him he didn't have the courage to see him. Is that it? What a coward! Now it's only making things clearer for him. His boss might think he's a dumb and inexperienced person when it comes to the game of love. Well, he got that correct in all aspects. Hyde has never played around. He takes relationships seriously. However the way Kay acted made it look as though Hyde's viewpoint of him is accurate. Is Kay really that shallow of a person? Hyde entered their office in a low spirit. He didn't have enough and proper rest but that does not mean he will neglect his work. As long as the work is still there, he would always do his best for it. Never mind the distraction that is making his mind in frenzy and his heart fall into pits of confusion. But oh how well does fate plays with human emotions. The person who confessed but didn't show himself yesterday revealed himself right in front of his very eyes early in this morning. Hide! Good morning! His boss greeted him, unusually brighter than how he normally is. Kay's eyes were glowing contrary to him who have grown eye bags. His aura seems to be shining while Hyde is on the verge of breaking down from exhaustion. Hyde was about to walk past and ignore his boss but remembered they were not the only ones that are there. A lot of other employees are watching him, waiting for his response to their boss's greetings. So Hyde faked a smile and said, Good morning to you too, sir. He emphasized the last word to indicate how they are in the office and right now. Their role is nothing more than that of a boss and an employee. Hyde hurriedly went inside Kay's office. This is one thing he does not like about Times Corporation. Why does a secretary like him need to be with the boss 24-7 or stay with him until work time's over? He only have his own desk inside of the boss's office and although it is spacious, Hyde now felt the need to own a space personally for him. Just a desk outside Kay's office will do. Just to be able to breathe freely. He merely sat down and then the door opened revealing the person he does not want to see the most. Kay looked at him but Hyde got up. Escaping his gaze, he went to the mini kitchen in Kay's office and brewed a coffee. You're avoiding me. But Hyde forgot they are in the same place. Kay followed him. He didn't spare him a glance. He acted as if he didn't hear anything and continued what he was doing. And you're intentionally doing that. Kay is hurt. He is. He tapped his foot impatiently on the floor while crossed his arms over to his chest as he watched Secretary Hyde's back that was turned on him on purpose. But Hyde doing this only sparked his motivation to do what he needs to. Ever since yesterday, he is now determined to woo Hyde. If you will start upon courting him then why not? If it's for the better he would gladly do so. And not only will he do it to make Hyde feel the same way he does but he will do as to show him that what he feels is true and he's sincere of his intentions. Hyde won't have to doubt him any longer in the future. He wants him to be secured, to trust him and, of course, feel the same way he do. He read a copy of the book Jay was reading yesterday for his assessment and one clause of the six signs lingered on his mind. The act of positive anticipation helps reduce feelings of stress. And right now, he wants to be optimistic for the outcome of his plans on wooing Hyde. Secretary Hyde finally turned to look at him when he's done with making the coffee case smiled at him but his smile completely vanished away when his little secretary just handed him the cup of coffee and said, Your coffee sir, I hope you have a great morning and a good day ahead. With a sarcastic smile then he walked away after that. Kay quickly put down the coffee and ran to follow Hyde. Hyde, spare me a moment, let's talk. He demanded but Hyde continued to ignore him. Kay sighed out of defeat. Hyde is firm. Okay, since you don't want to talk to me then at least just hear me out, he said. Hyde still didn't look at him but he carried on to talk. 
I know you are still doubting me, of my feelings for you that is why I talked to one of my friend and gathered advice, he helped me discern my own feelings and I, well I realized how I don't really like you. Finally, at the mention of that, Hyde shot up a glance at him but it was a death glare. Sir, the work time has just started. Mind if we work seriously first since that is why we are in the office and not in some playground to fool around. There was some spice in his voice. Kay beamed at that. Hyde appeared to be in confusion too. How he acts reminded him of how he was in a state of in denial for the first three weeks since Hyde started messing up his mind. He's feeling good at this. Work can wait, but not my feelings for you. Hyde halted from doing his work and Kay saw how his eyebrows furrowed. I realized from assessing my feelings that like is nothing but an understatement because love is the right emotion to represent how you made me feel. In not a span of about a month, you were able to tame the stoic guy that I am. I don't usually show emotions or be filled with expression. That is not who I am, but when I'm with you, I discovered many sides of me. I started to know my hidden self. Kay confessed heartily, his eyes showing another gleam, not wanting anything else but to share his feelings for the other guy. Hyde is rendered speechless. His deathly glare slowly softened and at the pit of his stomach he feels butterflies in it all because of what he heard from Kay. If you would still demand for a reason why I fell for you then do you mind if you stay with me for the rest of my life? Hyde is starting to cringe, urging himself not to show it. This is not how the Kei he knows speak. Because the Kikazu he know would just look at you, he won't even spare a glance your way, wouldn't even speak to you if it's not for a necessary matter. But right in front of him, in his very eyes, only for his sight to see. Hyde is experiencing and seeing the different side of K. Because one day or a month is not an enough time for me to list down every single aspect of yours that attracted me, and I would spend the rest of it finding out more of those reasons why I fell for you. The pessimistic view Hyde thought of K dispersed in an instant all because of those flowery words. It would be hard to deny because that is the sweetest thing he had ever heard in his very existence. However it is not the sole reason. Also because he saw the sincerity K failed to show when he first confessed. Now with this kind of confession, not in a fancy restaurant with a million dollars surrounding or a plate full of diamond worth of the food they ate, in that simple office where their day orbit around, just the two of them, Hyde felt strange emotions he could not name. It's the most magical thing he had ever encountered in his life. I'll think about it. It's been a week that Times Corporation's stoic boss, Kikazu Isles, was finally granted the honor of courting his bright and perfect secretary, Hyde Anderson. Yes. Hyde finally accepted his boss's confession and agreed to be courted although he is not yet certain of how he truly feel. He knows he will get there one of these days. He know he will. Hyde, have you scheduled my meeting with Mr. Park already? However, work is still work and professionals need to stay true and undisturbed with doing their job correctly. Hyde walked to Kay's desk where the stoic boss is. Although it was not visible in his face, his aura is still blooming and showed him the timeline schedule his boss had for the week also showing with it the scheduled meeting with their prospect investor for another big project they will launch by the end of the year. K is seriously reading the schedule, imprinting it on his mind. Secretary Hyde could read it aloud for him but K preferred to read it by himself. Hmm. My sched is fully packed for the week. K said to himself, furrowing his brows then looked at Hyde with an anticipating expression. How about you? Do you have some time to spare for me? Then carried on to ask giving back the tablet where the scheduled timeline was listed. Hyde's eyebrows raised at Kay's question, wondering as he received the tablet. Why is he asking that for? Well, he will not get the answer without asking him about it. My Sunday is always a free day. He answered, and he saw how Kay's lips curled into a small yet genuine smile. Sunday it is, then, he declared. Sunday what? Hyde asked, curious. K beamed happily. Let's have a date, he said. The stoic boss is excited. Although his expression doesn't show it, his aura completely gives it away. However, Hyde is sorry to break out to him and burst his bubble by saying, It's my time for myself. I need to do the laundry, do grocery shopping and clean my apartment. It's the one of the two day I have in a week to spend my day on that place I spend money on. Hyde said blatantly. He could even taste the bitterness on his own mouth. He had been wanting to find a different place but where he is currently staying at is the closest to their company and also his neighbors are pretty nice than on his last neighborhood. It's hard to find a place where good people also lives at. So although the price is high there for everything under the accommodation, he still chooses to stay. I would send a housekeeper to make all that. Just. Let's go on a date on Sunday. 
K responded stubbornly, and it triggered Hyde's frugal self. Money is not everything, sir. I don't need your housekeeper. I could do it by myself. And proceeded to lecture his boss. I know you're independent, but what about our date? Hyde looked at him, thinking. It could wait. Then he said, and it made Kay's shoulder droop down because of disappointment. Kay had been preparing where their date would take place. He was ready to rent the whole place and prepare surprises. But Hyde didn't want to go. Did Kay move rashly again? Why is Hyde so hard to please? However, Kay won't give up just like that. Lunchtime came. Kay is left in the office while his little secretary went to eat with his friends. Hmm. Jay replied sleepily. Kikaza called his friend to ask again for another advice. He wanted to go on a date with Hyde because that is the first step on his list of him wooing his little secretary. How do you invite someone out on a date? He asked while playing with his swivel chair. He heard his friend groan on the other line. K, you disturbed my peaceful sleep just to ask about that. You're old enough to know. And then he hanged up the call on him. K stared at his phone. Jay just woke up? It's already 12 in the afternoon. He doesn't have class today? K is about to get up and go out to also have his lunch when his phone rung. He checked the caller ID and laughed when Jay's name registered. His friend can't resist him. He knows. Ha ha ha. You got an idea already? He heard him sigh. Just simply ask him. It doesn't need to be grandiose or what. But that's exactly what I did. I asked him out earlier to have a date on Sunday and he declined saying Sunday is his day for himself. Ugh, I think you're a hopeless case, Kay. Just marry your damn money so that I won't have to be your problem solver when it comes to all your love trouble. If you say so, then. I was actually ready to invest on your clinic. I think it's a great venture. Oh, come on, man. I'm just kidding. I am your most willing friend to help you with your love trouble. Yeah. Kay heard shifting noises in Jay's line. Jay got up from bed. He just woke up. He's actually very tired because of their activities yesterday and was planning to sleep all day, but his friend is bothering him. So tell me, what exactly is your plan for your date? Well, I wanted to rent the whole amusement park that Hoon's family owns. We'll spend the day there. Ugh, boring. Jay said, insulting his friend's idea, but actually it kind of sound like a brilliant plan, but Kay just really make it sound so boring. That is for teens, man. You're like what? 25 and do you think Hyde would like that place? From what I observed with his personality, amusement park is not the best suited place for a date if it were Hyde. Your secretary is simple. He doesn't like extravagant things. He wanted plain but memorable something that goes with emotions and not what meets the eye. Now that Jay pointed it out, Kay realized that Hyde is a sentimental person. He's very emotional and empathetic while him on the contrary. He's void of any emotions. Kay admit only now that he sees. He is also capable of showing those many emotions and Hyde is the reason for. Then what kind of date do you think would work for him? In what place? He acknowledged that amusement park may not be the best idea especially when it comes to Hyde and also, it's only now that it comes to his mind. He actually doesn't know his little secretary that much. He knows just a few things about him but those information are those that came from his resume. Even his likes and dislikes, he have no idea about. Maybe he should run a background check on him? Or, it might not be a good idea. Jay didn't respond yet. There is some noise in his background that Kay could hear and it looks as though he's talking to someone. Jeez, I swear this is not a healing camp. We don't meditate. They only torture us more with those lame and hard activities. My God! I'd rather teach than do those awful things. Jay ranted as long as he got back to his phone. Kay wondered where his friend is. Why? He asked. We're at Palawan. The school held a team building activity for every department and they even called it the healing camp. Come on. I was at the venue last night. We were to sleep at the tent they set up there, but geez, there were a lot of mosquitoes. They provided mosquito repellent, but aside from mosquitoes, did you know that the tent next to me had a very unwelcoming guest? What guest? A big, big snake. Jay nearly shouted that Kay had to put his phone away. He placed it on his table and set it in a loudspeaker. Jay is going to start his daily exercise. Mouth exercise, he mean. While Jay is rapping. Kay finally had an idea where he will take Hyde that he will never gonna say no. Thanks to his friend who is at a team building. Hmm. Achoo! Hyde sneezed. It seems like someone is cursing him on their mind. We thought Sir Kay is torturous for you and you had problems with him, but now that we see it, aren't you both in good terms? Jano asked. 
they're having their lunch and off course. It's also time for some gossiping. Hyde shrugged. We fixed the problem already, but our boss is still torturous for me. He answered, and it made his two friends laugh. Well, figures. Sir Kay is really one of a kind boss. He wants things to always go his way. That's just his personality. He doesn't know how to give up especially when someone says no to him. He will find a way to make it possible still. Hyde remembered that Kay was inviting him out on a date. It made his heartbeat race, but he didn't show it. He know it's part of Kay's plan upon courting him. He needed to decline because all of this is not healthy for him. He's not having doubt with his boss's feelings towards him anymore, but it's his self. He's having internal conflict. But I'm really glad you didn't resign or he didn't fire you and mind you, you now hold the honor as the longest secretary that Sir Kay have. Congrats! Jean greeted him and laughed with Jano. Hyde shook his head with their craziness, then drank his water. He didn't really want to take that kind of honor. It is such a great challenge for me, he thought. After lunch break and they were to resume their work, Kay called for a surprise meeting with every department head so now here they are at the conference. This is uncalled for but I want to let every one of you know that next week for five days, we will have a team building activity. Everyone is shocked at what they heard. Did they actually hear that right? Their boss said they will conduct a team building? That is a surprise. Even Hyde is suspicious. And I want the Department of Marketing to handle and plan for it, all the activities that will be conducted at the team building and also, I've already contacted one of my friend. Our team building will be held at Aloha Beach Resort. I've already rented the villa, but please include a tent and the things we need. I want us to camp near the beach. Inform everyone from your department after things are settled. We'll stay for five days. After getting back you'll have Saturday and Sunday as you're off and resume work on Monday. Hyde stared at Kay who winked at him. No way he won't remember that familiar name Aloha Beach Resort. It was where it took place. Their second kiss. I'll think about it. Hyde pondered as a thought crossed his mind. It's whether he will stay being Kikaz's secretary or proceed on resigning. K is a mischievous person especially with that smirk on his face. What wickedly evil deeds does he have up his sleeves? What could he be planning? All that secretary Hyde could do was to ask ridiculous but not impossible questions to himself. Let the chase begin. You know what? Our boss is getting weirder and weirder as day goes by. For my two years working in his company, he would only hold a team building once every year and it is always held every summer but now it's already December, near the year end and it crossed his mind to conduct a team building? We already have the year end party as the event. Well, though I also think it's weird but shouldn't we be glad for this? We're away from the pressure of work for a week plus minus the expenses for five days because the company fund will cover it. Jeez, and the works will be piled up when we get back, haven't you thought of that? You're such a killjoy. Don't remind me of that just yet and let's set our minds to this one week healing camp. Yeah, that sounds better. Jano who really is not impressed with the idea couldn't help but roll his eyes at Jean who seemed to be really looking forward to the event. Jano, Jean and the little secretary are walking together to head to their meeting place which is in the coffee shop near Times Corporation. The shuttle buses are parked in the public parking lot of the city. Their company rented shuttle bus to accommodate all of their employees. One bus can fit 50 people. Not long after they arrived at the meeting place, most of the other employees are already seated at the bus but some are still out, having some small talks and there are also people who are inside the coffee shop, taking their sweet time. One of whom is their boss who came out holding two cups of coffee in his both hands. His gaze went to their direction. If only their eyes didn't blink, they wouldn't have doubted. Because were their eyes deceived or did they actually witness the emotionless boss's lips curve into a small smile? Wait, am I the reason for that? Jano's delusional mind said. However, their curiosity was fed when Kay called out one particular name. Hide. And their friend who's busy looking at his phone slowly looked up, meeting Kay's intent gaze fixated on him. Hyde smiled at his boss, a genuine smile that exudes his radiant personality but behind his smile right now. He's actually threatening his boss not to do anything weirder than his sudden plan of holding a team-building activity. Kay came closer to them and handed one of the two cups of coffee to Hyde. Jano and Jean were both shocked. Because their boss never did. When did he ever bought coffee for someone? And personally gave it to them? It is Kikazili Isles that they're talking about. The stoic boss who sees his secretary as an absolute performer, who carry out his own interpretation immaculately of the character. If in the scenes of the film industry, Kikazu would be dubbed as a director, 
but rather than the manipulator who doesn't get satisfied until one wrong move can be pointed out. He's the type who want things in one take with no mistakes and perfect deliverance. What's most especially odd was to see the boss giving his secretary the coffee when it is the secretary's duty to do so. Definitely, that is so not the one-letter man. They are surprised beyond limit of how their CEO is acting these past few days, and they are also suspicious of the little secretary who accepted the cup of coffee. You ride in my car with me, Kay ordered. His gaze were serious as usual. His tone was firm just as how he really is. Jano and Jean heard it and they exchanged a knowing gaze. Something fishy is going on and they need to talk it over a cup of tea. Hmm. The both curious fellow threw a teasing look at the secretary. We'll go inside the bus now. See you when we arrive at the place, Jabum said, excusing themselves, winking before turning around to leave. Jean grinned at their friend. Treat us to some tea later on. We've got some catching up to do. And the two hurriedly run to get inside the bus, leaving Hyde with a confused look in his face. What is up with them? He's not really fond of tea. He likes coffee better. Have you had your breakfast? Hyde turned to look at his boss who asked and nodded his head in response to his question. For Secretary Hyde, breakfast is the most important meal he shouldn't miss. Then let's get inside my car now. Why are you bringing your car? I thought this was a team-building activity. Shouldn't we ride the bus with them? Kay's forehead creased as he pressed the button of his car key. Have you forgotten you have motion sickness? You almost threw up in my car the last time we traveled. We're going to the same place and the ride will take long. Come on. Hyde was appalled because apparently, Kay still remembered what happened when he himself forgot about it. Actually, that was the first time he knew he had motion sickness too. Every time he rides a bus home he does feel quite nauseous but the bus's window was always open so fresh air comes in and calms him down. He never thought he would have motion sickness? Like, he can drive Kay's car in short distance yet he gets all dizzy and throw up in the zigzag road along the mountains. Kay held him in his arms and pulled him while they walked towards where his car is parked. Hyde's forehead creased as he saw it's a different car than last time. He changed car? Get in, Kay told him as he opened the window for him. Where's the car you usually ride to work? Oh, I left it home and decided to go with this. It has convertible roof so if you ever felt nauseous, I could open it for fresh air. Let's get inside. We'll leave for about a minute. Kay told him then turned to the head organizer of their travel to tell them they'll finally leave and to check if everyone is already there. When it's time to go, Kay opened his car's radio to listen to some music to accompany them throughout the whole ride but since it's still early in the morning, most stations are playing about news. The remaining stations are playing some kind of a drama narration. That won't do and then Kay remembered something so before driving. The one letter man took out his MP3 player and connected it to the car's radio speaker. Most songs stored on it are really old but the best out of the songs you would hear nowadays. The song that played, booming on the radio was entitled Rainbow. The song began blaring inside Kay's car as he started to drive. The stoic boss felt good listening to the words of the song but most of all it's because he's traveling with Hyde who's sitting in his passenger seat that he feel more delighted. Kikazu recalled when they first traveled to Aloha Beach Resort. His feelings for his little secretary is still a mess. He was so in denial to himself but it was also the night they spent together that he finally realized his true feelings for the bright person next to him. Kay never thought that one day he would feel that way towards someone. When he was in college, he once fell in love or so he thought because in the end of the day, he came to know that the girl he supposedly fell in love with was nothing but a beauty. He might have been attracted with its perfect physical attributes. He won't deny that girl was one of the most beautiful girl he had ever laid his eyes on however. There came a time he found out her beautiful appearance was all she could offer and Kay knew to himself. He's not that shallow of a person who would fall for such shallow of a reason. He admit though that one of the reasons why he took notice of his little secretary's presence is because of the kiss they shared. He knew Hyde is more than what meets the eye. He's attractive yes. Very. Especially his facial structures. His doe-like eyes gives off his bright and kind personality. His high nose bridge and nose. Kay caught sight of Hyde through the rearview mirror and his gaze fell upon those plump and kissable pink lips. He swallowed his own saliva and diverted his attention back to the road. It must be crazy but he thinks. Hyde's most charming point is his lips. And Kay is dying to have a taste of it again. <coughs> Hyde coughed and Kay gave him a quick glance. Are you dizzy? He asked. No, just not feeling well. Maybe the smaller guy is feeling nauseous again. So Kay reached something from his jeans pocket and handed it to Hyde who gladly took it. 
Hmm, here. Chew some gum. It would help reduce the feeling of nausea. K grinned to his other side, trying to hide it when he saw his little secretary's eyes widened and looked at the gum he gave. Hyde reached for it and put some in his mouth before looking at him. He could watch Hyde in his peripheral vision. Thanks, his little secretary said, almost whispering and he saw how a tinge of pink colored his cheeks. His little secretary is blushing. It appears to be that his personal psychologist's advice is accurate and working. He will remember to raise the investment he's gonna give to his friend, and will even double it when he finally get to be with Hyde. Jay is really helping him big time when it comes to his love life especially upon understanding his little secretary. This time Jay told him that when someone is at their vulnerable state, any form of kindness when shown to them touches their heart and the person who offered such becomes engraved in their mind and they would feel a huge amount of gratitude towards the so-called savior. But isn't that taking advantage? One part of his mind argued, but he shook it away. What's important is to make him surrender in love to him. Because today, the chase is officially starting. The little secretary leaned on the car window as he savored the sweetness of the gum he's chewing before the taste even vanish away. The words of the song they are currently listening to piqued Hyde's interest and at the same time it ticked a part of his emotions. Nothing is certain in this world, but if there would be one then it's none other than change. Hyde fell out of fondness for his girlfriend before. He's scared maybe K. Hyde chew harder on the gum. Both of them barely knew each other. This courting session may play the part of them knowing each other better but Hyde is worried how far can K endure while slowly getting involved in his life. Hyde's life is full of spice and it's chaotic. It may seem ordinary now because he's distanced himself from his family but there will always come a time he needs to go back to them. With the thought of that, the little secretary fell asleep with a weary heart. What series of events could be awaiting them? At the resort and also, in the coming days, scavenger hunt. <coughs> the one letter man. Kikaza looked away as he caressed his little secretary's back while the latter is throwing up. They halted in a secure spot and how ironic it is because where they stopped for Hyde to throw up was the same exact location where he vomited before. Bona mine? Yeah, I gave him gum to chew a while ago. K is talking on the phone with Jay. He's asking for help on how to ease Hyde's motion sickness. You should have consulted me before you guys set out. Or you could have asked Aunt Kaisa. I'm sure she knows about those kind of things. His friend scolded him, frustrated of how the situation became. And, why didn't Kay even ask his own mother? Kay made a clicking sound of his tongue. Yeah, I should have done that. He know he got it wrong this time. Oh well, since you're already there, maybe there are some alternative ways. Kay handed Hyde a bottle of water when he was done throwing up. The little secretary is looking pale and weak. K felt sorry for him especially they would really have to travel most of the time and roads are not always concrete. Some are bumpy or like how the road is to Aloha Beach Resort. On mountain top, has a zigzag pattern and utterly dizzying. Let's get you inside the car first. I'll open the roof so you can breathe in fresh air. K assisted Hyde until he settled inside the car then got back to talking to Jay. So Bonamine is the kind of medicine for motion sickness? K wanted to make sure so he asked and searched for the details online. Jay hummed as his response. Later an idea clicked on his head. Maybe I should ask my employees if ever they have one. I'll talk to you later, Jay. And he hung up the call. Jay shook his head with how insanely dumb Kay appeared right there. When it comes to Hyde, the stoic boss's judgment and senses weakens. And he doesn't know if it's good that Hyde brings out the emotions of his friend or if he's dangerous for Kay since he's slowly becoming the center of his universe. Kay is dialing the number of one of Hyde's close friend, the product manager Jano who not long after picked up the call. Hello, sir. Do you have bone of mine? You know the medicine for motion sickness? Kikazu uttered abruptly, without any greetings. Jano, who's sitting with Jean, threw a confused look at his friend because of how their boss sound oddly worried on the phone. Sorry to say, sir, but I don't have one. But, um, I'll try to ask the others. Please do so. Before Jano could turn to ask the other employee in the bus riding with them, what he heard from their boss left and dumbfounded. Please? That's a word exempted in Kikazu Lee Isles' vocabulary. However, did Jano just heard their stoic boss say please? Also, K really sounded worried that got Jano thinking their once void of emotion bosses slowly getting wrapped with warmth and one after another showing different kind of emotion. Just a while ago they saw him smile and now the worry in his voice. And if he's not mistaken, secretary hides the reason for those. But wait, speaking of the little secretary, since the one letter man is used to riding and driving cars maybe the one who's having motion sickness would be Hyde? Realizing this, Jano also became as worried as their boss. He turned around and asked everyone immediately until he found Nanny from Banking and Finance Department who actually is breathing inside a paper bag. She was also experiencing motion sickness but was already able to take the medicine. Nanny gave Jano two tablets and informed Kay about it. 
They were told to pull over at the nearest intersection. Kay's going ahead since they rode a car and it's much easier to drive than a bus with loaded capacity. The stoic boss's car was already parked and were only waiting for the bus that production manager Jane O's boarded with. When the bus halted and pulled over, Jane O went down the bus urgently to give the medicine and saw how pale looking Hyde was, sitting and sleeping serenely inside Kay's sports car but what caught his attention. More is their boss's constipated expression but it instantly changed when he saw him. His face completely brightened up. Oh how he knew their boss has a secret crush on him. Don't worry that's just his delusional mind. Assuming to himself that he might be the reason for every little expression and emotion that fills their infamous stoic boss's face, especially his eyes that now lit up unlike before when it stayed dry. They woke up the vulnerable looking secretary. His face were noticeably pale and made him take the medicine. He fell back asleep and they transferred him at the back seat of the car. Kay then decided it would be for the better to let Jano and Jean ride in his car too, so there would be someone who could assist and tend care to the sleeping secretary Hyde. Jano joined Hyde at the back seat while Jean sat at the front. The long drive resumed and Kay couldn't help but to worry still. You don't seem fine to me. Kay is telling Hyde to have a rest in one of the rooms in the villa they would be staying at, but the stubborn secretary told him he's already fine and would want to participate in their game. If Kay's eyes would spark fire and throw dagger, the head organizer of their trip would be burning right that instant in front of everyone's very eyes because of how deathly Kay's glare was. He wa thinking why she had to instantly open up about the activities as soon as they arrive. The head organizer felt a chill run down her spine. They have already arrived at the resort around 10 o'clock in the morning and everyone decided to eat before proceeding to the camping site, which brought everyone to be sitting on the sand after their meal and although the sun was rise up, there were trees to shade them from its rays. The weather was in nice shape because it is already December and the wind is getting colder. Oh, everybody looks full of energy. So, since we already had an early lunch then we'll spend the rest of the afternoon to find our roommates, our CEO Mr. K recommended we'd camp outside for better and memorable experience and because of that we have set up the tents ahead of time with the assistance of the resort's helper and the only thing left for us to do is to find our roommates Kay almost face palmed when he heard what she said he glanced at his little secretary who was still looking pale he didn't even eat enough when they had lunch although he seemed to be feeling better but still Kay can't help but to worry he shouldn't have suggested camping outside so Hyde would be able to stay and rest at the accommodation but it's already been done what else can he do Kikazu was left to sigh in regrets. We would play scavenger hunt. The head organizer is explaining the mechanics and rules of the game but Hyde's mind was thinking of something else. He glanced at his boss who's intently listening, fixating his gaze on him without realizing it himself. He recalled how Kay took care of him. That made Hyde realize he knows nothing about Kay other than the gossips about how cruel he could get. Most of the information he obtained was something he heard through the grapevine. When Kikazu showed his concern a while ago, something in his heart was touched. He never felt cared for all his life. He had been a filial son. He pleased his parents all throughout, obeyed all their orders and went with the flow of whatever and however they want. They were practically the ones who made decision for him and because of that, Hyde never had a dream of his own until he finally set himself free from their hold. When he turned 20, he left home and started a new life on his own, away from the world he was used to. He built his own name and discovered new things about himself but now that he had the taste of freedom he always longed for, he can't also help but think about where he came from. He misses his home. Hyde glanced too long at his boss he was suddenly caught staring. Kay then smirked at him, probably delighted he caught the other guy red-handed. Hyde just looked away, withdrawing his gaze. Now he's contemplating, torn in between, of whether to go back home and embrace the world he never would be able to get away from because in the end of the day, his family's identity is running on his blood, or the other choice he have in mind which is should he forever stay in the freedom he finally have in his hands. The freedom he always longed for ever since he was growing up in his family's care and start anew with. Let's go start hunting and become roommates. That would seriously be the best experience I would ever have in this team building and camping if ever. Kay said looking down at Hyde, all excited with a small smile in his face no one else would discover because it was only meant for him to see. Especially was made visible because he was the reason for. Hyde was sitting on the couch while Kay is standing in front of him. Hyde looked around and only then did he notice most of the other people have gone to do the scavenger hunt and his friends are also leaving to start. I'll go on my own. The little secretary got up from his seat and turned his back on his boss to walk away from him but Kay held him in his shoulders, halting him on his track and considering the fact Kay is taller and stronger. Hyde could not get away. You will go with me. Kay tried catching his sight and his boss didn't fail. They are now on a staring contest. I am not in a mood to argue but please, I want to be alone for now. The taller man was shocked with what he heard from his secretary and how the latter looked at him with weariness in his eyes. Something must have been bothering him is what gone through Kay's mind. Thinking of that, he let Hyde go, freeing him of his hold. Okay, 
I'll let you be, but um... He sighed as he doesn't know what else to say and was just about to tell him he could go and be on his way but Kay stood frozen on his ground. Mouth gaped and his widened eyes staring right exactly at the back of his secretary who was already walking away from him. What just happened? Kay couldn't believe his eyes. He felt like he was dreaming. Hyde whispered something in his ears but he could remember it vaguely because there was only one thing that kept replaying on his mind. He thinks he's going to faint. His little secretary just gave him a light kiss on the cheeks. If that's not crazy, then he must be the one going crazy. They've already locked lips and stuff. But one kiss on the cheek initiated by his sober little secretary was enough to drive him into the pits of going insane. Maybe camping is still a best idea and also, he should definitely start doing that scavenger hunt before he really faint there. With a big smile on his face, everyone should note. Scavenger hunt 2 Who said Kikazu will let Hyde go by himself and be alone? K is falling closely behind Hyde who kept on walking ahead without any particular direction to go to. He can't let him get away from his sight. The little secretary might need a time for himself but keeping a distance while securing his attention on him is a perfect way for Kei to watch over him. He's worried. Secretary Hyde is walking around the shore, listlessly. The heat of the sun is scorching but the cold wind brushes it away. He stopped walking near where some pine trees are planted. He stood blankly by the seashore. His gaze dropped into the waves by the ocean as he fell in deep thought. Why is life so complicated? Hyde is preoccupied with the thoughts of his family. It's been three years that he hadn't seen nor heard from them. His family didn't intervene with his decision upon seeking for freedom. They let him be, but now that he think back, did they really not care about him? Or maybe they are letting him savor the moment and will take him back once they think he's had enough. Every actions we take has a corresponding consequences. Now, Hyde sense as if once he's on the verge of feeling like he's on cloud nine, something unexpected would ruin that. Not to be pessimistic, but he's having some kind of instinct. It'll happen for not long. And K. Hyde noted himself he didn't see it coming. Their stoic boss falling for him? That sounds impossible. They barely knew each other. When K confessed, he was completely stunned because it never crossed his mind. Someone would even fall for him. Not in the world he's only starting to build. So when Kikaze showed his sincerity, Hyde lost it. His inhibitions gradually decreasing and one more hard pull. He sure will be falling. Mommy! A small child wrapped his arms around Hyde's legs, completely cutting him off of his emotional moment, looking back to his family. He looked down to see the child's face. It was a little boy around four years old, wearing a blue jumper suit and with doe-like eyes that is filled with tears. He got down to level with his height, but when he was about to wipe his cheeks soaked with tears, the little boy distanced himself from him. The kid seems terrified, but he hugged him earlier, didn't he? Hyde gave a wide smile to tame the little one. He's aware that he have a beautiful and bright smile that exudes great warmth. It is infectious and will make the watcher smile too, and when he did, he didn't fail. The little boy stopped crying and looked at him, maybe trying to discern who he is. Hyde couldn't help but to pinch his red cheeks, and although the kid flinched, he didn't shove his hand away. The tiny gesture made his heart leap. Hyde is surely fond of little kids, especially those with chubby cheeks. He find them cute. He do find the kid very cute wanting to cuddle him and lock him to his embrace, but he fought the urge to not scare the little one. Did you get separated with your mom? He asked softly as he fondled with his cheeks. Slowly the little boy approached him. It appears that he's afraid of strangers. With the mention of his mother the kid started to tear up again. Hyde cooed him. It's okay, we'll find your mom. He couldn't help but chuckle at the thought that the kid mistook him for his mother. My name is Hyde. He introduced himself to ease the child's weariness. The little boy came closer and hugged him that instant burying his face in Hyde's chest and quietly cried. His heart softened with the kid's gesture. He might have been scared for thinking he was lost. My mama left me and dad. The kid stammered as he speak through his cries. What he just said completely shocked Hyde. It turns out that when he was called mommy by the kid, it sparked a hope in the kid's heart to see his mother again but finding out he ruined his expectations saddened Hyde. Whoever the mother of the child is. She's cruel for breaking his heart. Hyde hugged the little boy and tried lifting him up. He's heavier than what he thought, but Hyde could manage. The kid glanced at him and he subconsciously wiped his tears away. Did mommy say she's not coming back? The little boy's face became serious as if he recalled a sudden memory. Hyde thought that he might have offended the kid with his question. Did he just blurt out something wrong? Him and his talkative mouth, really. Mommy said if I'll be a good boy and listen to dad. 
I will see mommy again, the kid said with firmness in his tone as if it was a reassurance his mother promised him as he looked at Hyde straight in the eyes. Is that so? Then there shouldn't be any reason for him to cry or maybe he just misses his mom? Hyde looked at the kid with pity in his eyes. He knew very well how the child felt, missing his mother so badly even when they get separated for even a minute. The absence of a mother's presence for a child is truly mortifying. Because of this thought, he missed his own mother too. He hasn't seen her for three years now. Then you shouldn't cry. To be a good boy you should wait for your mom with a smile, because once she's back and saw you crying wouldn't that break her heart? Hyde's not so good at consoling someone even though he likes kids. He admit he's never good at taking care of them. However, he hoped he could lift the sadness in the young boy's heart. The kid pouted his lips, looking like he was about to cry again. It sent Secretary Hyde in panic, having no idea what to do when out of nowhere. A bread plushie appeared in front of both their faces. A voice of a man intended to make a sound like a little kid, said in tiny. There is a saying that big boys don't cry, and we should man up to protect our loved ones especially the most precious person who gave us life. Hyde chuckled at the sound of the silly voice especially of where it came from, and was amazed at the person behind the bread plush, continuing to speak. Your mom probably will be proud if he sees you smiling rather than crying, yeah? Kay's face became visible in the kid and little secretary's eyes when he gave the bread plush to the kid whom until now Hyde doesn't know his name. The kid accepted it gently while looking at Kay in confusion. He's probably wondering who the weirdo was. Even Hyde thought he's weird and childish but nonetheless it didn't fail to bring a smile to his face. And also the kid though he had a puzzled look in his face but there was a glint of happiness in his eyes. Will mom really be happy if I smile? The kid asked innocently and the two guys glanced at each other. Hyde quickly diverted his gaze back to the kid and smiled at him. Of course, little one. Anybody will be happy once they see you smile. Hyde said to reassure him but instead the kid's face turned grim as he puckered his lips. But I only want my mommy to be happy. Hyde is never cut out to play with kids. He just found that out at that very moment. Kay saw his secretary's disheartened reaction, so he tapped the other guy's shoulder and pointed at the kid. I'll carry him he did not wait for Hyde to give the little boy to him. Kay reached out to carry the boy in his arms when the kid spoke. It's okay. Put me down. I want to walk on my own because mommy said a good boy would walk with his own feet. I don't need to be carried. And so Kay let him stand on his own. When he was brought down he gazed up at the two guys towering over him. My name is Leishan. I'm four years old and I'm the son of Lay and Shane. The little boy introduced himself, accommodated with tiny cute gestures. Hyde lowered down to his knees so that Leishan wouldn't have to speak to them looking up. The kid might experience stiff neck. Kay mirrored his actions but instead on lowering on his knees, he completely sat down at the sand, making himself comfortable which took the other guys surprised, seeing their own boss, almighty and high, humbling himself to a little kid. So who did you came here with? Kay asked, trying to get familiar with the child. Kay saw Hyde and the young boy's encounter while he was falling behind, but didn't witness nor heard their whole conversation because he came to the nearest stall that sells merchandises and so the birth of the bread plush that he gave to the kid. Leishan gazed at him, Kay held him, setting him to his side and made him sit down on the sand as well. I came with dad but I got mad at him. It's my birthday today and he promised to let me meet my mommy but then he lied because mommy is not here. He tricked me. So cruel. Leishan said with a pouty lips, whining as his little toes played with the sand. Kay and Hyde find him cute and there goes Hyde's mannerism of pinching Leishan's cute chubby cheeks. They were inviting and fluffy. However. Kay noticed that although the little boy is only four years old, his way of speaking his mind and the way he acts is not the usual way a four-year-old would. Leishan seems to be a bright child, more mature than his young age. He remembered that how Leishan is reacting is the same how his younger brother, Nero reacts when he was a kid back then. He was five but his way of thinking and speaking is that of a ten years old and although his brother turned out to be a gifted kid, his naughty and mischievous nature has became his signature characteristics. It's your birthday today! Shouldn't we celebrate that? Hyde suddenly exclaimed happily. Kay nudged him at his side. Let's find his dad first. He should celebrate with his family. Hyde who felt denied glared at him when he said that. For Kikazu, Hyde appeared as if he's very fond of Leishan that he doesn't want to give him back yet. Kay shook his head with a grin on his lips, laughing at Hyde's childish behavior as he fished out his phone from his pocket and messaged someone. Since his little secretary still wants to spend some time with the cute smart kid, then he will let him have his way, but they still need to find his guardian so he messaged his friend to give notice to the public and find Leishan's father. 
When Kay was finished sending his message only then did he notice the two little ones. The little kid and his little secretary has gone ahead to walk wherever they wanted to go. He hurried, rushing to stood up and run his way to follow them. He thought they would go scavenger hunting but now a kid is in their care and Hyde looked very determined to spend some time with the lost kid they just met and to celebrate his birthday with them. The Origin of the Bread Plush Kikaza managed to catch up with the two little boys. Of course, his secretary is always tiny in his eyes. Although Leishan is cute but he would always find Hyde to be the cutest one. If we were to have a child, I'd be jealous of them because you seem to focus your whole attention on them just like what you're doing with this kid. I'll become sullen if you ever do that in the future. The one letter man exclaimed, mindless of the underlying meaning in between his words. That thought, it was ridiculous and absurd. Hyde glanced at Kay's shock with what he heard. He watches boss who reached for Leishan's small fingers to hold while they walk. He was holding Leishan in his right while his boss held him on his left. They walked happily and anyone who would see will think they are a happy family. However, Hyde's attention while with talking to the young boy, his mind was wandering off upon the thought of what Kay said. There was bitterness in his heart that surged up and stuck on his throat. His boss was thinking of what lies ahead of them, of the future and Hyde is astonished to this fact also of the mention of a child. Kay is planning to have a child which is in no capability that Hyde holds. He's a guy. He doesn't have the ability to bear a child. Was Kay overwhelmed with the presence of the cute little kid they are holding right now that he blurted out all of a sudden what he just said? Hyde can't easily brush the thought away. It's bothering him. The three who continuously walk for a while ended up in the small market where there were local foods and merchandises that are being sold. Officially from the resort, near the entrance of the market is where the stall Kay bought the bread plush from. When they walked past the stall, the owner had recognized him. Hey! Weren't you the one who wanted to give the bread plush to his son but couldn't buy it with money so you acted cute for my wife instead? The male owner is very loquacious. He didn't need to utter what happened in detail. Now Kay felt like he's sinking in his spot, shying away. How embarrassing. The embarrassed CEO wanted to hide his face away from the crowd and to Secretary Hyde. Who would have thought that? Him with the most intimidating aura. Who hold power and extreme wealth. He who exudes a stern charisma and would act cute for a plush toy. He must really be out of his mind. Kay smiled reluctantly at the owner. I will pay you back tomorrow. I'll make sure of that. The smiling and teasing owner gave him a pat with an extra force in his shoulders. It's okay, young man. I understand that even if it's not of your capability to buy a plush toy, but with the intention to give it for your loved one, your family, you will do everything in your power to attain and give it to them. I salute you for that. That's what a husband would do for his child, and a husband too. The owner paused as he looked at Leishan, then his curious gaze turned to Hyde before continuing to speak joyfully. It's embarrassing enough for Kay to act cutely just to get the plush toy but what he's most embarrassed about is that the husband and wife owner of the stall thought he was poor when in reality he could easily buy their own stall. He felt like his ego was crushed however when he glanced at Leishan, looking with a dormant in his eyes as he watched him exchanging words with the man. Kay's feelings of shame miraculously vanished away. He smiled at the kid and the little boy with cute chubby cheeks beamed at him showing his rabbit teeth, adding huge amount of cuteness in him. Hyde on the other hand was wheezing with the thought of the stoic boss who was sharp and stern. Most of the time void of any emotions will act cutely in exchange for a plush toy. He could never imagine that it would happen. And on top of that, the owners thought he doesn't have money to pay for it. Well, you take your time and enjoy the place with your family. Savor the moment and create the best memories here. Experience and moments are most valuable than any amount of money. It can't be bought. A priceless gift. The man shoved them away gently and they left after that but Hyde still couldn't stop laughing. His cheeks were growing red because of the humor. Stop it. It's not funny. Kay scornfully said while watching his little secretary almost breathless from too much laughing. It's not my fault they don't have the QR code mode of payment and I didn't bring my wallet so I didn't have cash or even my card with me. He tried explaining. Shy but calm and Hyde just kept laughing and even if the scenario earlier made Kay irritable but hearing Hyde's hearty and joyous laugh made his heart full and happy. As long as it makes his little secretary smile. It's okay. When finally Hyde was calm coming back to his senses but there was still a small smile that didn't leave his lips. He started teasing his boss. I didn't know you would do that for Leishan. To the extent where? And bursted out laughing again, remembering while envisioning how Kikazu will do that was just a sight to behold. Hyde will want to witness it happen. Leishan looked at Hyde, weirded out by his loud laugh that he came closer to Kay and hugged the one-letter man's legs. The boy was freaked out that they needed to halt from walking. Hyde eventually stopped laughing for real and tended care for Leishan who in the end gone back to his words of how a man should behave cause he let Kay carry him. I'm hungry. Leishan caressed his tummy while pursing his lips cutely. Let's go eat for now then. What do you want to eat? Hyde asked softly. Leishan pouted and shook his head. Anything. He answered. Now it left Hyde thinking where in the world will he be able to find a place that sells anything. 
K then saw a barbecue restaurant. Let's go to that one, he pointed out, and they did come there. When they got inside, there was not much number of customer. There was only a group of friends near the entrance and a couple on the corner that were occupying the place. As soon as they were choosing where to sit, the attention was on them. He could hear whispering from the group while they were looking at them. He didn't mind it though, different from Hyde who's uncomfortable being stared at and talked about. He tried sparing the group a glance but instead of getting wavered they even waved and nodded at him. Is it courtesy or mockery? When they were finally seated, the group of friends composed of seven people with four girls and three boys stood up and were about to leave the place. They would pass by their table. One of the guys who's going ahead from the rest stopped exactly at their table. Is he your son? He pointed at Leishan who was silently playing with his bread plush, oblivious of his worries. Hyde was about to tell him no but the guy continued to speak completely cutting him off. He's so handsome. My friends are really gushing over how cute your family looks like. The guy's eyes gleamed with bright light as he commented and continued. Our group are actually comprised of LGBTQIA plus members. I'm a transman and if you see those three right there. He pointed at the other three guys that are still taking pictures in their table. They are all gay and really admire you guys when you entered from the door. One of my friends recognized him. He directed at the stoic boss, minding his own business as he stared casually at the menu and his attention was taken by the guy. When he was trying to buy that plush but didn't have money then acted cute just to get the toy and give it to his son. My friend wanted to help out without learning your swaying the same way but he was impressed that you were able to obtain the plush with your overflowing love for your son. You touched our hearts, the guy ardently said. Oh anyways how shameful of me. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Ash. K just nodded coldly and even if his most embarrassing moment was mentioned he tried acting like he didn't care. He does not want to think about it anymore but it just kept on being brought up. He have no control over that so he just called for the waiter so that they could order already. Hyde smiled at the guy who introduced himself as Ash. He wanted to correct their perception of them but yet again was shunned from speaking because Ash handed him something. Here is a wristband for showing our pride. It is designed by me and my friends. I hope it would give you a sense of gratification. You made our day. Bless you. And before he could even make it clear Ash strode out of the room and his friends followed along each of them greeting him and Kay with different praise and compliments. They were completely misunderstood without the chance of correcting it. Kay was placing their orders while Hyde is staring at the wristband that has a word pride written on it, printed in rainbow colors. What should he do with it? He was wondering what to do with the wristband when Leishan suddenly held it. Hyde let it go. His eyebrows instantly raised as he saw that the little boy reached for Hyde's hands and slid the wristband, putting it for him then smiled brightly at him. Hyde couldn't help but to get carried away with his smile and ended up smiling too. I'll just buy something outside, Kay said, stealing their attention as he stormed out of the room when he was finished ordering. Where could his boss be going? Hyde's brows furrowed, curious where Kay will have to go. Now that Kay left, Hyde's rail of thought started messing up his mind. Kay has dreams different from Hyde. Kay has plans Hyde can't and will be impossible for him to meet. His gaze fell upon Leishan. Even he felt captivated by the young boy's charm and wants to spend longer time with him but then with the thought of Kay. Hyde heaved a frustrated sigh. His real complications is that Kay thought about having a child and although Hyde has not confirmed his own feelings yet to himself, that he's slowly falling for his boss. What Kay wanted is scaring him because it's not possible for Hyde to fulfill. Maybe while it's still early and they haven't get past the first phase yet, Hyde should start a safe distance away from Kay. Hyde's eyes landed at the door of the restaurant. Speaking of the devil and the devil shall show himself Kikazu entered the door, appearing while holding a box of cake in his hand. Leishan saw it and his face lit up with joy while Hyde is more worried than before because if Kay continues to show this warm side of him, Hyde's last threat of prevention to not let himself fall will eventually break out unconditionally. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Hyde sung enthusiastically whilst the stoic boss sung softly. Leishan is filled with joy when he blew the candle after making a wish. They started eating after. Hyde took the initiative to feed Leishan while Kay was watching them with a smile on his face. He felt like he's on cloud nine ever since they were with the little boy. He finally get to spend time with Hyde. Although not alone, still, spending leisure and enjoyable moment with him is enough for Kay, besides he still have four more remaining days to tame the little secretary. He will have to see what will happen then. When they were done eating, they went out to look around the market. While walking Kay spoke narrowing his gaze at Hyde. Hyde, should we find Leishan's father now and return him? His dad must be worried sick by now. Hyde and Leishan halted from walking, hearing what Kay said. Kay is concerned that Leishan's father might be going crazy right now trying to find his son. 
Although he's not amused that the kid's father let his son stroll away alone and also upon getting his hopes up but breaking it in the end. He knows Leishan's father is worried to death by now, his son is lost and wandering around alone although technically, he and Hyde is with Leishan. Hyde looked at Leishan whose eyes are droopy, it seems that the kid is sleepy so he lifted him up, he leaned Leishan's head on his shoulder as he patted his back softly, not even a minute after that he saw him closing his eyes to sleep. His boss is right, they should find Leishan's father now and give him back, the little boy also needs to rest. Where do we find him? He asked Kay. Let's sit first. I'll talk to someone, Kay answered. They went around to find a place to stay at when they saw the bench under the mahogany tree near an ice cream stall, that's where they decided to sit for a while. Kay called someone on his phone while Hyde is humming a lullaby for Leishan who's deep in slumber. As soon as Kay finished the phone call, he turned around to find his little secretary also dozing off, Hyde's eyes are already closed even so he could see how he's fighting the urge to sleep. Figures though, the little secretary was tired from the long drive and for throwing up multiple times. He should really be resting in the comfort of a cozy room and somehow, it made Kay felt guilty. He moved closer to Hyde whose head is almost falling from losing senses as he fall asleep, he caught his head and softly leaned it to his shoulder, he also carefully detached Leishan from Hyde's hold to transfer him in his own arms, slowly moving because he doesn't want to wake up either of them. When he's placed Leishan in a comfortable position he took a glimpse at his secretary peacefully sleeping, he smiled at the sight. Hyde looked cuter when he's sleeping, he looked like an innocent lamb. The more time Kay spends with Hyde, the more he falls deeper in love with him. He doesn't know what reasons why he feel that way but one thing is for sure, he's in love with him. Unconditionally. The feeling is unexplainable however if he would describe it in a way that is understandable then it would be that Hyde makes him feel. Good. He feels delighted with just the thought of the person sleeping next to him. Kay thought he will never ever feel that way, let alone falling in love because his belief in love changed when he was in college. He didn't have the best encounter with the word. It only created a feud between him and Sage who he treated like a real brother but betrayed him in the end. Kay then had trust issues since and he carried that even when he became the CEO of his own company that is why he can't trust his secretaries fully. He always doubt them especially their motive and for other reasons relating to Sage, the traitor, he felt the need to fire his secretary every now and then and hire a new one just so he wouldn't feel anxious. Hyde coming into picture, breaking in his walls was never in the plan but thanks to fate, maybe because now that he met his bright secretary, he's starting to open up again. His little secretary is the best secretary he ever had, his own personal secretary. It sounds nice K calling Hyde his personal little secretary sounded beautiful to his ears. He can't wait to make that happen. K glanced at Hyde and smiled. To call Hyde, his. Whilst the stoic boss reminisce about his past and try to look forward for his future, he yawned and couldn't help but close his eyes. From afar, two men, one in a black business suit, standing tall at six feet one inch, exuding that intimidating aura, his hair is brush up in style, his eyes are cold and the other wearing casual clothes is a smaller guy with a lean build, unlike the other this person is full of warmth and they are walking lethargically, worry is visibly seen in their faces as they turn their gaze in different directions, scanning the place as if trying to find someone. Wait, Han. The man in casual clothes tapped the man wearing business suit in his shoulders to get his attention. Look at that! and then pointed toward the direction of a mahogany tree. Beneath it was a brown bench and there were three people, seated and taking a nap. The two looked at each other. Where did they say he was? The smaller guy questioned. The other checked the message on his phone then answered. Under the mahogany tree, sitting at the brown bench. They didn't waste any time, both of them strode fast going towards Kay, Hyde and Leishan's direction. When they got closer, only then did they recognize the faces of the three, one of them is very familiar while the two are strangers. The taller guy was about to rushingly grab hold of Leishan but the smaller guy stopped him. They look cute, don't they? She, what are you talking about? Well look at them, they look like a caring family, it's so woo woo. She. The smaller guy in casual clothing kicked the shin of the taller one, making him hiss at him from pain. Why did you do that? Because you're a jerk. He crossed his arms. How am I a jerk? You keep on hissing every time I say they are cute. Do you expect me to squeal like a teenage girl does when seeing their crush? That is my son right there. How could I say they are cute? 
He's my family so of course I'd be possessive and he's cuter when he's with me. Was he with you? The smaller guy glared and seems like his eyes are shooting dagger at the other. His tone was sarcastic. The taller guy is appalled, so he faked a cough and looked away. You can't even take care of him. I was only away for a week yet. See? He's let loose from your hold, and if I didn't arrive and didn't went to the help desk, what will happen? The smaller guy exactly know how to render the taller guy. Speechless. The guy in business suit looked away like a puppy who just got busted stealing the food in the table. Jeez, you only know how to use your brain when it comes to business and your ways are only effectuate upon tricking me to bed. But he snapped at what he heard. Because that is so. That's below the belt, Han. I'm only speaking the truth. While the two started arguing, Kay, who hasn't fully been fallen asleep, slowly opened his eyes because of the noise he's hearing. Hyde soon woke up too. Their attention became fixated at the two guys arguing. The smaller guy is hitting the taller one and while the latter just let him be hit, he's not fighting back. They were watching them when the two guys arguing felt the heavy gaze upon them. They turned at the two people sitting on the bench that is fully awake now thanks to their noise. The strange guys walk up to Kay and Hyde. Hello. Sorry for the disturbance, the guy in casual clothing said, smiling at the stoic boss and the secretary. Gee. While the guy in business suit hissed, he was pinched in his side. You're Kay, I suppose? Kay nodded to affirm. Hyde is clueless of what is happening so he just looked at Leishan who's sleeping and caressed the child's cheeks. The two strangers saw what Hyde did and it warmed their hearts. I'm the father of that child, the taller guy said abruptly and he got nudged powerfully at his side. The smaller guy whispered, Introduce yourself first. Where's your manner at least? And so he introduced himself. I'm Lee Ryzen, Leishan's father. Hyde and Kate glanced at each other then they gazed at Leishan still sleeping in Kay's hold, hugging one of his arms. Pardon my husband's carelessness. He's really poor at taking care of our son. But thank you for spending time with Leishan. And thank God he's taken care of by good people. The guy who introduced himself as Lay Ryzen hissed as he snatched his son away from Kay. I am sorry for that. The guy who hasn't introduced himself yet was cut off from, speaking because Leishan was awoken due to his father's force of getting a hold of him. As soon as Leishan opened his eyes, his sight fell on the person standing next to his father. Mommy! Leishan exclaimed making Kay and Hai confused. Leishan! Baby! The guy gave a light kiss on Leishan's forehead. The little kid tear up, near breaking out to crying but he was carried by the guy in casual clothing and Leishan hugged him tightly suppressing his tears. Mommy, I thought you wouldn't come to see me anymore, Leishan said, crying. I'm so sorry if Mommy scared you for you to think that way, but no. Of course Mommy loves you and I would always want to be with Leishan. But why were you not together with me and Dad for a week? Because Mommy needed to be put in a bed rest for being too vulnerable. Remember that Mommy is carrying your younger sibling? I need to be healthy and stronger. Did they hear that right? Hyde is in awe from what he just heard while Kay is not getting all of this. Can we just go already? I'm famished. Lay Ryzen complained, but he was ignored. So he took a look at the two guys sitting at the bench instead. He's Shane, my spouse and Leishan's mother. Shane turned to them when he was introduced and laughed as he saw their doubtful at the same time dubious look. I am a pregnant male. Anything can be possible. Shane is comfortable to say that out loud, although some find it weird. But well, it's not their fault. And the two guys looking at him right now. He could feel that there is something between them going on. A blossoming romance. Kay's forehead creased trying to understand the information he heard for the first time and he spared Hyde a glance. And Hyde didn't like what he saw upon Kay's face, he could read from his expression what he's possibly thinking. Are you guys an item? Shane asked. No, not yet. Kay answered while Hyde was just listening. Ooh, still in the chase, huh? Well, that's the best part of romance. The chase and the first phase of relationship. Will, enjoy your time. Thank you again for taking care of our son. We'll go now. Kay and Hyde. Shane started walking away. Leishan smiled and waved at them while Lay Ryzen hissed at them first before following ahead. Pregnant male. Huh. Only now did Kay thought about it. He blurted out he wanted a child with Hyde without considering the facts. But pregnant male. He need more information about that. Nevertheless, he'll love Hyde without those extra things. Because loving unconditionally is loving without any condition. He's downright in love, be it for better or worse, but he doubt there would be any worse situations for them when in fact when he's with Hyde, everything are flowers and butterflies. Sign number 7
Sign number seven, you want to touch and kiss them. Lights at the resort started flickering as dusk came approaching rapidly. Hyde and Kikazu are walking side by side going back to the camping site. Both are lost in their own thoughts. Kay is thinking about the encounter with Lei and his husband Shane. It has also been bugging him of the thought about their son, Lei Shan, and the child he's bearing. Whilst Hyde is thinking of possibilities that seems impossible to happen. The two arrived at the camping site without talking to each other. Their colleagues saw them approaching but their forehead creased seeing both of their faces painted with an unexplainable expression. Hyde woke up from his own reverie when he noticed they were already back. He looked around the whole camping site and was in awe because of its ambience and how it was designed. The tents are already set up. There are four colors of each tent in each lane. Green, blue, gray and black and it looks like one tent cat fit more than five people. There is also a bonfire in different lanes where the employees are sitting. Hyde wonder why are things classified when Jano came approaching him and Kay. They got pulled by him to sit to their lane. Where'd you go with our boss? Jano, the busybody that he is, wanted to pry what is really happening between their boss and his secretary. He's sensing something is going on with the two. Hyde just shook his head. Jano snorted at his response. He looked at Hyde carefully to find some clues in his face, but Jano furrowed his eyebrows because Hyde only looks in distress and confused. The head organizer approached Kay and Hyde when she saw them. Only the two have no roommate yet. They came late. Secretary Hyde. Sir Kay? Where are the items you've collected? Kay and Hyde simultaneously glanced at each other. Hyde who didn't really listen to the explanation and did not know the mechanics of the game don't know what to answer. He just looked at Kay who responded. We, uh, are you sure you put enough items to the game? Because I spent the whole afternoon going everywhere in the place and couldn't find even a single one. Hyde was dumbfounded with his answer. The head organizer smiled forcibly then turned at Hyde. Her gaze were shaking. You didn't find any items too? Hyde nodded at the obvious question and the head organizer clapped her hands. Attention, everyone! She suddenly called for everyone's attention and it made both Kay and Hyde's forehead to crease. Everyone's eyes turned to them in an instant. So along the mechanics of the game there is a punishment for those who didn't find a single item. And unfortunately, our boss and his secretary are our lucky winner. Whoa! What is there to celebrate? Hyde is not amused with their sentiment. He crossed his arms to his chest. Kay is just waiting for the punishment to get it over with. His sharp gaze were watching the flames surrounding the bonfire. And their punishment is to sleep together in the tent which is isolated at the back of the villa. Hyde stood up in a heartbeat with the mention of sleeping together with his stoic boss he had just decided to avoid, his eyes widening in shock. What? He had been together with Kay ever since morning. And he swear being alone together and sleeping in the same tent tonight will be more dangerous to his heart. Number six and seven. Number seven will kiss the feet of number six. Natty blurted out her dear. Everyone in their table uttered a disgusted protest. They are sitting in the sand and the rectangular shaped table were labeled by their tummy when sitting. The feet's underneath. Since there were a lot of employees who joined the team building and camping trip, they were divided into four teams and the classified colors of the tent was the deciding factor for designating each of the team. The stoic boss and his little secretary automatically joined the green team that consists of Jano, Jean, Natty from Banking and Finance, Lila from Marketing and other employees. By this time, they just finished eating dinner and now on to playing different games. The third game they were playing is the King's game where in this game, one player will be elected as the King and will give funny dares as orders which other players have to perform. They would also gather a number of chopsticks that equals to the number of players. Write king on one of the chopsticks and number the rest from one upwards. Then someone holds the chopsticks with the number sides in their fists so the numbers are concealed, or they can put it in a cup. The game involves much hilarity and humiliation. Therefore, the players are required to embarrass themselves such as to why Natty gave the order because she's elected as king and her order is beyond imagination. Hyde looked at his own chopsticks. His number is 10. Kay checked his chopsticks. He got number 8. Jano suddenly yelled out, No! when he saw his own number. Just his own luck because he was the chosen one. Number 7. Jean laughed at Jano's expression and called his name in triumph. His number is 6. He raised his feet in the air and gestured Yanni to come to him using his fingers. He had a mischievous grin on his face while watching Jano's disgusted reaction. Jano! 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 
The others cheered for production manager Jano, and although very disgusted, he still walked up to Jean and with his eyes closed, praying for mercy, he gave a light peck to Jean's foot. Then he goes jumping like a worm that got sprinkled with salt. He gargled beer and spat it out, washing his lips. Everyone laughed at how insane his reaction was. Various orders were given but the prim and proper secretary Hyde was quite in the corner, focused on drinking beer, pouring another once he's finished his glass. Kikazu was watching his secretary. He's sipping on his own beer glass while his eyes were fixated on Hyde. They were immersed in their own thing when their numbers got called. It's a different draw. This time Jano was hailed the king. Number five should kiss number one. He ordered enthusiastically. In the lips. He specified to not get cheated. Hyde checked his number. He's number one. Kay didn't know if he should frown or smile because he got number five, but when his little secretary raised his chopsticks with the number one printed on it, an unavoidable smirk spread across his own lips. He'll be kissing Hyde. Whoa! Kiss! 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 Everyone started shouting and yelling. They were already intoxicated by the alcohol and their hype rose up because it involves their stoic boss. The aloof CEO that mostly doesn't indulge with lame games is now put on the center of attention. Even the ones from the other group turned to their table to watch the legendary moment. They have never seen their stoic boss being in relationship ever since. He was only focused on his works. Kay stood up and walked toward where Hyde was seated whilst Hyde just watched Kay walking to him. His movements were playing in slow motion. Secretary Hyde may not show it, but he's nervous. When Kay stood in front of him and bent down on his knees to level his height with Hyde who was sitting on the sand, Kay came really close to give his kiss when Hyde closed his eyes, anxious of the kiss. The stoic boss saw Hyde's terrified reaction so instead of kissing him in the lips, he gave him a feather-like kiss on his forehead instead. The crowd booed them. But the air turned quiet as Kay glared at each of them. They got back to their own business after that. It's not every day that the known stoic boss will ride on their trip. They got a VE satisfied that he was not being a killjoy in their game and actually joined them on his own accord. Hyde, on the other hand, felt a chain of butterflies in his stomach with what Kay did. Butterflies! Hyde the lightweight was drunk. Their first night of activities ended. The employees one by one have settled in their tents to get some rest because tomorrow they will officially start more activities. Butterfly is in my stomach. Why? Kikazu Lyles, the stoic boss that everyone is intimidated about, is struggling to assist his own secretary to walk as they head to their tent. His little secretary is drunk and is singing about Butterfly. Because of the wiggly hide, Kay decided to lift him up horizontally and carried him to their tent instead. When they arrived and went inside, he carefully placed him down the futon and get the blanket to cover him. Kay watched Hyatt's flushed face and his dark gaze went down to his little secretary's pinkish lips. He swallowed. Hyde's lips. It's kind of inviting him. And a certain thought came to his mind. You want to touch and kiss them. It's the seventh sign of falling in love. Kay. Kay looked at his secretary who he didn't notice is still awake. Hyde rose from lying and clung his arms to Kay's neck and both of them fell down. Gladly there were a cushion under and outspread on the tent they are staying for the night. This team building and camping activity is not a bad idea after all. Everything is going in Kay's favor. His little secretary is drunk yet again. His face were flashed and is acting so childlike. But Kay think he's still cute. Or maybe not. Hyde pinched both his cheeks and suddenly pulled him down, making their faces inches away from each other. Kay, why are you so attractive? Hyde said incoherently that Kay barely understood what his secretary was muttering about. Let's tuck you to sleep, Hyde. But Kay wasn't able to finish what he was saying because Hyde surprisingly kissed him. It was just a peck and he pulled away immediate, shocked to the core because of what just happened. Then he saw him smile and it made Kay's heartbeat race. Secretary Hyde looked so sexy like that. He smirked at him. You're such a troublemaker. I hope this time you'll remember what you're doing once you wake up, but that seems impossible because tonight you're very drunk. I really want to kiss you right now, but given the fact you forget everything when you're this drunk, I'll wait till you're sober and give you the most mind-blowing kiss you'll ever have and you won't ever forget. He talked to the drunk secretary who just smiled cheekily at him. He shook his head and were about to retract Hyde's hold of him so they could go to sleep when all of a sudden, Hyde closed their distance and locked their lips together. Kay's secretary is kissing him. And although he really want this, he don't want to take advantage of Hyde who's not aware of his senses at the moment.
If before they kissed hastily, it could be called accidental but now that he's courting Hyde and there are feelings involved, K wanted to give him respect as what he deserved. Hyde pulled away when he didn't respond. K could almost sigh of relief but he couldn't when he saw a tear escape his little secretary's eyes. It made him panic. Are you disgusted? K swallowed the lump in his throat seeing Hyde cry makes his chest tighten. Hyde, I, you don't really love me. When K heard those words coming out of Hyde's mouth, his eyes darkened as he stared down his face. His gaze trailed down onto his lips and his hunger for kissing those lips is urging him and before his rational mind could argue, his emotions are stronger and has taken over him and before he knew it, his lips are already crashed against his secretary. He's kissing him like he missed him for a while. Hyde accepted his kiss. K started their kiss softly and lightly not until his tongue started knocking for an entrance and Hyde welcomed him by opening his mouth. K started exploring while Hyde received him acceptingly. They kiss more and more passionately by the second. K is already lost in the taste of Hyde's lips. Both of their lips moved with the rhythm created while they were kissing like hungry wolves. <sighs> Hyde moaned when K accidentally bit his lower lips but instead of pulling away and dwelling on the pain, Hyde longed for more. Their kisses became aggressive. Maybe he won't remember any of this but might as well savor the moment. K thought while kissing Hyde hungrily. His tongue was seeking in tasting the alcohol in his little secretary's mouth. They exchanged the taste of each other while heat is slowly setting in between them. K needed to pull away because something is disturbed and starting to wake up. The heat is taking over his body and his mind is in shamble. The fire of lust started burning inside him and if it continues, he doesn't know if he could even put off his arousal. K gave it his all just to break away from the kiss even if he doesn't want to let go of Hyde's lips. He needed to do that because if he didn't and it goes on, he can't promise Hyde safety. The stoic boss heaved a deep sigh to catch his breath while looking at Hyde who suddenly dozed off to sleep after he pulled away. Thank God, is all that he could mutter under his breath. Kay covered Hyde in the available blanket that was placed inside. He stared at his sleeping face for a while and gave him a light kiss on his forehead before going outside to get some fresh air and put off the burning lust that hasn't subsided yet. What can he do though? It's Hyde so he's feeling so aroused. Whilst Hyde who's supposedly asleep, opened his eyes and stared above the tent covering him. He could not help but cry silently because now he really is sure Kay's feelings for him were true and sincere when he's that hypocrite who intended to seduce him and test his emotions for him. In the end the promise he made to himself that he'd keep his distance away from his boss for a while because even though he's surely falling, he can't give in, might be broken without even starting. His situation doesn't call for romance. Not when every decision he makes concerns his family. Maybe let's talk one. The morning sun has set when Kikazu woke up without Hyde sleeping beside him. He woke up early? He thought Hyde would wake up late because he was drunk as skunk last night that he might be experiencing hangover by today. Kay got up and decided to go out. He checked the time on his phone, indicating it was already 8 o'clock in the morning. He have to turn around to get inside the villa because they will have their breakfast there and where their tent was located was at the back of the villa. While walking, he remembered what happened last night. A tinge of bright pink colored the face of the stoic boss, all because of a kiss he shared with his little secretary. He can't help but blush. Back in university, he had enough time to fool around, having different crush and even one or two flings about but the feeling of being with Hyde. Everything makes it seem like the first time again. This is why he knows falling in love with Hyde is a serious case. He gets lost in the moment every time he's with him. All the feelings and emotions cannot be hidden. Every single move that his little secretary does flutters the stoic boss. Hyde brought about different sensation to him and everything makes its way to his face, because Hyde's warmth has gradually touched his heart. Arriving inside the villa, Kay looked around for the most familiar face he was longing to see the moment he opened his eyes. A smile find its way to his lips when he saw him preparing the dining table together with the other employees. Hyde was having a little conversation with his friend, Jano. The stoic boss's presence was felt by the employees turning their heads to his direction acknowledging his existence. Kay stride his way to where Hyde was. Good morning, he greeted while purposely looking at Hyde who spared him a glance. The little secretary nodded and gave him a small smile, greeting him the same. Everyone else greeted the boss but the employee that the CEO treat the most special's good morning is all that he looked forward to. Kay's smile turned into a wide grin that made everyone guessing except for Jano and Jean who already had an idea as to why their stoic boss who was void of emotions in the past was now having the happiest smile in a chaotic morning like that, capable of being dazzling than his serious still face and overbearing aura. Sir, have a seat first, Natty offered with a kind smile. 
gesturing next to the seat in front of the dining table. Early in the morning and they were already grouped according to last night's team colors. In a long rectangular table sat the green team. Kay took his seat next to where Hyde was still standing at, arranging the plates. He looked up to him. The grin is still visibly seen in his face, but Hyde left. Without even sparing a glance at him instead, he went inside the kitchen together with Jean. It made the grin on Kay's face to turn into a frown. When everything and everyone was finally settled down, Kay looked around and wondered why Hyde has yet to return. He was nowhere in sight. The seat next to him became occupied by another employee already which Kay wanted to reserve the space for his little secretary but it would be unreasonable of him to make the other leave. He had no choice but to let it be. Until they started eating, Hyde did not show up as well as Jean. Kay then decided to look for them but he was immediately hounded by the others, telling him to eat a lot, tending care to him. He realized he can't leave them like that because it would be disrespectful so in the end he gave up looking for Hyde. Maybe his little secretary was somewhere. Never mind, he's with Jean anyway. He whispered enough for himself to hear, sulking that he didn't get the chance to have breakfast with Hyde. After eating, they were told to seize the day and play by the beach. The activities will start later at 4 p.m. so that the heat of the sun wouldn't be blazing too much and their skins won't get tanned nor sunburned. Kay was not in the mood to swim so he decided to find where Hyde was. Wearing a white shirt partnered with a black summer short and white slippers. He wore his sunglasses to protect his eyes from the sunlight and started walking around, flaunting his handsome attributes for the female employees to feast their eyes upon. Surely, Kikazu was an overbearing powerful and stoic boss, but no one can deny he was gorgeous as hell. Standing at six foot two, a lean body and handsome face would make the best model-like proportions. It would be a sin not to pay attention to him. While he was walking around outside the villa looking for a particular person, Hyde who intended to run away from his boss was at the patio next to their place. It was a small wooden area with a bed and a set of couch inside. There was also a mini table and a small cushion where he found a white chubby cat and its kitten. The mother cat seemed to have just given birth. He loves cat and thinks they are the cutest pet ever, fluffy and sweet. He got up from sitting on the ground just so he could pet the cats. He will get some food from the villa first. The mother cat meowed at him when he arrived there earlier. Although it was chubby, it looks kind of hungry also because it was breastfeeding her kitten. Hyde was careful while walking on the entrance road of the patio. He almost slipped a while ago because of the slippery floor. Who the heck would even make their entrance way tiled? Hyde said, ranting about the poor architecture. On his way to the villa, he saw Kay walking out. Their eyes met but Hyde looked away and fastened his pace, making his way inside however. When he was near the entrance where Kay is still leaving from, the stoic boss whom the little secretary was avoiding got a hold of his hand, halting him from going. Where have you been? Have you eaten breakfast? Hyde shuddered with their skin touching. He immediately brushed his hand away from him. I already did. He answered coldly, avoiding his gaze. Kay was quite astonished. He felt the coldness in Hyde's voice and the way that the latter brushed away his hold. It pained him. Why was his secretary acting distant all of a sudden? He couldn't grasp why Hyde started acting such way. That's why when Hyde turned his back on him to resume entering the villa, he was left frozen on his spot, shocked how Hyde obviously avoided him. What? What did I do wrong? Kikazu couldn't believe it, digging further in his memory whatever mistake he might have committed to mail his little secretary suddenly avoid him. Until when Hyde went out holding a plate full of food on his hand, Kay was just standing there, motionless. Hyde didn't even spare him a glance and walked away just like that, leaving the stoic boss guessing. Kay was alarmed with the sudden change P.F. his secretary's attitude, because yesterday they were all right, not like that. Kay then followed Hyde discreetly then he saw him going to the patio next to the villa. He watched him with forehead creased. There's a place like this in here. He didn't expect to see such and also, he's wondering what his little secretary was currently there and with the plate full of food he was holding. Kay walked more, getting closer. He had next to the mahogany tree while watching Hyde who went inside the patio. His little secretary sat down, pewting down the plate and that's when Kay noticed the cats on the ground. A big cat and four little ones. The big cat seemed to have just given birth. Kay was wondering if the cat is strayed or who could be its owner. He were about to get more closer when he was out balance causing him to slide down the slopes of the road entrance going to the patio. Hyde saw him and stood up quickly not knowing what to do. Not until Kay fell up front and on Hyde, they fell together. Gladly enough there was a futon bed that caught their fall. Hyde grunted because of pain. He was so shocked to the point he closed his eyes and hoped for a miracle. 
and knowing that he didn't fell on the hard ground was enough for him to feel relieved. He opened his eyes and first that meet him was the stoic boss's gaze looking at him intently. He accidentally swallowed when Kay's eyes trailed down from looking at his eyes to dropping his gaze into his open lips. And all that came to Hyde's mind was their kiss last night. He remembered how Kay tasted, how their lips moved to the same rhythm and how he was so lost in the thought of Kay going further if he did not stop himself. Hyde liked the idea of taking it to the next level. He would have been submissive of whatever Kay wanted to do but... Shit. Did he just really thought of that? No. He already came into the decision to end everything with Kay. He doesn't need romance. He doesn't need relationship and most especially, he doesn't need Kay. Hyde brushed the thought away, immediately getting up. He were about to speak to Kay but swallowed his words and with his trembling lips he walked away in big steps from where Kay was standing. This time, Kay is sure something was wrong. He doesn't know what it is but he will have to indulge himself and discover what is the reason his little secretary is acting in such way, hurting him. After that, all the time they bump into each other or when Hyde sees Kay, Kay notices how his little secretary was avoiding him. It only made his suspicion grow bigger. Afternoon came and they were all by the beach to play a game. They were told to find a partner. Kay reached out to Hyde but his wary little secretary rushed to Jano's side and asked him to be his partner. Kay bit his lower lip in agitation and settled himself to stay by the side to just watch them. Another game was sack race. It again needed partners to play and before Kay could even approach his little secretary, his mischievous secretary already found a partner in another department. Something is building inside Kay's chest. His agitation is turning into exasperation. His eyes are starting to shoot dagger wherever high goes, especially whoever is with him. The next game was called Tricky Game that once again needed to be played with a partner. Why does every game needs to be played with a partner? Kay asked in irritation to the person assisting the employees that were having fun. For fun, sir, is all that he answered. Isn't it more fun to play in groups? Well, that will come, sir. We prepared various games that are enjoyable and fun. What is so fun when I'm dying because of jealousy here and my baby's ignoring me with all his might? Kay muttered under his breath. Yes, sir. I couldn't hear you properly. Kay shook his head and went towards where the players that were already chosen are standing still. Each partner are facing each other. He bumped the person standing in front of Hyde. Although the guy was heard he didn't refute when he saw it was their boss who did that. Hyde glared at him for doing that but Kay gestured for the person explaining the rules of the game to continue speaking. So, this is how the tricky game is played. First the couples should stand facing each other in a row. Lila, the one in charge checked the participants and nodded when she saw how they were well organized in place. Then the person conducting the game will give instructions. You will hear it from me and the couples should do anything but follow the instructions. For example, if the leader says, sit, you should stand or run but not sit. The gist of the game is that whoever follows the instruction is out. The couple who remains until the end will be hailed as the winner of this tricky game. All right? Did everyone get it? Yes. Everybody, participants or not answered simultaneously. Now to start our game. I want every participants to look at their partners in their eyes. As per the instruction, Hyde looked up at Kay bravely only to bit his lips to suppress himself from looking down. Kay's eyes always hold such intimidation and an air of mystery. Poops. If you guys follow my instruction that well then this game is now finished. Everyone laughed and uttered different disapproving expressions. They didn't expect it that then they remembered how the game was played. They should not obey but do the opposite instead. Kidding. Ha ha. Now the game is officially starting. First. Take one step away from each other. As the person giving task said, Kay of course did the opposite. He closed the gap between him and Hyde whose eyes widened in shock. The others saw how close their proximity was and teasingly cheered at them. Now take two steps closer to each other. Given the fact that they are already standing so much closer to each other, if Hyde were to take a step back, that would be okay and they wouldn't be expelled from the game. He were about to take a step away from Kay when Kay shocked him again for the second time when he suddenly started wrapping his arms around him, locking him in a tight hug. Whoa! The cheers of the crowd were loud but what's louder was Hyde's heartbeat. The noise of it were deafening and he knows so well what was the reason for that. It was because Kay were so close that his heart suddenly started beating abnormally. Baby, let's talk too. You're too close. Back away a little. Hyde almost pleaded but he faked a cough not to show to his boss that he was feeling awkward. 
Not gonna move unless the next instruction is given, Kay said, stubbornly. The afternoon light from the sun shone on their part. It was orange and bright, not blinding but enough to make Hyatt squint his eyes. He was facing the sunlight while Kikaza's back was turned on it, giving it as the handsome and gorgeous CEO's background. He appeared to be more dazzling with the light, mesmerizing the little secretary. Oh, isn't our CEO fun? This is how this game should be played. Be bolder and don't hold back. We need to spice it up. Lila cheered and crowd roared. Meanwhile, Hyde. Jeez, just end it already. He would almost curse at Lila for teasing their boss and taking things longer for checking on every couple. He's growing anxious because of their bold proximity. Okay. Next instruction everyone please. Chill and take a sit. Secretary Hyde thought it was his opportunity to escape however even before he could retract and detach himself away from his boss's arms. Kay outwardly made him turn around and once again wrapped his arms around him, hugging him from behind. Wow. It's a back hug. Hi hi I'm loving this. Lila was giggling, totally looking forward to their boss's next course of action. I hate this. Hyde could only complain on his mind, whining about how stubborn Kay was. You made it hard for me since morning now I'll make it harder for you. Kay whispered on Hyde's ears, tickling that sensitive skin there. Hyde slightly tilted his head because he feels goosebumps running through his body because of Kay's breath, but he didn't know that he made it worse when his annoying boss was given more access to place his chin on his shoulder, comfortably laying it there. How romantic! Jano exclaimed dreamily while watching his friend, the little secretary Hyde and the stoic boss, Kay becoming brazen. He was like watching a free live romantic movie because of the two. Hyde heard the comment and recognized the voice and started cursing about Jano on his mind. Anyone who would see Hyde and Kay in their position would think they are filming some kind of a romantic drama and Hyde would never in any way like that kind of idea but will. Production manager Jano would love to invest and become a sponsor on a Tadai script such as what the boss and the secretary were now playing out. God, this is getting more exciting. And the next instruction is, hug your partner. This time around Hyde acted quick, swiftly moving away from Kay. He thought it was his victory but when he turned to face his boss and show him his celebratory expression, he was left in utter shock and the crowd yelled and cheered even louder for what they have witnessed before their very eyes. Kay planted a kiss on Hyde's forehead taking his breath away. Hyde didn't know if he would fake a faint or if he would run away from that place because of embarrassment. And the tricky game ended with them winning although there wasn't any participants that was expelled from the game. Hyde and Kay won for being able to win the hearts of the audiences instead. As dark approaches and night came setting in, their last game was called Blindfolded. It was played by team. The one to be blindfolded will have to search for the others and guess who or what is the name of the person they were able to capture. This game is for getting to know and getting closer with one another. Once captured and were able to guess their name, they also have to be a captor and will then be blindfolded together with the first captor. They will become an alliance until they are able to capture everyone and that's when the game ends. They were in a certain circle to have it easier and won't need to take them until dawn just to capture someone. The first captor in the green team is Jean. Kay participated as well in the game however he was just sitting on the edge of the circle watching them play. The first to get captured was Jano and Jean guessed his name correctly making Jano another captor. He was then able to capture and guess it was Natty until Natty captured Hyde and was also blindfolded. Kay stood up wearing a mischievous grin on his lips and purposely went in front of Hyde. He intended to get captured and when his little secretary grabbed him on his hand, the now mischievous CEO knew his plan wouldn't fail. <sighs> Hyde was trying to guess who he was able to capture. He kept on touching the body of the person until he felt his hands getting gripped and was guided to feel A. Hyde inhaled a familiar scent tugging on his nose. K? He mumbled. Kikazu's fragrance was all but familiar for Hyde. It was like an imprinted clue for him to write out succeed on guessing the name of his capture but fail the nerve-wracking game he had been playing ever since morning. Hyde sighed inwardly knowing he had no escape then removed the blindfold and came face to face with his boss who was grinning naughtily at him. He checked where his hand was touching and almost choked when he saw it inside his boss's shirt. That's right, you got it correct I'm proud you could recognize me easily. And, you're touching my abs. Hyde's eyebrows furrowed, his ears turned red in an instant as he felt humiliated. Will you stop? However, even before he could finish talking, Kay dragged him out of the place. Where are you taking me? The game is not yet finished. Kay ignored his wailing and was set out to dragging him somewhere. Hyde was complaining but Kay was not listening. 
until Hyde saw they were heading inside the villa. K. You. Release my hand. What are you playing? K has had enough. He's fed up of Hyde ignoring him. Now they need to make it clear between them before he even go nuts. When they entered inside the villa, K finally released Hyde. Hyde caressed his hands. K's hold of him were tight, rough and with a hint of anger. Why are you so aggressive? And please, there's no need for you. Why were you avoiding me? K didn't let him finish again what you were saying and suddenly fired away with his question. Hyde diverted his gaze away from K when he saw one of his co-workers getting inside. Wait, no, they were flooding in so the game must have ended already. Hyde got alarmed that they might see them so he pulled K to go up to the second floor which is where the rooms are located. Hyde cleared his throat when he successfully pulled K and they reached the second floor. He checked again downstairs and saw every other employees taking their sweet time as they entered the place. That was only then he turned his gaze to K and noticed he was still holding his hands then freed it, bringing his own two hands to his back clasping it. Who said I'm avoiding you? He then answered. Kay's question was replaying non-stop on his mind, ringing as if to make him lose his mind because of guilt. Were you not? Of course not. Really? Huh? Yeah. Is that all? Hyde wanted to get away from Kay as fast as he could. He won't be able to stand it anymore. Kay didn't answer so Hyde narrowed his eyes on him then he discovered Kay was just looking at him intently that made him avoid his burning gaze and stare down the floor. A moment of silence covered the atmosphere between them. If you don't have anything else to say then I'm going down. Let's talk. Kay's voice were calm as he spoke with a serious tone but his words held the coldness Hyde could see on the former's eyes which held a dark expression. He also pointed at the direction of the hallway heading towards the room they had stayed at before and went walking ahead. Hyde had no intention to obey what his boss wants but when Kay looked back at him with those cold eyes and dark expression, he swallowed as he felt the need to oblige because if he didn't, something bad might happen. He felt panicked while falling behind the taller guy. Kay opened the door and gestured for Hyde to go inside first. I don't think there's a need for us to talk in here. Do you remember what you did last night then? There was a hint of threat in Kay's voice while he stared down at his naughty little secretary. Hyde's face became flushed as memories of last night came rushing in. He intended to do that, to seduce Kay to kiss him, just to test his feelings. Hyde no it's not good in any way you look at it, because who was he to doubt Kay when he, himself is the one who's in confusion. His feelings are what needs to be settled. And now that his boss mentioned about it, Hyde felt more embarrassed of himself. However, he's curious if Kay have idea of what he actually did, because last night he doesn't seem to notice how Hyde faked his own drunkenness. In the end, Hyde chose to not open the topic of what happened last night, rather he went inside the room hurriedly just so their talk would end already. Kay followed inside. He closed and locked the door. Hyde heard the sound of the door getting locked. He looked at Kay. We're only going to talk. There's no need for you to lock the door. I don't want any disturbances, and you don't want anyone to hear us talking, right? Kay knew Hyde doesn't want anybody from the company discovering what was happening between them. Hyde was rendered speechless. Yes, he really does not want anyone from his co-workers to know something is going on between him and their stoic boss. Although there is no rule about forbidding office romance but Hyde still think it's inappropriate. He feels awkward about IR. All that Hyde could do was to clench his teeth in irritation and glared at Kay. What is it that you want from me? Kay smirked down at him and answered nonchalant. Your heart. Hyde was dumbfounded with Kay's answer. Let's be serious here. I am serious about you from the very start, but you're the one who seems to be playing mind games with me. Hyde swallowed the lump on his throat. He peeked at Kay's expression and couldn't help but to get nervous. Kay was serious. His gaze were sharp and undisturbed. I... I don't know what you're talking about. Since Hyde already denied about it might as well keep it until the end of their conversation. Really? Kay is getting furious and frustrated. Furious of how Hyde is suddenly acting towards him and frustrated that he cannot make Hyde feel the same way he feel for him. His self-restraint is slowly thinning down. Kay started taking a step closer towards Hyde. What are you doing? Hyde was stuttering as he took a step back. You might have remembered what happened last night, didn't you? What happened last night? Hyde was acting out his confusion, although he do remember it crystal clear because he was the one who staged it. Kay kept on going forward while Hyde was busy taking a step back away from him. You really don't know what happened last night? I don't have any idea. Oh! 
Hyde fell backwards from trying to step back many times. He fell on the bed and were about to get up when Kay positioned himself on top of him, reaching for his hands and pinning him on the bed. If you can't really recall what happened last night, then I will try my best to make you remember it. So. Kay's voice even darker. His tone was dangerous. Hyde swallowed as his lips trembled. He does not know for what. Maybe because he's anxious of what Kay might do to him or if he's expectant of whatever Kay would be able to do to him at that very moment. Allow me to do so. Hyde could only grasp the bed sheet and wrinkle it with his both hands when Kay slammed his lips against his own. The little secretary knows this time. It will be thrice dangerous for his heart that he might not be able to do anything rather than to submit and give in. He felt like his little game of running and hiding away from Kay was all in vain, because in the end, he was conquered by the stoic boss's overpowering emotions. Best Part Secretary Hyde is trying his very best to resist against Kay's strong grip. Their lips are locked with each other, but he's not opening his mouth. Because if he does, he'll be doomed. He's not a fool not to notice how Kay's kisses is affecting him. He's not numb not to feel the excitement it's giving him. Every time they kiss he get lost in the moment. He couldn't think straight and more importantly, he keeps on wanting more. That is why it's dangerous for him. When they kiss, a strange emotion would crept into his heart. Kay had to break away because Hyde is not responding. His little secretary is persistent on trying to escape his hold. Hyde, why do you make everything hard for me? Kay couldn't help but to feel remorseful of his actions although he doesn't want to let Hyde go yet. He loved the feeling of their skins touching and their close proximity however he got to admit. He's having a hard time trying to tame his little secretary. Hyde didn't say a word. He was just looking sideways. I don't know why you were suddenly avoiding me when you wake up. Because I remember I didn't do anything that would have offended you and in fact, you were the one who did something to me last night. If Kay were right, Hyde must have remembered already what happened between them last night. Although he doesn't know if it's the reason why his little secretary was avoiding him. He's somehow guessing it was the reason. I really don't know what you are. Hyde were about to deny and lie again. He was not raised to do all that but the situation he's in calls for it. Then why were you avoiding me? Frustration is visibly seen in Kay's eyes as he looked down at Hyde's face. One more thing that added to his frustration was that Hyde is not meeting his eyes. Kay softly let his little secretary's hands go. His left hand transferred from gripping his little secretary's hand to reaching for his chin and tilting it to make Hyde face him. Look me in my eyes and tell me, you're not avoiding me. Kay was expectant but Hyde only remained silent. The temperature of the room is cold because the air conditioning was turned on but Kay's temperament is slowly rising. He's close to exploding. Silence. He scoffed. You're treating me so unfairly. You don't know how hard it is for me whether from holding myself back or from trying to woo you. I have never done something like this before. Kay wanted to dominate Hyde and show him his strong side but what Hyde was doing is nearly breaking him down. The little secretary felt guilty of what he heard. Now that he realized it, it felt like a bucket of cold water was poured on him to wake him up from his own reverie. Right, Kay loved him for who he is now. He's giving it his all to make him fall and feel the same way he does. And yes, Hyde has fallen but he was trying his best to hold it in place because sooner or later, he will have to leave and disappear in Kay's life. Hyde swallowed and his eyes softened, just thinking about leaving and going far away from Kay, without seeing him, without touching him. Without feeling his presence is already enough to make Hyde feel like being stabbed in his chest. The pain is unbearable. It's already killing him. What more if it really does happen? Hyde felt choked when he finally met Kay's eyes. Thousands of unexplainable emotions came pouring down on him. If he's not feeling the same way as Kay, then what are those? I don't really expect you to love me in an instant, but what I'm asking for is for you to care at most, or maybe if it's not too much of me to ask. Just don't. Please don't you ever play with my emotions, because I'm weak when it comes to that. The stoic boss was left stunned when his little secretary closed their gap and planted a feather-like kiss on his lips. It came out of the blue. But Kay wasted no time. He seized the opportunity to bite Hyde's lower lips, nibbling on it before he sucked on his little secretary's tongue. Fire ignited in his chest when he heard him grunting and felt his hands clutching on his clothes. Kay held both of Hyde's hands and wrapped it around his own neck, while kissing and sucking and exchanging each other's taste. He felt Hyde's hand traveling to ruffle his hair. It added more heat to him to just feel that soft touch from the other. Whatever confusion Hyde felt and all those emotions he's holding back, he let it go. No more inhibitions or hesitation as he got lost in the moment of feeling Kay's lips assaulting his own. Their tongues were battling, reaching and entangling. Both of them felt like it's not enough. 
They are craving for more. K had to break away so they could catch their breath. He nuzzled his face on Hyde's neck and Hyde's natural scent enveloped K's nose. He was suddenly drawn to its sweetness his playful tongue found another target. K brought his tongue there as he started to slowly lick Hyde's neck making the other shiver from the feeling of being licked. It was wet but hot and the feeling that it was K who did that was adding more to his feels. K pulled away then searched for Hyde's gaze. Both of them are panting hard. Hyde's face is flushed. In his lips were the evidence of their exchange of taste. OT was swollen and red. And even though the room was air-conditioned, there were few drops of sweat in his little secretary's forehead. Oh, what a sight to behold. Hyde's image looking so attractive when he's a mess bring out his sexiness at the same time his eyes were exuding that tempting and seductive gaze. K couldn't help but bit his lower lip while they stare at each other, catching their own breath. After a moment, K couldn't help but to blurt out his frustration. I, I want you so bad. It hurts. There, the kisses they've shared is enough to stimulate his desire. They stayed staring at each other for a while when Hyde took the initiative and pulled him down on a whim then using his soft voice he spoke. His voice were like almost whispering in the air but K still heard it loud and clear. Then, take me. As if it were the magic word, K's hands moved on its own, sliding in inside Hyde's already crumpled shirt, caressing his smooth skin underneath that thin cloth. His lips started doing wonder on his little secretary's neck while Hyde. Hmm. <sighs> He's moaning to his heart's content to the feels that his stoic boss is giving him, submitting himself to whatever feeling is taking place between them. Dusk has taken place. The dark sky is the evidence of how shy Hyde is, blushing while remembering what happened earlier that day. Did you drink more than you can tolerate? Jano is checking his flushed face, coming closer to smell the scent of alcohol in him. His forehead creased after and distanced himself. You don't seem to have drink even a single drop though. Then why is your face so red like that? Jano dropped the most embarrassing question that Hyde heard all throughout his life. His gaze immediately landed on his stoic boss who was then singing with his low and deep voice while his eyes had been focused on him ever since he started singing. There is a sly smirk plastered on his face. Kikazuli Isles The stoic boss who only knew how to please his business partners and be happy about gaining profit. The stoic boss who was always expressionless and had the grumpiness to his face. The stoic boss also known as Kei who only knows how to nitpick on his secretary. Find fault in everything perfect they do is now drowned in alcohol, intoxicated and losing his mind. He was an embarrassing sight to see. Hyde looked away and subconsciously took the glass of beer in front of him then drunk it in one shot. Hyde, what the fuck? You, what happened with you? You look so out of it since the moment you came out of that room with our boss. Did something happen? Did he hurt you? Jano sounded utterly worried while the guilty secretary Hyde was remembering his encounter with his boss inside that closed door in that empty room. Hyde just wanted the ground to open and swallow him then and there. No, he didn't hurt me. There's nothing, really. I think I'm just tired from playing too much earlier. He reasoned out as he rested his head on top of his hand. He was suddenly feeling tipsy. Jano is skeptical about what his friend said. He was about to let it go when he saw him blushing even more. His neck was also covered in color red and just then, Jano's eyes widened. He tugged the collar of Hyde's shirt to check whatever is happening to his skin when he noticed a bruise. Wait, is that even a bruise? Or maybe? His eyes widened even more when he realized what it really was. A hickey! Hmm. Jano yelled out and Hyde was quick to cover his talkative mouth. Adrenaline rush was rushing to him and his tipsiness was washed away because of panicking. She. Hyde hushed his friend as he looked around. Gladly their colleagues are busy fangirling over and enjoying their stoic boss's singing. His voice was truly relaxing. It is low and deep and together with the mellow song. The listeners felt like they were serenaded by his singing. It was also the first time they heard him sing. It's a once in a blue moon opportunity to hear him sing. What's more is that he seemed to be in a good mood so they really feel his enthusiasm although curious and confused of what could be the reason. They feel glad to see him happy. <laughs> Jano's voice was muffled and he's trying to remove Hyde's hand covering his mouth. Jeez. Promise me you won't shout again, okay? Hyde threatened him with his glare. Jano nodded continuously and so Hyde finally let him go while still doubting. Jano almost shouted but covered his own mouth and shrieked in a tiny and quiet voice. You're such a sly fox. Hyde. You've got a lot of tea to spill. Jano winked at him and Hyde could only blush more. What are you even talking about? Hyde acted as if he doesn't know what his friend was saying but his stuttering gave him away. 
Jano can't contain his feels, and of course, he knows what is going on because he's been suspicious of the secretary and their stoic boss ever since the time their stoic boss gave his little secretary a cup of coffee in the morning before they drove for the trip. She. See? I mean, what is going on between you and Sir K? In that room earlier, did you guys just... Jano gestured his fingers like a form of kissing and Hyde almost ducked on the table to hide away his shy face. His expression just confirmed Jano's thought. OMG! Hyde was feeling more shy when he heard the words from the song that Kay is currently singing. Then it kept repeating on his mind while the memories of what happened behind the closed door of the room they were in earlier replayed on his mind as well. Hyde pinched his own cheeks to stop recalling the scenario that happened between him and Kay earlier, because he can't help but be more embarrassed. Lost in his own thoughts, Hyde has completely ignored Jano's antics. Whilst Kay is laughing inside while singing, Secretary Hyde came in the most unexpected way that Kikaza did not see it coming, but it seems that fate brought him to become the best part of his life. Memories of the Past Mom, he's really not picking up. Nero informed his mother who was then attending to the needs of their guest. His eyes squinted as he clenched his teeth when he turned to look at Kaisa and saw two other people in his line of sight. He does not like the familiar faces that he's seeing today. Try again, baby. Maybe he wasn't able to hear it? Nero could do nothing else but roll his eyes heavenward. He has been calling his older brother for a good almost half an hour by now and no one's picking up on the other line. He's sure his brother is busy having fun at the moment. Nero knew Kikazu was out on a company trip and they shouldn't really disturb him but their mother was very persistent on calling his brother for a reason that he should be able to talk with their guests today even through phone. Guests for their mother and nothing but a nuisance for Nero as he know what they did to his stoic brother, K. Aunt Kaisa, it's okay. Since you said they're on a trip, then maybe he's enjoying himself and left his phone aside. Don't worry, I'll talk to him once he's back. The girl smiled gently but in front of Nero. The flicker of evilness in her eyes cannot be hidden. Nero is already agitated just upon hearing one of their guests' thin and annoying voice. He glared at her and stomped his feet loud enough that made his mother jolt in surprise, before he stormed away out of their living room. He was gritting his teeth in annoyance while he typed a message for his brother, warning him not to go back and better yet to just extend his stay far away from home. Oh my, what is wrong with that child? Why is he throwing tantrums? Kaisa Melanie Isles is caressing her chest because of the shock she felt. She's just talking to herself and forgot the presence of her guests who she heard their laugh. Only then did she remember she was having guests over. Technically, her oldest son's guest. Don't worry about Nero and Kaisa. Maybe it's just a bad day for him. Sage reassured her. Kaisa was touched, smiling at the handsome man. You're so sweet, son. And don't worry, I'll discipline Nero later. Isn't he in college now? Aunt Kaisa? The female guest asked. Her beauty was evident especially as the dimmed lighting of the kitchen room would flicker on down on her direction. Yes, Aisha. Second year college to be exact, but he's still a kid. Very naughty and playful. I wonder when will he ever mature? He will come to that. Aunt Kaisa, Nero is a good person after all. I'm sure he took after you. Kind and caring. Oh, Sage you're such a sweet talker. Your mother must be proud to have such a lovely son like you. Kaisa sighed because contrary to the sweet and tender sage, Kikazu is far from being sweet or filial. Ever since he was young he had always known what he want. He has established his own principle. He's firm to his decision. He was mature and most of the time cold and expressionless. She only sees him smile when it comes to the youngest of their family. Ricky different to how he act with Nero. K was strict and serious but Kaisa could see it's because Nero is really sly at times however. K still loves his brother and comes to his rescue every time. While my eldest son is always wearing that bored expression. Seriously, he's such a boring person isn't he? Aisha smiled. No, I don't think so Aunt Kaisa. Because if K were really that boring, he would not have attracted most girls. You know his type. A little brooding. Serious and cold but surely he has his own charm which is his charismatic and stern nature. That's how girls get more attracted. A little mystery spice things up. Yeah. Kaisa squealed hearing the beautiful girl compliment her son. She had always liked Aisha, Kay's college sweetheart for her son. 
When the unexpected news of Aisha going abroad broke out, Kaisa was very sad especially when Aisha left. Kay became more brooding and hot-tempered. No one can tone him down and since he graduated, he had been focused on his work and became distant to them. It made her worried but now that Aisha has returned, a spark of hope blossomed in her heart. She knows things will be better between them. She wished that they could rekindle the love they had in the past and start anew in the present. Do you think Kay would be happy to see you? Sage and Aisha went out to the Alza's mansion's garden. There were a swing under a paper tree and Aisha sat on it while Sage leaned on the tree, crossing his arms as he gazed down at Aisha, talking to her. Aisha puckered her lips before smirking, confident and proud of what she's going to answer. I'm his first love, Sage. Of course he would be happy to see me. Why would you even ask that? Aisha Tyler is a famous model. Her beautiful appearance is her asset. Her hair is a straight long blonde that reach her waist but on certain occasions such as a shoot or a pictorial. Her hair needs some changes and procedures to suit the theme. Her blue eyes were misty and gentle looking. She's got a prominent nose structure and her lips are full and plump. What's more is Aisha's slim and sexy body with her. Tall figure completes her model physique and is one of the reasons for being crowned as the most beautiful woman in the world. She won't deny her beauty is the most captivating about her and it was also the reason that his ex, Kikazu, was enchanted for. Looking back to their college memories are bringing a smile to her lips. When they were in college, Kay was head over heels over her. He was possessive and wanted all her attention. Kay was not really good in handling a relationship. He was timid in reacting to relationship situations however. Aisha loved that part of him. Between them, she was the one in the upper hand. She would lead him in everything about romance. Although he wasn't sweet and always act on a whim. Their memories together were always the best she would choose over anything else. Five years had passed I. There had been a lot of changes about you so do you think Kay would be the same he was even after five years? However, Aisha and Kay were not like an official lover. They held hands but has never been able to go on a date. She had other priority before and Kay was never on top. Aisha admits she took his love for granted. She took everything about Kay for granted. Although she loved the attention he was giving her, she felt caged and different situations then arose to break them away from each other. One of those reasons was her dream of becoming a model. Young and naive as she was back then, she wanted so bad to chase after her dream that Kay eventually disappeared in her life as the exchange. And now after five years, she's back. I changed in other matters, Sage, but my heart would never and I am completely sure. Kay too, between the two of us. He was the one who was in deep fall and I'm doubting he would ever be able to rise back up to the surface. Sage was nodding all along as he listens well to her but as Sage watched Aisha, he is quite terrified to see the determination in her eyes. It was fiery and would burn anyone who would dare to get on her way. She has returned to claim what once belonged to her. Ready to claim her place and chase after her biggest dream. Kikazuli Isles. I'll make sure to make him mine. Mark my words. Sage. K is mine. Before until now. She will do everything. Move the mountains if it's needed just to have Kay back. Even if it means death, she's ready to risk. What if there's no place in Kay's heart for you anymore? What will you do? Aisha scowled, laughing at the ridiculous question. That is out of the question, Sage. Kay is mine and mine alone. You know how crazy he was over me when we were in college. To the point that he would die for me. That is enough evidence to prove he won't be able to forget me. Aisha! Sage! Come here, let's have lunch first. Kaisa called the two youngsters chilling in their garden. She had personally cooked and prepared meal for the two guests. Mom, must you be exerting this much effort for people you barely knew? They are no special guests. You treat them with so much favor. Ouch! Nero yelped when his mother pinched his ears and picked up the magazine next to her. Rolled it and then spanked him softly in his head. They were friends of your older brother and one of them was his special someone in the past. How do you think your brother would react once he find out his special someone came in our home and we treated them badly, hmm? Aish! Mom! Let go first! It hurts! Ah! His mother pinched him harder first before letting go. Nero caressed his ears that was now red because of the pressure from pinching. Aisha is nothing but a memory of Kay's past and she should stay there without crossing the line. She had hurt my brother before and I won't ever let her repeat what she did. Nero let out his frustration that caught his mother off guard. He strode away from the dining hall. His forehead were creased and his teeth grinding in annoyance as he walked while stomping his feet. 
The presence of the two made him feel raged and while he turned to their hallway which was the exact road he had to pass before reaching his room, he crossed with the ugly witch and wicked man. Aisha smiled at him but Nero gave her a death glare. My day is very ruined. What an eyesore. He unerringly said before continuing to walk away, heading to the elevator to go up in his room. He better attend school although he's lazy than to stay at their house and be face to face all day with the ugly witch and the wicked man. It is already disgusting to breath the same air they exhale and their presence alone was unsightly. Shaking his head and realizing he really have to warn his brother not to fall in the witch's trap. In the office. One week flew by too fast. Times Corporation is currently facing a hectic and busy schedule because of a problem they had been trying to solve ever since they came back from the trip. The team building activity only lasted for three days then the next day they had to hurry and go back to work because of some urgent matters. One associate of Times Corporation who signed a contract of displaying one of the Times Mall's newest product on their shelves ordered 500 boxes of their product. It was already put into production and was about to be delivered the half of it however. The director of that company died in an airplane crash and now the new director is denying the contract they signed. They had fault for only having the contract for the collaboration to be signed but the contract for signing the establishments to be displayed. The product on was put on hold because the director had to go abroad for a convention and now they are suffering the loss for one wrong decision. K face palmed because of the stress he's feeling. Aside from the problem with 4U Beauty Company, there were other sort of problems he's been dealing with for a week now. The pressure is taking a toll on him. For the past three years that he had established Times Corporation, this is the first dilemma he had encountered in a way that it was even affecting him. He can always find ways and solve the problem quick but this time, it was rather challenging. Everything is a first. Although he got it sorted out and had taken immediate action, some things are not going as planned. Why are you wearing that kind of expression to your face? Secretary Hyde has been watching, looking out for Kikazu by the side. He noticed that his handsome face were still gorgeous but the exhaustion was evident there. Some may say Kei was rather calm, that the kind of expression he was making now would be described as his normal resting face but in Hyde's eyes, he could see past that. Kei lifted his gaze from staring down at the documents on his desk to the person standing in front of him. When he heard the latter's soothing voice, his nerves somehow calmed down. He stared fondly at Hyde who was then looking at him with those worried and soft eyes. A small smile made its way to his lips upon seeing his radiant face. What a healing person his little secretary is for him. Are you alright? Do you want to get some fresh air? Or maybe you want some refreshments? Tell me anything. I'll get it for you. Kay's small smile formed into a grin because of hearing such offer from Hyde. It was thanks to that offer that he suddenly thought of a crazy idea. He frowned sadly while looking at him with pleading eyes, putting on a show. I'm tired Hyde, will you give me a refreshment? However, he wasn't finished yet with his sentence when his little secretary made his way to the pantry room, bolting in a flush and quickly returning with a refreshing drink in his hands. He smiled while giving it to him. With that kind of smile, who is he to refuse what his secretary was giving although it really wasn't what he wanted to have? Ha ha, thank you. Kay reached for it, opened the lid and drunk it dry. He was thirsty but most thirsty for something else. Hyde was about to go back in his seat when Kay spoke halting him in place. Air. My neck is also hurting could you please give me a massage? Kay said, acting like he's in real pain because of his neck. Hyde's forehead creased but didn't argue and nodded, walking towards Kay. He was about to turn the back of Kay's swivel chair when he was gripped by the hand and was pulled down to sit on his stoic boss's laps. Hyde's face immediately became redder realizing their position especially when Kay wrapped his arms around his waist, softly caressing him. Inside of a closed door, sitting comfortably on his swivel chair with a proud grin on his face was the stoic boss and sitting on the stoic boss's lap is his little secretary with the kind of blushing face that makes the stoic boss want to tease him more. What are you doing? Sir, we're in the middle of work and we're in your office. Hyde scolded with widened his eyes, warning him that somebody might walk on them. However, Kay just smiled at him then rested his forehead on his neck. It seems that their boss is really worn out. Hyde understands his worry. Everyone from the company is tired, even Hyde. Their week had been a series of eventful times and tiring one of course today is no exception. As you have said, we are in my office. That's privacy already. Just stay still and let me have my peace for a moment. I am bummed out. Kay said, his voice sounding really weary. Hyde stopped resisting then. He softly caressed Kay's back to comfort him. He's been doing his best to assist and reduce the burden that Kay is feeling however. The problems they rarely ever encounter is too much to handle. 
One by one it is being resolved and Hyde couldn't wait to clear things up so that everything will go smoothly again. He'll have more time to spend with Kay if ever. Hyde felt shy and his face became even more redder than it already is. His thoughts are embarrassing him. How could he? However, if he were to be honest, let him be selfish for once. Since they had been back from the trip and had to solve the company problem, both of them became immersed on their own work that they barely had time to spare to each other. They haven't even kissed for a week now. Ahem. I'll get back to work. Hyde's thoughts are a disgrace. How could his mind think that way? And when did he even became that bold? Ah! Oh. He got up and was about to detach himself from sitting on Kay's laps when Kay pulled him down, making him sit in between his legs and cornered him on his desk. Both the stoic boss's elbows were pressed on the table, leaving Hyde no space to escape. Sir? I, uh, I think we should get back to work now. Don't you think so? He was stammering because of the rapid beating of his heart. The last time they were as close as that was when the night they officially became boyfriends. Kay showered him with too much kisses Hyde had to flick Kay's lips just for him to stop. Kay's dark eyes turned even darker and dangerous in Hyde's sight as the stoic boss's gaze trailed down from looking at his face to settling on his trembling, plump red lips. I want to do another work, he whispered. His voice was low and painted with the hint of danger as he captured his gaze. Hyde could only gulp awaiting for his boss's next moves and although he shouldn't be but he was utterly anticipating for it. Would you, let me? That seductive gaze, that sexy and deep voice, Hyde swear Kay would be the death of him whenever they are together. How is he to resist? Even though he was shy, Hyde gave a swift nod giving Kay the go signal and when he did, Kay did not waste any moment he had gone straight to biting Hyde's lower lips, bringing to life the danger Hyde saw in Kay's eyes. At first it was a soft bite, Nibbling on it until Hyde felt a pang of pain and tasted the flavor of metal on his lips. Kay bit him for real that it even bled. He was about to push him away but Kay only tightened his hold on him and kissed him fully on the lips. The taste of blood and the drink Kay drunk earlier circulated around, giving a weird taste on their mouths. Kay searched for Hyde's tongue and when he found his target, he sucked on it, making his little secretary moan from pleasure. Hyde also felt the soft touches of Kay on his own neck, pinching his skin softly adding to the pleasure. Hyde returned the favor of Kay's kisses. He tried to battle with his tongue. They were exchanging taste, ravishing each other's mouth. Hyde pulled away to catch his breath, making Kay groan to complain. When he saw Hyde has finally regained his breathing, he pulled him again for another kiss, impatiently. Hyde's lips is always the most addicting. If it were a drug, he'd say it would be nicotine. It gets him high so much that he keep on wanting more. Had they not been in the office, he would have done more than kissing. Fuck his works. It is such a hindrance for enjoying a blissful moment. Brushing off the unnecessary thoughts, Kay fixated himself to the fact that after a week of not touching his secretary, today he will make up for that, sliding in his left hand inside Hyde's perfectly ironed shirt, feeling his soft skin there, stroking earning him a favorable reaction from Hyde who moaned sexily for him. It was satisfying. And as the stoic boss was focusing on his other work, doing wonders on his little secretary, a knock on the door drew him back to reality. It was an evidence that his work is getting on the way of his personal life, and even if Kay didn't want the kiss to end, he had to pull away, gathering all his might just to do that. It took him his all to resist the urge to slit another hand inside Hyde's shirt and give more touch to the soft and sensitive skin there, and another force he had to pull off not to crash his own lips to his little secretary anymore. Get up now, babe. A dark grin appeared on Kay's lips feeling Hyde who suddenly buried his face on Kay's chest, successfully draining his energy. In the end, he had to pull Hyde and assist him to get up. He smirked when he saw how flushed his state was and a bigger smirk when he noticed a bruise in his little secretary's lips. To think that he was the one who made it look so sexy on Hyde, that mark is made by him and he marked what is originally and solely his. Hyde was wobbling while walking towards his desk. He was thinking that Kay is something. He had to stop when he wanted more. That was the first official kiss they have as boyfriends and it was interrupted by whoever the person who knocked behind that door. His gaze made its way to the door and gave it a deathly glare. Hide. A call to his name made him turn his head back to where Kay is, sitting on his swivel chair. His chin is resting on his palm while there is a smirk on his face. Thank you for the refreshment. That was a hella tasty one. And then he winked at him so Hyde quickly turned his face away from Kay for the latter not to see his blushing face. He immediately sat down on his seat. He threw a glance at Kay who was laughing at him then ducked his face on his own table to hide away. Come in, he heard Kay's voice commanding after a minute of silence, letting him to collect himself. 
Then the sound of the door swinging open was heard and the sound of a woman's heels hitting the floor surrounded the whole office. It was clicking and clacking. It was irritating for Hyde's ears. He was curious as to who it may be. He lifted up his face and saw a gorgeous woman, standing with grace on her five-inch black heels, wearing red fiery dress fitting her curves perfectly and complimenting her white complexion. Her hair was blonde and her eyes were emerald. It landed on Hyde and he didn't know why but he sensed danger while they stare at each other. His heartbeat raced in the most abnormal way. Especially when Kay abruptly rose from his seat, his swivel chair making a thud sound when it sprung away and crashed into the wall. Being the effect of his abrupt standing, it made Hyde feel weird on his stomach. Suddenly, there was a force urging Hyde to go and block his man's view of the beautiful lady standing tall and proud in front of them. He didn't like the way the beautiful girl's gentle and captivating eyes turned towards Kay's direction especially when her eyes fluttered with every blink while she stared down at him with such intensity. Angel or Devil Personified Aisha You mean, the supermodel? Yes. She is also hailed as the most beautiful woman in the world, three times in a row. Wow, that's huge! But what is she doing in our company? The rumor is that she was an ex of our boss. An ex of Sir Kay? Yeah, and they also say that she was the reason why our CEO became that stoic and why he developed a bad temperament is all because of her. Are you kidding me right now? But they said Sir Kay never had any relationship before. Everything was just flings and none was serious? Oh, we don't know, but this time, I really think this Aisha girl is the real deal. Secretary Hyde passed by the corridor of planning department and heard two employees gossiping about a name Aisha. He wasn't interested at first and was about to walk away however when he heard Kay's name being mentioned and was associated with the word EX. He couldn't help but to stay and eavesdrop. All the words keep ringing on his head. It was quite disturbing and he didn't know why but he felt choked and his chest is tightening. Aisha? Supermodel. Most beautiful woman. X. Real deal. Kay's serious relationship. Hyde shook his head to get rid of those unnecessary thoughts. He made his way towards the two employee who hasn't stopped gossiping yet. They seemed to have taken notice of his presence because they shut their mouths when they saw him coming. He smiled at them. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh. He read their names on their tags. Mr. Z and Mr. Chu. I don't think it is the right and appropriate time to be having a conversation and chilling around while the whole company is in a mess. Don't we think so? The two bowed their heads and fidgeted with their clothes. We are sorry, sir. Hmm. Then get back to work now. A lot of things still need to be settled and done. Go! He ordered, quite intimidating them. Mr. Z and Mr. Chu bowed again before walking away. Hyde shook his head as he continued to walk towards the elevator. He's heading to the second floor where the procurement office is located. When he finally got inside the lift, the other employees bowed to him then started doing the same thing that Mr. Z and Mr. Chu did a while ago. Gossiping Hyde is sensing that his head would boil out of anger if he kept on listening. He's usually calm however, the kind of topic that's involving K with another person. What's more is that it is a woman, is triggering something inside him. He gets irritated with just the mention of the name of that said supermodel. She's really beautiful though. I think her and Sir Kay would probably look good together. Like a match made in heaven. What did he just heard? Hyde tightened his grip on the folder he is holding. He's suddenly pissed off. You're right and I could just be jealous and wish to be like her to find a guy like Sir Kay. One girl said, dreamily with a sigh. If only Hyde could block his ears not to hear what they were all talking about but unfortunately, he can't. So he have to endure everything. When he arrived to his destination and got out from the elevator, he felt relieved and could breath properly too. However when he entered inside the procurement office, the same topic was what goes on and about in everyone's mouth. Aren't they tired? Sir Kay is one hell of a lucky guy. He's got everything don't you think so? From looks to wealth and now a beautiful ex. Wow! He's really hit the jackpot. Mind you, Ms. Aisha could also become his girlfriend again. We don't know. Maybe one of these days. Oh, wow. I thought I could maybe get a chance to pursue her. Man, in your dreams, ha ha ha. But seriously, they would make a perfect couple, right? Yes, and I heard Miss Aisha visited Sir Kay's parents. His mother is really fond of her. Whoa. The two male employee who's gossiping yet again was startled when Hyde put down the document in their table with undeniable force, actually slamming it. He was also glaring at them. 
Here's the documents of approval, he said with a calm voice before leaving. He can't stand it anymore. His demeanor might be calm, but his inside is doing some somersault. His chest was getting tugged by some kind of indescribable feeling which gets him more annoyed. He doesn't know as to why was he even feeling irritated, especially when he hears the name of the girl. Now though, he's feeling a little regret of leaving the stoic boss and then Aisha in Kay's office alone. They don't know what could happen when two person is left alone in an office like that. Hyde suddenly got reminded of what he and Kay were doing before that person came. His face became flashed with the thought of them kissing however his forehead creased when thinking about that girl and of the possibility that they might. Gritting his teeth, Secretary Hyde's face is showing his irritation while walking back to their office. He's had enough of those annoying topics. Hey, Hyde, whoa, why is your face crumpled like that? Are you in a bad mood? Jano greeted Hyde when he saw him passing by their office and he wanted to burst out laughing because of Hyde's facial expression. He looks constipated. But Hyde is not in the mood to joke around. He was glaring at Jano. Why? Jano was confused at first when he saw his face, but now that a realization dawned on him, he smirked at his friend teasingly. Miss Aisha is really beautiful, isn't she? Jano emphasized the word beautiful and Hyde directly glared at him. If looks could kill then he'd be a dead meat by now. Can you shut up? And stop mentioning that. That name. It doesn't sound right to me. Jano chuckled while patting Hyde on his back as if comforting him. My friend, if a rival shows up then you gotta show them who is the triumphant one even from the start to make them stay in their place rather than worrying like this. Why don't you show them who is the boss? Like, mark your territory, maybe? Hyde's creased forehead has vanished in an instant when he heard what Jano said and instead, his ears were itching to hear more. Mark. My. He's confused of what he was talking about, but kind of getting the idea of his point. Jano got closer and whispered on Hyde's ear. Show her she's an ex, a person from the past, and you're the present lover, a person of his reality now. You own the rights, Hyde, so you shouldn't worry and stop getting jealous. What jealous? I am not jealous. Who said Hyde is jealous? Why would he be? Jano laughed at his obvious denial. Of course you aren't, but you sound so defensive. My God, ha ha ha. Gee, shut up. Admit it or not, Mr. Secretary, you're jealous and you want to stab that Aisha girl with a fork in her chest just so she won't be able to take away your meat, right? Hyde felt himself blushing. Is he that transparent of the displeasure he's feeling towards the unexpected guest? Well, I'm, uh, I gotta get back to the office. Sure, my friend, but remember what I've told you. You should outwardly mark your territory. Jano teased, shooting a flying kiss to the little secretary who was so cute being jealous. Hyde glared at him, brushing off his flying kiss before striding away. Jano let his friend go and just laughed his ass off. Hyde is such a rookie when it comes to love and handling relationship, especially with a high-maintenance guy like their boss. He definitely won't be having it easy. Secretary Hyde! 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 It's still a long way to go, huh? Hyde couldn't help but heed a deep sigh. He's not having the best day of his life today. No, when a gorgeous supermodel says no. Why did that girl even show up today? And speaking of the devil, and the devil shall show herself. The Aisha girl that everybody is talking about has finally walked out of Kay's office. Hyde could finally breath freely. Or maybe he shouldn't have celebrated early because it got jinxed. Because Aisha. She stopped midway, turned around and looked at him in the eye. You're Kikaz's secretary, if I'm not mistaken, right? Hyde stopped walking too. He nodded and was about to introduce himself however Aisha handed him an invitation cutting him off his introduction, his forehead furrowing. This is an invitation for my homecoming. I forgot to give it to Kay. Could you please give it to him for me? And, oh, you could tag along with him. It'd be nice to see you there. Tell Kay I'd be expecting the both of you. She said before walking away. Her hips were swinging as she walked with Grace. She had turned the hallway into a runway. The other employees were awed when they saw her passing by. Wow, she's so beautiful. She looked like an angel. Her face is really perfect. Hyde doesn't know what is his impression of her. At first, yes, he saw her like an angel. Her face were really perfect. It was glowing and her beauty is evident. However, now that he heard the rumors, his heart can't take what this girl might bring between him and Kay. One thing is for sure, though. The coming days would be a roller coaster ride of emotions. Hyde entered inside Kay's office. 
His boss looked at him and gave him a smile, but Hyde only glared at him while stomping his feet loudly to show his irritation as he walked his way to his own desk. It was immature of him, but Hyde could care no less when a potential rival suddenly arrived. He may have all the rights, but seeing whom he's up against is shattering his confidence. Kikazu watched the gloomy little secretary who walked with heavy steps and wore a stern expression in his face. Oh oh, K smells trouble. He is definitely in for a sulky boyfriend. He need to call Jay for an advice how to soothe him. Taming the little cat. Kikazu is driving Hyde home. The little secretary's spirit was low while they finished work. He haven't been talking to K since the afternoon. After the unexpected guest came crashing in their moment, he was silent and would only nod to his question. Amidst the loud noise of the city, from the honking of other vehicles, the noise from the people hustling in the nightlife, inside his car, only the sound of his speaker and their breathing was heard. K is focused on the road while Hyde was looking outside the window, watching the road they pass by, the city lights and every establishment. His head is resting on his arms that were leaning on the window. Hyde! K called. His voice was soft and at the same time conscious. Hmm. And a hum was all Secretary Hyde's response. Should we have dinner outside? No. I want to go home already, Hyde said, inwardly rejecting his offer. It was his firm tone that made Kay startled and then and there. He knew not to mess up. They only started to become official one week ago and now they are already having a little cold treatment. Coming from Hyde's side, Kay had a rough idea that it may be because of Aisha however he doesn't know what exactly is the reason why his boyfriend is giving him that cold treatment. Kay just sighed and didn't speak anymore. He'll let Hyde think things through first, to let him cool down before they talk it out. However, the irritation he feels toward Aisha, an ex from college, grew even more. He's wondering why did she even came back and what for. She's even messing up with him. When she suddenly showed up in his office, it caught Kay off guard and he didn't know how to react. At first he did feel nervous seeing that familiar face for the first time in the span of five years but when his eyes landed on Hyde, his nervousness dispersed and all that he had in mind is how to explain to his boyfriend who the girl that suddenly barged in his office was. When they were left alone though, Aisha talked about things Kay couldn't understand. Anyways he had already told her to never bother him anymore so he hopes she listens and their paths will never ever cross again. As they arrived at Hyde's apartment building, Kay stopped the car in front of the building and Hyde dashed off in a speed of light. He didn't even have the chance to say goodnight. Kay shrugged it off although he was feeling uneasy. He revved up the car's engine and were about to set off when his car door to the passenger's side opened and a card was thrown exactly at his face. All he could do was to grunt from the pain and put up a neutral expression to show he was not affected by that because it was his lover who did that. Of course who is he to make him feel like it's his fault? What's this? Kay asked. Hyde scoffed. Look at it yourself. I'm going inside. He said dryly then turned his back and were about to go ahead but Kay spoke, halting him. What? Hyde's tone was spiteful as he glanced back at Kay. The dim lights of the street post were illuminating Hyde's face, emphasizing his beautiful facial features. His eyes were dark brown and it shines with the help of the street light. His lips were sparkling and Kay couldn't help but gulped. No good night kiss? That was the question he wanted to ask but it stayed on his mind not intending to let it out not to anger the little secretary furthermore. Well, uh, good night. And those lame words were what he blurted out. Who can tame the mad tiger who looked like a tiny cute cat when he's calm but with those spiteful glances and resentful remarks? Kay is afraid he might get bitten and trampled down. They say when you anger your partner, everything would turn cloudy and gray. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Kay stared at the direction Hyde went to and a smile made its way to his lips. Who, somehow the rainbow showed itself. At least he said see you tomorrow, even without a good night. To which the clueless boss took as it means his little secretary is not as mad as he actually think he is, maybe just a little sulky. Whilst Hyde on the other hand was feeling down, his self-esteem is wavering. With Kikazu's beautiful ex coming back, he felt threatened. K was straight and then he suddenly fell for Hyde. It would be impossible if it didn't cross his mind that the stoic boss might have dwelled on liking a guy testing his own sexuality. And it was also given that when a gay guy falls for a straight man, it would rather be a miracle or heartbreak in the end. And these scary thoughts was wavering Hyde's confidence. Trust. Right. There is that thing they call trust and without that, everything would come crumbling down so Hyde have to give it to Kay. If given time, tomorrow they will surely have to talk things outright so he wouldn't have to assume and conclude things on his own. He may not have enough experience on relationships but starting it right with Kay will be more memorable. 
Kikazu, who stayed outside of Hyde's apartment building to wait for his lights to turn on, smiled when he finally noticed the room being lit up. His day is not that ruined as he thought. Then his gaze fell upon the card thrown at him earlier. He scanned and it was an invitation card. When Kay opened it, he wished he hadn't because it was what completely ruined his night. You are invited to the homecoming of Aisha Hillary Gills. Aisha. Kay gritted his teeth as his grip tightened on the steering wheel. He really need to talk with Hyde tomorrow and make things clear. He knew there were rumors circulating around since Aisha has set foot inside his company. He wanted to brush it off because none of those were true but on second thought, it is affecting not just the perception of other people about his life yet it also affect Hyde and he didn't want his little secretary to misunderstand anything else and even turn their blossoming romance sour. And to make matters worse for his busy night, a call that came from home which he answered made his temper rose to a certain level of almost exploding high. Yeah. Is that how you should greet your mother over the phone? Sigh. Good eve. I am no client, Kikazu Isles. I am your mother. Sigh. Again. Yeah, mom. So what do you exactly need? Kay connected the phone call to his earpods, wearing it to his ears and has set out to drive home. And home he means his own house, not his family's house. You're such a cold-blooded son. Did I really raise you in every wrong ways possible? I'm driving. For you to be like that. Where did I go wrong? I feel like I failed my role as your mother. Kay heaved a deep sigh this time. There goes his mother, trying to make a drama scene using all the scripts she watched from binge watching various series on the internet again. Her mother is obsessed with role playing this time. If you don't have anything else to say, I'm hanging up. Hey, I was just kidding. You're such a lame person who does not have any sense of humor. Bye. Kay were about to hang up the call for real when Kaisa spoke about a certain name that triggers everything in him. He made a U-turn as fast as he could to drive home to his parents' house. Come home tonight and have dinner with us. We have a special guest and he's looking for you. It's been a while since the two of you have seen each other. Come here fast and catch up with things. Sage is here waiting for you. Kay quickly hang up the call and stepped hard on the gas. Speeding. If he could make his car fly in that instant, he would have done that. No, mom. You have no idea. Kay muttered under his breath while gritting his teeth as his knuckles made that cracking sound while his grip hardened on the steering wheel. If Aisha has the impact to make other fall under her spell and deceive them with her looks, the other person has his wicked ways to turn the tables around. He could manipulate anything and anyone in a snap of his finger. Kay had enough of them when they were in college. Five years had passed, but why did they have to return and mess everything up again when he's slowly and already starting to build his crashed world for the better this time? No. Kay won't let them take away anything from him again especially his happiness. Not this time. Declaration of a Silent War What the fuck are you doing here? Ouch. Language Haven't I warned you before? Don't go home cause it's full of shits here. Stop hitting me! Nero shielded himself with his own arms from his brother's continuous hitting, using the manila paper as a material he need for doing his art project to hit him, aiming at his gorgeous face. It was scattered around the living room. He was doing his project there rather than his room because he want to watch their guests without taking away his sight to know whatever he's up to. He may do something bad. He's here, Kay asked his brother with a straight face. His voice is cold and his eyes were dark. Nero pouted and then nodded while pointing at the direction where their unwanted guest was currently at, having a story time with their mother who was very fond of his company. Nero saw how Kay's fist clenched and the darkness in his eyes flashed in a darker tone leading him gulping on his own saliva. The witch was also here a week ago. She's continuously visiting from time to time, sucking up to mom. She, did she think brainwashing our mother will make her be accepted to our family? No! As long as I'm breathing I wouldn't let it be. Kikazu! Nero was once again hit in the head with the manila paper. Kay then threw it at him and he gladly caught it, almost stumbling. Then his brother walked his way to where their mother and the unwanted guest were at. Nero had to act fast and followed behind. He need to be on standby to back up his brother. If he ever decides to beat up the wicked man then of course, he will join forces. Hey, here's my eldest son. Kaisa greeted her son. She was very delighted to see his face after a long time. However, Kay was not in the slightest would be deemed thrilled as soon as his sight landed on that particular person he hates seeing. Leave. He spoke with a firm tone. Kaisa was flustered with her son's blatant approach. 
she immediately rose from her seat to pat Kay on his shoulder, calming him down. Take a seat first, Kay. She urged him to sit, but Kay remained standing. His aura was brooding and his gaze were sharp. Kaisa then turned to her second son. Nero, could you please call Ricky so we could have dinner already? Although Nero was worried of what might occur between the two grown men, he had to obey his mother and leave with urgency. Feeling the need to get back quickly, he fastened his pace. Kaisa was feeling the tension between the two college friends coating the air. She had to excuse herself to saying she'll prepare the table first, knowing they needed privacy. She just need to be on the lookout in case something happens. As soon as Mrs. Isles was out of their line of sight, Kay's sharp gaze darkened while looking at the unwanted guest. Whilst Sage scoffed, enjoying the uneasiness he brought to his college friend. Get out of my house before I kick you out myself. Sage mockingly smirked at him. Aren't you kicking me out already? Is that how you treat your guest? My, where did your manners go, Mr. Isles? His forehead were furrowing, intended making Kay lose his composure. Sage wanted to snap his tiny bit of patience left. Kay had to let a long deep sigh to hold his SHTS together so he won't have to lash out and waste his energy on someone unworthy wasting it for. After much contemplation, Kay decided to gesture the way out to the garden, hinting they should talk outside. Sage followed. Have you and Aisha finally meet each other today? Sage fired away when they were already outside. Kay ignored his question and outright said, Leave at this instant. Sage just grinned. Your mother invited me for dinner, Kay. It'd be disrespectful if I were to leave so suddenly, don't you think so? Also, why are you itching so much to make me leave? H.M. Afraid? Aren't we? Kay grazed his teeth together. He doesn't know exactly why he's infuriated. Is it because of the past or was it about something else that is coming from? His present? Whatever the reason is, maybe it's just really the guts of Sage that he hates. It gets on his nerve. Aren't you full of yourself? I am making you go away because you're not welcome here. And, come on, afraid? He went closer to Sage and draped an arm on his shoulder, applying pressure on it. What is that word again? Haven't encountered that ever since. Sage cackled and how Kay was acting all tough. When he calmed down, he smiled at him. Then maybe this time, one of these days, you'll feel more than just that word afraid. He looked at him with a serious face. Aisha is back and she set forth to claim what once belonged to her. Do you think you're ready for that? This time around, Sage is the one who gave a pat on Kay's shoulder then he took his time to sit on the swing place on the garden while observing the surrounding. Kay is frozen on his spot, confused of what Sage meant. Although he do have an idea, he's not sure if it is what the latter is talking about. Were you and Aisha not together now? Kay asked the question that's been running on his mind since the day he saw Sage again at EJ's supposed to be engagement party. The other guy's forehead creased but were mortified when it dawned on him. Did you? Sage wanted to ask him but halted when he realized and remembered the case with Aisha who had been friends with him since they left for college together. He didn't want to put her in an uncalled situation like that. So he shut his mouth off before he could even blurt out something else. Kay then glanced at him. The moonlight were their only source of light. It was dark and cold. The wind blowing is making both of them shiver. Kay forgot to turn on the lights, but at least he doesn't have to clearly see that annoying face while talking to him. Are you still mad at me? And Aisha? Sage asked after a moment of silence. Kay was left contemplating on his question, which came out of the blue. When Kay didn't speak, Sage continued speaking. Aisha and I are friends, nothing more than that. What happened back in our university days? Hmm, I'll let Aisha have it explained to you, but what I really want to tell you now, even if it's late. Still. I am sorry. It caught Kay off guard that Sage is apologizing, but what caught him more off guard was how he was not feeling mad when he heard that. He somehow felt relieved, like a dozen pieces of needles dug in his chest came off at once. Maybe after all those years that passed, his anger has subsided and all he was waiting for was that apology. I am not expecting you to forgive me that easily, especially that things still aren't clear, but don't you think we should let go of all the negativity now? Just let it stay in the past and let's keep moving forward in our own lives. We already saw each other at the resort and I felt how you resent me still. I can't blame you though. If I were in your shoes then maybe I would have done more than just getting mad. It was your sweet first love that got ruined after all. No. Kay suddenly denied. Sage was confused. I never said I was in love. People just assumed I was. What? Do you mean? If Sage could recall everything right, Kay was head over heels of Aisha to the point where he would risk his own life for her. Kay didn't respond. 
He just looked up the dark sky and gave out a sigh. Anyways I hope we could patch things up or maybe start anew. It has been five years that passed after all. You could say that so easily because you weren't the one who had to suffer. Kay, I don't get you. What made you angry at us if you weren't in love with Aisha? You thought I was stealing her away, that we were having an affair behind your back. We left you out in the dark and made you look stupid. Wasn't that the reason? Kay turned back, wanting to just end their conversation. We were young and I was dumb, but your indecency were never the reason for that. Then. Just. Have the dinner and leave after you're done. I hope you don't mind that I'm friends and are very close with Aisha. That. Kay wanted to deny that Aisha was never a big thing for him. Sure he did go crazy about her, but she was not the reason alone. However Z the next words that came out of Sage's mouth felt like a threat he sure had to watch out for. Besides, I like someone else. A cute person with a healing voice. And this person. Kay clenched his fist as his heartbeat raced in an abnormal way. He's feeling mad so suddenly without even hearing the name directly. Is someone you know, maybe you'll be able to help me get closer to them? But of course, he knew so well who he was talking about. Although he has the right and was assured he didn't need to worry about it, something in his heart is getting weary of what's coming ahead. The stoic boss's possessive ways. Hyde's forehead nodded together right as he went out from his apartment's building. A familiar car was parked right in front. The car window to his side suddenly opened, revealing his boyfriend in dark aviators. Kay brought the glasses down to have a clear look at him. Although confused why Kikaze showed up without any notice, Hyde decided to enter his Maybach Accelero. You don't really have to come pick me up, he said, flustered. Hyde is very uncomfortable around Kay in the office. Maybe none knew their relationship, however. Hyde knows the truth himself and feels uneasy with it. He want to be careful as to not get caught. You were acting indifferent yesterday. I want to soothe you. Hyde abruptly gave Kay a glance who started driving so suddenly. I wasn't. He tried denying, but his stutter gave him away. Let's have breakfast first. Do you want a heavy meal or maybe just coffee and bread? Kay tried diverting the topic intentionally. Hyde sighed. Let's go to a place I know. And surrendered in the end. He knew he couldn't resist him, because he knew Kay would get his way in any other way possible. Although Hyde was speaking normally with him, the thought of the girl who went into their office yesterday that made such ruckus and instantly became the talk of the town will not leave his mind. Hyde couldn't sleep a wink last night thinking what is the role of the beautiful and sophisticated girl named Aisha in his and the stoic boss's life. Moreover, who is she in? Hyde spared a glance at Kay who's focused on driving then immediately peeled his gaze off of him, looking away. Who is she in your life, Kay? Hyde muttered under his breath, only intending for himself to hear. Tick. Talk. Tick. Talk. Hyde cannot take it anymore. He got up from his seat and with his arms crossed against his chest and his eyebrows raised, he walked towards their stoic boss who had the nerve to be slacking off of his work. Kay was directly looking straight at Hyde, not minding his irritated glare. He finds him cute like that, fuming mad. Hyde slammed his hands down at Kay's table, making a loud sound. The stoic boss has been staring at him ever since they went to their respective seats. Hyde started doing his paperwork and brushed off the unbothered stares of Kay, however. He started to feel uncomfortable after an hour passed by with him doing nothing but staring at him. And because of this he remembered how their morning meal together went. All that Kay did was glare at every people who accidentally glanced their way, even the waiter who was asking for their order and even when the waiter was delivering the food. He stumbled down all because of the pressure he felt from the glares of Kay. It was a total mess. Hyde swore he will never go to that place again because of embarrassment. I don't know what has gotten into you, but please, sir, your company is yet to be in a stable situation and a lot of works are still needed to get done. Please. Erm. Um. Hyde faked a cough because he blushed from meeting Kay's eyes. He was staring at him more intently than when he was staring at him. Please stop mindlessly staring at a person like that. You don't know maybe it makes the person you're staring at uncomfortable. And the fact that he need to mention that, Hyde's face totally became flushed. Kay scoffed. So tell me, are you uncomfortable being stared at by your boyfriend? Boyfriend. Hyde felt a bolt of energy surging on his whole body sending a tingle in every place when he heard Kay calling himself his boyfriend. I'll just go to the comfort room, he said and dashed off. Hearing Kay say he is his boyfriend make Hyde's heart leap through inside his chest. He could feel his ears burning from the shyness he felt. 
Of course it's been more than a week since they became official, but hearing it from Kay's own mouth calling himself boyfriend of Hyde is something that moved and touched Hyde's heart. All that Secretary Hyde did inside the comfort room was wash his hands and stare at his flushed reflection on the mirror. When he decided to leave and was barely in front of the door, somebody pushed him back inside. He heard the clicking sound of the door getting locked and the person pushed him into the wall, cornering him. From the scent, Hyde knew right in an instant that it was Kay and he met his gaze. His eyes were holding an emotion Hyde could not name. You were taking too long. I thought. You got flushed in the toilet, Kay said with his serious face, his eyes not even blinking. What he said made Hyde embarrassed again. All throughout their story, maybe all he did was get embarrassed. Why is Kay doing that to him? Kay's gaze trailed down from his eyes to his lips. He unhesitantly kissed him. Hyde was about to open his mouth and kiss him back, but Kay pulled away immediately. He was about to complain, however. Hyde felt Kay's wet lips in his neck. He was kissing him there. It's making him shiver. Hyde held onto Kay's hair, tousling it. Pleasure is starting to build in. Hmm. <laughs> he was about to let out a moan when Kay pulled away and Hyde's eyes was left widened in shock as Kay made his leave. So that was it? All but a kiss in the neck? Make me anticipate in vain. Hyde whispered faintly, but unbeknownst to him, Kay heard it from outside, making him smirk in triumph. While Hyde had to do breathing exercises for the meantime, he can't get up feeling all aroused. When he went back to the office and sat back down to his seat, he glanced at the stoic boss who looked at him at the same time. Kay was grinning from ear to ear while particularly looking down below his face. Hyde just rolled his eyes at him. Why is Kay acting indifferently today? It's like something Hyde cannot point his fingers on but he get the feeling of anxiousness from him. Lunch came and Secretary Hyde is in an offset mood. He doesn't know why or maybe he have an idea but he doesn't want to admit it. Is it alright to say he's sulky because all Kay did was kiss his neck? After arousing him and then he just fled away. Hyde started blushing again. When did he even have that mind of a pervert? Is he a pervert now? He shook his head and sat down at the table with his two besties. However, the loud conversation of Jano and Jean went quiet. He looked at them and both their jaws were open while staring at him. Somewhere around his neck, actually. They looked stupefied. Jano was the first one to snap out of it. He drank water before speaking. Hyde just crinkled his nose oblivious of his situation. He was thinking that he had been stared at from the office a while ago for longer and maybe now he's getting immune and used to it. Even on his way to the cafeteria, people were staring at him. Are you aware that people are staring at you, Mr. Secretary? Jano half shouted, half whispered, nagging at Hyde. Hyde's eyebrows furrowed as he nodded, taking in a spoonful full of food he ordered to eat. Then are you also aware what they are staring at? There is panic in his voice, but Hyde could not care less. He's hungry because he wasn't able to properly eat in the morning, remembering what a mess happened. Hyde shrugged. Don't know. They kept on staring at me since I came out from the office. Maybe people just doesn't have anything better to do. He said nonchalantly as he took in another spoonful of his food, chewing in a relaxed manner. Gene shook his head in disbelief while bursting out laughing and Jano is left speechless, his lips twitching at the void expression of the little secretary who might become the talk of their whole company o oh, scratch that who have became the talk of every other employees because of his carelessness already. Hey, you narcissist, do you have the tiny circular mirror you always carry around on your wallet? Jano slapped Gene on his back to ask his teeth and grit while watching Hyde eat in peace, clueless of what is happening. I'm not a narcissist. I just love my face. That's called self-love and you could never relate. Jean's blabbering about, but nevertheless, he fished out a tiny mirror from his wallet. Jano snatched it from his hold immediately and placed it in front of Hyde's face. Have you looked at yourself in the mirror earlier? Jano asked. Hyde is getting dizzy with the proximity he has with the mirror. All he could see anyway was his cheeks. It's a tiny one. What's wrong with you, Jano? Can't we just eat in peace? And to answer your question, no, I didn't, he said while drinking water from his cup. Ha! Huh. Jano scowled while dropping down the mirror in the exact place where the image ticked the attention of everyone. Now, look, you clueless idiot. Hyde is weirded out by how crazy Jano is acting, but he's still obliged and follow the mirror down, his gaze fixating on the image reflecting on it. There it was, in his neck. There was a red, big mark on his skin. Hyde spat out the water he was drinking in both of Jano and Jean's faces as he sprung from his seat, mind fleeing and his feet dragging him to the culprit who made him end up in the most embarrassing moment of his life. That was why! Kay, you motherfucker! 
Hyde ran out from the cafeteria to go back to the stoic boss's office. Gladly he found him there grinning to himself. Jay! What is this? Hyde pointed at his neck, to the particular direction of what caught people's attention to look at him. What? That's a masterpiece your boyfriend did for you. Kay sounded sarcastic, however. He was really happy seeing what he made upon Hyde. What masterpiece? This is nothing but a kiss mark. And yes, his boss gave him a kiss mark. Kay's grin disappeared. Yeah, a mark. I just did what was right. I marked what is mine. He said with all seriousness as his gaze darkened and his tone were dangerous. So that none would take you away from me and whoever will try, they would know their place. The stoic boss is possessive way too. In the lone cold night inside a room of the rundown apartment, Secretary Hyde is sitting on his bed comfortably, engrossed on watching the news program on the television screen while a dark aura is surrounding Kikazu who's sitting on the floor, hugging his knees and his chin resting on it while he watches his boyfriend who is not giving him any attention. He's sullen. Since they left from work, Hyde has been ignoring him. His little secretary even smacked his hands away when he tried reaching for him. They rode Kay's car and Kay dropped him off, but Hyde got out of his car without saying any words so Kay had to chase after him although Hyde has been giving him death glares. He still followed and forced his way inside Hyde's apartment. However, Hyde was not wavered and continued to give him that cold treatment, acting as if as an heir and he doesn't see him lurking around him. Hey babe will you just really ignore me like this? Kay's shoulder slumped in disappointment because Hyde didn't even spare him a single glance. He was only focused on the television screen. I know what I did was wrong and I swear I won't ever do that again so please, can we please make up? Silence They say silence is supposed to be bringing comfort to most people however. For Kay it's otherwise. It makes him uncomfortable. Especially getting ignored like what his lover is currently doing. But he shouldn't give up. Kay got up from sitting pitifully on the floor. He walked towards Hyde. Getting closer slowly at him however, Hyde threw out his clenched fist in the air, exactly at his face, almost punching him. Of course Kay had to stop coming closer to his mad boyfriend. He just had to sat down on the bed, next to him, bowing his head like a puppy whose precious treat got stolen from him. They are only more than a week old as a couple but they have been on more than just one cold treatment than most couples experience. Do you know how embarrassed I was when I realized what those people were looking at when they stared at me? A moment later. Kay snapped out of his thoughts when Hyde finally spoke, breaking the tension in the air. Kay turned to look at him and saw that Hyde's eyes were still focused on the television. I'm... I'm sorry. Kay knew it was his fault. He was acting rashly and impulsive that he failed to realize the effect of what he did would do to Hyde. He was such a fool. His possessiveness got the best out of him. Rather, he was anxious and completely afraid. Sage came to my parents' house yesterday and... He said something that ticked me off leading me to act how I did today. Kay confessed making Hyde finally look at him. Hyde remembered the guy. Of course they are neighbors that had many encounters before and also, Sage is an acquaintance of Kikazu. He's your friend, right? Friend. As if. Kay blurted out, forgetting to consider who is in front of him. He immediately looked at Hyde that is now looking at him with a confused expression. Well, I. I mean. Yes, he belongs to the circle of friends I have however. We are not as close as you think we are. The day you saw him at the beach was the day we met after five years. We're kind of, uh, awkward with each other. He ended up telling about his sour relationship with Sage although he left out most parts that Hyde doesn't need to know. Kay is not planning to tell Hyde all about a friend who is set out to get his lover. Of course, a wolf should not let another wolf set foot in their own territory, especially bringing the wolf into their own pack. Is that so? Hyde seemed to believe what he said and sensing his somehow calm demeanor, Kay moved closer to him. Yeah. However, Hyde caught up in his motive and moved away. But what is it that he said and made you act as if you're some kind of a possessive yet stupid? At the same time, main lead in a drama series, acting like a jerk and leaving kiss mark on my neck without informing me? He raised his eyebrows on the stoic boss that is now looking at him with puppy eyes, trying to waver him. Well. Kay is hesitating because he now realizes how childish and immature he's been, acting like a teenager. Well what? You can't afford to tell me? Okay then. Hyde gestured to the door of his apartment. It's already late. I think you have to go home now. Sir, we still have to get up early tomorrow and go to work. He said with a firm tone and cold expression that Kay was suddenly reminded. 
He felt like he's looking at himself in the early stage of this story. Was he that cold? Always with a dread expression when talking to whomever? Kay swallowed his own saliva and then heaved a deep, long sigh, surrendering to Hyde. I was scared, okay? Hyde's forehead creased although he has finally calmed down. He reached for the remote and switched the television off. Then he completely turned his full attention on Kay, crossing his arms against his chest. Why were you scared? It's because. Because? Air. Air. Are you going to answer me properly, or am I going to kick you out of my apartment through the window? Remember we're at the fifth floor, yeah? How do you think will you end up if you stumble down from here to the ground? Just hearing such already made Kay's stomach churn with a sudden shudder. Okay, fine. Sage likes you, and he wanted me to set you up with him. Of course I said no, but knowing him. Kay paused and dropped his gaze. As much as possible, he doesn't want Sage to get involved in his present life, especially in his love life. He has his wicked ways. He may approach you out of nowhere. I was afraid you'd go with him. Hyde didn't speak that made Kay looked at him and it made him nervous when he saw his little secretary with an expression he couldn't read. Do you think I'm easy? Do you think I would jump on just anyone? Hyde bursted out. This is the first time he got disappointed on the man he loved. Kay doesn't trust him. That's not it. No. Get home first, Kay. Let's talk when we're both cooled off. Kay sighed weighing things in his head. And after much contemplation, he decided to open up. When I was in college, I fell in love with someone. He started, earning Hyde's attention and interest. Sage and I were best friends. He was the one who urged me to chase after her. I was naive. I didn't have any experience and was sloppy at handling human interaction nevertheless. I got her. She felt the same way I do. She confessed first and since then we became inseparable. We were always together. Wherever she goes, I followed her. I gave her everything I have. My time. Effort. I pampered her and became like a dog tailing his owner. He trailed off mid-sentence, gulping as he continued. And one day, this girl, her dream is to become a supermodel and she received an offer, but the offer is requiring her to go far away from me. She chose her dream without telling me. It was a month before her schedule to go abroad. I thought of following her from there and was very glad to surprise her of the news however. I, I caught her kissing with Sage. It was my first love and I was very serious about her. Seeing the girl I love and my best friend kissing behind my back left a grave damage on me. I was not able to talk to anyone because of it. I locked myself in my room for about a year. My parents didn't know the reason. And when I finally did broke free, I became bad-tempered. I find fault in every single thing and get overly mad about it. Sage then. After that, I got the news that he followed her abroad. I was miserable however the time that I locked myself, I realized I was never in love. It was because I was brainwashed into thinking I am in love with her. Kay finally let out, although not in the most plausible way of explaining things. Maybe he was able to tell most of it, realizing that in the span of 25 years of his living existence, it was the most that he talked in almost one breathe. While Hyde who was silently looking at Kay, intently listening felt overwhelmed with the gush of emotions which the stoic boss, Kay is showing at the moment, especially with trusting him by telling him about his past, no matter how it hurts. And it makes Hyde to feel somehow dejected, because he can't do the same. He trusts Kay but not himself. That's why. He can't get naked with the truth although no secret will forever stay a secret. Hearing about his first love leaving him behind, Hyde couldn't help but feel more guilty. He didn't intend to fall in love, but it came out of the blue, and now he's having a hard time choosing in between. Hyde sighed as he moved closer to Kay. He stared at him for a moment then kissed the stoic boss on his lips. It was a smooth light kiss. Then he pulled away while soulfully looking at his eyes, trying to convey what he immensely feel inside. I am yours, Kay. Yours. It took Kay's willpower not to give in, however. Seeing Hyde's sparkling eyes that were moist and pleading was harder for him to pull himself out of fascination towards his lover and ended up wrapping his arms around his waist, pulling him more closer to his own body leaving no space. His other hand found its way to Hyde's nape, drawing him in for a kiss. It's really time to mark what is his. Domestic boyfriends. Hyde got up from his bed abruptly and with his widening eyes he lifted the quilt off his body, rushing down to stand on his feet and was about to slip on his fluffy cat character slippers to his foot while mumbling. I am late! Oh my god! I have to go to work! It's almost past ten o'clock! I- He was panicking, all flustered at the fact that he's late. However, 
Secretary Hyde was sent back down to lying on the bed by getting pulled on his hand. Kikazu gripped him tight and Hyde went directly towards his warm, loving embrace. And it was just then that it dawned on him. Kikazu, his own boss is together with him and together they didn't go to work. We have work! Secretary Hyde screamed, lifting his head to meet Kay in his eyes, but Kay's strong hands pushed his head back down, casually and ever so gently, burying his face on his sturdy chest. Then he whispered with his deep and husky voice, sounding more sexy in the little secretary's ears. They can manage for a day without us. Let's sleep some more. Times Corporation's own CEO is found slacking off, cuddling on the bed with his little secretary. At some point, Secretary Hyde felt guilty by being irresponsible and getting swept up in the moment instead of urging the boss and leading him the right way yet at the same time, being locked in Kikazu's tender embrace, hugging each other above his tiny bed and feeling each other's warm bodies close to touching is making it hard for the little secretary to deny the stoic boss's offer. Didn't it hurt? What? Your waist and back. I think I overdid it last night. I almost kept you up until dawn. Hmm. Feeling embarrassed. Hyatt's face turned beet red while he pressed his own two palm onto Kay's mouth, shutting him off not to say anything more. Now that Kay mentioned it, the seeping pain from his behind made it noticeable although he can endure it. If what you want is to sleep then go sleep. Stop blabbering. He said while hugging back Kikazu who then squeezed him tightly, humming as a response. The stoic boss and his little secretary fell asleep again in early morning, in each other's warm embrace. It was almost afternoon when Kay woke up, right when he opened his eyes. Hyde's lovely face welcomed his gaze. He stared at his beautiful features for a worthwhile and brought his pointing fingers to trace his lovely eyes that whenever it's open, his hazel brown eyes would look at him holding such tenderness in them. Kay gave a light touch to Hyde's long eyelashes which flutters whenever he blinks then his pointing finger found its way to the little secretary's pointed nose. Kay smiled while tracing his nose and when his finger dropped to Hyde's plump red lips. Kay couldn't help but to bring his hungry lips to plant a soft kiss on Hyde's inviting lips, making the latter squirm in his sleep. Adorable. A silly smile was etched on Kay's lips as he planted another wet kiss on Hyde's own. This time, it ended up waking Hyde from his deep slumber, rolling his groggy eyes at Kay when his sight found him. Stop playing. I'm resting. Kay is in the mood to fool around, nuzzling his nose to Hyde's neck, tickling the little secretary. In the end, Hyde gave up and let Kay have his way, groping him all over his body. What will your employees say about you if they find out you were absent because of your flirty behavior? Hmm? Hyde snapped his gaze up, muttering enough for Kay to hear. Kikaza fixed his gaze on Hyde's tired but still lovely face. Their activity last night must have been rough for the little secretary. The tiredness reflects in his whole face and somehow, it makes Kay guilty. He couldn't hold himself back. Hyde's cuteness wakes up the beast in him but having the time for themselves sometimes. It felt new and refreshing for Kay, having to spend moments with his lover. So am I bad boss? He asked, mischief lacing around his tone. It was almost hard for Secretary Hyde not to laugh at the way the words sounded with Kay's rich voice. Bad boss. Of course he was considered a bad boss he was a creation. A mixture of all those cliché dramas about an overbearing CEO rolled up into one perfect-looking, confidence-radiating man. Is it that your reputation? Secretary Hyde answered, and when Kay continued to look at him, he snorted. Before I even meet you, I was already familiar with your name. You're most known as the one-letter man Kay, the stoic and workaholic boss. You're expressionless, intimidating, a billionaire. Kay gave a satisfied look not until Hyde rolled his tongue to say a left-out words. With a temper. His expression immediately changed from satisfaction to raising his right brow. Hyde then added in a hurry. Or so I've heard. So you listen when people talk about me? Why don't you talk to me yourself? Wouldn't that be more fun, especially now that we're lovers? Getting to know each other better, hmm? He asked, a taunting smile placed on his lips. I think it'd be more fun. Hyde gave a short laugh especially when Kay nuzzled his nose to his, humming as if to get him to agree. Whatever. I'm hungry. I'll cook for us first. Hyde shoved Kay softly to get him off of him, and gladly the latter didn't prompt it to do anything else and let him get off of bed. And as Hyde was standing on his feet, the aching pain in his back, particularly at his bottom sent him back on sitting on the bed. It seems as though they really overdid it last night. He can't bring himself to stand. Secretary Hyde and Kikazu's eyes met. They stared at each other for a loving moment and both of them cracked into a silly smile. 
probably having the same thoughts running on their mind. Hyde scrunched his face while he playfully rolled his eyes heavenwards. I swear you won't get any for a week. K. Last night's endeavor is too much for my body to handle. Oh, but I know you also liked it. Who said so? Well, you were screaming for more, begging me to go deeper and him. Kikazu's mouth was sealed off by Secretary Hyde's palm. His blushing face was too adorable and Kay found himself mesmerized. Again. Before they even dive into another round of lovemaking, Kay had to suppress his desire to not push the limits of Hyde, diverting the topic. He dragged Hyde to lay back down on the bed, his head resting on the headboard. I guess we'll have to order delivery food. Let me make the call first. Kay was cut off mid-sentence by Hyde. How about you cook for us? Any simple dish will do. Like scrambled egg? Restaurants are far from this area and will take longer than cooking? Hyde suggested, taking into consideration the time. He's famished and anything that will calm his stomach would suffice. He looked and waited eagerly for his lover's response who was then contemplating. And before he could formulate reasonable excuses, he found himself nodding to Hyde's suggestion, digging his own grave. Well then, let me see what you have in your fridge first. When they are finally decided, Kay assisted him to the bathroom first to brush their teeth before proceeding to their agenda. Kay on his task to cook for his boyfriend and Hyde to wait for the food his boyfriend's going to make. Hyde smiled at that simple gesture. While bearing the pain which came from the pleasure Kay made him experience last night, he let Kay roam his way around his own apartment, like it was his own home. Somehow, seeing as how they act, he couldn't help but blush. They are being domestic, even like a newlywed couple. And this bold thought made him suppress a giggle trying to escape his throat. It's making him all giddy and feeling like he's on cloud nine. Having to feel happy emotions at the same time was hard and so Hyde snatched a pillow scattered on the bed and buried his face on the soft pillow, screaming to let his emotions free. And after that, he still found it hard to calm down. Just in time, Kay appeared with worry in his expression. Perhaps, is there any grocery stores nearby? He asked. Hyde wondered for a moment why Kay asked and felt the blood rush through his face. He suddenly remembered his fridge was empty. He hasn't gone grocery shopping yet. Yeah, around the corner. A few blocks near the convenience store. We pass by the place and you'll recognize it right away once you see the signage. After getting the direction, Kay smirked and stole a kiss before heading his way. Needed that to recharge. And left a cringy comment as he go. Nevertheless, Hyde found himself smiling diving to bury his face yet again but this time on the soft mattress, screaming, letting out his heart to suppress feelings of joy and excitement. Falling in love is the best. Jeeves, and loving a stoic boss who can be sweet and only show his caring side to you is quite. It's making me swim in an ocean of pure bliss. Rival next door. Kikazu was out on his way to go grocery shopping and cook for his boyfriend, while Hyde on the other hand was left on his own apartment, lying comfortably on his bed. The seven-floor building complex, shabby and an obvious place which normal people would choose to be when they are struggling financially, almost as if it was in a state to be demolished, and inside one of the rundown apartment of the fifth floor, Hyde is laying on his back, on the verge of zoning back to sleep. His body is tired and the solace with Kay's presence brought him indescribable feeling, like he's at ease and he loved it that way. Such comfort draws him in for another rest, but it would be unpleasant if Kay will arrive and he's fast asleep. He then decided to take a bath to keep himself busy. It was already late afternoon. Hyde picked up his phone to call the office and inform them of his and their boss's well-being before soaking into the bath. The call was registering and on the second ring, a loud voice laced with worry came in, speaking in an extremely deafening volume. Where among the eight planets are you? With an expression, unbeknownst to Hyde. Jano's overreaction threw him off laughing but his sore back hit again with the pain, making him stop. Seriously, Hyde? You're not around without further notice and this hasn't happened before. You got us worried sick. I'm sorry. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm at home in just a little bit. Uh, feverish? Hyde's excuse came out unnaturally. He just hoped that Jano would be oblivious to that fact. To Jano's sigh, Hyde was relieved. So you called in sick? Well, I will take care of that. Anyway. Gene and I will visit you to check up on you once we get off work. I'll bring you porridge. If ever, is there anything you want? Even before Hyde could hold himself back, he already made a screech with an outright rejection of the other's offer. No! I mean, I'm alright! 
I can take care of myself and tomorrow's the weekend. Just enjoy your break. No need to worry about me. He was flustered and yet another excuse. Jano was rather skeptical about the unusual behavior of the composed and poised secretary. His high-pitched tone was about sketchy. Okay, if that's what you want then we won't disturb you. Just remember to rest well and don't ever make us worried like that again, all right? Of course. It won't happen again. He assured and after a little more questions about his condition, he ended the call. It was then that he remembered he didn't inform them about Kay but he also realized that he would be making excuses for the other, as they are actually together and that fact is something he cannot disclose in their workplace. Since Kikazu is their boss anyway, he could deal with it himself. Hyde went ahead to take a bath. Kikazu just got back at Hyde's apartment building, holding eco bags that contained his groceries. A few eggs, scallion, a carton of milk and some strawberries. In Kay's left hand is another bag, a fast food takeout to feed the hungry little tiger back in his home, so Hyde could have something to munch on as he take his own time cooking. It's way past late afternoon. They already skipped breakfast and too late for lunch. Kay is as starving as his little lover. While entering the building, Kay is on the phone with Jay, asking for a little favor. He asked him to prepare a candlelight dinner, intending to take Hyde on a dinner date tonight and although it was decided on a whim, Kay thought it would be a great surprise for his lover. Tomorrow would be the weekend and they could cuddle and stay in each other's warmth for all the time they want. Jeez, I'm charging you for this. For a psychologist, you sure are a capitalist. And for a workaholic, you're finally neglecting your work. Fine. Your lover is more important than work. I hired competent employees, Jay. I believe in my perfectionist nature. Blah blah blah. Sure, young master. I'll get back to you once the preparation is done. And are you certain to hold it in your mansion? Don't you want any fancy restaurants or even a date on a yacht? You could also take it in the air. I know you have your own private jet and P.O. is a pilot. He can maneuver for you. My house is the best spot, Jay. Because I want to go directly to bed with him and spend the rest of the day feeling him. Oh, you don't have to go into further details. That's enough information. Thank you. Jay's single ass can't relate. They ended the conversation just like that and as soon as Kay got out of the elevator, what he saw next didn't give him the greatest feeling. He walked towards two people conversing with each other. Standing outside of Hyde's doorstep is someone Kay loathes the most and seeing him talking with his lover is infuriating Kay. As much as possible, he didn't want their paths to cross, but heaven's not on his side, because now, Sage is again interfering in his life. What are you doing here? Kay's dark and gruff voice broke the thick tension surrounding Hyde and Sage. Both of them darted their gaze on Kay. They all fell in utter silence for a while. Hyde just finished showering when a knock on his door made him running excitedly to answer the door, tolerating the subsiding pain from his back but all the effort he made was wasted in vain when he opened the door and it was not Kay's stoic but handsome face that greeted him. Instead, it was the guy which inflicted pain on his lover that appeared. His neighbor, Sage Casper. Hyde felt the heavy atmosphere in the air. Kay was shooting dagger in his eyes while looking scrutiny at Sage. The latter stared at the other with the same intensity putting Hyde in an awkward position. Feeling remorseful towards Sage, Kay raised his guard up and draped an arm on Hyde's shoulder, almost caging him into hiding. Sage's eyes followed Kay's every movement. The gesture made it seem as if Kay was protecting his secretary against him but not in an employee-employer way, giving him the idea of what was really going on. A smirk painted his lips. Trying to suppress his disappointment, he lifted the plastic of beer in front of them. Care to join me for a drink? What an absurd ending to an uncomfortable silent war. With such offer, in broad daylight, shouldn't they refuse? It's supposed to be my celebratory drink. My design was chosen to be the best work and the top model will wear it to the fashion week. Don't you think I deserve at least this? With such a joyful reason to celebrate, how are they to decline the invitation? Hyde subconsciously nodded and to that consent, he felt Kay tighten his grip on his shoulder in a possessive manner as he sent glares at the person in front of them. Leaving him without any excuse to say, Kay let himself be dragged into Sage's house, just next to Hyde's own place. It turns out that his lover and the number one person whom he hate the most are next door neighbors. It's almost hard to believe but not impossible to happen. When they settled down inside the receiving area of Sage's apartment, the can of beer was served in front of them along with some food and chips. Without saying anything, K 
Kay took away all alcoholic beverages placed in front of Hyde and instead gave him the takeout food he have. You can't drink, just eat first to fill your stomach, Kay said with concern. Hyde peeked a glance at the stoic boss's crumpled face and took his pointing finger to relieve his knotted brows together, straightening them. Smiling at his boyfriend, Hyde scooped a mouthful and fed Kay. I can't be the only one stuffing my face. Eat as well and don't drink too much. Hyde's innocent gesture made Kay's heart leap and momentarily forget about his anger. From the archway near the kitchen, Sage just got out after getting some cube ice in each beer glass and what he saw made him feel as if he was invading a private moment in his own home while watching the two whom he invited impulsively for a drink. He only intended to drink with Hyde without even keeping his hopes up of getting him to agree and have a drink with him but now, he does not know if he's lucky or was it mixed with misfortune. He got Hyde to agree but he came with his boyfriend. For the first time that he liked someone, it just had to be a person whom a precious friend he treasure hold feelings for. He can't possibly go against Kay especially if he's witnessing how head over heels Hyde and Kay were to each other. Maybe it was a wrong move, seeing them care for each other. Tonight he will have to drown himself in alcohol and wash away his sorrow. He's admitting defeat even without starting the real fight. Sage knew he had 0% chance of winning over someone like Kikazu. Sage's Confession Was it that time? No, not on the night where he got scared of the little devil, which he certainly hates the most. Cockroaches are such tiny monsters that whenever he sees one, it feels like they are crawling under his skin even only with the sight of them they can still make all the hairs on his neck to raise. Sage Casper Garcia know definitely that it was not that encounter which made him take interest in Hyde. If he would flash back a little bit further, then it would bring him to the memory of when he first set foot again in his home country. The day he arrived at the airport. He cannot be mistaken. Whom he saw that day was Kikaz's secretary. There is no doubt about it. And that day, there was no particular event which made them connect instantly but Hyde's tiny gesture of kindness was enough to let him stay on Sage's mind, never leaving, running rent free. It was then that he was fascinated by the other guy. That fascination grew into something more but as it dives deeper, today, he have no other choice but cut it down. Therefore, experiencing his real first heartbreak. Ah. Sage scratched his nape. The alcohol is turning his mood melancholy. He decided to get up from his seat and went outside in his balcony, taking out a, a cigarette, lighting it and quickly putting it in his mouth as he inhaled. Somehow, it calmed him down. When he was in high school and had a hunch of his own sexual orientation, he was under stress so much to the point where he learned how to smoke and it became a regular thing until now. The sound of footsteps made Sage turn his head around and saw the subject of his broken heart, joining him outside. He didn't want it to feel awkward so he opened his mouth to speak, holding his cigs on his fingers to secure. How's he? He asked, pertaining to Kay who was drinking enthusiastically. Passed up drunk. The other guy answered. Ha ha, cheap beers really got him, ha. Huh? Hyde and Sage went quite covering the whole air in utter silence and although it was silent, that silence was rather comfortable unlike the past encounters where it was deafening. Just like what Sage said, they drunk until Kikaze dropped who was whining like a kid nonstop when the alcohol got into his head before he completely lost his consciousness. On the other hand, Kay didn't let Hyde drink and instead he doubled the amount of his own. The little secretary and Sage couldn't stop him. It was obvious that he's pissed off finding out that Sage lives next door to Hyde's apartment and that he even goes to such length as inviting his lover to drink. How close did they get? Without his knowledge, they seem to be getting along fine. So, you're dating your boss? Sage's low baritone voice broke the serene atmosphere and cracked the little secretary's wall where he keep his secrets. Hyde didn't expect the other guy to be quick to catch on. He peeked a glance his way. Sage is leaning towards the metal reclining of his balcony while having a puff. His gaze were fixated on the road below as it was the only visible sight to see around besides from other buildings as well. Hyde bit the inside of his cheeks before he blurted in a collected manner. You figured it out? Sage puffed a smoke out of his mouth, shaking off his cigarette to get rid of the ash residue and puffed again as he answered rather blatantly. It would rather be odd if I hadn't. Kay's obvious glare and hostility towards me gives it away. It's too noticeable not to notice. Hyde didn't know what to respond after that and just hummed casually. <sighs> Once again, they fell in a palpable silence but not long after. Sage opened a new topic, however it still involved Hyde, like everything the matter of their conversation is about him. He's that straight guy, huh? His next-door neighbor stated, 
trailing off his sentence then he continued speaking after a shrug. Well I didn't even know there would be a possibility he'd swing that way. Now he's the pitcher, or am I right? Leading him with no other option but to say. You're sharp. Secretary Hyde doesn't find any reason to keep on denying as the latter probably already know about everything. And he also thought that it would be good if Sage knew he and Kay were dating. Molded by experience, haha. Silence. I guess. You're also aware then. Aware? Of what? Of the fact that I like you. That was their topic of conversation last night. The stoic boss told him that his next-door neighbor is taking an interest in him however. I doubted it, but now that he hears it directly out of Sage's mouth, he's dumbfounded. Hyde's mouth were agape and his eyes were widened, a natural expression of being taken by surprise. Sage then knew what to make out of his expression. He snorted. Were you not? I, I did hear from Kay, but I didn't know. I'm also gay. The word that left Sage's mouth were like a chain finally taken off of him. It's been a hard long time. Although he does not hide his sexuality, it feels nicer to introduce himself without any inhibitions. He looked at Hyde for his reaction and chuckled when he saw him giving him a quizzical look. He shook his head with a smile on his lips before opening up his own story. I realized that when I was 12 and when I reached the age of 18, I came out to my parents and well, it didn't go well like what happens to most of the gay men out there. My parents were so disgusted with my sexual orientation, my father even thought I was just crazy. Like, how can sexuality define insanity? Sage frowned with displeasure as the words found its way to his own mouth to utter. He had gone out of his way just to introduce me to some psychologists. He even wanted me to be admitted to a mental institution. Like hell, as if an asylum can fix me. Hearing it from his own mouth, Sage knew how crazy his father was when he made all those unnecessary actions against him. Remembering everything now is overwhelming him. Because of that I left home. I run away from a madhouse and that is my parents' home I mean. And for two years I tried to pick up my pace. I stopped going to university and when I was at my worst state. He paused, recalling that day. Kikaza found me. He gave me shelter, fed me, clothed me then led me back home. He was the one who became the reason for my parents to accept me again. Just because he was an Isles, the son of one of the wealthiest men. Their family is affluent and hold much influence and power. My parents saw that opportunity. What hypocrites, aren't they? But even so, even if they tried to please me just to get their way into the Isles' money and power, I grew braver and stronger. I, again, went out of my own way, living the way I want. I came abroad with Aisha to find who I really am, to fix my confidence they had broken down. But in exchange of that, I shattered someone else and that was the person who picked up and put me back to pieces when I was first scattered around. Until now, at this very day, I always regretted what I did, and how I turned out in his unsuspecting eyes. Sage lifted his eyes back and forth in the darkness to ponder. Misty gleam that were suppressed hard remained in his eyes when he finished his story. The cigarette in his hands had already burned out so he threw it in the trash and placed on the corner of his balcony. Hyde's eyebrows raised surprisingly to hear the words from Sage. And as he listened, he felt his own chest tightening. He's definitely feeling for Sage with how he went through. Those hardships instilled by his very own family. That was something he could relate to. After a while of comfortable silence, the innocent Hyde couldn't help himself to ask. Do you? Do you hold feelings for Kay? He couldn't help but mumble. Sage who has just been on a dramatic point unfolds a smile as he reached Secretary Hyde's cheeks and pinched it playfully. You're making me laugh. Hide. Kikazu is important for me, but not in a romantic way. He's my best friend whom I treat almost like a brother and besides. I have my eyes set on you. I thought it was clear. The skies were dark and even the surrounding only brightened by streetlights, but Sage's handsome face is radiating its glow again, blooming just like flowers being watered. Warning. He hissed while chuckling. Don't worry. I know my place. Besides, Kikazu is one of a kind. I'm not some antagonistic character in your NK story, but rather I'm just an extra. You don't have to mind me or my feelings. I will deal with it myself. Sage professed, totally giving up all of his hopes and waiting off any worry nor pity in Hyde's eyes. He cannot afford to be pitted on by the guy he cannot have anyway. After a long sigh which Sage heaved, he turned to get inside the room. Although letting go of any emotions for the other guy, his heart was still heavy and on the process of trying to heal itself. Let's transfer Kay in your house so he could sleep comfortably. Such young master shouldn't be sleeping. 
sitting on the cold floor and hunched over, ducking his face in the table. He commented as he pulled the door of his apartment open with his throbbing heart. The moments of Sage's honesty is making Hyde confused because in Kikazu's narrative, Sage is a wicked man, he is a bad guy. On the other hand, in Sage's own narration and words, K is someone whom he is grateful for. There were no ill words nor thoughts against K and Hyde is assuming that all of this were a big misunderstanding. It is triggering his nosy side and all that he knows is he should do something for the two friends. With his tender eyes squinting as his busy mind started putting things together, formulating a plan, he entered the room and followed through as Sage assisted K into transferring to his own apartment, tucking the drunk guy into bed. Sage left not long after he was able to put down the drunk guy while Hyde sat next to K on the bed, watching K's sleeping face. How lucky can I be? Did he save the country in his past life? Hyde stroked the stoic boss's reddened cheeks which was the effect of consuming too much alcohol while wondering what kind of good things did he do to deserve the outstanding man sleeping right next to him, who fell for him, to be loving him, treasuring him each day, and sharing even his scars with him. There's been a question bugging on his mind the moment Sage admitted his feelings for him and that would be why him? Hyde Anderson is such an ordinary name, and it perfectly suit the person who wears it, plain. For Secretary Hyde, ever since he was born, his only role is to serve. Manners is everything for him. How you act is a representation of the person you will serve. When you decide, it should be based on logic without any brush of emotions, because he was taught that the brain is higher than the heart and how he should act would come from his head commanding his actions because acting impulsively using emotions is deemed a failure. He grew up with this outlook in life. Even after leaving home, this kind of ways was incorporated in him. Now he wonder, if it's worth coming all the way here for something uncertain? Is it right for him to choose his boss? Hyde looked down at Kay's face and cleared the strands of hair that fell to cover his face. Maybe. It is. In Secretary Hyde's mind, he's an insignificant person, only born to be in the shadows, to act solely based on orders and be proper without showing a single mistake. And in a sense, Kikazu is his boss, someone whose role is to hold the strings to mandate which direction he should turn and their relationship should have been limited to that but Hyde was taken over by his emotions. He crossed the line and now there is no going back. The sky outside is painted black so soon and the moon were already up to shine its light. Hyde bent down to reach Kay's cheeks and planted a soft and light kiss on his cheeks. Then he whispered, his voice full of sincerity, I love you, and smiled affectionately as he pulled away. By choosing to be with this man, he will have to face many obstacles. It'll be like treading back to a difficult road but with now a heavier burden. Kikazu is not showing him any inhibitions. He was rather reassuring in everything he does for Hyde, straight with no hint of pretense. Kikazu is an upright man, almost a perfect gentleman who also have his bad days like normal people. He have everything and can have anything and among all of the gorgeous women who wants to have him, K chose Hyde over anything and anyone else. And that was one of the reasons why Hyde knew he shouldn't doubt himself. He is deserving of Kay's love because Kay himself gave it to him, trusting him to treasure his heart, and that is on, period. Monday morning. Curious and watchful eyes were staring down at Secretary Hyde. The branded pair of shoes were also tapping impatiently on the floor. Inside the pantry room, just like a normal morning, they start their day talking over tea. I mean, sure, you and the CEO can be absent at the same time and even go to work together. Sure that was not suspicious at all, it was natural, it was normal and no one's prying into your relationship that is no more than just a secretary and his boss, sure. Production manager Jano rolled his eyes heavenwards while his words hit Secretary Hyde in all the right spot. Jano's tone were sarcastic while spouting nonsense or more so, the truth. While the words that were subjected to the little secretary were brushed off, Hyde just shrugged his shoulders. Getting such a nonchalant reaction, Jano rolled his eyes again getting impatient. Both of you were missing in action and the phone line in my department were getting bombarded. Sir K's phone was turned off so the clients that were trying to reach him urgently, all of their calls were transferred to our line. It was so hectic that day, he said, ranting about the absence of the two most important presents in their work. Hyde was only laughing in return, watching how frantic Jano is while looking over matters on Friday. Jano noticed the unusual behavior of the little secretary. He's extremely enthusiastic for his own good. He bet if they were in an animation movie, Secretary Hyde might be surrounded by dazzling light and sunshine or flowers might appear in his background or also being followed by countless red hearts to show he's in the love and romantic period of his life. That was the mood he emit. Oh, 
to be in love and getting loved in return. Jano uttered in a tune he created instantly, directly showing Hyde it was meant for him, and he took a step forward close to Hyde, mumbling, I heard men like Sir Kay who are mostly quiet and enigmatic in daily life are the beast in bed. Care to prove this statement, the beast's beauty? He quirked, teasing him. She! Hyde cooed, slamming his palm straight to Jano's mouth, shutting him off. The production manager was sent to his knees. He curved his hands around his mouth and wheezing loudly upon Secretary Hyde's reaction. When he's calmed down, Jano stood properly. He even smoothed in the folds on his suit as he changed into his serious persona. Let me ask you, Hyde, are you planning on hiding that you're dating our boss or? It was a question that Hyde expected but was still hard to answer. Sighing, he said, I can't let people know, for his sake and to be away from the judging eyes of others. Jano nodded with Hyde's response. If so, then be more discreet. Be careful because Kikazuli Isles, from the name itself, already bear weight of power and influence. Many people, in the business world and outside, are waiting for him to crumble. They are anticipating his downfall, for him to screw himself or to find something to use against him and bring him down. And Hyde knew that the world K revolve around is different from his, but from the Friday night, he already swore to himself, amidst all of the things he will soon face. There is only one thing that is clear to him and that is to stand by Kay's side, supporting him. The morning was uneventful, although everyone were still busy in handling and solving the problems that the company is currently facing. Somehow it had subsided and things are almost going back into a stable condition. Things are smoothing out and they are ready to get back on track. While Secretary Hyde came out of Kay's office to have lunch with his friends, Kay couldn't join him because he had prior engagement, although the little secretary is worried and wanted to accompany him. K choose to go ahead on his own. As Secretary Hyde passed by the reception desk on the lower floor, the receptionist called him out. There's a package addressed for you, sir. His eyebrows raised right away because of curiosity. It was uncommon for him to receive a package at work. Who would even send him any? He knew how to separate his personal from professional life. Hyde received a white square box the size of a shoebox and stopped over the men's comfort room to check what was inside and as he slowly lifted the cover of the box to open it, a foreboding feeling somehow settled inside him. Hyde's heartbeat accelerated. He could hardly think as his eyes scrutinized what was inside that white box, covered in pure gold and jittery. Another box? A smaller box turned out and when he touched the cover that was auspiciously covered in pure gold and silver glitters, his inkling was forbidding him not to go on any further and leave it closed. However, his curiosity took the best of him and proceeded to open it and instantaneously regretted his decision. Covered in red ink. No, scratch that. Covered in what seems to be blood were the following words. Good things come after bad things. Along with it was a sign of cycle. Hyde's mind worked immediately and he knew what was the meaning of the words. Bad things come after good things. It was the opposite because of the round sign. Then and there, he knew. It was a warning. He was about to throw it all in the trash can, but something else caught his attention. Behind the second box of pure gold was a picture of him and his boss in his own apartment. Kikazu was kissing him, but what was odd was that Hyde's face were hidden and only Kay's face were visible. From the angle, he already knew that Kay was the target, but what he cannot understand was why is it sent to him. Nevertheless, he came into a conclusion that he should do something about it. The target is me. It crossed his mind, but he didn't expect it to happen so soon. Secretary Hyde started the pace back and forth inside the security office while the footage of the receptionist area around the time when the package was delivered is playing, but oddly enough, at the exact part, the camera became static showing nothing else but blurred lines. He felt like his reputation of being the best secretary is trampled down. He had no choice but to go back into the office. The whole day, Secretary Hyde was zoning out. He was staring into space and couldn't do his work well. He still couldn't wrap his head over what he saw inside the box which came unexpectedly. There was not even the name of the sender. How could he not check those simple details? He missed the most important parts of receiving a package and now, his mind's in shambles. He even called Kikazu to check on him but the stoic boss was not answering his phone and it added to his worry. He also didn't come back to work, gladly though, before he lose his sanity. K called to inform him he was meeting up with Jay, easing his worry. The corporate world is anything but peaceful. Enemies' eyes are scattered everywhere, watching your every move. But Hyde can't go assuming things. He need a lead first before he could point fingers. You going home? Five o'clock came by too fast. 
Hyde just clocked out and on his way to the elevator. Production manager Jano and marketing supervisor Gene were walking out together, both of them going the same way, and they approached him. Yeah. Secretary Hyde's energy were depleted. His voice didn't held much conviction as he responded, responding way too softly. The three of them went inside the lift. It was not rush hour yet even though it was already time to go home. And also, Times Corporation doesn't have just five elevators that were working. They have a rather great working environment and so much more with the building structures. Jano instantly noticed the dejected expression of their little secretary. His intuition is telling him something is going on for the radiant secretary to suddenly turn gloomy, as if it's rainy days. He then turned to Jean to ask. Are you in a hurry to go home? Jean was brushing the dust off his shirt as he turned when he heard the question, then shook his head. Not really, he answered shortly. It was then that they all arrived at the entrance floor, and before Hyde could walk away on his direction home, Jano grasped his arms to stop him and get his attention. Let's have dinner outside. Hyde, it's on me, he offered, smiling brightly. However, Hyde, who was not in his best mood, shook his head. Sorry, but I'm quite tired, so I want to go home early. Maybe next time, and denied the offer kindly. Jano understood Hyde and didn't probe on the matter. Instead, he brought his hand to Hyde's back and caressed it, showing comfort for him, and the latter finally smiled genuinely. How about we give you a ride? I won't take no as an answer this time. Even before Hyde could answer, Jano enthusiastically grabbed his hand and dragged him to the underground parking lot where his car is parked. Jean was tailing behind not a least bit on a hurry. Jano and Jean are best friends. They go way back since high school and their friendship was formed because they are neighbors. So they go and leave work together using Jano's car. Hyde was left no choice but to go in Jano's way and that's how he ended up inside his car on the back seat with him. Jean was the one driving. They drove in a blasting music inside the vehicle and the unstoppable chatterbox, talking about multiple topics that had no connection to each just to keep Hyde company. The little secretary smiled at the genuine gesture. His friends are worried about him and wanted to comfort him. That was enough to lift his spirit, and while in the middle of the ride to his apartment, he changed his mind. Do you guys know any bar nearby? I think I'd prefer drinking over dinner. Hearing Hyde's suggestion was a surprise. Jean looked over at Jano through the rearview mirror and the latter nodded, coming to an agreement. What about Jean's house? It's close and he has a mini bar at home. He also lives alone. What do you think? Hyde lifted his head to agree without any second thought. Therefore, Jean sped up his pace. His and Jano's residence are close to the office and right in the same way as Hyde's apartment building but closer, and they get there instantly and got off the car in quite a hurry. Right when his sight landed on the place in front of them, Hyde's eyes scrutinized the house. Marketing supervisor Jean's house is a two-story incorporated with modern Spanish designs. The porch was a hundred meter wide. The design of the home outside were simple but grand and combined the elegance of European architecture and the eclectic look of Mediterranean style. That's Jean's. You won't get to see our house because it's actually at the back. I'll take you there sometime, but first, let's go inside. Jano was excited. His high energy even doubled for getting to drink with the lightweight secretary and make him spill all that's been bothering him. That was really his original plan. The innocent secretary was looking around while Jean, who's the host as it was his place, excused himself to go set up their table for the uncalled drinking party. Seeing the design inside, the high ceiling, hand-painted tiles, Curves, wrought iron, dark wood, and terracotta elements. It looked really grand, classy, but warm and inviting. This house is seriously nice. Do you mind if I ask where's his family? Hyde ogled down at the thrill production manager who felt like succeeding in his agenda to cheer up the other and showed a wider smile. They live abroad and Jean chose to stay here for a while. He said he eventually will follow once he feel like it. Cocky bastard, isn't he? Both of them giggled with Jano's remark. Somehow Secretary Hyde has calmed down, momentarily forgetting about the incident or actually trying his best to diversify his focus on something else. Hey, are you guys talking bad about me behind my back? Jean appeared after setting the table. Suspicious of his two friends he left in the receiving area. Oh, let's go drown ourselves on alcohol tonight. Jano dragged Hyde and made his way to the mini bar, totally ignoring Jean's sentiments. The latter was rather cool about it and followed behind them. Hyde didn't expect a spacious mini bar. He was thinking it would just be placed around the corner of Jean's kitchen, but seeing it now, it was rather wide equipped with all the right things. 
The three of them sat on the high stool chair in front of the wooden countertop, and Jano immediately handed him a shot glass instead of the appropriate wine glass, pouring it full. One shot! Jano ordered, and Hyde didn't disappoint. He drank the cup dry. It was a minute and a second that passed. Now, tell me what's going on? When he finally decided to ask. He thought Hyde won't let it go. He was being uptight but also messed up all over the place. During lunch earlier, he noticed him trembling and barely ate anything. That's when he knew something was wrong with the little secretary and he couldn't just watch by the side. I'm in a relationship with Kukazu. Hyde opened up. Jano raised his brow. As if it's not obvious? You guys stick together like glue and both of your eyes are shooting hearts at each other. You... Instead of minding the latter's words, Hyde decided to continue. And I love him. So much that I would go through anything just to stay by his side. Even if I battle anyone who would dare to go in our way. Jano almost spat out his wine upon hearing such cringy words from the perfect secretary. He quickly gulped the drink before it would even be wasted. He watched Hyde and wondered if ever he's already drunk but seeing as he only drank a small amount. Of course. No. The words that left his mouth were spoken in a clear state of mind. However, the drop of tears in the secretary's slender eyes were not something he could take as a joke. Sensing the sensitivity of their topic, Jano dived right in. Our boss is Kikazuli Isles. His surname alone screams power and wealth. He's also established in the industry. He has status. Jano looked over at Hyde to see his reaction, but his head was bowed down so he couldn't see. You can follow your heart's desire. Love who you want to love. Live how you want to live. But you must be careful. Hyde. As if there was an arrow aimed straight into his heart and with Jano's words, he hit the bullseye. They were too mindless and now it's come hunting them down. It's best if you guys stay low-key. You can't leave any trace of photos or videos. Stay discreet especially when you're together as a secretary and CEO. Everybody's watching every move the two of you make, specifically Sir Kate because aside from rising to the top of the pyramid, his father's already an influential man. Sir Kay alone is not just the target rather he's the pawn they wanted to use to get his father. Too late. Hyde run his fingers through his hair in frustration. Somebody has already known what he and Kay were keeping and someone already has had them photographed. A few more drinks and stories. Hyde was still dwelling over what could happen between him and Kay as well as the person behind the warning. Thus he couldn't keep on drinking and stayed sober. It was almost 8 in the evening when Hyde decided to go home and Jean and Jano wanted to drive him home. The tipsy Jano insisted persistently that Hyde had no choice but to let them. They arrived not long after. After they alighted from the car, they waved short goodbyes and Secretary Hyde was left alone. Somehow, he felt spooked about no particular reason. Too many things are weighing on his mind. His eyebrows knitted together in vexation while on his way up on his apartment. And before going inside the room, he scanned his door but found nothing suspicious. Receiving such thing as a box with words intended for a bad thing written with blood and intimate pictures of him and his lover. It's making him anxious and terrified. He cannot help but be conscious of his surrounding. It was an understandable worry. He sighed before opening his door to his apartment while his heartbeat is racing and his mind is still in wonder of what could the person who sent him the box's intention be. Surely, it is something bad, and as he mull over it again, an atrocious feeling is crawling in his system. Hyde went inside his apartment and felt the serenity of his place, somehow calming him down but it wasn't long before he stepped on his room and the tranquility he hardly built and his emotions shattered along with his calm demeanor. What welcomed his already frantic heart was far more outrageous than what he received in the company earlier and as he decided to brush off his worry, the person behind all this ill intentions is not letting him be peaceful for a minute. Hyde's trembling hands curved around his mouth to suppress a shock gasp. His eyes flashed with panic while chanting words inside his head to calm himself. He heaved a deep breath while he steadily closed his eyes. His face was still twisted with great torment and the image and words printed on his wall registering on his mind. It seems... From all of these abominable gifts he's receiving, he can make out two things. One, this is surely targeted for Kikazu and two, he's a part of their vile hatred, for whatever reason. Opening his weary eyes, Hyde wasted no time and hastened, scurrying on his feet, running out of his apartment and going to the apartment next to his, knocking with his trembling hands on their door to hurry on opening it. Every knock he made was like his life depended on it. Surprise! You've been a bad boy lately, Secretary Hyde. Leave Kikazu or your secret will not stay a secret anymore and the whole wide world will be the witness to your indecency. Tick tock. Your time's running. He got it wrong. Their target is him. 
for the start of their plan. They need to waver him and make use of him against K to screw him up. Please open up! Hyde was on the verge of breaking down, and the longer he knocks, the louder his bangs get. Hyde? A voice piped up from somewhere behind him, making him turn around. Happiness precedes madness. Although he wished it was Kikazu that arrived just in time and ease his agony and comfort him, it was not. Sage Casper who's holding plenty various bags in his arms, and in a formal grey one-piece suit was the one who called his name. The guy just arrived from his hectic work. He even took home some of his materials to do his designs at home that will be presented in a gala night a month from now. He was in a rush to sew the fabric and execute his ideas and came home early to lock himself in his room and get going, buried on finishing his output. However, what was waiting in front of his door was the secretary he was trying to forget his feelings for. In a bad shape and a terrified state, he was barefoot and still in his office attire. His eyes were wavering. His eyebrows creased in utter confusion while he watched the other guy. After scrutinizing at him for so long, he lifted his gaze and asked, Is there a problem? Not having the slightest idea that something wrong was going on with his neighbor, even inside his apartment. The latter stammered for a good while before finally saying, Let me stay in your apartment for a moment until I calm down. He managed to make out, without sobs in between. Sage didn't question any further seeing the other person's body trembling violently and almost couldn't stand up. His eyes were full of emotions in between horror-stricken and madness. Even with his hands full, he still brought his left arm to hold the guy in his back and helped him walk over to his apartment, making him sit at his sofa while he collected his things in one place then poured water in a glass and gave it to Hyde. Hyde's quivering lips while it touched the glass to drink water wasn't able to escape Sage's gaze and asked, What happened? The trembling hands that held the glass of water put it down on his thighs before forcing himself to answer. Something. Inside my apartment. He was only capable of making out those words that didn't even made sense. Understanding his condition, Sage didn't probe any further and rather thought of something else. Have you called Kay? The hasty shaking of head made him wonder and curious what drove the prim and proper, usually sassy secretary he knew in the opposite way. And he recalled his words, something in his apartment. What could that be? Were there burglary? Is that why? Hyde shook his head absentmindedly and it was then that Sage decided. I'll bring you a change of clothes. Let me get some in your apartment. He stood up and were about to go when Hyde gripped on the edge of his suit. He asked with his face. Oddly, Hyde didn't speak and let him go after, retracting his hand to his side. Sage's both ears turned beet red seeing the cuteness of the other guy. At times like that he even had the nerve to think like Hyde was a lost puppy with his ears folding. Snap out of it, Sage. I'll be back and, here, you can call Kikasa first. He handed his phone to him before finally striding outside. Sage knew it was a fleeting moment but for his crush to seek him, it made him happy. His mind were full about Hyde when he entered the apartment and when his eyes found the words printed on the wall in red paint, he was horrified. He immediately left the room and transferred to his own. His expression were no better than Hyde's but a few lighter than the torment his next door neighbor were going through. He gulped a large chunk of his own saliva as he took out few of his own clothes, giving it to Hyde who seemed to understand his reaction. If he was mortified by just seeing it, he cannot imagine how terrified Hyde was to receive such and realized it was intended for him. Change to my clothes first and don't go back to your place. I think it's better if you would stay at someone else's. He paused in the middle of his sentence and glanced at Hyde holding his phone. Have you called him? The latter gave a soft nod. What did he say? Hyde was silent for a moment before answering. He didn't answer. He didn't know why but Sage felt rage over Kay. What could he be busy about that he cannot answer a simple call from his secretary, his lover on top of that? He was displeased with such neglect. Change. I'll leave for a minute. Even before Hyde could question him, he already went ahead and walked out of his apartment, intending to reach Kikazu. But just in time that he went outside. Kikazu was already approaching with a radiant smile on his lips and a bouquet of flowers in his hands. When their eyes met, Sage's glare was matched with an equally dark and sharp one that is Kikazu's. During lunch earlier today, Kikazu and Director Santos met each other to discuss about the piece of land in Zone Town that the Young Isles was meaning to buy. Until now, they still haven't come into a mutual agreement, but to his own surprise, the stubborn director of Nan Leon Studios called for an unexpected meeting. They directed to contact him straight. Accompanying Kikazu was his friend, Jay. 
They were supposed to talk about personal matters when Director Santos's secretary called him, interrupting them and instead Jay came to accompany him. In front of the Hundredfold Hotel, a black car stopped. The person standing in front of the hotel stepped forward to open the door and bowed respectfully. Kikaze got out of the car, raised his head, and glanced at the top floor of Hundredfold Hotel, his eyes flickering slightly as he walked in with Jay. I thought this person doesn't want to surrender and that he despises turning out to become a sore loser. What now though? Will he give up his land just like that? Without getting anything in return? Well, it won't go that easy. Surely, Director Santos may have something up his sleeves, thinking that he was so confident and approached him first, knowing that the latter's nature is being stubborn and someone prideful. Kay knew whom he was dealing with just as he knows there might be an exchange for the deal. As they arrived at the top floor, the elevator door slowly opened, and Kay walked to room 559 at the end of the corridor. Jay signaled he would stay outside the room and Kay gave him a nod in return. Standing at the door, Director Santos looked around smiled and nodded when he saw him coming. Fake smile. You came early, Mr. Isles. Come on and sit down. I'll pour you a glass of wine. Kikazu watched Director Santos get up and pour a glass of wine for him. As he handed it to him, he didn't accept it right away. He was not reluctant on showing he was not pleased and took it only when he saw Director Santos was almost getting a cramp. The stoic boss was showing an outright disrespect with a side grin, while Director Santos could only fake a smile, suppressing himself. The despicable man had all of his steps planned and are only waiting for it to play out. He forced himself to attend to all of Kikaze's needs and heed to everything he wants. He was showing modesty and displaying a friendly manner. Let's talk business, director. Enough with the pleasantries. Kikazu was impatient. He didn't want to pretend getting along with someone who only wants to use him as a stroke of luck. There is no way he will let the despicable man get what he wants. Clasping his hands together. Kay's expression hardened showing his infamous poker face. His cold aura already sent intimidation to the other man inside the room. Feeling the weight of the heavy tension in the atmosphere, Director Santos coughed and again, forced a friendly smile to curve on his lips while pouring his own glass. He became more serious while gesturing his secretary to hand him the documents he will propose to the young Isles. The land its own town. Director Santos instructed his secretary to give another copy for Kikazu to read on. Here's the revised proposition in my favor. The prerequisites of this new contract indicates higher price than what you have offered. My team and I decided to increase it by 30%. Besides from that, nothing else was changed. You can review it first then sign if you agree with all the conditions and let me know if you have any objections. Director Santos was leading no place for the arrogant young Isles to negotiate. He gave him choices but offered better benefit getting him to sell the land was already a win for the latter. To his own surprise, after going over the first few pages of the contract paper, Kikazu suddenly brought out a pen and signed the contract without any hesitation. It was like a blow to the haughty director that Kei didn't even argue like how he usually does. It was too easy. After that, he absentmindedly accepted the copy and didn't know how their negotiation ended up. Contrary to the flustered Nan Leong Studios director, Times Corporation's wise CEO left Hundredfold Hotel with a proud grin on his face, elated while walking with Jay. They decided to drink and celebrate, finally removing a block hindering his corporation to progress. They sat inside a high-end bar which they frequent to and talked about different things especially how Kay bailed on the dinner date Jay worked so hard to set up for. Jay was actually sullen at Kay over the weekend and bugged him out of his wits, targeting his conscience for making his efforts end up in vain. By the way, I've been meaning to ask, how did you ask that your secretary? You didn't even call me for an advice over the matter, which you would normally do. I was already shocked when I heard the two of you were already in a relationship. Jay played with his drink in his hands, shaking the beer glass and watching the liquid move in the way he turned his hand to. Kikazu was sent to backtrack his memories with Jay's question and an uncontrollable broad smile appeared in his face. Once Jay looked over him, he threw a disgusted expression at him. That's some smile you got there, man. Care to share the reason for that? Biting his lips to suppress his emotions while remembering a memorable and copious day. He responded, We connected our bodies and soul over pillow talk and the rest is history. Hearing his sanguine reply, Jay almost vomited but swallowed it right back. That was how nauseating Kay's answer was for Jay, and the glow of joy in his eyes were even blinding him. How crazy is this jerk? You're hopeless. Dude, you took him to bed and eventually became boyfriends after that. Seriously, you're an unromantic human being. You don't even have the ounce of sweet in your body. 
Jay criticized and Kay only then knew how insane the way they became official was or at least it crossed his mind. That was how Kikazu ended up buying a couple ring and an impulse, with Jay hanging around him all the while and they stopped by at the flower shop to buy a bouquet of flowers. He prepared a surprise for Hyde, to ask him in a more intimate and proper way of becoming lovers. However, something in his surprise felt strangely uncanny, especially when he met Sage Casper on the hallway of the apartment building complex. Why do Sage have to live next door to his lovers? He was completely oblivious of the problem they are set to face. By his side, Sage Casper Garcia was once someone Kikazu Lee Ilza's teenage self looked up to. Sage was able to stand up for himself, exploring the difficulties of life alone. In Kay's eyes, Sage was a strong, independent person, capable of handling his problems in a mature way, whereas he was not. Back then, he was a child who knew nothing about the darkest part of life. He admired him became best friends with him and treated him like a brother but then it inevitably came. The day his trust was broken and the image of the best friend Sage was in Kay's mind ended up being shattered. That was one thing, and every time he sees his face, he get reminded of what happened although he was not as angry at him like before, the pain was still there. Which is why he was curious to what Sage's glare were for when he should be the one getting annoyed at him. But then Kikaza's eyes looked past over Sage and into someone who just appeared behind him, coming out from Sage's apartment looking like a complete mess and the worst part is that Hyde was wearing Sage's clothes. It was inevitable that unnecessary and prudent thoughts would form in his head seeing his lover wearing someone else's clothes instead of his. Who would be happy that he saw his own lover walking out of another guy's apartment, of the person he harbor hatred for? Kikazu's eyes flashed with a glare as his measuring gaze settled on his boyfriend. His past bad encounters with Sage reminds him of unpleasant thoughts that is suddenly eating his mind as if he would go feral over the assumption of something he didn't even want to welcome. I wanted to surprise you, but I guess. You prepared better than me. This is quite shocking. Even before he could suppress himself, he already made a nasty comment over his reasonable mind. Hearing the words spoken to him in an implicating way, Secretary Hyde was taken aback. His chest that felt like getting pounded like a drum is now being slammed by a hammer, wrecking him. He wanted to see Kikazu. As his lover that would console him but seeing that hurt in Kay's reaction, Hyde is disappointed. He was not in a right state of mind as his emotions has taken over his rationality. The little secretary completely does not have a single idea why his lover is wearing a dismay over his expression while looking at him. Because how Hyde came out, in Kay's irrational mind, and doubting heart, it was like a replay of the past. He misunderstood that his lover would go cheating on him with the same person all over again. Kay's measuring gaze diverted and converted into a sneer as it landed on Sage. However, even before Kay were able to speak his mind and completely believe his assumptions, Sage took a step forward towards Kay's spot and grabbed the bouquet of flower in his hands then, made an unexpected action, slapping the guy in his face using the bouquet of flower. All the petals were scattered on the ground and all over Kikazu who was stupefied, confused of what just happened. Hyde was also astounded, his trembling hands curved onto his mouth to suppress his gasp. While Sage looked straight at Kay and spoke without any filter in his words. It's not hard to ask, Kikazu. Before creating your own narrative on the situation in your mind, why not try to listen on the explanation first? Stop getting ahead of yourself. After five years, he didn't want to further shatter their already damaged friendship. He was already misunderstood in the past. He do admit he's partly to be blamed however. In this present time, they need to get it straight to the point to what is the truth. And for the record. He turned to look at Hyde. Go back to my apartment for a moment. Hyde. We'll come for you once this idiot calms down. And for you. He averted his gaze back at Kay who was flustered at the situation. Come find out what really happened. Big idiot. The harsh reality need to be uncovered. So Sage didn't hesitate and grabbed Kay in his neck collar and dragged him inside of Hyde's apartment. Hyde was still mortified but instead of going back inside Sage's apartment, he crouched down to his knees on the floor with his back leaning on the wall. Though with his misty eyes he buried his face on his knees trying not to be as miserable as he already is. It was a threat not just pointed at him. That may be why he was so shaken up by all of this. See it for yourself. Meanwhile, Sage showed no mercy and almost shoved Kay into the wall because of the irritation he was feeling. As soon as they stepped inside, the prints using blood on the wall were made visible in both of their eyes. Although Sage had already seen it, his stomach still churned with disgust, along with those threatening words. Kay's eyes widened in utter horror as he saw various images of him and Hyde in a very intimate way. There were moments of them kissing, hugging, laughing with each other and what was worst is that their privacy were completely invaded as his eyes landed on one different picture. 
He was on top of his naked secretary, although it was just their upper parts that were photographed. He was not so sure if it was intentional to create more misunderstanding, and what's more is that it was only his face that were visible in every angle, as if it was taken with the intent to shame him. But to get to the bottom of this, someone is threatening Hyde that they will be exposed to the public's eye. Such scandal will surely rise in everyone's mouth and will become a big news. Kikazuli Isles is a dignified man with status in society. If his name will be tainted given that it's associated with his father, not only Kay's reputation will be affected because as well as his father's. He stood there, stiffened on his ground while trying to comprehend what was happening. However, more than his worry about the company and people's reactions, what he cared for the most is not getting Hyde involved in such mess. He already failed to protect him from receiving this kind of threat. Knowing Hyde, once he recover from the shock, he might do something to prevent the issue from spreading, taking the risk all by himself. And Kay cannot let Hyde do that. He subconsciously touched the bridge of his nose. How can he let this happen? You're getting stalked, Kay. You should have been more aware. Kay looked at Sage and he gritted his teeth not because of Sage's meddling but rather it was because what the latter said was true. I won't let this pass. Whoever is behind all of this, Kay will surely make them pay and if possible, torture them to death. Plenty of people from the corporate world would do anything to get those on the top of the pyramid thrown into the mud, even through dirty and foul means. Whatever they can use against you, they will take it. Kay clenched his fist then inhaled, calming himself. He was trying not to be furious. Instead of taking the matter to the authority or in your own hands, Axes is a professional investigator and his family are associated with FBI. It's better to let them handle this. Axes Fuego is one of their friend on their circle. His father is an FBI agent while his mother manages a high-profile security agency. Taking after them, Axes became a renowned private investigator. Kikaze knew that Axes would come running to his aid once he asks and this kind of matter threatening to damage his reputation, is something he will definitely not take as a light matter. Sighing, he said, Can you handle this for me, Sage? He didn't say please, he ordered with a sharp tone, but Sage was delighted hearing Kay finally talking to him without any spiteful glare. The corner of Sage's lips curved up. I got this. It was a peaceful silence that covered the air. After collecting themselves, both of them calmly went out of the apartment. Sage already photographed the scene and called Axes and sent him the proof. Axes told them he was on his way to see the scene with his own eyes before they decide to clear it up. Right when they were already outside, they were shocked to see Hyde sitting on the floor with his head buried on his knees. It seems he is more anxious than Kay thought. He plopped to his knees to hug his little person, caressing him and offering comfort, as if to say he's already there and Hyde won't need to bear the weight of the problem on his own shoulders. Hyde finally felt it. The solace only Kikazu can give him. In his warm embrace, by his side, it is his safest place. Kay felt Hyde's trembling body easing down. His buried face lifted up and the tears were flowing, also breaking his heart. He wiped it gently and kissed both of his cheeks soaked with tears before saying, Let's go home. I know it's been a tough day. With his mellow and soft voice. They bid goodbye to Sage. Hyde were too vulnerable and Kay had to carry him as they rode his car. The exhausted secretary fell asleep while on their way to the highlands, where Kay's villa is located. Seeing the reddened eyes of his lover and the frightened expression puts him to a foul mood, feeling rage over the mastermind to their discomfort. His grip tightened on the steering wheel. No one fucks with an Isles. Dare to play tricks on me? You'll see what young billionaire is capable of doing. He muttered under his hitch breathe. His sharp gaze will make someone's blood run cold and his warning tone were dangerous. Kikazuli Isles managed to become a billionaire on his own without getting any help from anybody. He proved himself worthy of being the most sought-after businessman, getting envied and praised. He wouldn't come to his position today if he would be less intimidating. Ruthlessness is in his nature, but he will only show when needed. Whoever wanted to do him harm or anyone important to him, they will see what a wealthy man like him can do to protect especially his lover. Get ready, because it will be your turn. An indifferent smirk showed across the stoic boss's face. What truly matter? The lights outside Kikazu's mansion were flickering. It was already deep into the night and while Hyde were tucked in bed and sleeping peacefully, Kay is wide awake, busy doing something in the living area right outside of his room while talking on the phone with Axel Fuego. Well, it's a pretty strong evidence, but aside from that, do you have any idea who would do those things to you? I mean it was a pretty sloppy job and if you have any suspicion about anyone, it will be easier to find who did this. Axel Fuego was looking at his computer screen, 
scrutinizing the data he's able to accumulate through his own ways. It was a folder where various businessmen's information were compiled and they all have one thing in common, envious of what Kikazu have and affiliated with people who resort to dirty methods. Before blurting out any name, Kikazu retracted his hand that were randomly scattering rose petals all over his living room and sat down at the couch facing the glass wall. The long curtain with combination of blue and white colors were slightly opened, allowing his eyes to see the garden situated in the back of his mansion. There were groves and different flowers planted there and were maintained by the gardener who mostly does visit jobs than being in-house. His eyes wandered in the dark while he pondered. Hmm. Honestly, there's no remarkable faces nor names that stuck in my head. Everyone's just seriously taking me as their enemy. He answered blunt and short. It was true. Aside from devoting his time and attention solely on his work and his company's improvement, he didn't care about anything else, be it those people who had plenty of things to say about him, insulting and finding bad things to talk about involving him or those who try to take in action their words. He simply ignored them however, this time's an exception. Something dark flashed in Kay's eyes while looking back at the scene he saw inside Hyde's apartment. His jaw clenched remembering those nasty things written and images printed on the wall. Surprise! You've been a bad boy lately. Secretary Hyde. Leave Kikazu or your secret will not stay a secret anymore and the whole wide world will be the witness to your indecency. Tick tock. Your time's running. His teeth gritted while trying to search his mind over people who would have incredulous intention. Then, Director Santos's sly face flashed in his mind, and he remembered the latter's grave hate and indifference towards him. Something clicked on his head. The Nan Leung Studios director. Axel Fuego immediately typed in the words in his search bar and Santos's profile instantly popped up. Another thing that the folder contained were not just simple information about these businessmen with bad motives but as well as the documentation of those bad things they have committed in the past. Even plans they were building to slander other people were included in the folder. Anyone else? Kay thought hard and as he focused on trying to remember, his bedroom door's creaking sound made him turn to check and saw hot it suddenly opened revealing his boyfriend rubbing his eyes using both of his hands curled, and he couldn't help but bite his lips looking at his boyfriend's cute gestures. He changed him into his own t-shirt and pajama, like what he thought. Those were too big for Hyde as Kay had a bigger build than him. Nonetheless, Hyde were still adorably cute in his fit. Man, you still there? As if he were possessed by a spirit, Kay almost forgot about Axel and their important meeting however, looking at his adorable boyfriend that seems to be searching for him. Axel should be completely forgotten but also, he cannot afford to let Hyde listen on the details. It would probably be better to assure his lover but he won't further involve him with the investigation. Let's talk about it tomorrow. I'll set a time and place. All right, I'll compile a report of each possible perpetrator so we could discuss about it tomorrow. It's been a long night. Take a rest dude and... I know it's not the best time but congrats on leaving the singles club. I thought you'd end up a rich uncle while we all get married and build our family. Scram, Fuego. That role will surely be yours in the end. Thank me as I'm handing it over to you, my successor. Fuck you. Dude, don't curse me. Without any second thought, Kay hung up the call on Axel while the latter kept on cursing him on the other lind. As usual, Axel is someone he could easily poke fun at. He gets easily triggered and his overreaction kills it. Who's that? Hyde found Kay sitting on the couch. He didn't feel his presence while he was on the bed earlier and decided to go out and see him. More than anxious that he wasn't by his side, he wanted to see Kay's face and feel his warmth to be calm and be serene. When he opened his eyes, it dawned on him that he's in his boss's place but the room was unfamiliar. He was staying in Kay's bedroom rather than the guest room this time. Kay grabbed Hyde's hand and made him sit in between his legs, hugging him from behind and placing his chin on his boyfriend's shoulder. Axel, one of my friends. Hmm. <laughs> Hyde closed his eyes, finally feeling the solace in Kay's embrace. He leaned his head on Kay's broad shoulder and made himself comfortable. It's past midnight. Why are you still awake? Busy? Why? Did you miss me? I wanted to hug you, but when I opened my eyes, you weren't there. Kay planted a soft kiss on Hyde's forehead while he captured his gaze. I'm here now. Let's go back inside the room and sleep. He was about to stand, but Hyde remained holding him down. Kay, aren't you curious? Hmm. Of my background? Like, I know almost everything about you all you know. Almost nothing about me but whatever I'm currently showing. All of a sudden, Kay dropped his gaze to look at Hyde, 
They locked eyes because he was also looking at him. Hyde brought out his hand to caress his face. Of course. I want to know even the slightest bit of your shame, like your erogenous zone, or what can make you go mad. I am curious, but I don't want to force you to tell me anything if you're not ready. He answered truthfully. Kikazu can easily have Hyde investigated. It was a trivial matter and he could obtain information about him in a snap of his finger however. At least he wanted to find out by Hyde's own accord. Hyde was also right. While Kikazu was bared, Hyde was not an open book. He barely knew something personal about him. Do you think your parents will accept us? Our relationship? To be taken by surprise would be an understatement. Kay didn't know Hyde was thinking that far ahead of how their relationship would progress. It would be a lie if Kay didn't say he also didn't think about that. However, thinking about it now, he also don't know the answer. Their family are all hot in the public's eye. They have reputation and image that they were protecting but if he would solely think for his family, Kay don't know the answer. Kay was about to open his mouth to speak however. Hyde was quicker to voice out what was running on his mind. Because honestly, even in this modern day, for some, gay relationship is not acceptable. Although in our society, some also find it normal that there is nothing wrong falling for the same gender. Not everyone is as open-minded as some. Indeed. But why do they have to care about what other people say? Kay tightened his hug on Hyde while they fell in an utter silence, but it wasn't long before Hyde spoke again. Do you think you're also gay for loving me? Kay gulped his own saliva, a beads of sweat rising on his forehead despite the cool room covered in air conditioning. It was like a interrogation night, but he was more willing to be honest and after collecting himself, he said, Gender or what? If being gay defines me as the person who loves you, I'll confidently say, I am gay. It was out of the blue, but Kay kissed Hyde lightly on his lips after speaking those lines and distanced himself before continuing. Other people don't have the right to define our relationship. They can comment, they can be opinionated, but they don't have to meddle in our matters. Hyde seemed to have been gravely affected by what happened in his apartment, and still oblivious to Kay. Hyde didn't tell him about the box that he first received. Thinking of how Hyde's train of thought goes about in this middle of the night, Kay captured Hyde's lips without any warning. Caressing, he bit the latter's lower lip to make him open his mouth and dived his tongue straight to taste Hyde's own. The latter was already gasping for the sudden attack. He was not expecting that but as he followed Kay's rhythm, he found himself enjoying their battle. Hyde turned around while Kay was holding him, assisting him reverse around and when they were already facing each other, Hyde wrapped his arms around Kay's nape, deepening their kiss. As they taste each other and exchange, moving both their lips and tongue to the same rhythm. They were kissing hard like hungry wolves passionate in every move, both of them getting drunk and drowsy in each other's taste. Even though Kay felt like it was not enough and he was ready for more, he forced himself to pull away. They gasped for breath in harmony and it was inevitable that a smile spread across their lips as Kay brought their foreheads sticking to each other as he muttered under his gasping breath. This our love, Hyde, not my parents, nor your parents, or even others, this is not only yours or mine, but ours, exclusively and that's what truly matters. It was hard for both of them to control their desire, but they managed to go to bed and sleep without further action. Hyde was peaceful in Kay's loving arms and was not bothered by his uncertainty anymore. Kay's presence alone was reassuring. And being loved by Kay is a wonderful thing and he would spend his lifetime thanking heavens for bringing them to fill each other's gap and be the missing piece to complete their own puzzle. Naughty. Dude, I'm a teacher, not your secretary nor your personal assistant. Neither am I your employee. I thought I had to remind you just in case you forgot. Jay said with an eye roll. He was cranky early in the morning, waking up with a sudden call from his best friend who seemed to be treating him more like an errand boy rather than his friend. Kikazu called him to his house to take an important document and deliver it to his company, the kind and thoughtful friend that he was. Jay still came and picked the document, obeying Kay diligently but with a heavy heart. Kay leaned on his doorframe right outside of his entrance hall crossing his arms to his chest and his face were still groggy but his gorgeous features were imminent, failing the sleep-deprived effect that could never make him look bad in an early morning where Jay felt like he was wronged. He rushed to Kay's place after dressing himself and he got by only with washing his face, but his soggy skin and puffy eyes made him look worse than Kay's face who just got up from bed. The world is unfair. Let my legal team check the authenticity of this document. Kay handed him a portfolio and a flash drive he took then scanned it with his eyes, without opening and prying into it but his eyes flew open in surprise and a sudden realization. Wait, did you sign a document without making sure of its contents? 
I'm not you, Kay said nonchalantly with a small shrug. The latter snapped with a scorn. What? Are you implying I'm stupid? You concluded that yourself. But that's... Jay wanted to refute and vent on Kay, however. He was immediately cut off by Kay himself. He had no other choice but to roll his eyes. Anyway, every time I ask you or when you give me idea to prepare a surprise for Hyde, it ends up in a bad note. As if to make him look bad, Kay blamed his incapacity of having sweetness in his bones and lack of knowledge about dating or even surprises, leaving his handsome face as his only asset in making his partner happy. It shouldn't be Jay's fault that Kay barely knew anything. With a scowl on his face, he asked even with knowing he will still get teased. Now what's that supposed to mean? You're laced with misfortune. Is that because you have your birthmark up your ass? Having heard of Kay's crazy remark, the cranky Jay threw the documents he was holding in the air and were about to hit Kay on his godly face if only he didn't remember he still need him to sponsor and fund the construction of his clinic. He retracted his hand but let his mouth run. What the fuck, dude? Seeing the reaction of the latter, Kay is overjoyed. Jay is so much fun to poke fun at. Never mind. Guess it just didn't go well because your idea sucks. Swear I never took you for a sarcastic kind of person. But now you do. You tyrant! As if there were smokes visibly seen fuming out of his nose, Kay knew he succeeded getting on his friend's nerve and so he got reminded of Jay's favor. While brushing his hands through his disheveled hair, Kay stood properly getting ready to go back inside. Take your legal documents about the clinic and find where you think would be the best spot. Somehow hearing about the planning for his clinic, Jay's pissed expression was wiped away and replaced with a beam, immediately. Hey! You're finally starting the project? It will still go in the trial process, don't be too up high. The tyrant said, waiting off at him with his back already turned in cue to the door slamming close to Jay's face. Ungrateful jerk! He cursed out, he's the only best friend who would be this nice and patient with Kay's nasty temperament. Who would want to get teased and ordered around anyway? Kay wouldn't find another him. After his conversation with Jay, Kay went back inside to do some stretching. He decided not to go to the office today because he will be meeting with Axel to discuss about important matters. It was still early morning. The sun is just about to rise and he was glad that Hyde didn't get up yet so he could take a longer rest. He knew his little person was tired and worn out with too much going on in their lives. And he was also aware he is not simply an ordinary person. He has status and a leader of his own company, handling matters and source of life for his employees. Without his head on track, one fault or mistake may lead him to hit rock bottom however. He wouldn't let it happen as it was not only him that will be affected, he have to protect his employees without dragging them to his mess. Besides from that, he is the son of one of the most influential person in the corporate world, and being the firstborn, the expectations and criticism falls on him. He carry heavy load on his shoulder, and it was inevitable that there are too many enemies spying on them. He wouldn't be surprised to know even the ones who treat him with respect in front of his face would talk bullcrap behind his back. He might not know maybe they are even teaming up to do him harm. It was a given, but upon such horrendous thing happening to his lover, Kay was enraged as they would really go through such length as involving someone dear to him. He started doing some push-up after laying a mat on his living room's floor. The sun's rays were seeping through the small aperture of the curtain inside Kikaze's room. It was already seven in the morning as what the hands of clock resting on the wall of Kay's room indicates, and the little secretary opened his eyes. Although his eyelids were heavy, his feeling were lighter. He turned to Kay's side in the bed, but he wasn't there anymore. Hai got up from bed and rather than feeling like he's in a fleeting moment, he was awakened to the reality but with a clearer vision of what's ahead. He entered the bathroom and closed in Kay's room to wash his face before going out to find his boyfriend. Kay's place were marvelous. It wasn't new in Hyde's eyes, but he's still awed with such extravagant and luxurious places. Kay's mansion is not just spacious but wide. Even if he hasn't exactly seen the outside but from the inside, he could tell just how capacious each side of every room was. Had he not been there before, he might have lost his way. Just as he stepped out from the room, the living area right outside Kay's room came into his view and his eyebrows raised when his eyes found some things scattered around the floor. He moved closer to have a clearer view. Wait, are those rose petals? He said with a gasp. Then wondered, Why are all of these here? He didn't even seem to notice of it last night, but now that he saw it, he's curious what's the purpose of the rose petals scattered carelessly on the floor. After dilly-dallying on it, 
Hyde shrugged it off and turned to find his boyfriend. As he was about to head out to the receiving area, there were noises in the background right about the corner next to the hallway. He went towards the living room and there, he found Kikaza working out. There's a black mat spread out on the floor. Kay was doing push-ups. Witnessing this before his very eyes, he cannot help but think he's so blessed. With admiration flickering on his eyes, Hyde settled his gaze on Kay as he leaned on the couches reclining, crossing his arms to his chest and watched Kay go down and up, his arms showing those curvy muscles every time he exert force on it. Kay was extremely focused. His concentration fails him to notice Hyde's presence. Does he always exercise this early in the morning? Although, Hyde is rather thankful for Kay's wonderful concentration because he could also do his business. To watch his boyfriend and openly stare him down, especially at Kay's body. Those are some nice and refined abs. Kay was only wearing track pants while his upper body was completely naked, allowing Hyde's eyes to look openly at what served in front of him. So this is his secret on achieving those beefy muscles and an unmatched stamina. Hyde's face instantly was flushed with his dirty thoughts circling on his mind. He won't deny though, Kay is surprisingly healthier than he thought that somehow he couldn't help but be odd every time they do it and Kay lasts more than he'd expected of him, and actually draining him in return. His curio's eyes followed every move of Kay and he noticed a few trickle of sweats on his forehead. He couldn't help obling down like a teenage girl, checking out his own boyfriend. Mine. The roll of the words slipping quietly out of his own mouth was ever so natural and he loved it. Hyde loved the fact that he had the privilege to appreciate Kay's sculpted body and even have the chance to feel those sturdy abs whenever they touch skins. Looking at Kay being so focused on his workout and just ignoring him there, somehow, he felt mischievous. What if I tease him a little? Seeing how serious Kay was in doing his routine, a playful grin etched on his lips while he approached Kay, coming towards where he was doing his push-ups and when he got closer discreetly, as Kay pushed down, Hyde took the opportunity to sit lightly on Kay's back, startling the latter. Giddy up! Mr. Horsey! Hyde's rasp voice registered on Kay's ears while he tries to control his balance on going up. His sneaky boyfriend even patted him on his ass. Kay chuckled as his inner thoughts goes. Playful, aren't we? If you want to ride me, you better do it correctly. Inside the bedroom, that is. Getting the upper hand, Kay reversed around, casually turning their position straddling Hyde in return while his little person laid on his back on the soft mat he had spread out to use for his workout. Winking once he was able to caught him off guard. Sometimes, you get caught in your own little games, babe. Hyde rolled his eyes with a sigh. At least you could act surprise? Well. Hyde knew he wouldn't win an argument with Kay, especially when he felt Kay's hands slipping in on his pajama top, setting his touch right at his smooth skin, stroking his curves. Hold on. You're sweaty. Let's wash up first. However, Kay didn't even seem to hear what Hyde said as he brought his other hand right up to fondle his little person's bottom outside his pajama. He didn't fail to earn a soft moan from the latter. Kay! Hmm. Let's be naughty together. Instead. I think that's what's better. No. I mean... Hyde shoved Kay's shoulder lightly and when the needy boyfriend finally distanced himself. Kay's grouchy face almost made him laugh, but he suppressed it to be able to say his words. You want to do it? Here? Kay's eyes flickered between darkness and impatience while he stood up, carrying Hyde on his arms without any second thoughts. On the soft bed then, my highness. Punching Kay faintly because of his impulsive manner and cringy remark, Hyde then clung his arms on Kay's neck as he made his way to the bedroom. Urgency is apparent in his every step. Once in a lifetime. The bedroom door was carelessly brought to shut close, creating a loud banging sound when Kikaza kicked it, but the noise was gone unnoticed for Kay and Hyde who's busy with each other's craving and Kikazu urgently went to bed, placing Hyde down. In a swift move, Kay was able to bring them above the bed and carried Hyde carefully who obediently succumbed to everything that he does. Every touch felt like burning as they yearned for each other, ready for friction. It's broad daylight and here we are. Hyde commented in between sighs out of the blue. Kay chuckled but his hands didn't cease to stop caressing every part of Hyde's body. You're thinking about it now. He found it funny that his little lover is of sober mind while he, on the other hand, were already getting drunk with the smell of sexual tension in the air, and being lost in the scent of love as well as drowning into ecstasy just when they dive deep, heeding their desire for each other's warmth. 
he moved his hands on Hyde's lower back and leaned down to his ear, whispering, Be it when the sun goes down or if it's peeking out, as long as it's with you. Time or seasons, it would be perfect with you. But I think right now is what's more important. Kay's bedroom voice that were huskier at the moment sent tingles all over Hyde's body and one more sigh from Kay that sounded utterly attractive fanning his ears were all it took for Hyde to take the initiative and press his lips ferociously to Kay who was in return, taken aback. His arms tangled around Kay's neck while the latter's hands rested on his bottom, massaging him gently. Hyde moaned in Kay's mouth while opening his own, graciously welcoming Kay's awaiting tongue. Hot. It was hot inside Hyde's mouth. Such feeling made Kay explore every inch of his little person's mouth as he pressed himself against Hyde, impatiently grinding outside each other's clothes. Help me take our clothes off Hyde, ha! Huh? He begged. His deep voice were light and airy. Hyde groaned at his lover's tone, and in a blink of an eye, they were both undressed. After taking the time getting Hyde ready and before going at it, Kay cooed, Relax, babe. And they both grunted as sweat rolled down their foreheads, when they became one again connecting with their body and soul. They're under the covers with the two lovers. Regret always comes when you're in the right state of mind. Hyde massaged his back. Kikaza sure is full of energy and stamina to make him feel as if his waist would break. After going at it on the bed, just as he jumped under the shower, Kay joined him and of course, he wasn't able to do what he intended because Kay got what he wants. And now, after doing it in a rough space, he's aching all over his body. Hyde just got out from the bath, still drying his hair with the use of a white towel when Kay came out from the shower, water still dripping from his hair and were streaming down to his Hyde gulped unconsciously. Kay's chest and six-pack abs never failed to mesmerize him. It looked real sexy complimenting Kay's handsome, stoic face. While he was stunned, Kay peeped out from the back holding the blow dryer and instantly used it to dry Hyde's hair. He removed the towel and hang it on the rack inside the master walk-in closet and closed to the bathroom as he switched the blow dryer on letting Hyde's hair to dry. Hyde was sitting on the vanity chair in front of the vanity table. Above the vanity table were the huge mirror affixed to the wall and he could see Kay moving behind him, giving his reflection on the mirror every attention. When Kay lifted his gaze, they locked eyes and the latter smiled. Dazzling and Hyde smiled too. Kay's beautiful smile were infectious. Do you plan on going to the office for afternoon? The little lover pouted his lips as he gave curious look at Kay, before nodding his head. Hyde actually wanted to drop by his apartment and hire someone to clean his space as well as to find a different place. He doesn't want to further inconvenience Kay. Knowing there's an eye following their every move around is enough to make Hyde be on alert and by this he, he realized that staying close and in the same space as Kay will put them to danger and might be taken against them. What's more if they get caught under the same roof, and the fact that it was Kay's very own mansion. If it gets out, they will be feasted upon by nosy people. Thinking about this. Hyde is contemplating whether to let Kay know about his plan or will he have to keep it off his lover's radar. Tell me about it. Of course. As if Kay could read his mind but oblivious to Hyde, he was making obvious expression making Kay's suspicion of what Hyde is running through his mind. Thinking of Hyde's disposition and his dedication to even adapt his job's characteristics as his own behavior, Kikaza knew Hyde would be up to something regards the threat year. And Kay is not. No, he won't let Hyde get involved anymore. He'd rather have Hyde act like it was nothing, even though he understand how his lover feels. Maybe. Really just want for Hyde to lean on him this time and to let the Hyde's worries taken off of his shoulders. Finding no escape with Kay's serious and commanding gaze, Hyde was left no other choice. I wanted to find a safer place where I could temporarily stay at. I don't think my current apartment building would be anything but safe. He said, worried as his voice turned thinner when he finished his sentence. Hearing what Hyde said, Although Kay could feel it wasn't all that's bothering his lover, he calmed himself and didn't pry anymore. Hyde may still be uncomfortable. At the same time though, Kay snapped learning about Hyde's plan. His eyes flashed upon remembering something. He gave a soft and light ruffle to Hyde's now dry hair, also putting down the blow dryer above the vanity table as he walked out of the master closet without saying anything. Hyde wondered what it was but Kay went back inside not even a minute after. He looked right into Hyde's eyes through the mirror attached to the wall. Hyde's wondering eyes held tenderness Kay found solace in and as he made his way closer, draping an arm on Hyde's shoulder and using his other hand to hold the chair and turn it around so that Hyde and him would be facing each other. It was a sudden moment, out of the blue, coming like a surprise. In a swift move. In the most unpredictable timing. 
without planning it ahead of time. Unexpectedly, what was up close in front of Hyde's very eyes, making him gasp, was something that Kikazu brought out, holding the tiny but glittery, as if it was shining literally, in Kay's pointing and thumb finger while effortlessly kneeling on both knees in between Hyde's thighs. Kay smiled his bright smile, his misty but determined eyes flickering with gleams as he held out his hand. Your place, or mine, he said curtly, and without any context but Hyde didn't fail to understand. More than coherent words, he's letting Kay speak through the volume of the emotions in his eyes. He understood what Kay was delivering. No, actually, he already know it in his heart. Not letting Kay hang in the moment, Hyde's pretty, pink and plump lips uttered. Yours. With beaming smiles on their faces, Kay was granted the honor of putting the ring he attempted to give twice but failed and on his third time became more memorable, slipping it to Hyde's ring finger. Hyde lifted his left hand, staring tenderly at the tiny diamond on the ring. The purpose of this ring was to be given as a couple ring. I wanted to ask you in a more formal way, to be my lover, but I... Keep screwing up. Kay said quite disappointed, and Hyde remembered that Kay did come with a bouquet of flowers last time and the image of the rose petals scattered on the living area flashed in his mind. Maybe those were the signs. Seeing the dismay in Kay's expression, Hyde stroked Kay's face. Maybe it wanted to serve another purpose that was why your first tries failed. Because, give me yours. Hyde put out his hand and Kay gave his own pair of the couple ring. This pair of ring wanted to have deeper meaning to it. He reached for Kay's left hand and it was his turn to put it in Kay's ring finger. Like A. Promise ring. They simultaneously said and then laughed heartily. After calming down, Kay came in closer and hugged Hyde. If in another lifetime it wouldn't be us, I would find every possible way for that lifetime for us to be together. But in this timeline, you're my once in a lifetime, Hyde, and I couldn't ask for more. Usually, when Kikaza gets chummy with his words, Hyde find it corny and he mostly cringe however, at that moment, with the romantic atmosphere settled in. He felt touched, his heart warmed and he felt like crying. Looking fondly at Kay, he responded, If it ain't you I'm in love with, I don't want it. I. Hyde felt choked but he was still able to make out his word. I love you, Kikazu, and I'm sincerely yours. Once in this lifetime but all along in every timeline. As if butterflies were surrounding them and celebrating their love, a genuine and contented smile spread out of their faces. It's a promise of forever now. These must have cost a fortune. Hyde spent the rest of the morning staring at the ring which his lover gave him, still awed at the design of the promised ring and of the reason that Kikaza got it for him, though failed at first but the chance it happened today were more fulfilling. Kay already left to meet his friend. Hyde didn't know the exact person and reason Kay was meeting his friend, but his words before leaving somehow ignited a weird feeling to creep into his chest. Kikaza's exact words were, I won't swear, I won't promise, but I'll do my best to resolve this matter. So please, I don't want you to be anxious about it. And Hyde understood that Kay meant about the threats. Heaving a deep sigh, Hyde shook the worry off his mind and got up from sitting to be on his way to the company. It's best to keep himself occupied with work to not think about unnecessary thoughts. Aisha Hillary Gills Hyde arrived at the company exactly at lunch hour, getting the attention of his nosy friend for not attending in the morning but getting to work for the rest of the day. Production manager Jano were shooting daggers his way while Hyde stepped inside Times Corporation's cafeteria. Jano and Jean were both seated not far from the entrance. When Hyde's eyes roamed and he noticed that the two haven't ordered their food yet, giving him the idea to ask them and eat outside. Jano gave him a skeptical look, doubting his intention once he voiced out his thought. It's my treat! He tried sounding enthusiastic to convince Jano and gave Jean a beaming smile for the latter's action of nudging Jano on his side and get him to agree. In the end, despite his unwillingness to come with, Jano was dragged inside the nearest five-star buffet restaurant. He had no regrets though because aside from free foods, he get to fill his stomach to his own content. Soon as they were seated, after munching enough food to digest and convert as his new source of energy, Jano, who was still hung up on the idea to tease their little secretary, opened his mouth. Day after day, I think you're getting bolder, Secretary Hyde. You have two record of absences already, but you know what gets me the most? Jano's eyebrows were raised while rolling his eyes. He was nagging at Hyde especially for reasons he couldn't wait to interrogate the little secretary about. I didn't know you would get promoted early on, haha. Hyde raised his eyebrow at Jano when he smiled coyly. 
What do you mean promoted? I'm still a secretary for our CEO, he answered with a shrug. Oh, come on. Don't act as if you don't know what I'm talking about. Or would you rather let me say it directly? Just say it. Don't keep us guessing, he retorted, mischief in his voice, though he knew exactly what he would say. I don't know if you're genuinely clueless or naive, but as your kind friend, let me spell it out for you, Jano said, but elaborated when Hyde shot him a confused glance. Being promoted to the position of our very own stoic boss Kikazu Lielses. B O Y F R I E N D. Now, do you understand? His mouth quirked up at the corners, smirking at the surprised secretary and was enjoying having something to tease Hyde about, especially feeling the satisfaction as the blood drained from his face. That once vacant job position I should have applied for it straight away when I still have the chance because now this cunning little secretary have taken it away from me. Oh come on. It was never yours anyway and can you stop treating Kay like some object or a trophy? Especially he's not his business for him to require any hiring process for certain roles in his life. Jano and Jean cracked a smile watching the obvious little secretary. The way he's blushing from all over his face to his pale skin and his neck would surely give his denial away. Oh my! Getting feisty, aren't we? Hee <laughs> hee. No. You're just not funny. Oh, I think I am very funny. You just don't understand my sense of humor. Jano said with an eye roll as he inhaled a spoonful of his food. Hyde didn't reply. He just looked left and right, checking on the customer inside and he was just glad they weren't at the company and nobody who knew them heard their conversation that would have given them the right idea straight away. After eating their fill and Jano stuffing himself. They got back to the company and while entering their own office, Jano was struck because he knew he forgot to continue and interrogate Hyde but he swear for sure, he won't let the little secretary get away without getting him all flustered, cutely. Hyde on the other hand, sighed as he took out from the drawer of his work desk the tablet containing all important meetings and business deals as per his boss's schedule, but what utterly made his day worsen was the notification of the schedule tomorrow night right as he swiped the lock screen to open it. Right. The homecoming of Aisha Hillary Gilles. Even the role of Kay's ex-girlfriend's name out of his mouth seemed to hurt his tongue. He momentarily forgot about this certain person's threatening existence after all that's happened, but in reality, getting associated with Kay would come insurmountable amount of worry in his everyday environment. He should have been aware of this from the very start. The hands of clock showing the physical appearance of time were already pointed at which indicates the day at work were over. Hyde stretched his muscles while wondering in his head about Kay's business with his friend and how to go but it quickly cast it off his mind as he prepared to go home. Although he felt more exhausted than usual today, he was able to finish all works that didn't require the CEO. When he were about to put aside the tablet he got reminded about the schedule Kikazu were required to attend. Hyde didn't want to think that way but he knew that before he knew Kay. Aisha was a part of his life and this person is also favored by Kay's mother, more of a reason that requires Kay's presence. Sighing frustratedly, he made his way to go home. While on his way out from the company building, a loud honk caught his attention right as he stepped outside of the exit. An unfamiliar blue Rolls Royce Dawn, a convertible two-seater, cozy leather interior car pulled up in front of him. Hyde's eyebrows furrowed, wondering what kind of jerk would honk that loudly on his face and even blocking him from going his way. But as he was cursing the driver in his head, his phone placed down deep and his trousers vibrated. He didn't hesitate to fish it out and see who messaged him. Upon reading the message, he scowled as he opened the car door and tried not to roll his eyes as he got inside. Babe, you could have informed me a minute later, Hyde said sarcastically, cutting Kay off of his sentence. Kay chuckled and goes, Oops, my bad, which he knew he didn't mean. Kikazu intentionally rode a different car today because he knew they can't be seen together at work. Hyde wanted to be discreet and he respects his decision but he won't come without teasing although the truth is that he really just forgot to inform Hyde of his arrival and that he would pick his lover along his way home. Let's eat outside, he said after planting a feather-like kiss on Hyde's forehead which wiped the scowl away from Hyde's face, before he revved and drove. The blushing secretary hummed while he bit his lower lip, suppressing the tingles running all throughout of his body because of Kay's sweet gesture. Hyde took in Kay's appearance while the latter's eyes were focused on the road. I might melt if you stare too hard. But of course, he was caught gawking at his own boyfriend. And he felt brave, his gaze lingering longer than it probably should have. He was about to open his mouth again when he remembered about the homecoming and before he could rationalize his thoughts, he already said, Tomorrow night is Aisha's homecoming party. You have to attend. 
Kay's eyes sparked for a moment as his gaze slid from the road over to Hyde, then returning his gaze back on the road. He frowned at himself, shaking his head in confusion. No need to, never mind that. He refused. It didn't even cross his mind after receiving the invitation card had Hyde not reminded him. Kay would have treated it as if it never happened. Hyde grazed his upper teeth to his lower lip before speaking. No, Kay. I think it's a courtesy for you to show up. Maneuvering the steering wheel to take the U-turn the next highway which will lead them to their destination, Kay remained silent and then he clicked his tongue as he responded. All right then. And Hyde were torn between two emotions. Glad that he was able to convince Kay but a tugging emotion on his chest made it hard for him to breathe for a moment. But, I want you to come with me. In a sudden moment, what Kay surprisingly blurted out eased his feelings. I, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. It was obviously a lie. It's what's best to do. Because. Kay smiled at Hyde's way briefly. I don't want you overthinking this trivial matter. It was decided then that both of them would attend Kikaz's ex-girlfriend's homecoming although he couldn't see the reasons why he had to be obliged to go. The next day. Grand Hall, in Oxenti's Hotel, 6 o'clock p.m. Every invited guests, men that were wearing thousand-dollar suits and women dolled up in their fancy dresses were entering the luxurious place of Inoxenti's Hotel where the party were being held particularly inside its famous grand hall that most big-shot celebrities and public figures choose as the venue of different celebrations. It has a high reputation for elite people and considering her status and achievement it goes perfectly to showcase herself. For the supermodel, Aisha's anticipated homecoming. There were a buzz and flock of reporters as well as different press media inside and out of the hotel that were enormous. Some were authorized to cover the whole event but there were also those who only came there for gossip that could be taking place out of their radar trying their best of luck to scoop one revelation tonight. They are all thrilled to finally catch a glimpse of the beauty that the very own supermodel Aisha Genesis were. She was elected as the most beautiful girl of the world pronounced by one certain prestigious beauty magazine and she held the title for the past three consecutive years and it was for the longest time so it couldn't be helped that people were still expecting her to secure this year's title, earning her more recognition and respect. Everyone is enthralled. The shutter sound of cameras surrounding the area which wouldn't seem to cease clicking were loud in the background. Famous people are really of a different caliber. Super News gossip reporter, El Wong who are amongst unauthorized reporters but still made it outside of the venue said while clicking his tongue. Seeing various known personalities who were invited for the one and only Aisha's homecoming were really something. The weight of the famous and elite society never failed to amaze him in spite of working in the industry for a good amount of time. It was not a rare sight to see but he was still astounded every time. And he knew what to do right away. This kind of big party wouldn't fail to give him any massive news or in a right word, a gossip. Just as he was thinking about this, an unexpected and truly notable guest arrived with who seems like an assistant next to him. Wow! I hit the jackpot! The appearance of a sought-after young billionaire, the first son of the infamous Lance Isles, attending the supermodel and the most beautiful woman in the world's homecoming, El Wong knew that it would make it to the headline. Kikazuli Isles in his million-dollar tailored blue suit emphasizing his imminent and goldy features, standing out from the rest walked with his proud and confident stance on the naked floor instead of the red carpet, and all the flustered reporters turned their attention and cameras his way. Even the unknown guy walking beside him was captured on their camera. They were not complaining though because Kikazu's appearance alone will surely make an uproar. Stolen Show Young, tall, gorgeous with an undeniable charisma. The enigmatic dark eyes of the stoic boss roamed around the reporters swarming his way, eager to capture his appearance behind the lenses of their cameras. His gaze were sharp, as if it would pierce through anyone's soul and the air surrounding him were filled with rather than mystery. He held a brooding aura, intimidating the people in the background. Kikazuli Isles strode his way inside the grand hall, instantly becoming the center of attention. That was the weight of his appearance alone. Enough to pull them in his way, taking their focus. He's a powerful force to be reckoned with. Oh my goodness! Look who we have here! Is that the Isles' first son? I can't believe Kikazuli Isles is here! Yeah, I didn't know he was invited. It's such an honor to have him in the same place! A list celebrities really get the big deal people as their guests. But really? Why would he be attending a supermodel's homecoming party? That. I wonder. Maybe they are acquainted. Oh well. You know famous people's circle. It multiplies from meeting one person to two groups. 
You bet. <laughs> and of course, that's why we're also here. OMG. So true. Amidst the murmurs almost as if echoing in the entire hall, K was not minding anyone else's attention nor gaze on him. Instead, he casted a glance at Secretary Hyde walking beside him. Hyde was wearing a lighter shade of blue top suit complementing the darker shade that Kay have worn. He was walking beside his boss modestly and also with a presence. His soft features were no less attractive. His delicate movement could also be enchanting. Truly deserving to be standing next to his boss, but unbeknownst to most, his own boyfriend. Can we leave once the party started? Kay said, his voice were laced with impatience. Hyde couldn't hold his chuckle, finding how uninterested Kay was to the marvelous and grand party they have just attended. He would be lying if he say he's not relieved that Kay pays no mind to the adoring gazes of the other guests or that he clearly show how he didn't want to attend if he hadn't convinced him. Because he's totally pleased and his weary heart is calming down. We just arrived, sir, he said, considering his place as a secretary for the moment. Kay whined like a child but Hyde ignored his sentiments and found their reserved seats as they settled down. Not for so long, the light in the hall were turned off covering the whole place pitch black and the stage were lit up. The MC of the party walked towards the center to open the event. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. She greeted first earning murmurs around as the excitement of everyone increased. And welcome to the most anticipated party tonight. Wow! Aren't we all looking absolutely gorgeous and lovely? She paused while scrutinizing everyone's appearance although for a useless effort because she wouldn't be able to see or recognize anyone's faces in the big crowd. But there's one woman's name on everyone's lips. The star of the night, supermodel and prestige Bow magazine's most beautiful woman alive. Miss Aisha Hillary Jills or popularly known as Aisha Genesis. When her name was mentioned, Aisha in her violet red fiery short two-piece beaded dress flaunted her unmatched beauty and sophistication walking in slow motion until she reached the center of the stage. Like the goddess that she looks, everyone were captivated by how ethereal her beauty in person is. She's completely dazzling while making her speech, but her eyes were searching for only one person, and that is... I'm glad you made it, Kikazu. The main protagonist of the night showed a bright and enchanting smile at him. After her introduction and a little chit-chat, Kikazu who was about to leave the hall with his little secretary was blocked and dragged by Aisha to a private room. Although he didn't want to leave Hyde's side, he preferred to be dragged by Aisha to not cause any commotion and to also confirm one thing. Pouting her lipstick-filled lips, she said, I actually thought you won't appear here tonight because you've been avoiding me. She lifted her gaze to look at Kay and then continued to chatter. I tried contacting you so we could practice slow dancing for tonight's party, but I couldn't get a hold of you. But I know you already got the hang of it since you always attend multiple parties around. I just hope the girls you danced with didn't mistook your chivalry for something else, because that would be awful if they get their hopes up. She got the hint that Kay didn't want to talk to her, but Aisha played oblivious to that fact. There's no way she'd let this chance slip away from her hands. Kay is finally in front of her again. Stop clinging to me. Kikaze tried to push Aisha's hands, suddenly reaching for him, holding onto his arms. Why? Do you feel hot? Here, let me take your coat off for you. Kay shoved her hands away that wanted to reach for his coat. She was wearing stilettos, causing her to stumble around, but Kay didn't pay her any attention. Not even a slightest bit of worry were visible in his eyes, letting her fend for herself and having left no choice but to support herself to stand properly. Never mind that, haha. But where's my gift? Did you prepare any surprise for me? I bet that it would be extremely explosive. Her beaming and chic smile were irritating Kay and because of not being able to hold his uneasiness in place, he bluntly blurted, We're over long ago, Aisha. Stop acting like it was just yesterday. He sighed frustratedly. Just. Stop deluding yourself. The seriousness in Kay's voice were enough to make her heart pound but not in a good way. Anxiety started creeping to her chest but Aisha still found her way to smile. Why are you so serious all of a sudden? She was feigning not understanding and shrugged her shoulders to show how she was confused by all that's happening. Of course, what we had before was over, but it doesn't mean we can't start all over again. We can work it out this time, Kikazu. She smiled proudly, taking a step forward as she wrapped her hands around Kei who stood still but his piercing gaze put pressure on her wavering heart. I know for sure, and you also know it to yourself. It's still me. Aisha said, 
lifting her face at the same time she tiptoed to reach Kikaze's lips and to kiss him but the stoic boss turned his head away, escaping the attempt to being kissed against his liking. While Aisha shook her head, still adamant on her pursuit to force the words out of Kikazu's mouth. I am your first love, Kikazu. And it won't change nor fade that easily, she said with a smug smile. His cold eyes bored on her as she anticipated his words, but opposite to what she wanted him to say and what she eagerly wanted to hear, Kikazu suddenly uttered, Wrong, with a persistent cold gaze. Aisha was taken aback when she heard it, her face were a little stiff as she listened to the rest of his sentence. There are three things I want you to remember, Aisha. Kikazu's dark eyes paired with his stoic expression made her feel cold shivers. First, we were done long ago at that, he said while taking a step forward but with his every step. Aisha felt intimidated, causing her to back away. Second, move on. He gripped her hands to make her stay still in her ground while his jaw clenched as he finished. Lastly, don't be too up high. You're very confident but sorry to tell you. It's not you. Ha. Huh. He laughed mockingly as he stared down at her, meeting her eyes. IT was never you. After he said that, he distanced himself away, wiping his hands in front of her. Aisha immediately became angry as soon as she heard it. She looked at Kikazu aside with severe eyes as she demanded. Then who? This time, it was her turn to step forward trying to intimidate Kikazu but the latter stood still, wearing that bored gaze while listening to her nonchalantly. If it's not me you're in love with, who? She bravely asked. Kikazu's eyes flickered. He remained silent for a moment before uttering without any hesitation. Of course, my lover. With a tender smile etched on his face she's never seen him give her before. It was the last straw of Aisha's patience. She snapped after hearing the word lover and even if she didn't want to, she couldn't help herself but to say. That guy? Kikazu, are you insane? I know you don't mean this. Behind the piercing and cold gaze of the stoic boss were a smirk that formed because of what he heard. Ah, it was really easy to get the bait. Now the task is complete. And attending such boring party was worth it in the end. He didn't know it would be that easy. A little provocation is all it took for the word or thought to slip out of her mouth. Now all he needs to do is to keep pushing it. Furrowing his eyebrows, Kikazu feigned innocence as he asked. What? What do you mean? As if she was cut off her reverie, Aisha's eyes widened as she realized what she just said but looking at Kikazu's reaction. Maybe it was not the case. Maybe. I know your secretary was seducing you. Don't fall for his trap. There was no going back. She had ultimately revealed what she knew and it goes on Kikazu's own favor. That slut. You don't deserve a gay like him. That faggot. He just rubbed on you but you shouldn't be like him. Kikazu's left hand were left hanging in the air with his attempt to slap Aisha on her face and the latter closed her eyes in surprise waiting for his hand to land on her face but Kei did something differently. He instead kicked the cabinet inside the room causing all the things on its place to fall down, hitting the floor and creating a loud, deafening noise. Aisha were completely shocked. She didn't expect such a vulgar reaction from the usually expressionless and emotionless guy like Kikazu. As far as her memory serves her right, Kikazu is not the type of guy who let his emotions run his actions. He was not a person easily affected by any taunting either but right now, a few ridicule directed at his secretary would get him this worked up. It must be true. You're dating your secretary? A man? A gay? She said, completely disgusted. You have really lost it. Opposite to what Aisha expected of Kikazu to react, he remained calm as a smirk etched on his face. And if I tell you, I caught you. Do you get what that means? Rather, he said speaking in a quizzical manner, but no. Aisha's heartbeat suddenly raced with nervousness because she did. She completely knew what Kikazu was talking about. Turning the table around, seeing Aisha's panic-stricken face eventually confirmed his suspicions. Yesterday, Axel Fuego presented all possible people who would do any amateur and sloppy threats which were aimed at Hyde and by doing a further and thorough investigation. They came to a clear conclusion but without any solid evidence. They know they can't point fingers carelessly. Kikaza didn't want to attend Aisha's party because until now, he couldn't believe she'd be able to do such thing. He was reliant on her innocence as the young girl he had trusted before but hearing and seeing how her facade broke revealing her true color disappoints him. Kikaza gasped for breath to calm his mood and looked at Aisha. He whispered, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, Aisha. You could come clean. 
It's your choice, but I want you to remember. I won't sit still. Maybe if you anger me more, you'll see a glimpse of the devil within me. Aisha's heart suddenly hurt, as if she had been stabbed by someone. Hearing those words from Kikazu himself just hurt. Why did you become like this? You used to. Not like this. You used to be so gentle. She muttered, recalling how Kikazu was treating her lovingly in the past. But it's all because she can't accept that five years have passed and Kikazu is now a man, and not the boy she was able to easily trick with her childish schemes. I won't hesitate forgetting about the ounce of patience I'm saving for you. He said, and regardless of Aisha's astonishment behind him, Kikazu walked out of the room, feeling the need to get away from the wicked girl as quickly as possible. It was suffocating there. Aisha looked at the leading silhouette as she clenched her hand. A strange color flashed in her eyes. In the blink of an eye, what she thought the treasures she successfully hid in the depths were stolen from her like how her own night became ruined and taken away. However, the party is still ongoing. There is still time to take the spotlight and get what was rightfully hers and be the main protagonist in her stolen show. Slow dancing. You don't have to worry. I got this. Her phone call ended after those words. Aisha Hillary Gills composed herself first, wiping the scowl off her face and replacing it with a sweet smile and a beam. She then grazed as she walked out from the dressing room after changing herself into a royal blue long dress and headed straight to the party hall. She rather regained her composure quickly after what happened inside the private room and about how heated her argument was with Kikazu but there's no way she's gonna let it slide just like that. She came home to get him and she will have him. Kikazu Lial's even abroad where she worked. They knew him. His name is in everyone's lips and adoration always paint their eyes whenever he's being brought up. He's immensely popular for being a young billionaire and for having the surname Isles next to his renowned name. His gorgeousness is also one of the factor that girls seem to be enchanted with him. It can't be denied that his dark eyes once it landed on you would make you feel butterflies. His cold personality just add up to the fascination of the ladies. It is charming and handsome. They find him like a man straight out of every fictional story about that overbearing CEO. Handsome and would dominate them but also make them feel as special. And if Aisha were to have him, the envious looks from the other girls and superiority she will honorably gain by getting Kikazu to be hers. That would be a dream come true. To have more power to her name. A sly smile stretched on her face. Oh, to have everything. Aisha Hillary Gills can't wait to be worshipped. She have the beauty, the power and influence but to have Kikazu will triple that. And she would feel as if she's ruling the world. That's her intention. Love? If you'd ask her if she loved Kikazu. Of course. She loved him for all the attributes he can bring and attach to her name. As soon as she arrived at the hall, all the guests which saw her immediately flocked to her side, telling her all pleasantries and showering her flattering words. It boosts her confidence. She's the star of the night. All the adoring eyes and attention she wanted. She got it and it fills her heart. However, just like every story, there would always be those who would ruin her fun. If she's the main character of her show, and of course, there's the antagonist who would ruin the flow of her story and hinder her to her quest of achieving her happiness. Aisha Hillary Gills headed to where Kikazu was standing from, together with his secretary who were filling his plate on the buffet area. How shameless. Is he starved? Poor people really don't know how to behave themselves on classy and luxurious occasion like this. She scoffed walking graciously as she approached them. Kikazu, dance with me, she said, shamelessly. Her fluttering fake long eyelashes were swaying while she blinked her eyes, trying to be cutesy. Kikazu Lyles, who happened to stumble upon his little secretary feasting on the food, he might have been quite hungry. When he walked out from the private room earlier after talking some sense into Aisha, had no choice but to let Hyde fill his hungry stomach before he was about to drag him out of there to leave the stuffy place. Why don't we go ahead and eat at a fancier restaurant? I could take you anywhere better than here. Hide, Kikazu said, worried at how his little person is inhaling his food. Are you that hungry? He stroked his back when Hyde swallowed a piece of fried chicken as he scooped other foods on his plate. Hyde waved his hand off that were still holding the bones of the fried chicken, totally making Kikazu laugh in return. After Hyde managed to swallow the food, Kikazu handed him a cup of water which he gulped immediately. Nah. It's the free food. K. You won't get the feeling cause you dine luxuriously while a middle class person like me. Parties. And big events that cater free food. It brings me glee. Hyde said with a cheeky smile. 
dashing on his own flawed yet original him. No pretense, but just him. Which brings Kikazu a good feeling. Seeing his lover be himself. Showing how he truly is. No facade to cover up his imperfections. Not even any hint of faking his actions. That's just downright beautiful. His soul is beautiful. Kikazu appreciate those kind of actions and treat it as special. Because in a world where you hustle and bustle, and unfairness exist, also when it comes to the corporate world where his life revolve around different masks worn by people, it's not every day that he finds someone with sincerity and genuineness in their simplicity. Oh, God. He couldn't help but utter quietly, impressed at how deep he's fallen for the other guy, and upon realizing how whipped he is, Kikazu lifted his eyes, his gaze holding fascination while looking at his lover. The music playing while some people were dancing on the dance floor made him eager to want to dance with Hyde, yet he knew that his little person won't like it if they are seen by these amount of people. Now, actually, that kind of thing may be added to the list of things he'd want to do with Hyde. Someday, it will happen, where they won't need to hide, be terrified of the judging eyes, and just be happy like how the other couples would be. He smiled to himself. Slow down, babe and fine. I won't ask you to leave yet so sit down first to finish your food. Kikazu said to Hyde who nodded his head and his eyes roamed around to find their seat a while ago to check if it were still available. Gladly, it is and when he was about to tell Kikazu that they would sit back down. A high-pitched voice amidst all these noises prevailed, louder on top of the loud music, invited his own boyfriend to dance. Aisha Hillary Gills and her royal blue long dress were as usual, stunning. Her hair were tied in a messy bun perfectly complimenting her beautiful face and if that was not enough to make Hyde feel insecure about himself. Aisha's body were perfectly carved around in an hourglass shape, showing a perfect in real life image of a princess. While Hyde on the other hand, he felt small about himself. Hyde pursed his lips in silence, suddenly letting go of the full plate he filled, putting it down. He just lost himself and completely forgot how he should have acted while on such a high-grade party. He forgot, and acted like a teenager who would get damn excited partying all because of food. That was such a memory in his childhood but he shouldn't have done that in this present time where a lot of people were watching. Especially he's next to Kikazu. Hey, Kikazu, I said let's dance. Aisha repeated looking enchantingly at the stoic boss who now have those void of emotions face, looking nonchalantly at the girl who he thought would back off but is now trying to ruin his moment again. She was anticipating him but contrary to what she wanted to happen, out of the blue, Kikaza pulled his secretary, dragging him on the middle of the dance floor. It left Aisha speechless, dropping her jaw literally while he watched Kikazu be crazy, putting his hands around his secretary's waist and guiding the latter's hand to lay on his shoulder. Aisha gulped. She cannot believe she was rejected in the most annoying way. Absurd. Her guests' attention were now fixed on the two, Kikazu and his secretary. The dance floor were even cleared out because people who were dancing earlier decided to stand aside and their curious, watchful eyes wanted to witness those two gentlemen, which doesn't happen every day, dance with each other. The shutter sound of cameras and sigh were crazy as hell, and the murmurs around were getting louder than the music blasting on the whole place. Aisha were too stunned, she felt her chest stuffy and hard to breathe, she wanted to rush in and pull them apart from each other. This is so shameless! They are embarrassing me! She cried out. While Hyde and Kikazu on the other hand were romantically swaying with the rhythm. Hyde who was bewildered with what just happened, unexpectedly, that is, looked around with a slightly unnatural expression. A glint flashed in his eyes, he lowered his head, shying away from the eyes of the crowd. He didn't want to see the judgment on them. No, he's afraid. But, Kikazu's warmth and smile, his lover held him more closely, his body became stiff. At that moment, he felt that all the anxiety and irritability in his heart disappear instantly. He smelled that reassuring scent as he was held tightly in Kay's arms with some lethargy. Focus on me, hide not on the rest of the world, Kikazu uttered with his deep voice, because of the loud noise in the background. It almost sounded like a whisper, or a lullaby, soothing his mood. You don't have to worry about anything, babe, because me, I choose you every day. Let the rest of the world be against us, cause I will fight for this love, even if it costs me my life. No, you're my life, and that's crave than losing to a fight. Hyde looked up at Kikazu that was then also looking at him, their eyes meeting. He was shocked hearing Kikazu sing along with the music they were slow dancing to. The lyrics of the song felt perfect, suiting their situation and he felt touched and fallen even more, 
Falling in love with Kikazu was never any regret, and falling deeper in love with him is just right. Secretary Hyde casted off his inhibitions and laid his head on his lover's sturdy chest, while they sing along to the song. This ain't a battle if you're not the reason I'm fighting for. This love is for us. No, for you and me. Let the world judge. They don't matter anyway, because this love is for us. No, for you and me. Just like that, the slow dancing became the two gentlemen's. They owned it, especially the knight, which infuriated the lady more. For the second time around, her show was stolen from her. We won't care about the rest of the world. We'd slow dance to the end of the song and be perfectly in love. Ha, this is very entertaining. And in the middle of all this chaos, a character on the side were interestingly watching all the scenes unfold in front of him. No real battle. Kikazu and Hyde were standing outside the Inoxenis Hotel. After getting the host of the party mad, the two made their exit, but a phone call to Kikazu's halted them on their way to the parking lot. K? I'll go to the restroom. Hyde told Kikazu who nodded while listening to whoever were speaking on the other line. Secretary Hyde took that cue and walked inside the hotel to find the restroom. But unlucky him, he needed to enter the Grand Hall because the one restroom outside were closed, and even though he didn't want to enter the place where Aisha's party were being held, he had no other choice. He drank too much juice and water earlier after they danced. He felt like choking with the kind of curiosity in everyone's eyes while looking at them, particularly at him because he's a no-name. They definitely don't know who he was and why would the remarkable and upright billionaire would dance, more importantly with a guy that is him? Such thought is full of absurdity but he can't blame them. He showed up and suddenly, he was offered, having the honor to dance with the person whom is adored by most. Who wouldn't be curious? Once he saw the restroom, he charged inside, feeling the need to run so that it wouldn't explode there. On the other hand, Secretary Hyde was seen by a pair of blue eyes, and despicable smile revealed on that person's face. When he was finished with his business inside which took him longer than usual because of an unexpected situation, he came out and that was when someone grabbed him on his shoulder, forcibly turning him to face them. You! He was not able to say anything because he was suddenly dragged by the smaller figure, taking him somewhere. Ah, uh, a private room? But why? He thought to himself when they arrived in front of a room inside the Grand Hall. If his memory serves him right, since the Grand Hall is a party hall then having the room inside it would mean that it is private and cater the VIPs only. How goddamn rich. Afterwards, they entered inside and Hyde wasn't able to protest because he was lost in his own thoughts. It was only when he was let go and freely able to move on his own that he woke up from trance and shot a wondering glance at the person. Miss Aisha, what are you doing? Why? He addressed with formality while he roamed his eyes in the room. Did you bring me here? He finished then his gaze fell on his hands that were gripped strongly and saw our hand that held him earlier marked on his skin, turning purple. How can a woman this classy looking be this strong? He wondered. Aisha Hillary Gills crossed her arms into her chest while narrowing his eyes at the little secretary. Her mind is wondering while she scrutinize him, checking him from head to toe, that. On top of anything, he is a man. Second of all, he's plain, without any charming points, and he's poor. Also, working as a secretary means that his destiny is to only serve. Now, why is Kikazu, an outstanding man, gifted and has everything has gone crazy over this? Little thing? Her thought process ended as she gave the guy in front of him a dazzling smile, but she knew it was a smile she always used in her work, a fake one that was practiced hard and multiple times that it would just come out naturally now. Hmm. I wanted to talk to you. Aisha walked over to a coffee table situated next to the wardrobe inside of the room and Hyde noticed two glasses she poured with wine, and brought with her as she walked back to where she was standing earlier but now she turned and sat to the couch and ushered him to come sit down as well which he didn't heed instead he came forward and stood in front of her. She shook her head in disbelief, handing the other glass to him but he didn't pay it any attention causing her to retract her hand. Talk? You could have invited me in a more I mean, what do you want to talk about? Hyde was about to say normal ways, but seeing the kind of look the other person is giving him, he stopped himself. Aisha hissed, laughing at the restraint secretary Hyde showed. You're always next to Kikazu, so I couldn't approach you simply, so that's why I dragged you here. Anyway, you asked what I wanted to talk about, and of course we only have one thing in common that we could talk about. Not like we'd be having conversation about modeling or branded clothes, because I could see. You don't know those things. So, this one thing is the only one you know she said, blabbering with a proud grin. Do you get what I mean? 
Secretary Hyde returned a smile, realizing what was happening. Do you mean with my boss, Sir Kikazu? Aisha scoffed. Sure, your boss. Ha. Huh. She merely rolled her eyes and faced to the other side. She knew better. Secretary Hyde, I know what you and my dear Kikazu have, so you don't have to pretend in front of me. She said with a smile. Hyde exposed a slightly awkward smile. I'm sorry, but if you won't tell me, I don't have the slightest idea what you want us to talk about. Oh, you don't have to be wary of me, Secretary Hyde. Come on, Kikazu himself told me he's dating you. Hyde wore a puzzled look because there is no way Kikazu would give them away just like that. He knew how Kikazu had been respecting him all throughout so he also realized that the person in front of him is lying right now, deliberately trying to confirm her speculation out of his own mouth. Such a heavy matter shouldn't be associated with me. Ms. Aisha, Sir Kikazu is my boss, and I'm his secretary. We're a pair of workforce in the industry. He wanted to add and nothing more, but it was like denying what they really have as he knew they are truly in a romantic relationship. He doesn't want to be guilty. The little secretary is stubborn. Although Kikazu have acted rash earlier when they were arguing every time this person is being brought up, the former still have the guts to deny everything. In such case, Aisha smiled kindly, formulating something in her pretty mind as she stood back up. If that's so, then you wouldn't mind if I ask you for a favor? Hyde's forehead creased. What kind of favor? It will depend on the weight of it. Oh, you don't have to worry. This is such an easy task. All you have to do is to get me and Kikaza closer. Because you know, I am his first love in university. We had something. Oh, he was definitely head over heels over me that he followed me anywhere I go every time. But I had to chase my dream and choose between becoming the supermodel and keeping him. Well, I did choose to go on my journey of achieving my dream, but it doesn't mean I didn't want to have him. Kikazu misunderstood everything that's why he's keeping his distance, but I think with your help, he will be able to realize that in the end, what I did was for the both of us, and I do want him. So Secretary Hyde, are you willing to help Kikazu and I to patch things up? Because I honestly want him back. Secretary Hyde flinched. His throat suddenly felt dry and an unexplainable tug of emotions swept to his heart. Or maybe he understands this. Was this jealousy? In the long paragraph that Aisha said, the latter part is the only thing that was clear to him. A smile appeared on Aisha's face as she saw how the guy in front of her changed his expression. She's gonna win this. She's claiming it. She cleared her throat. Kikazu is a perfect package. It's such a waste to let him be taken away by some pest, isn't it? I can't have him be stolen away. His sinfully handsome face, his status, power and influence. Do you know how many percent of the woman's population want to have him? 99%. And the remaining percentage is me. But the difference is that I'm going to have him while all they can do is to hope and be envious from afar. Hyde with his lowered hand, clenched it to a fist before releasing it once again, calming himself and trying not to get affected. I don't have the power to do such thing, Ms. Aisha. He strongly denied. And why? With your position as his secretary, this is a little thing. You can meddle just a little and help us get together. Hyde pursed his lips. He wasn't sure what coiled the wire in his head, but a fuse lit and when it does, something burns. He lifted his fiery gaze that were suddenly painted with a strong color, taking the girl by surprise as she stepped back, not expecting to see who seemed to be an easygoing person spark fire through his eyes. Hey. This is a small thing I'm asking of you. Why can't you? Even before she could finish, Hyde brought his hand to her shoulders, gripping her with a heavy force. No. Her forehead creased as her eyebrows raised. She rolled her eyes at his resolute response. You're so petty. Once again, she was cut off when he said, You can't have him. With a dark and dangerous tone paired with a scary expression then he continued. He's mine. He finally managed to say, his voice two tones lower than normal. For the first couple of seconds, she merely stared at him, taken aback. Contrary to what she thought she'd feel, Aisha were rather raged with what she heard, not liking the way the mere secretary claimed Kikazu, as if it were a fact, like he belonged to him long ago when it was her whom Kikazu belonged to. She smirked rather blatantly. Who says so? I thought you mean your relationship was limited to being a boss and an employee? Wasn't it earlier that you said he's your boss and you're his mere secretary? Ha <laughs> ha. She said laughing mockingly at him. Besides, between the two of us, I'd surely win him over even without your help. 
Nancy. Hyde heaved a deep sigh inside his heart when he heard the offensive name he was called. Then he smiled kindly. Just shut it. Because honestly, there is no winner between us and Shirley. I am not a loser. You know why? He said bravely, a genuine glim in his eyes exposed. While holding her head up high, telling the other person who had the upper hand at the situation, Aisha listened carefully to his words. Because there is no real battle. He trailed off. When she heard it, she chuckled, opening her mouth. Your choice of words are utterly lame. However, Secretary Hyde chimed in, continuing. We both know, me and you, that Kikazu's lover is me and not you. He's not an item to own, but basically he's mine to love and... Yours? Your name is already a past tense, Aisha, while I spell it out for you. H-Y-D, that's my name, and I'm his present lover. He plausibly said with confidence. That was when Aisha were stupefied, suddenly rendered speechless. Seeing the flustered reaction, Hyde was relieved he could instill worry in her. I guess I'm done here and like I told you, from the start there is no real battle. Kikazu is mine alone. Get that to your head. This is not how it was supposed to play out. Aisha were dumbfounded at another streak of defeat she don't want to admit. This was truly infuriating. However, Aisha swallowed her pride and cast it aside all her negative emotions to perfectly carry it out. The plan. Composing herself for the umpteenth time of the night, she gave a small laugh at the response. All right. I admit defeat. At Secretary Hyde. But don't you think you should accept my peace offering? She said as she puckered her lips, gesturing to point at the wine glass in her hands. How about you drink with me and share my agony at the least? It won't hurt. Aisha Hillary Jill said, wriggling her brows. Secretary Hyde revealed a nice smile, accepting the glass of wine. While the supermodel mirrored his smile as she brought the glasses, gesturing to toast. Cheers! Although the warm smile on his face remained the same, yet on the inside, his heart had begun to feel uncertain as it started to drum wildly especially after he took a sip of the wine. Aisha were watching him happily, anticipating every bit of his swallowing gesture until he downed the drink. Aisha had trickly set a trap for him the moment Hyde decided to attend the party with Kikazu, stepping inside the party hall, walking side by side with his boss, yet he got no choice but to enter the trap. That was the moment he lost his consciousness, after those realizations had run on his mind. While the despicable girl showed a wretched smile, overjoyed with the turn of events. Incorrigible desire. A man in his early twenties walked out of the elevator, his good posture and handsome face ultimately steal the attention of those he passes by. Well, is he the president? I didn't know he's this young and handsome to boot. The subject of this sentence who heard it from the speaker turned his head her way, the attendant immediately widened her eyes as soon as she realized she were caught talking about an important person, however, to her surprise, the young president shockingly smirked at her gorgeously and gave her a wink, making her ovaries explode inside her panties. Jenna, tell me, did I just got pregnant? She swooned, dazed at the unexpected reaction. Hey, get a hold of yourself. The director is already glaring our way. Oh, let's get back to work. The attendant quickly regained her composure and scurried to her work. Seeing all this, he laughed in return, entertained at the attention he's getting and showing his carefree, most likely an outgoing with a mixture of mischievous personality. Pardon such crass attitude, sir. I'll be sure to teach them how to behave next time. No, it's fine. I think a little clumsiness is cute. He smiled shaking his head softly before turning serious and putting on his business smile. Rather, I'd be more pleased if you'll be able to train the employees to be more welcoming, with beautiful smiles on their faces as they greet the customers. Seeing them with grumpy expression as soon as I walk in is unpleasant indeed. I hope it's not too much to ask, director. The director currently managing the branch swallowed a sticky saliva. He expected that the said president and one of the grandson of Ramos' group has a friendly personality. He knows how to please as well as get on his affiliate's good side, however. His undeniable charisma when it comes down to business, his strictness and commanding tone knows no boundaries. Of course, you don't have to worry, sir. 
Arsene Zero Ramos were there to do his inspection of the Inoxenis Hotel, the main branch of Inoxenis Holding Incorporated, a business in the sector of chains of hotel and restaurants which they recently acquired. His grandfather gave him the right to appropriately manage this section of business and in compliance to the job, after he successfully got all the legal documents. He personally visited in person and performed the inspection, scrutinizing, checking every bits of how the working environment. From its management, to how employees usually treat the customer's run, before eventually signing the last binding documents transferring the right to his name of being in charge of the business. He's a meticulous person through his playful, outgoing persona when it come down to something serious like handling a business, he can laugh when entertained but says his demands in an obligatory manner without the listener questioning the reasons for. Wait, what is this room? When Arson were approaching deep into the lobby, he heard a faint sound echoing from a wide but entirely closed space. Ah, oh, this is the Grand Hall, sir, and an event is currently being held. What kind of event? If I remember correctly, the supermodel MS Aisha Genesis's homecoming is taking place inside. She reserved the hall for a bunch of people. Do you want to come inside, Mr. President? No need. And that's an inappropriate offer, Director. Without the consent from the host, you can't just invite someone unrelated in. Keep in mind that a guest is entitled to their privacy. I hope this won't happen in the future. Yes, sir. I apologize. Well, take me to other vicinity, and I'll order my secretary to schedule a getaway event for every employee starting next week. Give everyone a notice that I'm planning to close down the hotel for a week-long inspection. Also by that time frame we'll be conducting the temporary transfer of everyone to our own hotel branch as a preparation for Inoxendi's hotel's renovation for its remodeling and to eventually introduce it to the public as one of Ramos Group's acquired business. Affirmative, President. After circling around every corner of the hotel and inspecting the management, Arsene Zero Ramos headed down back to the lobby with a crease in his forehead. There were some issues that needed some action immediately, specifically the employee's education on how to treat the customers, he wasn't satisfied with it. Wait for me in the car, he said to his secretary, while his eyes were scanning for a comfort room. Yes, sir, his secretary bowed as a courtesy before exiting the building. While Arsene Zero Ramos headed towards the comfort room which was unluckily out of order, he gritted his teeth but sighed in the end, letting go of his irritation. As he turned to pace back to the second floor where there might be another room, the crevice to the said grand hall took his attention. He wasn't planning on barging in nor inviting himself inside however, a familiar figure and face caught his attention, his gaze fixated on him particularly on the person dancing in the middle, with spotlight focused on them, of course he wasn't able to peel his eyes away from him. A cunning smile revealed on his face as he walked closer, stepping inside and he roamed his eyes around, the dimmed lighting of the room were enough to make him realize he wasn't dreaming or that it was not an illusion. It really is him. Ha! Huh. This is interesting. He uttered as he took in the scene unfolding before him, shrugging his shoulders before turning away, noticing the comfort room he had been looking for. Where's the fucking drug, director? Give it to me. That secretary is infuriating me. How dare he steal my man and take the spotlight? Arson Zero Ramos were about to enter the comfort room however, a loud voice laced with anger stopped him from going inside. The voice belonged to a girl and the sound were coming from the room just across where he was headed to. He was not a nosy person, but the mention of drug and the worrying anger in the person's voice interested him. Just as he was about to brush it aside as it was not something that concerns him but the name uttered after a horrifying things were said made him to turn around and peek through the aperture of the door, there were two figure he could see however, their faces were not visibly seen as their backs were turned on him. A sense of disquietude making him feel very uneasy beats all of his principles to it. An acquaintance's name being mentioned piqued his curiosity and while Arsene Zero tried to comprehend what was going on, he wanted to make sure that no harm will be done since he witnessed such thing, he can't just let this go that easily. I don't think this is right anymore, Ms. Aisha. If we're caught, we could face serious punishment. What? Are you cowering? Isn't this what you wanted? You told me you loathe him and wanted to get revenge, but if we're a step closer and you change your mind then everything will end up in vain. You're a loser. No, because you said we'll only scare them not up to this point where you would seriously think about drugging his secretary? Ah, oh, if you won't do it then, give me that. What a waste of time. I can handle this myself. Screw off.
Arsene Zero Ramos stared at his reflection in the mirror after he finished his business inside the cubicle and once he was done washing his hands, he fell into deep thinking about the case earlier. After disappearing for so long, this is where he ended up himself with? Letting people see him as an easy target to trample on? He couldn't believe what comes to happen. His natural emerald eyes held a dark gaze upon them while his pointed nose seemed to be flaring as his full lips, the bottom parts slightly chapped, were formed into an annoyed thin line. A kind of overwhelming aura showed on his gloomy face. Fuck this. Hyde Parker Anderson. You! The sudden voice who chimed in and the sound of the comfort room door clamping open made Arson turn his head abruptly, his emerald eyes widening in shock once he met another pair of night illuminance eyes staring at him, both of them baffled at the unexpected reunion, seeing each other after so long. What are you doing here? Even before Hyde could speak, Arson frantically inched closer, reaching for him and he was grabbed tightly on each shoulder. I know this is an absurd kind of thing to say after not seeing each other for so long, but Hyde, do you realize the danger you've put yourself through? Hyde exposed a slightly awkward smile. He seemed to be getting what this person were talking about, vaguely but not something incomprehensible. What did you find out? That you're indulging yourself in something dangerous. Hyde stared at the unexpected person, his face were devoid of any emotions. Arson were thrown off because of the different hue in Hyde's face, he contemplated for a moment yet succumbed to his intuitions in the end, fishing out his mobile phone inside his trousers, searching for a particular video, playing it as he lifted his phone, showing the video to Hyde who didn't refuse to watch. Afterwards, Hyde's expression did change a few times while watching the clip, his face wore a worried expression now. This frick of a girl wanted to drug you. And what? Damn it. Who did you offend to come to this? Is it that man you were dancing with earlier? How did? I saw you, of course. You know I'm always someone on your side. Hyde, however, dancing around in a huge party in a big crowd, with a man, isn't that like announcing to the world you're gay? Like you were outing yourself. Jesus. Where's your common sense? As if a bucket of cold water piled up with the tiny pieces of ice were poured into him, snapping him out of his trance. Firstly, though, Hyde calmed himself by heaving a deep sigh and remained a composed expression. That man earlier. He's my boyfriend. With mouth agape, Arson couldn't be any more taken by surprise tonight. He only came to inspect the place, however, he didn't expect to encounter a bigger chance. You're not kidding me. And that girl. Is his ex-girlfriend who is. Still hung up on him, chasing after my man. And? Let's catch up later. Arson, I bet she's waiting for me to execute her plan. What the? Don't tell me you're... Don't worry. As long as you promise to back me up, nothing bad will happen. So, you mean, you'd bite into her trap? No, ha uh... The empty expression in his face were colored with a dark hue like a gray sky, ready to throw thunders and lightning. He said with a straight but determined face. I'd walk into her trap myself, and we will see who will get caught in this game. Right after what Hyde said, he walked out of the room, equipped with a plan on his mind. He's had enough of this bullshit. If Aisha came to play, why not play along? Two can play a game and Hyde refused to be played so why not become a player as well? As soon as he consumed the drinks she offered which were spiked, Hyde had fallen into a sleep. Such incorrigible desire to take away his man that she had to go through such lengths? Ha! Huh. Aisha Hillary Jills have no idea who she's going against with. Who said she'll have it easy when Hyde is well prepared as well? Of course, Hyde won't let his man be taken away from him. The fallen star. Hyde Parker Anderson grew up with a strong defense. He was taught of principles he needed to abide and rules were simply something he followed like a good boy. He didn't go against any order. He obliged just as the good boy they painted him to be. However, Obeying always doesn't mean he's weak or whatnot. He chose his ways to deal with different situations, and now, he can't be blamed for unleashing his dark side too, fed up with the person targeting him. Hyde could feel Aisha's movements. He could feel, listen and sense whatever she's doing, because the truth was that, the wine she prepared for Hyde supposed to be containing a sleeping pill and spiked with drug as what his childhood friend found out. He interlope on the action. Arson interfered and changed the wine she filled beforehand. He couldn't be more thankful about it making him conscious of what is currently happening, faking the effect of the drug, making Aisha believe she succeeded in her lousy plan. Where the fuck are you? 
Where are the men I told you to hire? Suddenly hearing the conversation between Aisha and whoever she's talking with on the phone, made Hyde shiver and he stiffened, praying to every saint he knew that someone will show up to rescue him. He knows he can take her down with force. He knows a little karate. From watching action movies, he learned saying Haya before attacking. Well, I'm doomed. Of course he knew he's not cut out for an action movie. Like hell, can he even execute a little self-defense? All that he learned was how to flatter and please businessmen, to jumble words and write business letters. This is the only thing he's good at. Now, where's his counterattack? Ah, these useless fools. They can't do anything good, but always mess things up. Keeping his eyes shut, Hyde eventually calmed himself not until he heard Aisha's footsteps inching closer to his side and soon, he felt her touch his suit, and he realized Aisha were going to take it all off. Hyde didn't dare to move and expose himself being aware of everything she's doing. If they don't hurry, this shit will wake up soon. Until she was able to undress him, he felt cold all over his upper body that was bared, his undergarments were still intact somehow covering him. A second later, loud, crashing footsteps pound through the hallway, growing progressively in volume as they near the room. Aisha turned her head to the direction of the door with a smile. She had been expecting the men to arrive. However, whom entered then shook her to the core, already quivering in fear as she retracted her hands that were holding the little secretary's pants and on the motion to strip it down. Oh, hell! The door almost caves in with the force of a body flying through it once it opened. Kikazu entered the room, scanning around and as soon as his eyes landed on his little person who suddenly disappeared when he only said he'd go to the comfort room, but then there he was, lying in a bed, his body exposed and Aisha straddling in between his legs. His nostrils began flaring in an uncontrollable anger as he take in the scene. The moment Aisha met Kikazu's disgruntled glare, her hands that were all over Hyde's body were retracted to her side while her chest rise up and down, pounding loudly as her eyes were widening in shock of being found out. This, this is not what it looks like. Seeing the state that Hyde is in, the stoic boss curses and looks up at Aisha with a grin. He walked closer and as he stepped, the clamping sound of his footsteps were like deafening in her ears as it echoed in the room. When Kikazu eventually stood in the foot of the bed, he pushed away the crazy woman, without controlling his strength letting her fall with a loud thud as she hit the floor. She screeched because of the pain but he couldn't care less. Damn, this is a good show. Somebody muses. Arson Zero came in while pressing the off button of his phone. He almost stumbled upon the body of someone on the floor trying to stand up as he entered. He smirked, getting more entertained. He was laughing and turned his gaze at the two people on the bed. Hyde is still faking his sleep. Arson giggled but when his gaze turned to Kikazu, he became serious while watching the guy trying to figure out what to do. Arson walked towards them and looked at Hyde who doesn't have his upper clothes. Dude, take off your coat. Don't stand there stone still he said with an eye roll. Arson realized that sometimes, some people don't know how to use their common sense. Kikaze gave Arson a side glance because of suddenly being told what to do. He hate that, especially coming from people who he doesn't know. He scorned but like what the guy said, took off his coat and was about to cover Hyde when Aisha regained her strength and pulled his coat still hugging his body, causing him to stumble backwards. Laughing at what happened, Arson shook his head and took off his own coat, tapping Hyde on his forehead. Wake up! Cinnamon, your man's about to flip. Without a second thought, Hyde opened his eyes with a sigh of relief and hugged himself instantly as the cold room is already making him shiver. He grabbed the coat in Arson's hand. You came so late. I thought I'd die because of cold first. If you need any help putting that on, I'm here. Arson inserts unhelpfully with a sexy grin ignoring Hyde's sentiment. I'm sure my boyfriend won't love that. Immediately, Arson smirks in amusement. Enjoying. Kikazu showed up next to Arson, his arms crossed around his chest paired with his stoic but with a slight glint of anger expression as he looked at the two. A wicked glint slips into Arson's eyes. He walked up to Hyde and wrapped an arm in his shoulder. He gazed at Kikazu with a smug smile. I have yet to introduce myself, by the way I'm. That's not necessary. Hyde's fiancé. He finished with an irritating smile in Kikazu's eyes. Don't lie. What? It's true. We were supposed to be engaged in our generation. Shut up, Arson, or I'll poke your eyes with my fingers. Childish as ever cinnamon. Fine, but without such circumstances that is not even rare these days, I know we'd still be engaged. I said. 
Hyde was pulled strongly next to Kikaza's side. He was held possessively on his waist. He lifted his head to look at him and Kikaza met him with a kiss on his forehead. Ugh, couples. Arson chimed with disgust. You're just envious. Sure I am. That was supposed to be my place. In a snap, Arson was covered with the blanket Hyde threw at him. While Kikaza's forehead crease is about to fuse with each other. They were too engrossed that they forgot about the other two person inside the room. Director Santos, who was brought forcefully by Kikazu and Aisha, who's fuming with anger. She felt like losing for the nth time. Shamed, embarrassed, humiliated, and trampled on. Ms. Aisha, please stop. You let yourself be found, and now, look what happened. She screamed, whirring voice like an insane person, hastily going crazy at her helplessness. Upon knowing she had no escape and the evidence which caught her red-handed that they have, Aisha is starting to humble herself. I am sorry. I only did it because I love you. You're wrong, Aisha. Don't you realize it yet? You did all those evil things because you loved yourself too much. No! No! Don't rope me into your mess. You know what is the truth. And what the real reason is. So don't put the blame on me. Aisha Hillary Gills is now a pitiful mess but haven't even thought about surrendering yet. The door suddenly opened and Kikazu's friends entered from there. Sage who is the closest to Aisha came to her and gave her some comfort but he was unkindly pushed back. Get away from me, you traitor! You're the one who sold me out, didn't you? She yelled at Sage who didn't dare to speak. The room was suddenly filled with tension, and silence overcame everyone present inside. After a moment of silence where he was contemplating, Arson shakes his head as if clearing away his thoughts and rolls back his eyes at Hyde. If you don't want to admit your wrongdoings, mind if the people who look up at you, speak for you? He interferes, walking up to the center of their line of sight while scrolling through his phone. Everyone turned to look at him simultaneously, and at their obvious confusion, Arson chuckles lowly. My, let's finish this nonsense because I really want to catch up with someone's life right now. There's so much that I've already missed. He grins widely, flashing his charming smile as he lifted his phone and his finger pointing outside the door. You can check out the monitor in the Grand Hall. Aren't they about to play a footage about your life's journey to success? Tonight may be the night of your failure, though. No! And oh, you wouldn't dare! Ha! Huh. Arson laughed mockingly. You won't get to tell me what to do. I play when I want and right now. You're the game itself, so why not go check out how brave I am to dare and mess around with you? At that sentence, Aisha immediately realized something was wrong. Worry started creeping in her body, shivering at the thought of crumbling down. She was trembling tremendously as she stood up and ran outside heading straight to the Grand Hall and to eventually prove herself wrong, but... As soon as she arrived, she caught the attention of everyone, shivers running down her whole body as she gets wrapped into series of breakdown. Wow, she's crazy. That's such an awful attitude. No, she's a trash. Setting up someone? What evil. I can't believe what truly lies beneath that angelic guise. My god, how could she do that? To think that I look up to her? I wasted a good amount of time and effort idolizing Aisha. To think she's this broken in the head. No sane person. No love would reach this point of doing something bad just to get what they want. I knew it. She's a narcissist. Just like that, her beautiful name and good image were tarnished with her true color. The footage clip were playing on the huge screen, showing her conversation with Director Santos and when she was provoking Hyde and even when she was undressing him. This! This can't be happening! No! 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 That's not true! Don't believe that! They were the ones! They are trying to destroy me! They are setting me up! No matter how high you've reached, and even though people look up at you like you're the star to them, if you do evil, you will eventually come crushing down to where you once were stepping on. And Aisha is bound to be a fallen star for being selfish and rotten inside. Looking forward. Man, who would replace you as our president in the singles club now then? Jay will. And he won't ever resign because he'll end up unmarried until he dies, right? Stop poking fun at me. Jerks. I'll definitely be married before Kikaza does. Whoa! Careful what you say! Jay! You might get that as a real deal! Shut up! Easily pissed as ever. 
Hyde nibbled on his cup while watching the group of friends throwing jokes at each other and being playful. How did they manage to be peaceful and composed after what happened? Hyde is still thinking about his unprecedented experiences. Never in his life did he think that something reckless like that would happen to him. And all because he loved someone. But, maybe they're not affected because they weren't the ones involved and right now, he's wondering where is Kikazu's consideration. All that he wants now is to head home and lie on the soft bed to relax himself. However, right after dealing with the incident regarding Aisha, they headed off to a pub and had been there for about half an hour. Arson disappeared once everything was settled and cleared out. Sage accompanied Aisha home. Kikazu is not telling him though what will happen now to the person who offended him. He's both worried if she'll come back and do something more grave than she's done and wondering where she will end up after a serious offense. Kikazu sensed that something is off with his little person. He gazed at him. His face were pale while nibbling on the cup of his drinks. He brought a hand to ruffle his hair. Still bothered? Finally, his boyfriend's attention is on him. He leaned his head on Kay's hands. My mind's wandering back to what happened earlier. Hmm. You want to rest? Yes. He answered without any hesitation. Okay. Kikazu then arose from his seat while holding Hyde in his waist, supporting his little person to stand properly. We'll get going. Everyone's attention were on them in a snap. The loud noises from their chattering voices turned down as they keep their eyes on Kikazu and his little person. That's right. Take Hyde home to rest instead of messing around with these jerks. You should have gone straight home earlier, Kay. Jay said matter-of-factly. He couldn't comprehend how inconsiderate his friends are, especially the very own boyfriend who should be taking good care of his lover. Kikazu glanced at Jay before walking away with Hyde on his arms not paying attention to his other friends who were teasing him more. Bunch of jerks. On their way home, Hyde fidgeted on his trousers while seated on the passenger seat. There's a thought running on his mind which is bugging him. K. About what happened? Kikazu slowed down his driving hearing Hyde opening the topic about earlier today. Yeah, what about it? Weren't we like? Found out? A conversation between me and Aisha talking about us were exposed in front of all those people at the party. Also, what's going to happen to Aisha? I'm curious. Thinking hard about the answer, Kikazu clicked his tongue before saying, You know the world of wealthy and powerful, bearing immense authority, right? Hyde's forehead creased with the unconnected answer, but he nodded. Then do you know about Noblesse Malade? Raising his brow, Hyde said a simple no and wondered what the latter is talking about. Noblesse malade is the opposite concept of noblesse oblige. Privileged are able to commit every kind of corruption without consequences. I know it's unkindly, but if I bear the power to perform this, why not use it at times that I need it? Noblesse malade? Working for a corporation, he did hear about noblesse obligation from studying things related to the elite and from socializing with one, but he didn't encounter the opposite of the word and heard about it only now. Can you explain it further? And what it has got to do? It simply means that even if we kissed in front of many people at the party, you won't read it in the papers tomorrow. Whom? Even if someone witnessed it and wrote about it online, no one will be able to search for it. It will end up being a rumor. He explained. So don't worry about being on the front page of a newspaper because that won't happen. I will never do something to hurt you moreover expose us. And regarding Aisha, don't worry about her. Hyde sighed a relief but still feels heavy in his heart not knowing where Aisha ended up with. I'm just curious. Don't take pity on her, Hyde. Whatever punishment she will get, she deserve it anyway. She became fame-centered. Her greed for attention and superiority has eaten the goodness in her. She needs to reflect. I'll prepare the bath for you. You can take a nap for a short while. Ah, uh, no. I think I'd prefer to take a shower. The running water should make me feel better. Really? Then I'll prepare your clothes. Hmm. <laughs> Once Hyde entered the bathroom and Kikazu were left alone, he kicked the foot of the bed because of his irritation. You're a fool, Kikazu. He cursed himself. Of course his little person is still troubled after all that happened. The worry won't just vanish in a snap and he brought him along with his friends instead of heading home to let him rest and forget about what happened. Damn. I'm a failure. Kikaza gripped his hair tightly, tousling it as he muttered another curse. All he wanted was to ease Hyde's burden and comfort him, but he doesn't know how to do it. 
At this point in his 25 years of existence, he can't believe just how stupid he is when it comes to living a life. Afterwards, once he's calmed, he turned to prepare Hyde's clothes and went to another bathroom to take a shower as well. Are you asleep already? Kikaza glanced at the curled up body of Hyde above the bed. His whole body is covered with the quilt and he's worried if Hyde will suffocate hiding inside. He didn't get any replies so he just quietly climbed on the bed, hugging Hyde outside of the quilt. I'm sorry, babe. I know you're tired. Sleep well. He whispered before planting a soft kiss outside the quilt and wherever part of Hyde's body it was. I love you. As soon as Hyde sensed Kikazu's breath even out, he got out from the quilt and watched the stoic boss's peaceful sleeping face, looking like an angel. He smiled before lifting the quilt to cover the both of them and hug Kikaza back. These past few days had been a series of unfortunate events and stress. However, tonight, he can finally sleep peacefully. He lifted his gaze to look at Kikaza's face and nuzzled his face on his neck. And his rest is beside him. He can only feel at ease by his side. His boyfriend's warmth and comforting embrace is his own solace. Soon after, he also fell into a deep, serene sleep. The next day. It was already late afternoon but Hyde were still in a deep slumber. On the other hand, Kikazu woke up earlier to cook food for them. He also took a leave of absence and prepared a date plan to relieve Hyde's stress and help him recover. He may not be the best at simply comforting someone but at least, he decided to take him out to divert his attention. He was setting the table when he finally saw Hyde walked up in the dining hall. Their eyes meet and Hyde headed towards him walking like a penguin and then lurching himself in his arms for a bear hug and burying his face on his chest. Kikazu smiled while hugging him back, tightly. Good morning, babe. He greeted and kissed him on his forehead. Hmm. Morning. The latter replied while rubbing his face on his boyfriend's chest. His voice were muffled. Had enough rest? Hyde looked up and showed a radiant smile. More than enough. Seeing that beam, Kikaza's worry somehow eased and he was captivated by such beauty, his intense gaze falling on his face. Hyde saw the kind of look Kikazu was giving him. A slow knowing smile formed in his lips. He was grabbed by the waist, making him gasp for air. Still penetrating him with his intense gaze, Kikazu bent forward and took his mouth with his own, kissing him roughly. He in return, stood on his tiptoe to overcome the disparity in their heights and clutched his arms on his Kikazu's neck pulling him closer until their bodies were touching each other. Kikaza pulled away then chuckled, his sound were vibrating and reverberating in Hyde's ears. So much for breakfast. After then, they started to eat. How's the food? Tasty? As Hyde were about to answer, he swallowed down the food in his mouth without chewing on it, as a blush painted his face. It's shameful but his gaze fell on Kikaza's parted lips and there was nothing in his mind but the taste of his lips and the feeling of being kissed. Even before he could stop himself, he already said, Salivating! I... I can't have enough of it! A satisfied smile revealed on Kikaza's face. I'm glad you like it. Anyway, I filed a leave of absence for the both of us, for three days. What? Why? I want to take you out on a date, he replied simply. Hyde smiled happily at the suggestion. Where? He asked, his voice laced with excitement. You'll see later. Finish your food and get prepared. Hyde was thrilled upon going on a date with his boyfriend. Now that he think about it, it would be the first time they're gonna go out. He couldn't help looking forward to it. Arson Zero Ramos A hot spring? Hyde stared wide at the scenic view in front of him. He exhaled the scent of nature and felt the comfort and serene atmosphere wrapped around him, hugging his body. This place is nice and beyond wonder. A gorgeous face looms over him, and Kikazu appeared, smiling down at him. I wanted to take you somewhere quiet and peaceful, away from the stressful noise of the city. Taking me here is the greatest decision. I love nature. He beamed, clinging into Kikazu's arms after he handed over their things to the bellboy who would lead them to their room. Hyde is enthralled that they would stay in a relaxing place. The place called Casa Estacio from the entryway already displayed an amazing scenery. It's located near the mountains and green trees surrounded it, the front of the spring were filled with plants and different colorful flowers in full bloom although summer already passed and they were nearing a different year. It was a Japanese-inspired hot spring. Surrounded by a birch forest in the woods, 
Casa Estacio is a modern hot spring resort that consists of only 15 villas. It's easy to access, but the intimate property feels remote thanks to its natural surroundings, rooms look out onto rolling meadows, and the bar is a front row seat to MT Majin. The building wraps around and encircles a private garden, home to the only public pool on the grounds, where guests can enjoy an alfresco foot bath. If you feel like you need to disconnect and recalibrate, this surely is the perfect place, Hyde whispered. Once they had enough admiring the place, the bellboy guided them to their accommodation, Hyde still clinging on Kikaz's arms. They arrived at a four two-bedroom villa with minimal interiors awash in neutral hues and wood. They excitedly entered the room, roaming their eyes around to check every corner. All of the accommodations come with a furnished deck and deep bathtubs with hot spring water on tap, while the villas have the added luxury of a separate hot spring area. Looking out the window next to the balcony, Hyde noticed that there is a public pool on the center hall of the place. The outdoor public area of the serene oasis is made up of two large hot spring, fed pools and a furnished sunken pit with a fireplace, his eyes lit up as his lips curved in an amused grin. Okay, let's go down there. He pointed down at the place, beaming like a little kid. Kikazu smiled at the genuine elation, his little person's smile were infectious. We will but let's settle down first then have dinner. I bet you're starving. Ah, you're right. We departed after lunch and we only had brunch. Shall I take a shower first or would you rather? I'll go first. Hyde run around in a flash and Kikazu couldn't help but shake his head. It was the first time he saw him acting younger than his age, letting himself break free and Kikaza felt a satisfied grin revealed on his face, it was a success lifting his spirit and momentarily forget their life behind the city. It smells nice, kind of refreshing and warm. It does. That's the scent of nature, natural and calming. They walked holding hands heading to the public pool but as they were getting closer, Hyde noticed there weren't anybody occupying the pool, they most likely were the people there. There aren't much people who visit here. Ah, about that. This place is owned by a family friend. It's their private property and only exclusive guests have access here. Hyde gulped listening to the answer. That was why. It was a luxurious place seeing how fancy the prefecture is, and upon knowing it only accepts certain guests, he was reminded again that his lover is no other than his boss, a CEO of a corporation and the son of a multi-billionaire, He's wealthy, and elite, and of course, so as the people who he interact with. How much did you pay for a one-day stay here? Hmm. Does it matter? Well, I want to know. Kikazu sensed the uneasiness from his little person's voice, his gaze were fallen on the ground while they were walking holding hands. The aura surrounding him suddenly turned gloomy, and he doesn't like it, he prefers seeing his lovely smile and enthusiastic mood. Because seeing the low-spirited hide also affect him. He stopped on their track, just a few steps away from the stairs of the pool and faced him, cupping his chin and forcefully made Hyde to look at him. I don't want you to drown into whatever is bothering you, babe. He caught the latter's wavering eyes. His gaze were dark as the moonlight shone on them. Stop thinking about trivial matters. Just focus on me. Focus on us and to the moment we're going to create as memories we'd one day look back to. In a matter of seconds, Hyde was already caught for a sweet kiss, a careful touch at first until Kikazu started nibbling, getting rougher opting for more. His kiss was so addictive that five more seconds, he felt like he's going to melt in his arms. Hyde voluntarily wrapped his arms around his neck, deepening their kiss and he was so sure they're gonna have bruised and swollen lips after. Kikazu finally pulled away after suckling Hyde's tongue. They were breathing heavily but Kikazu managed to kiss him on the tip of his nose and hugged him tightly. Wow! Live porn! A voice took them by surprise and they turned their heads to see a familiar face. Why are you here? Hyde asked, shocked as to his presence at the same time embarrassed how they were caught kissing in the open. Arson Zero Ramos together with Hus secretary who were trying his voice to avoid looking at the lovers approached them. How about a welcome key? Even before finishing his sentence, Arson's mouth were covered by the flushed secretary of his. Sir Arson and I is on a business trip and as it was getting late for a drive home. We decided to spend the night here and go home early the next morning, he kindly explained, finally letting go of his boss's mouth. Your palm salty, secretary you. That's an unnecessary comment, sir, but shall we head to your room? Secretary you shut his eyes closed to calm his nerves, already fed up with his boss's attitude. 
Hide. We keep seeing each other unexpectedly. Maybe fate really is. Hey, you're all rude. I'm still speaking here. Kikaza glared at Arson and yanked Hyde's arms possessively, dragging him back to their accommodation. If possible, he'd rather hide his little person because he didn't want him getting feasted on by Arson's gaze. He didn't expect to see someone who instantly ruined their romantic atmosphere. They were only starting to build the mood, but it ended before they even dipped themselves at the pool. However, even how hard they tried to leave Arson and escape his radar, they were unwillingly dragged to his own room, offering to have some fun over drinks. Kikazu was uptight but had no other choice but play along once he was threatened by the mischievous Arson. Hyde just came back after getting his own midnight snack, he didn't want to pass out drunk with just one bottle of liquor and leave the two guys in a catfight. What's up with this too? But when he got back, he found Kikazu and Arson sitting across from each other in the coffee table while Secretary Yu was at the couch, watching them. They were both hit by the love bug, Sir Hyde. Secretary Yu answered and gave him a quizzical look. A love bug? Secretary Yu lowered his head and snickered because Secretary Hyde is too innocent. Secretary Yu! Arson called his secretary who glanced at Hyde first before walking close to Arson. Yes, sir? Bring me a pen and a paper. Sir, I'm sorry to say, but we didn't bring any. What? Why? How about the iPad, sir? Okay, bring it here, he said with a smug smile taunting Kikazu. While Hyde and Secretary you watched the two with a crease on their foreheads wondering what are they up to but once they understood what was happening. These childish men. Hyde jeered while Secretary Yu chuckled next to him. The stoic boss and the strict president were listing all things that they possess. Cars, mansions, they even included their assets and he couldn't believe how immature they are, playing like little kids counting who has more toys than the other. Hyde faced Pond while looking at them, squinting his eyes at their idiocy but he and Secretary Yu remained watching them making a fool of themselves, sharing the spicy chicken wings and a serving of crunchy shrimp tempura Hyde ordered paired with some non-alcoholic drinks, a blue shoe mocktail for Hyde and a hard ocean water for Secretary Yu. See? Kikazu suddenly said, his voice were two tones higher while showing his iPad, rather his list of things he owns which proves his riches, almost shoving the iPad in front of Arson's face. I'm wealthier than you are. Give up now! Flashing his gaze to the list, Arson rolled his eyes inwardly because he was defeated but he soon regained his mischievous grin when an idea clicked on his head. Nah, you can have that but at least, he sang the words as his eyes traveled to look at Hyde. I remember that Hyde and I were each other's first kiss, and it was that Christmas Eve under the mistletoe when we shared that romantic kiss, he delightfully said, winking at Hyde before turning his gaze back at Kikazu. The stoic boss wore an unreadable expression on his face, trying not to explode and he looked at Hyde, suddenly beckoning him with his fingers to come to him. Hyde bit his lips but obliged wondering what was the reason for calling him, and it's not long after when he reached the space beside Kikazu that the stoic boss pulled him suddenly causing him to fall into Kikazu's thighs and he was caught off guard when his parted lips were sealed with a rough kiss, dominating him, biting, sucking and licking on his lower lips as if punishing him. Kikazu was holding Hyde tightly by his waist and the back of his neck so he didn't have the chance to escape. After a final bite on Hyde's lips, Kikazu pulled away. Damn! That's no fair! Arson whined like a child while crossing his arms to his chest. You can have that smooch, but his hottest next and last kiss is honorably mine. After saying those words, Kikazu got up and walked out of the room. Hyde felt like drowning in embarrassment and he just wanted to hide. However, he gave Arson a death glare before running after the sulking big guy. He soon found him inside their room, on his motion to get into the shower room. Kay, that kiss he was talking about was in the cheeks, and we were five years old at that time. You can't even consider that a first kiss. Kikaza didn't speak, but gazed at him with those dark eyes. I still don't like it. Sigh. Please, you're my real first kiss and my first of everything. He whispered, shying away from his sudden honesty and confession. The sulking lover turned to give a doubtful glare at his little person trying to soothe him. In the end, Kikazu clicked his tongue and said, Fine. I won't be jealous anymore. Hyde's face lit up. Really? But on one condition. Only to drop again because of the strange mention of such condition. Kikazu suddenly pointed to the shower room. Get. Inside. Then strip. He inched closer while uttering each word, emphasizing them 
and with his every motion, Hyde's heart kept pounding erratically inside his chest. Then when he stood proudly in front of Hyde, he spoke closer to his ears. I'm craving for more than a kiss right now, and I want you to serve yourself. Inside the shower? The dim room lit up with the shine coming from the moon seeping through, but contrary to the bright reflection, it suddenly looked darker in Hyde's eyes, or maybe it was just Kikaza's eyes that had certain emotions playing between jealousy and lust that made him gulp. Torn between feeling nervous and anticipation. Oh, maybe it's the latter. Playtime's over. Arson Zero Ramos this famous name. Kikazu had heard about him before. It was not solely because he is a son of a senator, but it's also due to the numerous good deeds he achieved. Well, their family is well known. Arson came from a prominent family of elites, his great-grandfather established their notable reputation both in business and politics. Who came after him succeeded the authority. The Ramos Group is a conventional multinational conglomerate corporation that has 65 affiliates. It is among one of the five largest family-run conglomerates in the nation. And in that huge corporation, he is a family member leading one of the major affiliates. Kikaza never knew him personally but his name is as famous as he was known to be an established man. He never truly cared knowing the enemies in a close manner, what they do, what they want as long as it was not related in business, then they become inconsequential. That was why he didn't predict that one day what he regarded as something so trivial would be given a heavy weight of interest. He was sitting inside the coffee shop with his little person sitting beside him, they were having coffee with waffles that Hyde is enjoying munching on. A small smile appeared on his lips as he brought his pointing finger to wipe the cream left on Hyde's lips and lick the fingers he used after. Hyde was caught off guard. I have fingers, Kay. He said with a spiteful tone but his flushed face made him just adorable. I have mine too, so you can make use of me. That's... The listener blushed. His lover is a little too sweet as they get to know each other better. And he swear it's too much sugar, too much that he might get diabetes. Plus tens of my fingers, now you have heaps. A sudden whisper in Hyde's ears made him jolt. He tilted his head and saw Arson's silly face, beaming at him. Good morning, Cinnamon. Hyde rolled his eyes. My morning started out beautifully, then I just had to see your face, and now it's completely ruined. Arson gasped. Wow, that's rude. And chuckled, shamelessly pulling the chair beside Hyde and sitting there. The atmosphere between the both of you is reeking of sweetness, and here I thought you would have broken up because of me. He sighed. Mission failed. Shaking his head showing how disappointed he is that what he intended didn't happen. Hyde was about to refute, but Kikazu spoke before him. Don't be entitled. I was just guessing, the day pooper said with a shrug. Hyde shook his head and turned to Arson. It's already morning, but why are you still here? Hey, don't make me feel bad. You sound like you're chasing me away. Exactly. How mean, he said with a pout, crossing his arms on his chest. Can you stop being overly dramatic? You said you'll be leaving in the morning. I was only wondering. Secretary Yu is still sound asleep. I didn't want to bother him because he looked really tired. So maybe after lunch when he's had enough rest, that's when we'll go home. Hyde looked intently at Arson. That's considerate of you. Now you sound as if I am a bad person, neglecting the welfare of my employees. I just didn't expect that. You know. Hyde, let's go. Kikazu all of a sudden stood up abruptly. He held Hyde on his arms while assisting him to stand, not minding Arson sitting across them giving them a weird look. Hey, Kikazu! Arson grabbed Hyde on his other arm, preventing him from standing, earning a death glare from the lover who doesn't like his little person getting touched by someone else. Back off, he said through gritted teeth. His brows rose and then drew together in a frown that gave Arson a sudden understanding of the lines on his face. Man, chill. Arson threw his hands on the air, chuckling because he find Kikazu's reaction amusing. No need to be wary of me or be hostile towards me, he consciously said, quite fearing once the sensitive guy will snap and does something totally he wouldn't expect. Like maybe, strangle his neck? Because surely, if looks could kill. Secretary you will finally live a happy, leisure and stress-free life without getting an intolerable headache because of his boss's attitude. Fine, haha. -ha. I give up the teasing. With a sincere soft smile, Arson let Hyde's hand free, stepping back a little. Rather, I'd like to have a minute or so of a serious conversation with Hyde alone. He looked at Hyde. Flustered at the mention of his name, Hyde narrowed his eyes in a scowl but when Arson didn't laugh, he gulped sensing he was telling the truth. Ah, well... He laughed lightly, 
clutching on the cuff of Kikaza's t-shirt, his cheeky actions proving his intention once he followed. Can I talk to him for a minute? I swear it won't take long. Kikaza looked at Hyde and bit his lower lip, contemplating. Hyde is aware that Kikaza dislike it when he is interacting with Arson, but at the moment, he's left with no other choice. Silence covered the atmosphere, but it wasn't long when Kikaza clicked his tongue, blowing air out of his nose in a huff as he muttered almost in inaudible words. Go. Be back after. At his lover's permission, Hyde without hesitation kissed Kikazu on his cheeks. I will. He whispered before dragging Arson at the back room of the coffee shop. They trod down the long hallway where it seemed quiet and not many people will be disturbed. Uncle and Andy wants to see you. Isn't it about time to go back home? Arson drawls straight away. Is it? Time flew by so fast that he didn't notice it's already three years that gone by without going home. Is three years enough for him? But the question that needs a truthful answer is, did he already find himself? He bowed down his head, not knowing how to answer Arson's question. The latter sighed. Your parents are your family. Three years of sulking should be enough. I'm not in the right to question your own process of healing. Hide, but you finally had the taste of freedom which all along something you've desired. Even how mad you are, both and especially uncle who ask for you every day, worry about you. He voiced out, sounding clear and emphatic. Hyde's emotions are spiraling down, pouring on him. I'll think about it. Arson shook his head, ignoring Hyde's murmur. He continued speaking like a nagging mother. Letting the problem drag on is much worse, but losing your connection with your family over such matter is absurd, he said, flicking some brown hair out of his eyes. Also when you left, our engagement were instantly called off. Your father broke it off for your sake. Hyde and Arson, more than being childhood friends, their relationship is an extension of what their parents had. Both of their fathers were friends in high school, they had formed a strong bond even until each had their own family. To further strengthen their friendship, they vowed that their future children should end up in marriage and become a true, whole family then. If so, why didn't they? Not once tried to find me? Hyde thought at the back of his mind, not wanting to let Arson hear about his thoughts, because he could see that Arson only has good intentions, wanting to make him and his father resolve their misunderstanding and reconcile. Besides, you have already found the happiness they won't be able to cut you off with. Hyde. They will not easily get in your way especially when they get to know who was brave enough to tame your pragmatic heart. Arson said, the corners of his mouth slightly raised. The wary person also revealed a relieved smile. Thank you for doing all these, Arson. I know you're sometimes a conceited jerk, but I'm glad you would still stand up for me. Hey! Can't you compliment me without inserting any insult in between? Hyde laughed, looking at Arson with admiration in his eyes. I will go home when I'm finally ready. Just hope it won't take long. It won't. I promise. Delighted with his answer, Arson ruffled Hyde's hair like he always does before they get separated, acting like a big brother. Have you been sleeping badly lately? You look exhausted. Arson asked, sizing up Hyde's appearance. Well, there are some pressing matters at work. Hyde trailed off. And you know. He continued, pertaining to what happened the other night. Money belongs to the company while your health belongs to you. You should find a balance between them. Also with your private life. I don't mean to pry, but if it gets hard. Don't worry. Kay is taking care of me and our relationship is fine. Okay. As long as I see you're not having a hard time. People have limited energy so don't push yourself too hard. Hyde nodded. Now let's go back. Your impatient lover may flip at me. Thinking about Kikaze's fuming face made him smile. They walked back to the coffee shop. The air between them were comfortable and lighter. Hyde's heavy heart eased upon talking with Arson. All that's weighing on his mind relating to family matters, the answers to each are getting clearer. At the sight of Hyde and Arson returning inside the cafe while having an amicable conversation, stirred Kikazu's emotions, he glared at their direction. Oh, your boyfriend is not so happy to see me with you. You started it though. You've been provoking him so why not be the first to get close to him? Well, Arson said with a shrug, wrapping an arm around Hyde's shoulder fastening their pace as they approached Kikazu. Hey, man! He lifted his hand for a high five, but was ignored. Instead, Kikazu walked up to remove Arson's hands on Hyde and pulled his little person to his side. Arson chuckled. I mean, Hyde and I settled on becoming friends. He teased, winking at Hyde. At least, we can also be friends, right? Kikazu didn't pay him any mind, totally ignoring him, but Hyde jabbed him on his side, forcing himself to say, Right! and eventually turning back to Hyde. 
his eyes basically pleading that they set out already. Ha ha ha! The two of you sure are an interesting combination, but I gotta get going. Enjoy your date! He waved goodbye and before he could go away, he heard what Kikaza muttered. Wish I could send you to the moon and never back. Arson laughed his heart out, earning a piercing glare from Hyde. Around afternoon, Hyde and Kikazu strolled around downtown, checking out the stalls. There was an event currently being held. And when the sun is finally not too high up, they decided to go to the open beach where it was not crowded, it seems that people are preoccupied with the festival. Staring at the scenery before him, Hyde smiled while laying out the mat and setting up their picnic place. They stayed next to a huge rock along the shore. The sea breeze made Hyde feel restful. The waves were crashing against the shore. From the pillared facade, the golden vista was very much visible. Everything was giving him alleviation. On the other hand, Kikazu is about to join Hyde who waved at him to sit down. As he was sitting down, his phone vibrated and upon checking the message it was from his brother, Nero. Brother! Dad's home! He's looking for you! Kikazu's forehead formed a crease and just as he was snaking his arms on Hyde's waist to embrace him, his phone started ringing, this time showing Lance Alza's name on the screen. Someone's calling. Why not answer it? Hyde looked up at him. Kikazu stared at the name displayed on his phone screen for long before excusing himself, walking to the rock formation not far from where they are and at the second attempt of the call, he finally answered it. Every day. Every moment. Kikazu Li Owls ended the phone call. His face was showing discomfort but he managed to cover it up with his cold expression, before going back to embrace Hyde from behind. He slowly sneaked up, wrapping his arms around his little person's tiny waist. You done? Hyde asked, already getting used to his lover's surprising acts, his eyes blinking close when his lover showered him tiny kisses on his forehead, down to his cheeks and eventually capturing his lips. Kikazu's lips brushed to his, delicately, like butterfly wings lasting just long enough that he could inhale Hyde's breath, his cool taste lingering when they pulled away. Gasping. What's that? You surprised me. Hyde asked. Kikazu watched the little person's face as his cheeks slowly turned a tinge of pink, bowing his head but he reached to cup his chin and made him look at him in the eyes, coming in close to give him a peck. There are people around, Hyde said with tiny voice. Chuckling, he replied. They don't know us and they won't pay us any mind. Don't mind them. Dismissing his worry. Hyde looked around and noticed that each have their own things going on and like what Kikazu said, nobody is giving them attention. Some are even packing up to leave because the sky turned pitch black too early, like it would rain a moment from now. Because of realizing it might pour suddenly, Hyde gasped and grabbed Kikazu to sit on the picnic mat with him. Let's eat first and enjoy the scenery after. Hyde picked the container full of fruits and scooped a strawberry bringing it to Kikazu's mouth who gladly accepted it. Although the food were bought at the store, because of having no time to prepare it by himself, everything was delicious and they ate heartily. Afterwards, they lied still, watching the scenery with a glint of glee, the sea buzzing with its dormant strength and the waves crashing through the shore. Their feet dripped near the shore as the tail of waves reach and wash away the sands on their feet. The waves were carelessly dribbling onto the sand, and its natural rhythm were like music in the ears, calming and somewhat sounding like a lullaby. Enjoying the breathtaking sea, still crystal clear although the reflection of the sky has turned gray. Hyde is positioned in between Kikazu's legs, leaning on his chest while his lover's hands were playing with his fingertips, pinching them lightly. You know what? He started to speak, breaking the comfortable silence between them. Looking around, the other tourists seemed to have gone home. Aside from the group of friends not far from them, it felt as if they were the only ones in that paradise. He heard Kikazu hummed his deep sound reverberating in his ears as his chin were resting on Hyde's shoulder. Arson and I are truly engaged before I run away from home. He started, speaking with consciousness. Yeah, Kikazu responded curtly. Hearing the short reply, Hyde decided to continue opening up. His father and my father were best buddies in high school. Our great-grandfather also had a history of friendship. My great-grandfather served loyalty to his great-grandfather who was there all throughout his hardship while building their business before. From the start until it started to flourish, my great-grandfather became a great and humble support to his family's successful company. However, due to countless enemies wary of their way to success, they wanted to take him down and attempted to kill him. My great-grandfather saved his life and to award and return the favor. 
He wanted to give the company to him, however. That is not possible. The remedy they thought about was to arrange their children for each other, but long before that happens, my great-grandfather died, cutting off the tie between them. It was through our parents that the promise resurfaced. They wanted to fulfill it. Unexpectedly, my father became the personal assistant of Arson's grandfather and that both our father are friends. Then it was inevitable to set us up although we were both men. My father opposed the idea, but the lingering promise made him surrender. Inhaling the scent of the sea while his heart was wrapped in peacefulness, he smiled. That was the long history of it. I felt restrained. All along I'd been a filial son to them. I never defied them. Their rules were clear and I followed it all. I was a good student. A leader. I only go between school and home and Arson was my only friend. I have wondered it all before. Why even my first relationship has ended too fast and all along it was because they planned to tie me up with Arson. It drove me to the edge and so, after graduating college, I came to another city to break away from them. You're brave, babe. Kikazu whispered, embracing Hyde tightly. Today, Arson came to talk to me. He told me that my parents are worried about me. My father longs for me. And I have also realized, turning his head to look at Kikazu, I want to face them now, he said, his eyes looking for some comfort. Do you think they really want to see me even though I've been bad to them in all this time? Had the guts to be far away from home and not stay in touch with them? Hyde is afraid if his parents really doesn't hold any grudge over his immature and reckless act. He admit he's also in the wrong, and he regretted deeply, young as he was. Freedom and liberty is what he was chasing after. He wanted to live a life where he controls his own moves, where he could water his own plants, to grow with his own capability and most especially, be able to live however way he want. Set yourself free, Hyde. Stop running away. Stop fearing what's ahead. Today is today and tomorrow will be another day. The sun sets to rest and let the moonlight up in the dark. You see, they live in the moment, Kikazu said, coughing after his sentence. I don't really know what to say at times like this. Sorry I suck at finding the right words to comfort you. Hyde chuckled, stroking Kikazu's arms that were hugging him. No, you're right. What happened in the past should be resolved now and discarded after. I don't want to dwell on it any longer. He turned his head to look up at his lover's face. Also, I'm very glad you express yourself openly these days and tries to speak more. Kikazu smiled, his bright eyes looking down in Hyde's lovely face drawing him in. He glanced around and when he saw they were the only ones left in the place, he leaned down to own his lips. Beneath the setting sun, Hyde and Kikazu exchanged passionate kisses. Kikazu grabbed Hyde's waist, turning him around with one hand, his other hand fixed in the back of Hyde's head, deepening their kiss with force and sucking on his tongue greedily. They were immersed in each other's warmth when the cloud finally let go of the pore it was holding. Raindrops falling that gradually pours cold on them but the fire building up couldn't be put off by the rain as their warm bodies shared their own temperature. Although lost in the moment and drunk in Kikazu's aggressive but tender kiss, in the back of his hazy mind, Hyde held the thoughts of gratitude and letting go. I finally found the strength to leave my own emotional chains behind me. It's a painful process but I know that I've been truthful to myself and had the courage to speak the words from my heart. It's time now to leave the sea of misery and head towards the mountain where happiness is awaiting me. Kikaza pulled away when they needed to fill their lungs with air, but their eyes never left each other. And to my lover I never knew I would find, like fate intervening in my plans yet no. I didn't defy its magnetic pull, but to this serendipitous encounter. Thank you for leading me to an unexpected road heading towards the right direction. Kikazu, I love you. He whispered along the sound of crashing waves and falling rain, and the loud pounding of his heart inside his chest. They were like accompanying instrument to the words of love he uttered genuinely. This three words and eight letters will never be enough to put into words how deep I've fallen for you. Kikazu caressed his face, the smell of the sea, the rain falling on them. Everything is blurring away but Kikazu's focus on his little person is not fading rather it was crystal clear. I love you too, Hyde. Every day, every moment. He reciprocated. Kikaza didn't take his eyes off of Hyde, the dark and intense gaze not wavering at all. Ah, uh, I don't want to leave this comfortable space. Kikaza whined, pertaining to Hyde's side, burying his face in Hyde's neck, hugging him tighter. Hyde's hearty laugh echoed in the entire living room. They have just returned from their three days trip and today is the weekend but Kikazu was called home for an important matter he didn't specify but he doesn't want to be a minute away from his little person. 
lying above the cozy couch while hugging is making it harder for him to detach himself. Leave now so you can come back earlier. You said it's important so you better hurry and head over there already. Hyde nagged in his usual secretary tone. Kikaza rubbed his face in Hyde's neck like how a puppy does and then his teeth found his soft spot, immediately biting, leaving a mark before he got up and run away. Kikazu! You! The mischievous boyfriend left with a playful smirk on his face. The Request Kikazu Isles arrived at their family house because of an order from his father who just got home three days ago. He was strictly instructed to visit as soon as possible and he was irritated getting ordered like that. He's the boss of himself. You are here? Nero's face peeked from inside the house while opening the door for him. Obviously. He responded nonchalantly. His brother rolled his eyes at him, not liking his attitude. Dad has been waiting for you. He said if you make him wait any longer, your company may face grave downfall. Now it's his turn to roll his eyes. As if I'll let him. But gulp thinking about if it really happens. Deep inside, he felt threatened. Come on. It's the freaking Lance Isles they were talking about. Compared to the power Lance bears and the experience he accumulated all throughout his years in doing business, Kikazu is nothing but a piece of a billion bills literally regarded just like a coin. The gap between them is wide. He entered the house wearing his stoic expression, the air of arrogance emanating as he walked inside and as soon he reached the living room, he came face to face with his archenemy. Lance Isles glanced at him and they nodded their way of greetings. He was sitting comfortably on the couch while nibbling on some sunflower seeds, wearing casual clothes. If outsiders saw his father in this image he's witnessing, they will think he's less scary and intimidating. Bearing may decrease the impression of it however, if it's the character of the person, even his gaze will make somebody tremble, and Kikazu is no exception. Hey, Lance! Yow, Kikazu! Lance walked up to his son who still refused to call him dad. A taunting smirk stretched on his face. Out of a sudden, a flying slipper hit Kikazu on his gorgeous face. Ouch! What was that about, Mom? His mother appeared from the back door, seemingly coming from gardening her garden. A vase of new-bloomed lavender plant is in her hands. Kaisa Melanie is wearing a simple black sleeveless, on her summer shorts and indoor slippers. Her hair is in a French braid still giving her a clean and elegant look despite working under the sun and her age of 50. Respect your father. But it's a bet between me and Lance. One more Lance, and I'll throw this vase in your face. Enough, Melanie. Let me talk to Kikaza first. Lance Isles walked up to calm his wife, holding her waist. A casual white t-shirt and three slash four THS denim pants won't be able to hide the gorgeousness of the head of the Isles family. Even in his fifties, he's still strong and the air around him screams authority and beg to be respected. After giving a soothing kiss to his wife, Lance Isles headed towards his son and ushered him to walk together to his office in the house. However, as Kikazu and Lance turned their backs on Kaisa and were about to head to the office inside the mansion, another flying slipper hit Lance this time, in his face as well. Ow! Oh, what is your problem, Melanie? Melanie! She suddenly shouted. You and Kikazu are really a father and son! No dinner for tonight! She scorned before leaving barefooted. The pair of father and son were left dumbfounded and doesn't know how to react. Both were clueless as to why the only woman of the family were suddenly fuming and irritable. What did I do? Lance asked, his eyes widening, still confused. Kikazu scowled. Not sure, but you're still at fault. He shrugged, finding the situation funny. Nero suddenly loomed around, with his arms crossed on his chest. Dinner's on you tonight. Dad, and surely, you'll get kicked off of the bed. The futon is in the guest room. Better be prepared than to sleep on the cold floor. The smug second son said, pitying his father. What do you mean? Nero shrugged. That's what you get for pissing off mom. You! Lance Isles picked up the pair of slippers of his wife and threw it at Nero's face, hitting him straight. Dad! Bring that to your mother and prepare the ingredients at the kitchen. I'll be cooking. Nero were frozen still holding the slippers with both hands after what he heard. Dad, I take it back. It's better to eat outside. Kikazu and Lance started heading to the office without paying Nero any attention. I mean, just go apologize to M.O.M. 
Lance turned back. I don't even know what I did wrong. How can his wife get angry without any reason for? Come on! A wife is always right. Whether you did something or she just got angry for no particular reason. You, the husband still be the one who needs to appease your wife. He said, lecturing his father. Scoffing at his son's twisted reasoning, Lance ignored Nero and he and Kikaza headed to the office. Once settled inside, Lance looked at his son with a questioning gaze, waiting for him to explain. What? Kikaza leaned on the swivel chair, spitting casually. You know what I called you here for. Speak. He demanded, leaning toward the desk inside his office, his arms crossed on his chest, trying to intimidate his proud son. Nah. Give it to me straight. Lance, I don't know why you have to disturb my peaceful weekend for this. Straight, huh? Really? You want it. Straight. Fine. Lance opened the drawer under his desk and took out an envelope. He opened it and slammed it in front of Kikazu. So tell me about it. Kikaze gulped as his eyes fixed on the various things which the envelope contains that scattered on the floor because of how his father threw it at him, particularly on the pictures he saw and a newspaper headlining a gossip about him. And his little person. You know it already, why bother asking? He said, picking up the things and organizing it inside the envelope, as if trying to hide it away and denying it to himself. How he was found out even if he did his best to conceal all evidences. Lance Isles heaved a deep long sigh as if trying to calm himself. I want to hear it from you, he said with strictness. What do you want to hear? Everything. Sure, how detailed. No excluding anything, even things you deem as irrelevant, include it. Ha, huh? I guess we should start off about how we spend our nights in bed then. You asshole of a son. Kikaze chuckled seeing frustration and embarrassment playing in his father's face. I mean, I am dating my secretary. What's so unusual about it? I fell in love with him. He makes me happy. He lift me up the ground, and I fall for him every day. We're like ordinary couples. What's there to even explain about? He said with a straight face. Lance fell silent for a moment, finding the right words to say, but he still ended up blurting. He is a man. Yeah, I know. He's a man, like I am. He looked up at his father, his gaze unwavering when he met his puzzled ones. If you're going to tell me to break up with him, no can do. I am the man of me, and my people are something I will deal with myself. You can voice out your opinions, but I'm telling you right now. We don't need your validation. You have the right to choose whether to accept my relationship with him or not, but this time, I would bet my right as your son. Do not disrespect my lover. I will do anything for him even if it means losing everything. You did a poor job at obscuring any evidence and keeping your relationship private if that's what you were aiming for. This... Lance snatched the newspaper where the front page is a picture of Kikazu and his lover attending a party, dancing in the middle of a big crowd. There are multiple wrongs in here. You danced in front of these people, like announcing your relationship to the world. It was even caught on camera and here became the front page news. You did try to keep it hidden, but you failed Kikazu. If this newspaper was released in the mass, what do you think will happen? But it was sealed. And I know you did that. That's personalized and was only sent to you. Lance didn't want to laugh, but a snort was something he couldn't hold back at his son's straightforward attitude. Fine, fine. I didn't know you would catch up easily. He rolled his eyes. You're no fun. But I have a serious question. Shoot. Do you love him? Silence. A deafening silence. Breaking the palpable silence was Kikaze's short laugh before answering. I do. Confidently. Do you see yourself spending the rest of your life with him, even through odds? Lance watched the intense emotions flashing through his son's eyes because of his question. I can't see myself living a life without him in it. Kikaze said with a glint of darkness in his eyes. I would conquer any obstacle and face any struggle to prove my love for him is true. I'd do it every day. Kikazu expressed himself with utter conviction, showing outright that he would battle his father for this matter. Kikazu Lee Isles respect his dad, so much that ever since growing up he looked up at him as a role model. A father, a businessman, and as a person for him his father is the picture of perfection. Flawed at times, but that's what makes him human yet the best thing is he knows how to correct his mistakes. Lance Isles let a deep chuckle escape his mouth. You've grown, Kikazu Lee. I like this version of you. 
he wanted to add, but it's best to keep it to himself. Guess I was worried for nothing, huh? I mean... He paused, roaming his eyes around the room and stopping when his gaze fell on his son's contorted face. You can live the way you want, Kikazu. I admit defeat, the burden will be passed on Nero now haha, -ha, he said, laughing with tears on his eyes. However, Kikazu remained serious, not taking his eyes away from his father who looks broken in the head because of the change in his mood. You trust me, Dad? In an instant, the quirky father turned stern, looking dead serious. He walked over as he brought his right hand to pat Kikazu's head, making the younger one softened and a tingle and tug of emotions in his heart. You know what? He started ruffling his son's hair, stepping back to put a distance as he continued to speak. The second the words I would conquer any obstacle and face any struggle to prove my love for him is true flew out of your mouth, and when I saw you hold him for your own solace, he mentioned, pertaining to the pictures his private investigators found for him. A smile revealed on his face when he said, I knew I raised a great man, Kikazu. Right at that instant, you earn my trust. I respect your decisions and the life you own. You don't owe me anything. I'm proud of you, son. Warmth crept into Kikazu's heart, more than the tingle and tickles. A surge of emotions fell all at once as he felt choked while looking up at the man who taught him all the most relevant things in life. Tears started welling up in his eyes, but he fight it and stood up, giving his father a hug. Thank you, Dad. Your acknowledgement. It means so much to me. Lance patted Kikazu's back in return. You gonna be staying for dinner? He asked once Kikazu draws back. Nah, my lover is waiting for me at home. I see. You better get going then, but before that, help me soothe your mom or else. He gulped. I don't want to sleep on the cold floor. Right. And one more thing, I have a request to you. Kikazu! A tiny voice greeted him when they reached the living room. Ricky, the youngest brother lunged forward as he runs to Kikazu's arms. The ten-year-old boy were beaming at the presence of his brother who always spoiled him. Hey, big guy! Kikazu smiled back, delighted to see this adorable kid after so long. I missed you. Lots. I see you less these days. He pouted cutely. Kikazu pinched Ricky's cheeks, tugging him as they exit the house. Sorry about that. I'll make it up to you. All right, but are you leaving now? Won't you stay for the night and play with me tomorrow? Sorry, bud. Someone's waiting for me at home. But I promise I'll see you this week. Will you come home for Christmas Eve? Of course. Yay! Lance Owls ushered Kikazu outside. Don't forget. He told him, pointing his fingers at his face. Kikazu sighed. I'll make sure to bring my lover and greet you. He said, sounding bored. And at the mention of lover, Kaisa Melanie suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Her eyes were widened, in an utter shock. You finally have a lover? She yelled. However, she was unkindly ignored. By the way, don't worry about the booze, Dad. I'll take care of it. Ooh, I want a hundred-year-old whiskey, son! Kikazu nodded their way before entering his car. Kikazu have a girlfriend? Kaisa wondered. Nero popped his head from inside and shook his head. You can anticipate! Mom! It will come as a surprise! Lance gave Nero a knowing glance, sensing that his second son already knows about Kikazu's lover, then turned to the moving vehicle of Kikazu that was driving away. He wore an amused smile. His boy is now a man, standing up not only for himself but for the love he found. Ah, I can't wait to meet this pure soul who enticed this stoic son of mine. The Invitation Having his way to life paved by other people and their own plans, including marrying his best friend and living his whole life together with him is just one of Hyde's countless nightmare. There are only two reasons why you're in this state right now. Product manager Jano Face palmed in front of the spaced-out secretary Hyde. One, your relationship with Sir Kay is taking a wrong turn, he sighed, acting frustrated and sad. Or two, you broke up, he said without holding back, shaking his head to show sympathy towards Hyde. He was immediately smacked in his arms by the temperamental little secretary. One, you're a nosy person. Hyde scoffed, rolling his eyes. Two, we're damn happy. All right. Jano gasped, pinching marketing supervisor Gene in his side. See that? 
This little secretary is cussing. He pointed at him while looking at Jean, telling on him. Jean just nodded, not minding Jano. The three of them went out to the mall to look for gifts for the year-end party that will happen on the 31st, as well as shop for various needs for the party. They have an off day for a week since Christmas holiday is coming and before the said event. Now they are inside a food court and have just finished eating but stayed for a while to digest what they'd eaten before going in their way. But here's Hyde who's having worries over meeting Kikazu's parents. Dude. Hyde suddenly muttered. Dude? Jano almost yelled. Hyde, why are you so out of character today, huh? He nudged, wriggling his brows to tease. Won't you let me in on some gossip? Seeing the enthusiastic Jano giving him a teasing look, Hyde pouted while remembering a shocking thing that Kikazu told him about. Kikazu is inviting me to spend the Christmas Eve at his house. Hey! That's normal for couples, inviting their partners to important holidays. I mean his parents' house. His father requested to see me, inviting me to stay over for Christmas Eve. Well, yeah, that's fucking official. Like, he's going to introduce you to his parents. Like legal lovers and wait. Does it mean he came out? Sir K. For the umpteenth time today, Hyde sighed, conflicted of what to do. Just like what Jano mentioned, when Kikaza came home that day and told him his father already knew of their relationship, he almost fainted because of surprise. They are still at the early stage of their relationship yet unexpected things he wasn't prepared for keeps on coming without a break. Honestly, I'm scared. What if his father won't accept us? Our relationship? What if they care about the gap in our status? Most of all, this not-so-typical relationship between two men? Hyde was ranting, letting his mouth run with all the worries he was thinking about. For days now, when Kikaza came back from his family's house and told him about what he and his father discussed with each other and how he's part of it, he became conscious and it has been weighing on his mind, making him restless. 24th is just around the corner. Given the time, it's not enough to prepare himself, especially his heart, of what's coming ahead or how well his lover's family will react when it comes to their relationship. Whoa, whoa wait, hold on. Jaina waved his hands in the air. Calm yourself, hide. I can't, uh, this is terrible. Kay just seriously shook me with the news. Jano snorted. Hyde's misery somehow excites him. This is one of the few times they've seen him uncollected and in distress. He's usually full of positivity so witnessing him drown on his worry is also worrying them. He can't stand this miserable sight. He steeled in a heartbeat. But it's been done. No use crying over spilt milk. Hyde frowned because it was not so easy to get over the surprise. He wasn't even thinking yet about meeting his lover's family, what he actually had in mind was to introduce Kikazu first to his parents and then it happened he was invited to have dinner with his family on Christmas evening. Oh, enough with that face. It will come sooner or later. You should be glad it came now so your worries will be lessened after it's over. Yeah, Hyde. Just embrace it already. Jean chirped. Hyde sighed and let his eyes fall shut. He's only going to meet them and he was invited, he have no choice but to accept and show up that day. Right. I should prepare to meet them. He murmured, dazed in space. Jano gave a pleasant sigh, watching Hyde. Can't blame him. It's a sudden out-of-the-closet announcement. He looked up at Jean who nodded to agree. You're right and I didn't even expect it to come from Sir Kay. I actually thought he wouldn't tell his family about his relationship with Hyde. What do you mean? But that's mean if it's what I understood. Well, Sir Kay is straight. I quite understand Hyde for his wariness. There's so much in between them that may result to bad blood. Take it for one, it's a gay relationship. He pointed. Sir Kay's father is a prominent and known businessman. His family as a whole is affluent and an image of perfection in public's eye. Sir Kay having a relationship with Hyde, a man. If found then wouldn't it be such a big news? It's an issue worthy for gossiping and attacking them. Jean crossed his arms on his chest. I don't think so. Because, let's not get there yet. The biggest challenge Hyde has to face and focus on is about meeting Sir Kay's parents, and everything will fall into them. How they will accept or react to his relationship with their son will come from them. He said, let's not get ahead of them. Sir Lance having his son invite his lover on Christmas Eve, which is a sacred holiday for us, usually only spent with family or loved ones, it must mean something good already. Ooh, somehow you've got a point. Jano squealed. 
Eventually, he stood up and tugged Hyde to get up as well. Don't wail over here, Hyde. I think I've got an idea what would cheer you up and get you all done before meeting your in-laws. He teased, winking at the petrified little secretary. What? Hyde asked, completely uninterested and just asking for the sake of Jano's enthusiasm. Let's doll ourselves. We're not girls, all right? Duh! Who said girls are the only ones who can get a new look? Come on! Jano got his way, dragging both Jean and Hyde inside the hair salon where Hyde finally had his hair cut after some time that came with a little bit of styling. Once they were finished there, Jano dragged them to another stall and this time, picked different dress styles that would give Hyde a fresh image. Ooh! This looks so good on you! It suits you very much and gives you a teenage boy look! Hyde groaned. I'm dating an accomplished man, not a boy still drunk and led by his hormones. I don't want to look like an immature punk. Jano. Jano and Jean chuckled at the unexpectedly honest comment. Yeah, right. We don't want you looking like a twink on a porn video. Uh, that's so irrelevant, and I didn't need to hear that. He whined, turning his back on them to go back inside the changing room. Jeez, now it's an image popping out of my mind. He whispered to himself while changing to another set of clothes in a different style and mood. It's not like he haven't watched such impure things before, he's no saint and part of puberty while realizing his sexuality is exploring materials that would have been useful into understanding himself. Hyde went out of the changing room with a frown on his face. Jano just laughed while looking at him from head to toe and nodding his head. This is more like it, you don't come off an immature punk but hmm, maybe a mature and decent looking twink ah, that hurts. Shut up, then, enough of those porn description. Jano just laughed off the irritability of Hyde who went back inside the room. He caressed his nose that was slammed with the clothes Hyde fitted but disregarded because of how it made him look. The opposite of him. You tease too much. That will eventually drive your suitors away, you know? Jean said out of a sudden. He meant to tease him about being gay but how the latter reacted rendered him speechless. He rolled his eyes. Duh, if I might tell you correctly, I do the courting. Where'd you even get the idea that I'm the one getting embraced? Jean went quiet after hearing what Jano said and his forehead creased. Wait, you're also batting for the same team with Hyde now? He asked, clueless. But before Jano could respond, Hyde already went out, urging them to go. I love her. You can do it, Hyde. Chat me up when it doesn't go well. I'll back you up. Hyde shook his head while entering Kikazu's mansion. He just got back from the tiring shopping session and upgrading his look. When he went past the living room, he saw Kikazu on the couch wearing his reading glasses giving him a more mature but manly look, reading a book on his hand, as he might have felt his presence. His gaze shot up from looking at the book to glancing at him and smiling as soon as their eyes. Meet and Hyde watched as Kikazu's smile slowly turned into a frown and gave him a puzzled look. It made him burst out laughing. Hi! He waved a hand at him, contrary to how he mostly act shy. This time he tried putting on a flirty look, giving Kikazu a flying kiss. Kikazu stood up while stunned, walking up to Hyde and looking up at him, scrutinizing his appearance. Seeing the confusion in his lover's face, Hyde chuckled nervously. You don't like it? However, instead of getting a reply out of Kikazu's mouth, Hyde was taken off guard when Kikazu responded in a different way with his mouth landing suddenly on Hyde's lips, giving him a hot, unexpected kiss. Kikazu draws back, pinching Hyde's smooth, soft cheeks after. Oh, uh, what was that about? He smiled like a lovesick fool, staring intensely at his little lover who came home looking his best, radiating more young energy and displaying a fresh image. You look cuter and more dazzling. Gorgeous. What sudden compliment made Hyde blushed and Kikaza calling him in a sweet and endearing way gives a ticklish feeling playing in his stomach. Stop flattering me. Anyway, what does your parents like? Can I get them any gifts for the dinner? Hyde asked, his little frown while nervously uttering those words were adorable in Kikazu's eyes who were biting his lower lip as he looked over Hyde's refreshing appearance, checking him out in a suggestive manner. You can forget about my parent. Your presence alone will make them delighted. He grabbed Hyde's waist, pulling him close to his body. Rather, can I have my Christmas gift in advance? I don't mind if you won't wrap yourself. At least I'll undress you from head to toe. In a flash of lightning, Kikazu was rashly pushed aside. Shut up, pervert! 
Hyde immediately run away while his lover was left behind, laughing and also regretful while biting the inside of his cheeks, watching him as he walks away, certain thoughts mischievously playing out on his mind. Hyde, on the other hand, is having an internal argument with a voice inside his head, who knew it was a bad idea getting a new look for the visit. I hate getting devoured in the entryway. Come inside the bedroom. Once he got inside the bedroom, he shouted just loud enough for Kikaze to hear. But who said he won't give in to Kikaze's advances? Soon, loud footsteps dominated inside the mansion until the noise of the banging door. 24th of December The carols and Christmas songs are heard everywhere as it nears the countdown for the time the clock strikes midnight and changes the date to the day of December 25th. In the golden autumn of December, a half-moon hung above the city, casting a cold and watery light on the seaside, rippling the prosperity of the road heading towards a luxurious mansion. Hyde gulped while walking down from the passenger seat of Kikaze's Maybach. As soon as he stepped out, a gust of cold wind that carried the scent of sweet osmanthus breeze passed him. He looked up at the excellent prefecture standing before him, Kikaze's family's house. While he was panicking inside, Kikaze hugged him from behind, sharing his warm temperature, dispelling the cold. Nervous? Very. Hyde answered truthfully and he heard Kikaze's chuckle. His deep sound reverberated that he could even feel the vibration on his shoulder. Don't be. It's just my parents. Hyde turned around, with a glare in his eyes. Your parents. He pointed his fingers at Kikazu. You can be calm because they are your parents. You're used to them while I'm a stranger meeting them for the first time. He sighed deeply. For me. They are the family of my lover I'm going to be introduced to. On top of that, God. They are one of the wealthiest people in our nation. I only see them on TV or on magazine. He pinched Kikazu's arms because of his restlessness. Kikazu suppressed a laugh. Calm down, babe. He stroked Hyde's head, somehow relieving him of his worries. And hey, your very own boyfriend is also a wealthy man. I appear on TV and magazines, but now I'm by your side. He trailed off, touching Hyde's small dimples on his right cheeks. Touching you. He bent down giving him a light kiss on the lips. Kissing you, so it's no big deal. He finished with a cocky smile. But dump Hyde's nervousness miraculously dissipated as it got overpowered by the giddy emotions Kikazu's words combined with his sweet actions brought about, tickling him inside. It seemed the world fell into a pause as they looked into each other's eyes. Hyde, do you know that? Kikazu hangs his words. Hmm, <laughs> what? Oh, pardon me. Your cuteness is mesmerizing that it made me forget my pickup line. Hyde broke into pits of laughter. You're getting more cheesy as days go by. I just wanted to ease you. Don't be nervous. Yeah, yeah, it's effective. As he felt more settled, Hyde giggled while they walked forward, finally heading to the door of the mansion. Although he was more calm, he can't help but still feel nervous that he could hear his own heartbeat pounding erratically. Kikazu held his waist, and then rung the doorbell. Soon the door opened and Nero's face came into their view. He showed up in a green t-shirt with tailored plaid trousers and a nice warm cardigan, looking equally handsome as Kikazu but contrary to the serious aura that the stoic boss wears. A young and carefree vibe is what Nero is out. Good evening. You are here. He opened the door wide, crossing his arms as he watched his brother and his lover entering the house. Where are they? In the garden. Mom's so fussy. She's been awaiting this day to finally meet him. His gaze traveled to look at Hyde who smiled at him. Then he diverted it back to Kikazu. Your lover. At the mention of the word, Hyde bit his lips while immensely blushing. He bowed his head to hide his reddened face. She's hyper today and overdid herself. She cooked too much food and prepared the garden extravagantly. Her enthusiasm is really. He glanced at Hyde. I just hope you're prepared, sister-in-law. He winked mischievously. Being called such, Hyde doesn't know how to react so he simply smiled as they go on. Nero was ushering them to where the garden is. Hyde held on Kikazu's arms tightly, pressing on it. The tension inside his chest keeps on circulating and gradually increasing as they near their destination. He then looked up when he felt his lover's reassuring touch, intertwining their fingers together. Somehow, he felt his nerves easing down. They don't bite, babe. Kikazu whispered. Hyde ignored him as he saw the green and red lights illuminating the manor and the source were coming right outside the house. 
they reached the garden that was immaculately designed in different Christmas lights. There were also a Christmas tree lane that emphasized the ambience of the holiday. Right as they walked in, he saw three more people that were there, sitting in front of a long table while chatting away. Kikazu's tap on his shoulder made Hyde face him who had a reassuring smile, tugging him with their interlocked fingers to go on. Hyde's footsteps were heavy along with his breathing. They approached to greet them although they had their back turned on them. The moment they reached the dining table, Kikaza faked a cough to catch their attention. His action drew them to turn around, like thunder lightning striking him out of a sudden. Hyde felt his breath hitched as soon as Kikazu's mother and father's eyes landed on him. My son! You're here! Kaisa Melanie rose from her seat to give her first son a hug while her eyes were looking at Kikazu's secretary she recognized, wondering why he was with him and at the same time, her gaze were searching behind them, for his said girlfriend. She's been anticipating meeting her for the first time, because it would be the first that Kikazu would bring home someone. Mom, sit down first, I have an important announcement. Kikazu assisted his mother to sit back down. A curious frown formed on her forehead. Meanwhile, Lance is scrutinizing Hyde, watching his reactions since he already knew this boy is his precious son's partner. Well, I thought you'd bring your girlfriend tonight. Kaisa asked, confused. And why is your secretary with you? Kikazu Lee, it's a Christmas holiday. You shouldn't let him work and instead let him go home to spend time with his family. She lectured, giving Hyde an apologetic smile. Unbeknownst to Kaisa, her kindness is now making Hyde grow more terrified. He was pinching himself on his thighs, trying to convince himself to be brave and withstand the night. Nero snickered while taking his seat. He doesn't know if their mother is trying to act oblivious or if she just really don't get it at all. He find the situation funny. Ricky, the third and youngest son seated where Hyde is standing, poked Hyde on his side and when he gave him the attention, the little kid gave him a gummy smile. It would be impossible if Hyde didn't say such cute beam didn't take his worries away. Somehow, he felt relaxed. Hi! Are you my brother's girlfriend? But it came as a surprise, almost choking himself on his own saliva. Ricky's voice was loud enough to grab the attention of everyone on the dinner table. In a span of a moment, all the eyes in there fixated on them. Kaisa Melanie's own widened in surprise. Come again, Ricky? Kaisa stood with her mouth agape, her gaze diverted from looking at her youngest to staring at Hyde, with a doe-like gaze. Ahem! Kikazu wrapped his arms on Hyde's shoulder right when he said next. Girlfriend is not the right term, mom but. This is Hyde, he's my boyfriend. Good evening, ma'am, sir. Hyde greeted, giving a nod each way. That's too formal for a family, you can just call me uncle. Lance Isles gave a small smile to which he is Hyde, touching his heart. Family? Uncle? However, Kaisa Melanie reacted otherwise. She blinked her eyes, not comprehending what's happening. Your lover, Kikazu, is a man? She stated, shell shock. My lover, is this adorable person, mom? Giving a puzzled smile with her quivering lips, and while trying to understand her son's words, Kaisa Melanie fainted in the midst of Kikazu's introduction of Hyde to his family. At least one from their family should react in such way, because aside from Kaisa, Everyone else was just intrigued how this person managed to tame the aloof Kikazuli Isles. Blessings Hyde's bright eyes were like a river of stars crushed into tiny pieces. He didn't expect that kind of reaction, he was struck dumb. Nero brought Kaisa Melanie to the hammock at the garden, hanged over the two coconut tree across one another, they let her lay there to rest. Back in the dinner table where Hyde is finally seated, showing a now composed expression but he was fidgeting on the hem of his shirt, frightened how things are about to turn out tonight. He didn't want to be pessimistic, but how it started off is already such a mood killer. The corners of Lance Alza's mouth couldn't help but turn up seeing how astounded his son's lover had become. Hyde might have covered his reaction with his quick change of expression, but it didn't manage to pass Lance's sharp eyes. Don't take it to heart, young man. Melanie usually exaggerate things, but once she's in the right state of mind. He hummed, observing Hyde's reaction. We'll talk about this once she wakes up. For the meantime, why don't you tell me how you and my son met each other? Dad, don't scare him. Kikazu chimed, hiding Hyde behind him. What's so terrifying about my question? Kikazu Lee, you're being overprotective. Can you blame me? After how mom reacted. I am very offended, actually. 
Kikazo's icy glare is battling Lance's own intimidating one, the father and son communicated through their gaze and Lance surrendered by nodding to tell he's dismissing the topic. Then, why don't you, Kikazu, do the honor and tell us about your love story? It's part of their family's custom to introduce their lover to the family in a way of storytelling, but looking at the stoic boss's displeased expression, Lance knew he won't get anything other than death glares from his first son who finally brought home someone. But to Lance's surprise, Kikazu sighed before opening his mouth to speak. To cut the long story short, Hyde is the most suitable secretary that possessed all qualifications of my high standard. Hearing this, Hyde coughed, realizing his lover's statement wasn't connected at all to their love story. He leaned into whisper in his ears. That's too work-related, if you ask me. He meant to tease, but somehow felt disappointed inside. Maybe after all, Kikazu only sees him as someone convenient rather than holding romantic feelings for him? Oh no, he shouldn't get ahead of himself and get paranoid over such shallow emotions. Kikazu smirked, searching for Hyde's hands under the table and when he touched his palm, he caressed it gently. We started there. And falling in love may be the most impossible thing, as I thought so too at first, but here we are. I've deeply fallen in love with him. He professed, bringing out their entwined hands from under the table and kissing the back of Hyatt's hand, making the latter blush. Honestly, what started the first chapter of our love story was when Hyde got drunk on his own welcome party, right as he was able to close the toughest deal we've ever encountered. A genuine smile slowly revealed on his lips while remembering the start of it all. Kikazu never thought about falling in love in the most strangest way, let alone seeing himself falling for the same sex, or that it would be his secretary he thought he admired only for his reliability, but as it turns out, here they are, in front of his family, introducing Hyde as his lover and going back to how they started, even recalling the smallest details but became the most significant thing that had impacted his and Hyde's life. It changed his own life for the better and Hyde becoming a part of it is the best part. He couldn't help but chuckle, feeling giddy inside. He's the kind of person who gets chummy when they're drunk and... A laugh escaped his mouth, earning him a pinch on his thighs. He shamelessly sat on my lap and kissed me right then and there, in front of all our subordinates, ha ha. Kikazu let out the laugh he couldn't suppress, even Ricky and Nero giggled on their seats. Their brother's laugh was infectious and more so seeing how his lover was beat red, wanting to hide because of embarrassment. While Lance stared intently at the two of them. His heart warmed seeing and hearing Kikazu laugh, it wasn't loud, it wasn't over the top, but witnessing the joy in his face as he tell about the story and how genuine and spontaneous it is, his happiness is filled till the brim. This is a different side to Kikazu they weren't able to see up until now, it's refreshing and adorable. Lance knew his son's character as always stable, he's very handsome even with his manner and also a powerful person. Although he's stoic and resists expressing his emotions making him unpredictable but Lance is too keen to understand his own son. The first time they witnessed Kikazu showing his anger was way back when he was in university, where he was betrayed by a friend and his then-girlfriend, most people didn't know this reason as Kikazu hid it very well but as his father and a man with top-notch connections, Lance found out about this story. Prior to Kikazu's heartbreak, Lance already made a proposition to his son, he decided to train him and succeed the empire he built. He was to wait until his first son reached the last year of college and make him an intern in his corporation along with training him however, the year of his heartbreak unexpectedly came and Kikazu unavoidably locked himself inside his room, not inviting anyone in and shutting everyone out, it was his way of coping up. Until one day, once he finally opened his door, he was changed, he became temperamental, stoic. Also, he revealed his plan of starting his own business, he was determined to make his own name and he didn't fail, he was able to succeed on his own although Lance was still by the side, giving minimal support to him but Kikazu's success also had a lot of compromises. Lance made a deal with Kikazu before he started his journey. To forget their father and son, for Kikazu to never expect any form of support from his father and treat Lance as an enemy within the field of business. To this day, Lance is beyond proud that his first son reached an unbelievable milestone with his own capability. Looking back at the memories of the past that became truly significant, Lance couldn't help but be fulfilled, especially when he sees the smile in Kikazu's eyes, even if his lips is always formed in a straight line, his eyes don't lie, it reveals his true emotions and he knows just who was the reason for his unconditional happiness. Lance glanced at his son's lover. A man but nevertheless a pure soul who was able to tame Kikazu's stoic heart, and before he could hold himself back, the word already left his mouth. Hide. He called to his son's lover's name. 
Everyone in the dining table simultaneously turned their head in his direction, gazing at him with puzzled look in their eyes. Kikazu's was different though, he glared at Lance, hating the way he looked tenderly at Hyde, his very own lover. Dad! Peel away your eyes from my boyfriend if you don't want me to stab you with this. He lifted the fork in the air, showing his father of his weapon. However, he was ignored and Lance gave a sincere smile to Hyde. Thank you for choosing my son to hold your heart and treasure it from here on. It was the simplest words, nothing fancy or grand but hearing this coming out of his lover's father's mouth while looking at him with admiration in his eyes, Hyde's eyes welled up. The sincerity, the weight of those words and the genuine gratitude got through to his heart, softening him to the point of melting, it sounded so pleasant. Hyde smiled and were about to speak but Kikazu butted in. He hold mine, dad, and it's up to him to take it or break it. Hyde rolled his eyes at Kikazu. It was such a touching scene but with him interrupting. He shook his head but his lips were smiling. I wouldn't dare to do such thing, okay? Looking at Kikazu, he uttered before turning to Lance. Thank you, sir, for thinking that way, but to tell you honestly, in this relationship, everything should depend on the both of us. I know we're not perfect. Our relationship has a lot of flaws, and I didn't choose Kikazu. He's the one who chose me, and to take me or break me is up to him. But one thing I can assure you. He paused, giving a serious gaze. I'd be there through his good and even his worst day. I'll give him unending love and support. Hyde felt like choking while saying those words, but it was what he truly felt and deeper. Words alone cannot describe what he's willing to give and give up for Kikazu. The night sky was the witness to his confession. Hyde felt more free and accepted because of Lance's words. Several minutes of silence after, they heard shifting noises from where Kaiza is. Honey, are you fine now? Lance asked in the air without turning his head towards Kaiza's direction. Hyde, on the other hand, along with the three brothers, glanced to the hammock, where Kaiza is now sitting up. She didn't speak. Seeing this and feeling the awkwardness building up in the air, an idea clicked in Hyde's head and he said, Let me bring water to your mother, intending to whisper the sentence in Kikazu's ears, but he was a minute too late when he realized I forgot to do that and instead everyone in a table heard it. To hide Hyde's embarrassment, while chuckling at his little person's flustered reaction, Kikazu filled a glass of water, giving it to Hyde. Here. When Hyde received it, he immediately drank it dry, moisting his throat. Kikazu filled another glass, still laughing at how dazed his little person was. This time, Hyde carefully snatched it from his boyfriend's hands, rising from his seat and saying with a determined tone, I'll bring it to her, as he made his way heading towards Kaiza, mustering his courage to face her. Ma'am, drink some water first. He approached, carefully handing the glass of water. Hyde was sweating bullets, nervous whether Kaiza is going to accept it. Subtly, she received the glass, drinking it straight away. For Hyde, it was more than just receiving the glass, he felt his heart swell with the gentleness that Kikazu's parents showed him. Stupid old man. He didn't even come to check if I'm dead yet. Hyde flinched hearing this. Kaiza lifted her gaze to the secretary, her first son's lover. She had become worried that Kikazu might not get married and so she had always set him up on numerous blind dates. Seeing how Hyde's eyes waver, looking sideways, Kaiza knew she had hurt the boy's feelings and maybe scared him too. She sighed, patting the space beside her, inviting him to sit. The boy contemplated that Kaiza had to pull him on his arms for him to sit. I've always thought that Kikazu is going to end up alone all his life. Kaiza held Hyde's hand, gently caressing his palm. Her gestures may confuse Hyde, but nonetheless, he felt her affection. More of a reason why he feels as though his heart is going to leap out of his chest. Can you imagine? I set him up with more than a hundred blind dates in all those five years, but he always find reasons or excuses to avoid them. She casted a smile at Hyde. For how I reacted earlier, I'm sorry for being insensitive, son. Kaiza admits to herself that how she reacted to the situation was way out of hand. Thinking back on her exaggeration, she did seem came off as a bad mother-in-law. Kikaza may not be the greatest man out there, but I know he can be the best when it comes to people he care for, even more to someone he love you are, said Kaiza in a rather tender but fascinating voice. She believes that her son has good judgment so if Kikaza chooses someone it surely won't be a bad person. Kaiza Melanie stared at Hyde, taking in his appearance. Hyde's face was very upright. It was equally proportioned and without the slightest error. His features were decent, 
but neither exceptional nor flawless. Aside from being handsome, he also gave people a sense of reliability and trustworthiness. After observing him, she pulled him in a tight hug, taking the latter by surprise. Ma'am. Mom, hide. I know it will take some time for me to accept you fully, but I welcome you to the family, dear. Hyde lightly hugged her back. A strong smell of perfume forced its way into his nose, but that scent kind of snapped him out, pinching himself to open his eyes wide to the reality. Here he is, all his worries casted off, what remained is the genuineness that Kikaze's family each owned and treated him with. After Kaiza pulled away, she outstretched her hand in the air. Come, let's have no chibuena with the family. And Hyde took her hand with a tear-jerk face, heading to the dinner table. All the boys sitting in their place looked at them with a smile. Hyde sat next to Kikazu. His boyfriend wiped the tears on his face and whispered, You got my family on your first time meeting them, Mr. Perfect Secretary. Teasing him. Hyde laughed. Shut up. You're not helping at all. Kikazu held his hand. How about when I meet your family? It's now putting pressure on me. Snorting as his tears dry, Hyde shook his head at Kikazu's silliness. Right as they were chatting happily, the night sky that were usually dark were filled with different colors because of the exploding fireworks display, signaling that Christmas Day has come and they welcome it with huge smiles spread across their faces. The dinner passed by quickly as they chatted and enjoyed the delicious cuisine prepared by Kaisa herself with the help of Nero, together as a family. Hyde is beyond grateful for being accepted, without receiving doubtful glances or disgusted remarks. If you forget the part about me being gay... I'm just your ordinary secretary, perfectly suited to the stoic boss's high standard. And together with that stoic billionaire who's as cheesy as days go by. This is our love story. Kikazu Lee, the stoic boss. Epilogue. Everyone has two faces, one which you see, and one which is hidden beneath it. This world consists of people who live by maintaining this balance. It's been several years since he realized that. He still can't step into love seriously. We broke up. What? Again? That girl was pretty cute though. What a waste. Well, I know that but there's something about her that's just not right. You're so ambiguous. Just how high are your standards? Actually, it's not about my standard but my ideals and of course, the feelings are what matters the most. You understand me right? Jay said with a deep, soul-wrenching sigh. After all, you're in a serious relationship where your emotions are stable. Kikaza raised his gaze. Hyde and I just don't work on our emotions alone. There are many factors that affect our relationship. Also, it's not always stable. We get into small fights and even childish ones, but we try to resolve the conflict as early as possible without letting it drag on until another day. He simply responded. Jay Gomez pouted, rumbling his lips. He was frustrated. Why don't you try to reset your expectations, Jay? Go on a date with someone without putting on them your ideals. Like, just let it flow naturally. Kikazu said, watching Jay pout while stressing about his dateless life is quite a sight, he cringes at his misery. Grunting, Jay sighed more deeply, slamming his face onto the desk. All I want is true love, like what you and Hyde have. I mean, I guess your relationship is what I perceive as perfect in my head. Kikazu snorted. Now it seems perfect, but you know how it was in our first phase, right? Especially when he brought me to their island, to his hometown to introduce me to his family. It wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. We also had gone through storms and light rains. He shook his head in disbelief, recalling in his head the scenes that unfolded in the island. He shuddered momentarily at the unpleasant recollection. Besides, I worked hard to achieve this almost perfect relationship we have now. So why don't you get on your feet? Be going and hunt for your true love, hmm? He said nonchalantly, trying to shoo his love-deprived friend out of his office. Kikazu is in the middle of reviewing a proposal when Jay barged into his office just to complain about how none of the girls he meets satisfy him or possess the emotion he was looking for, the spark he was seeking and to fill the void in his heart. However, up until this day, he still failed miserably. No! Kikazu shook his head. He wonders how the students and parents that respect Jay as a teacher will react once they see him acting this childishly over some true love. I want to fall in love. He shook his head some more, throwing a pen into Jay's head, but when it hit him, he didn't even flinch, not caring about it. He's gone crazy. 
Jay is doomed. What are you? Some high school teens craving a puppy love? Honestly, how I see it, you're far worse. He was just ignored while Jay started drawing hearts on the coffee table with his pointing finger while whispering. I want to fall in love. Non-stop like some broken radio. Kikazu sighed and ran a hand through his hair, messing it up just the slightest amount to give him that tousled look giving him a more handsome and defined image. He stood up, leaving his works on his desk and he took his coat from the cabinet, wearing it. I'm leaving, he said after, on his motion to walk out of the door but his crazy friend started weeping, acting actually. Come on, dude why don't you have a drink with me tonight? Comfort me somehow, he whined like a little kid. No, somebody's waiting for me at home. Jay glared. Family before homies, I see. He mocked but the latter's response was just a simple nod, agreeing to his statement. What a traitor! Hyde is at home these days. Times Corporation is expanding to different ventures of businesses, so it's a triple workload for everyone and because of that, Kikazu hired a number of secretary, having their own department. Hyde only works now as his personal assistant but on some days, he stays at home and takes care of their little ones. Like today. My family is my top one priority, of course. You shouldn't even question that, he firmly said, sitting on the couch. Suddenly, an idea clicked on his head. You said you can't find the spark with your previous dates, am I correct? He asked, a mischievous grin turning up in his lips. Yeah. Jay replied softly, his energy is depleted. And they are all women, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. So, why don't you try dating men, hmm? Jay is supposed to be good at handling his relationship and responses to the situation but Kikazu now sees he's the same person who also don't know how to react on situations involving romance. They're all a fool when it comes to love. Jay perked up, suddenly struck by Kikazu's unexpected suggestion. Um, can you please repeat what you just said? He asked, gulping. Despite his confusion though, Jay seemed to have a vague answer inside his heart. Of course, he knew. He heard it loud and clear. But he wanted to hear it again, just to make sure. I said, why not date a guy? Maybe the reason why you can't feel the spark on your previous dates is because it's none of them at all and your fated one is actually a guy? Kikazu Isles fired up as his entire body was filled with vigor and enthusiasm. Jay wore a puzzled look, pondering on what he just heard at the same time, Kikazu took the chance to lead his day's friend, hurrying to run away. Kikaza greeted all the employees he passed by with a simple smile. His tantalizing appearance combined with a gorgeous smile which doesn't happen usually but has always shown up since, had made him more handsome than he already is. The intimidating aura he bears is still there but a ton better with the vibrant mood he exudes. Sir K is looking ten times better. He's more handsome these days. I know, right? Like, he's glowing. Uh... People who's in love really look their best. I guess his partner is doing the best work in supporting and giving him love. Times Corporation employees squealed at the sweet sight, watching their boss in a vibrant mood is also lifting up their spirits. Meanwhile inside the office. The day's Jay then yelled in trance as he searched for his friend but he already got away. Kikazu was laughing his ass off while driving home, on his way, he's having a call from Jay, nagging at him for leaving him while he was lost in thought. Come on, dude. What about introducing me to some of a businesswoman you know? He desperately begs from the other end. Sighing in defeat. Fine, you idiot. Fine. But a mischievous grin reveals in his face. I'm home! Kikasa greeted once he entered his mansion. A loud growl welcomed him back. Hey, Gara! He motioned to the dog to come to him but the mischievous dog hissed at him and ran inside the house. Gara still doesn't recognize you as his owner, huh? From the kitchen, the bright person radiating more lovely aura showed up in his casual home clothes and a pink apron, he has a beautiful smile on his face as he walked towards Kikaza's way, lifting his arms in the air as he welcomed his husband home. Welcome home, babe. I'm beyond happy to have you welcome me home, my home. Hyde cringed, hitting Kikazu on his chest once he pulled away. Corny as ever. 
Kikazu laughed and stroked Hyde's black hair, his hand tracing down the back of his head eventually falling on his nape, pulling him close to his body, ready for a welcome home kiss. Swiftly he was in his arms, their lips locked together, their tongues tangled with each other, sucking the sweetness on it. Moments later, Hyde's lips were deeply attached to Kikazu's, and his thighs were locked around his lover's hips. Hyde was carried, while Kikazu is tripping up the winding staircase, stumbling through the doors of their bedroom. Their frantic breaths of desperation echoed throughout. Hyde's trembling ankles locked at Kikazu's back. Blindly laying his little person down onto the bed, peppering small butterfly kisses along his neck and shoulders. Adding slightly more pressure with each delicate kiss. Hyde grasped onto Kikazu's shoulders and arched like a cat into his intimate touch. His fingers were scraping down his back pledging for him to keep going. Kikazu obliged, about to rip off the apron Hyde's wearing when loud bangs on their bedroom door rudely cut them off of their activity. Damn it! Kikazu cussed with a frustrated growl, stomping his feet while walking to open the door. Hyde fixed himself while fighting the blush staining his face. Kikazu was greeted with a pleasant shout of glee from the two disturbances, interrupting his and Hyde's sweet moments. Daddy! A gentle, modulated voice chirped followed by a more defined one. The two playful little monsters run to hug Kikazu's thighs. Somehow, his arousal died down replaced by his fathery figure, plopping down onto the floor to level the gaze of the little angels. I missed you, Daddy! I missed you too, Bob! He picked the two on their feet and carried them to the bed. Dada! The little boy hugged Hyde while burying his face on his dada's chest. It's a picture of a one, big, happy family. They are. Hyde and Kikazu had their precious angels six months after their marriage. While planning their marriage, they have also already had the twins. Aisha who wanted to atone to her sins and to plead for forgiveness to them was the one who carried the twins through surrogacy. She was the source of the egg cell as well. Kikazu looked lovingly at his family, his little person, the little prince, and his little princess. Zuli Harriet Isles and Hansa K. Isles, their precious twins who are two and six months old. Zuli looks just like Hyde, with her adorable face and soothing appearance and a radiant personality while Hanzu was a 100% image of Kikazu when he was the same age, minus the cold expression because Zu is a cheerful boy, taking after Hyde. Kikazu was heartily tickling the two when Hyde abruptly stood. Wait, can you smell that? What was? Did Zoo or Zoo poop? No, no something else. As if something's burning? While trying to determine what that strange smell was, a yell from downstairs shook Hyde's world. Sir Hyde! The kitchen's on fire! Their housekeeper's voice resounded to every sides of the mansion. Hyde immediately ran down to the first floor where the kitchen was. He forgot he was cooking. All because he let himself be lost and let his attention to be diverted on something else. As soon as he entered the kitchen hall, the smoke and smell of burnt fish he was frying strongly wrapped on his nose. And all Hyde could do was stare in horror. He swear he knew how to cook but Kikazu as a destruction. A pit of laughter caught his attention and there was the culprit, laughing at him. When their gaze met, his expression immediately changed to a poker face. Hyde just rolled his eyes inwardly, ordering their housekeeper to change the kids into nice clothes as he decided to eat out instead. Cleaning the kitchen will take a while. Suddenly, Hyde felt Kikazu's hug from behind. It's okay, babe. Hyde resigned himself from worrying. Yeah, right. What a mess he made. However, his heart is still fulfilled. Every day with his husband is a memorable one. Through all the difficulties they face, Kikaza doesn't let him face it alone, he's always there. And probably, always will be there. They vowed to each other exactly three years ago. Even if you're not a perfect house husband, I'd still choose you every day, every moment. Kikazu whispered on his ears, delightfully setting Hyde's heart at ease. It's true. If given another life, he'd still choose Hyde, find him and make him his, without letting him go and be another's. He only and should forever belong to him. Because he's a once-in-a-lifetime greatest find. His secretary, his lover, the love of his life and just like a mother to their kids. Hyde is Kikazu's, and Kikazu's is Hyde's. It was the promise that lives up until this moment and further on. Kikazu Liaos is now a family man. Not just a stoic boss, 
or a wealthy businessman, he's also not just known as the youngest billionaire but with an addition to his name which is a father to the twins they had and a lifetime lover to his lifetime partner.